Good Monday morning, everybody. John and Lance along with Dell here with you for the next three hours here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. I'm in Dallas hanging out here. Went to the Rockets game yesterday, going to the Astros tonight. And then, uh, well, the Sabres and the uh, and the Stars on Tuesday. And my cousin, who's uh, the coach of the Sabres, is in town. So I am going to – I'm here for three days. We'll be doing the show from here for three days. Got uh, – started out really poorly yesterday with how I don't know I don't know man first of all make a free throw you know when it, to put the game away Jabari and Van Vliet and then this coach is not fouling Lance no timeouts and not fouling what you're when you're up by three in the final seconds when they're bringing the ball up I just don't get it I just don't understand it what do you why would you not foul there? Why would you give them a chance to tie it up? Exum ties it up, and then they kill them in, in overtime. But first of all, you got to make one of those free throws, Jabari. And secondly, foul. Well, you blew up a big lead to begin with, so you know you wish you wouldn't have been in that spot. But second quarter, you get you lost by ten after having a great first quarter, but you were still in position to win it. And uh, it's not a just strategically. There are very few coaches who are willing to do it, especially on the pro level now because of how quickly players can get shots up. They don't want to <coughs> risk, you know, a shooting foul. But I'm I'm kind of with you. I mean, I don't I think if you foul right away, you're just not gonna deal with it. I mean, it's not no one's gonna get a shot up. They're gonna know it's on the ground. You don't have to worry about it. So um I would I personally would be in the camp. I know Rudy T used to foul. Rudy T yeah. used to be willing to foul some. So I don't know. It's it's one of those things that, that kills me. You're not usually beaten by it, but when you do, when you do get beat, or, well, you know, it's usually tied up. I should say, not beaten, but when it's tied up with a uh, a three point basket, you always say, "God, why didn't you foul?" I mean, every time, I end up saying that. So that that stunk. Jabari didn't. <clears throat> Jabari had a chance to close it out. Fred did, but Jabari really did. And then uh, they drifted off in overtime. The Rockets are officially eliminated, but. Um, from a just from a philosophical standpoint, I'm in favor, depending on where the positioning of the basketball is at the time, I'm in favor of fouling. You know, I'm in favor of trying to get you on the ground and and foul you on the ground, that is, and and trying to extend extend the action that way as opposed to, you know, having you get your three point shot off. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh uh, it was a it was a good atmosphere. The Rockets just dominated the first quarter and were just killing them. But you know, it was funny. We looked at halftime. The Rockets up by five, and they were still plus two sixty seven <laughs> at the half, up by five. So everybody knew that the 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 you know the Mavs Mavs were still a huge favorite, almost three to one favorite, we're down by five at the half. Especially the way that they came back. You said as, as you said, you know the Rockets were up by twenty two, yeah, and then ended up with a five point lead at the half. But they still played really well and really well defensively, and 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 kept in the game. And as a matter of fact, they had the lead with 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 seconds to play, and weren't able to hold on. But uh, it was it was uh, man. I'll tell you what they were they were flying. There were some really good players, and then there were some. Jeff Green was just awful. He was just awful. And I don't know what the deal is with Cam Whitmore, but you know I I would I had a seat. You know, with I was with the people, right? And I had a seat. <laughs> well, yeah, people who are right behind the Rockets bench. Yeah, I was with people that were right behind the Rockets Not bench. The Those people are people. So I don't know just... if you heard. Those are people too. Yeah, they're people. They're people. Did yeah. you pay for that ticket? Yeah, yeah. You did. Yeah, huh. yeah, absolutely. Yes, in a way. With sexual favors? No, not that way. <laughs> okay, I just want to way. make sure it wasn't. No, no, no. Well, you said a way. I wanted to eliminate that in case there was anyone out there like Dell thinking, "Uh oh, did he have to do something for this?" No, I didn't have to do anything for that. I did have to buy all the beer, and unfortunately, I've, I'm, I yeah, got someone caught. captured me on television with a Modelo, and and put that on on this thing that they call X. Used to be Twitter. See, you got to it first. I was going to accuse you of having a Bud Light just to see if I could get no, you get in with a quick not, Bud Light. Did not have a Bud you. Light. No, it was we a Modelo, and I told somebody, "What are you going to do if, if they don't have your drink?" And you think I yeah. never have tequila if Maestro de Bell's not in a place? No, right. if they don't have your thing, you don't drink your thing, and That's you're right. still Nothing having I a drink. 
as soon as I was done, we went to back. We came back to the hotel here and watched the Astros game, and we got Coors Lights because this is a sensible place because it's a an outstanding hotel that actually carries an, a, a respectable beer. So as you stopped to, at one Modelo once you just once you hated the taste of it. Did yeah, you stop? I couldn't even. I, I actually I they threw just it got all you, over the. They got the all picture of you with the one with the one right, Modelo. Right. Okay. And I threw I threw it all over the floor. Well, go back to your Cam Whitmore. Uh, so so we're right you know right behind there and man in the final seconds all the rockets the entire bench is standing and regular you know, seat, cheering I mean, on of, the guys of the regular game of, of, of the, the regular yeah, regulation, of the, yeah every regulation the final regulation and one guy's not and it's cam whitmore who's slouching his chair can't even see through the guys that are standing right in front of him. it doesn't even care not even looking up at the board just to watch the game on the on the scoreboard. I mean, nothing. He's just slouched in his chair, and I'm like, man, dude, this stuff is real about him. He if he doesn't play, and I don't know, I, I've got to look up his minutes. I didn't see, and I got to look up how many minutes he played in this one. But he it wasn't in there. He wasn't in there. I don't think in the second half at all. I'm pretty sure. But he just doesn't. He was man. That's that's a bad bad look, and it, and and it just feels like that that whole thing about him, and his played 19 minutes. He was three of six, uh, hit 11 points. That whole attitude thing about him, it might it might be just real. That coach, you know, he just he just irks coaches, and I I have a feeling if I'm if I'm Ime and I'm looking at him on the bench yesterday, I'm pissed. I'm pissed at him, not out there. I was watching, uh, you know, every time out, you guys coming out, the, and he just stands there. He does, there's no encouragement. There's no, I mean, there's no participation in it. And it just is a, it's a bad look. I, I don't know that, I don't know that it'll ever change if he doesn't change his attitude. Um, I, I, I'm worried too. I mean, I, I just, when I say worried, I mean, there was a reason he fell like he did in the draft. We all see how magnificently talented he is. He's a five-star pick. He's one of the most heralded players coming into college basketball. He went to a blue blood program, came out. We see the talent. The talent's undeniable. So how did he fall? Well, there were two things. One was there's a concern about a knee, uh, you know, and it, from, a, from a medical standpoint. But the other bigger one was, and, and we heard about three different <laughs> instances of this, so it's not a it's a real thing. I mean, this this came out about three different times before the draft was from I mean from three separate independent places that teams had issues with his just attitude. I guess they felt like there was a nonchalance there. There was a just a kind of a something didn't sit right. They rubbed people the wrong way, and uh, I'm, I'm sure he rubbed you. That picture rubbed me the wrong way that you sent to us. That you know where he's sitting on the bench, like dude, you got a chance to 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 beat the Mavericks and I mean he couldn't have cared less on the on the bench the picture just it it bothers me because I don't think it's a lock that he's a future number one he's a future starting guard for the Rockets I think his role especially if you keep Jalen Green I mean I you know he's going to get minutes he's going to get he's got a chance to get into the the low 20 minute range he could be a phenomenal six man he could be a phenomenal scorer off the bench an electric player who has Big nights could be, you know, whatever six man that you want to come up with historically, either now or in the past, he could be that. And that's such a valuable role. But I just don't think his personality, I, I don't think that's going to suit him in his opinion. So I, I worry that he's going to, John, I don't see him locking into any role that doesn't involve him being one of the, the first two options eventually, maybe a third option. Um, like if he could be a super crazy athletic Eric Gordon, would you take that? You know, when James, when James, when they had the, when they had one of their really good teams, I know Eric was starting at one point, but I'm just, I'm trying to think, I just don't think that's going to sit well with him not getting starters minutes. I, I think that at some point it's going to become a real issue. And I don't know that he and Ime Odoka, and I know it sounds like sky is falling, but I'm just telling you, personality-wise, I'll bet you they clash within the next by next year. 
Well, yeah, no. It, it, listen, if he doesn't, yeah, if he doesn't get his way and he doesn't start to, you know, and get the, like you said, those minutes. I guess that's all, that's all it's about. I don't know. It it seemed like that yesterday, but that that is something that that Ime and and the organization is going to have to uh, look at. There was a, you're right. There's a reason that he fell. It went and it was uh, it, the rumor was is that so many coaches just didn't like his laissez faire attitude, and I, I guess I, it looked it looked real yesterday anyway, watching him on the bench, but. Uh, the Astros, the Astros also played last night here in the city on ESPN and Ronell Blanco. Holy crap. This is carrying over. It's the best start anyone's ever had in major league in modern major league history, uh, with 15 plus innings of, of no hit ball, just incredible, incredible what his start was. And they made a couple of nice plays, but not great plays behind him. He, he is really, really uh, something on the same day that uh, JV is pitching in Sugarland, giving up uh, seven runs in six, with 65 pitches. I guess he didn't care. He's just working on stuff. It doesn't matter to me that how many runs he gave up. But him, but Renel Blanco was coming out of nowhere and just firing. He his change up, his change of stuff. He's he's like a a seasoned veteran right now. Uh, looking awesome. What a great start. What a great. I mean, after watching Hunter Brown, uh, watching that is was really, really encouraging for this rotation. When JV comes back, I don't know how you take him out. If you want to know, I, I just maybe it's Hunter Brown that goes to the pen. It, it may have to be because he was such dog turds on on uh, Friday. I mean, he was just he sucked. He was terrible. I mean, barely weaseled out of the first inning and then got slaughtered in the second inning. Uh, frankly. You look at Blanco's two starts, and even Blanco last year, and you look at Hunter Brown last year, right now if his name wasn't Hunter Brown and he didn't pitch like Justin Ver- have a windup that's exactly, you know, a delivery exactly patterned after Justin Verlander, it'd be a no-brainer. We'd say, oh, no, Renell Blanco. If this is a meritocracy, we're getting into – we're getting – there's not a ton of sample size, but we're getting into Renell Blanco territory where it's just – there is no other way that you can look at this. Hunter Brown – just hasn't proven to be, and this is why you can't crown people too quickly. He has not proven to be the guy. He he just hasn't. Not for sure hasn't. Last year wasn't good, and then this year he had one good game that I was very hopeful after that. But man, was that disappointing on Friday, John? That was incredibly disappointing. Yeah, no. It, it, if you if you've got to make a decision right now, it's more than likely Hunter Brown, a young guy, has got to go. Has got to go to the uh, go. Got to go to the bullpen, but uh, JV will see whether or not he's able to come back. Do you see how much the Major League Baseball Players Association and Major League Baseball are going at it over uh, this pitch clock thing because of all of the injuries and yet another one, Spencer Strider with an elbow injury okay, as well. Okay, but this, I, this is such a dumb thing though. They, they keep acting like this is yeah. all pitch clock, dude. This is. I think that's. I think it's misplaced. This. These numbers have been on the rise before the pitch clock. This is about usage in youth baseball, where guys get worn down and torn down. There's been studies on this. I think I understand that they're trying to pair it directly to, they're trying to pair it directly to the uh, uh, to the pitch clock. But I mean, if you look at the numbers, the numbers have been skyrocketing well before the pitch clock. I I just think that's a, I think I don't think there's anything Major League Baseball can do about the arm issues. I think it starts on the youth level. With guys picking up baseballs year round and throwing, when orthopedic doctors say absolutely not, especially if you're throwing curveballs at a young age, you cannot play travel baseball all year long. You the wear and tear on the arm is too significant at that age, and then they it, they've studied it and said it does damage for when you get older. It's it's more likely going to contribute to potential Tommy John. What can Major League Baseball do about that? Nothing, and I don't think it's pitch clock personally. You mean to tell me because you pitch two seconds faster, maybe, maybe three seconds faster on a single pitch, that's what's causing your arm to hurt? Come on, man. That doesn't seem to make sense to me. Yeah. No, and, and John Hopkins looks at it. Johns Hopkins looked at it, and they said it, there's no correlation between the pitch clock and these injuries. Right. It's, it's all about the wear and tear on the on the elbows. We are just getting started. we got to talk some uh, college basketball. we got the national championship tonight, and we had the national championship yesterday which is going to destroy the numbers for the men's side. I mean, it is unbelievable what Caitlin Clark 
uh, brought to the game of women's college basketball. We'll talk about it on the other side, right here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Right now I'm talking about Houston Powder Coaters. I'm talking about uh, Robin and the great people over at Houston Powder Coaters. And I say great people, and that's right, Art. They are great people. They're wonderful people because they're going to fix your stuff. They're going to make sure that your stuff looks great. You are going to benefit from the, the greatness that is and the knowledge that is Houston Powder Coaters. They're so good. I mean, they can do whatever, everything for that patio furniture, for those car parts, for those boat parts, anything that's metal, your metal fences, fencing, whatever. They can make it look new again, or they can make it, they can fix it. it send Robin a picture of whatever it is and you, you think you can't. It can't be saved. There's a chance it could be. And by the way, metal from uh, your patio furniture from ten years ago is much better than metal that is made today. So you're going to get um, you're going to be able to keep and hold on to something that's a much better product. It's all happening at Houston Powder Coaters. They have free pickup and delivery. You could give them a call two eight one six seven six thirty eight eighty eight or go to HoustonPowderCoaters.com. You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. All right, first of all, uh, John Calipari going to Arkansas in the middle of the night. <laughs> this is uh, this is a, a strange – I don't think it's strange. I think Calipari's probably sick of Kentucky and they're complaining. Yeah, but it, it's getting he, he a little weird, anything. though, John. It's – to go yeah. from Kentucky to Arkansas for Chip Kelly to go from – they're not really connected because the reason Chip Kelly did was more geographical. But to go from UCLA head coach to an offensive coordinator, to go from head college coach to NFL offense coordinator, there's some strange moves happening in college that we've never seen before. Going willingly from a big school to a small school, um, even though there was some heat on Calipari, it's strange. We don't see that. I, I'm sorry. Arkansas is not a small school. Not a small stretch. school. But no. but what I mean, because it's still in the SEC. But, I mean, you're going from blue blood to, I mean, not blue blood program. I think that he just, maybe he's probably tired of people behind the scenes. And maybe he's just trying to ha- stay ahead of the guillotine. Well, yeah. I mean, he listen, he has not been successful. It's been bad. And, and, and this, you know, NIL 
is the exact opposite of John Calipari. John Calipari was thriving off of one and dones for all those years, and everybody else was losing players too. Now that everybody's staying in, he's got the youngest team on the court, and he's not, he can't win with them. So he's going to have to change up the whole one and, you know, getting, getting guys that are going to be one and done. He's got to get some guys that are actually going to stick around for a while and become better basketball players because it's just not working for him the way he's doing it now. It was fine before NIL and when he was paying everybody before everybody else was, or I'm sorry, um, you know, I, I don't want to accuse him of cheating, but, you know, all that cheating he did. So it, it, he was he was able to, to to get away with it, and he was able to succeed. And now he can't anymore. Now it's a level playing field with everybody getting paid. So uh, we'll find out whether or not Arkansas is right. Hey, you can win at Arkansas. It ain't like you can't. Kentucky's a blue blood, but it ain't like, you know, it's John Calipari that will get players to come over there. He'll still get really good players. And Arkansas has got, you know, they had the, the Nolan Richardson great teams, and they've got some history. Um, but he'll, he'll, he'll win. Uh, women's college basketball won all these last few weeks. Holy crap. The numbers, did you see the 14 million that, uh, UConn and yep. Caitlin Clark, or these was it the LSU serious, game that had 14 million? numbers. I asked my dad, did he watch the Astros yesterday or, uh, women's championship? He watched UConn. I mean, he watched, uh, women's championship and he loves watching Astros. Well, the women's but, championship was over. Oh, no, that's right. It was, yeah, the, yeah. uh, well, wait. Yeah, yeah, because the Astros were night game. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. What, what was the other game that it was, was going the on? Ro- the Rockets were playing while Nah, he... but he wouldn't be watching the Rockets. Well, no, I guess I just asked him if he was watching that. I guess yeah. that's what it was. And he goes, oh, yeah, I watched the whole thing. And yeah. so did I. And I'm telling you right now, no matter what, there's a lot of things we can talk about here. Caitlin Clark, what she did for women's basketball cannot be understated. It is a – you had 12.5 million broke a record the other day against LSU unbelievably there was even more viewers in the Yukon game uh, uh, with Paige Beckers playing and they they weren't directly you know Paige Beckers is is great but then the more you watch Yukon you realize eh, they got some other players that can really play too but what Caitlin Clark did and in this game may even have I didn't see numbers for this one are they already are they already out I have not seen them either no. yeah we'll see them today but these numbers are astronomical numbers I mean astronomical numbers they blow out NBA playoff games easily these are monster, monster numbers. This game was on, you tell me, John, I don't know how the decision-making works in this, if it's already preset. This was in the ABC game, Channel 13 yesterday. You know, I, did, did they, is there a way that you make the decision that a game that might have been on ESPN could go to ABC, or is that made well in advance? Because, you know, a lot of times ABC likes to maintain their programming. Not Sunday if they don't have a golf event, obviously, which ABC is not you know, you're not going to – I don't know how much golf is on ABC anymore. But uh, I, I don't know if it was preset to be on there and it was always going to be an ABC game or not. But I'm just saying this. I know how good women's – I was shocked. My dad and I talked about, man, there are a lot of really good women's basketball players. It is night and day from what we used to see from the WNBA when they first came out and everyone kind of made fun. The women's game has some staggeringly – efficient shooters now as we saw with tessa johnson just one of them yesterday it is i've got so much respect for don staley and her team i've got so much respect for a lot of the women that i watched along the way and that started last year in the in the in the tournament when i was you know with caitlin clark i got to see this caitlin clark and then from there i mean granted okay look did i watch a lot of regular season college basketball i watched some caitlin clark games that was about it but the tournament i was enthralled with the tournament i now Mostly they were games she was playing, but some of them were just South Carolina games. And I'm telling you now, I have a better understanding of how many good women's basketball players there are. And to think that she did not – I mean, she's – what Magic and Bird and then Jordan did for the NBA. I mean, she may have done some of that, not to the same extent, but she may have done some of that for uh, not only women's college basketball, but also potentially moving forward in the WNBA. This could be a huge, huge moment. Now – We'll get to discussions about some of the haters that are out there. That's a whole separate conversation. But do you? Will you ever like next year? I'd be inclined to watch Paige Beckers versus, you know, one of the two freshmen. If South Carolina played UConn, I'd watch it, John. And in years past, I would have never said that ever. Yeah. But I'd be willing to watch without Caitlin Clark. 
Uh, it's going to fall off drastically, and we'll find it, out whether whether or not she can carry the WNBA. Well, okay, which, did did Tiger did did PGA 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 fall off drastically after Tiger left? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Uh, NBA it, fell off after Michael Jordan left. That's not unusual. Yeah, it's not unusual no. when somebody who well, is now a special we'll find star. out though. Well, now we'll find out though her reach because no one's ever lifted the w, uh, WNBA up. Nah, that's true. So we'll find out whether or not she can do that. Is it going to be – are you going to have to watch Indiana Fever basketball because Caitlin Clark is on the floor? I think I have a feeling it's absolutely going to grow because of her. Well, we'll find out whether or not, though, that it, it – you know, it's going to be something like this where I, – I mean, the, she drew bigger numbers than, than the World Series. She drew bigger numbers than the NBA Finals. She drew bigger numbers <laughs> than, than anything – than tonight's game is going to have. I mean, it, it, on a Sunday afternoon, she's you know she's going to be out drawing a men's national championship game. That's it's crazy. It's crazy what she's done. We'll find out whether or not it carries over though. That we shall see. Um, who you got tonight? Um, I am going. I think it's a. I think it's an interesting game between the bigs. Man, was I impressed the other day with with Klingon. Um, his shot blocking and, and the impact. But, I mean, I just don't think – I just don't see how you keep from getting smothered by UConn. It's kind of like watching South Carolina. I think there's a lot of similarities to watching South Carolina basketball where the women's team just eventually – you saw the quick start that Iowa had. Eventually, they just got smothered. I mean, they just – Iowa just eventually it is a – it is a boa constrictor that eventually just chokes the life out of you by the fourth quarter. I don't think it's any different with – with UConn, I think eventually they have too many good players, and I, I I'm going to go with UConn, but it is going to bring up an interesting discussion that I want to have with you about. Um, isn't it weird to see how teams like UConn now used to be just you had your players and you had to survive having one and dones and all that. Now you just go take one of the best shooters or scorers off a of Rutgers team, right? You just plug them into your roster. I mean, this is true free agency that went on at South Carolina. They added a shooter in the women's side that pow pow. She just was watching TV and said, man, they could use some shooting. I'm going to see if they want me. And they did. They brought her over, and she was a huge part of the team this year. Some guy from Rutgers, here's the white guy, Peterson. You know what? Let's go get him. He could really help our team. And so now you're starting to plug in. Some of these blue blood teams are starting to just go pick at your, your – I mean, in the true – spirit of international soccer they're just going and picking out some of the best players off of other people's teams and they're filling in their rosters and now they're getting unstoppable and i think mm-hmm. uconn is just not you know i think it's just too much zach eddy is needed just too much him versus Kling- and klingon i think is going to really impact his shot so um i like uconn and i'd lay the points too by the way who would you draft first klingon klingon or uh or Edie? well klingon is the is the guy who's game fits the nba more because he's a rim runner and he's a shot blocker so probably him i guess i don't i, I don't buy into this hate of zach edy like zach edy can't translate i just don't buy into it you just have to i know he's going to have problems with high screen and rolls but then people are going to have problems with him in the box so yeah. it's kind of it's kind of both i mean people try to high screen and roll him on the collegiate level too this idea that if you can't defend pick and rolls you can't play in the nba it's kind of stupid it, there's a lot of bad defenders in the nba and you and they still play he is going to rebound because he has size i don't look at him any differently than i looked at yao ming no he's yao. sorry he's yao. i mean i don't he's you know a, well yeah. yeah yao's face-up game was okay that's great but he's just it's you know it too he's just yao watching him he's got yep. left hand right hand He's not going to get as many re- – he'll get rebounds because he's big, but he's not an explosive leaper, but he's a better athlete than Yao was at 7'6", a little bit better. So, yeah, I just think he's Yao, and I think there's a place for that that's starting to develop in today's NBA because more teams are starting to realize, you know what, maybe we flip it and we go to a low post score uh, because there's so few low post defenders now. So I think he'll play. I think he'll be a first rounder. But for me, if I got other guys that are ballers, I'm probably getting the rim runner with Klingon who can shut block shots. All right, we got to break it here. And don't forget, in about 15 minutes, what did you learn this weekend in one sentence? What did you – I've got something I've got, I've got for you. I know what I'm going to – what I learned this weekend in one sentence. You have to figure yours out. 713-780-3776. Right now, I'm talking about Doc Linville. 
I figured this out a while ago. The Duck Linville is going to give me hair. It's going to be better. It's just going to be better because I've got more hair. I do. I have more hair. I have moved my hair from the side and and put it up on top. And then also I got the PRP. I did the neografting and I did the PRP, which stimulates my own growth. But it, it uh, both processes are simple. Both are basically painless. The neografting is a bit more. There's a lot more to it actually. And so you know you've got a three day anesthetic though that is going to help you. I mean I was I, I I couldn't have been more pleased with the entire process. You're looking for the best way to get hair at the top of your head if you're sick. If you're if you're just sick of the 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 five head. If you're sick of that bald spot in the back, you need Doc Linville. He's the best. You go to 975hair.com. That's 975hair.com. Allstate Windows and Siding wants you to make sure that you get these new windows before the summer comes, and summer is coming. You thought winter is coming was scary? How about summer is coming for us after last year? If you have leaky windows, ooh, your air conditioning bills must have been through the roof last year because that A.C. just stays on. The humidity gets in your home, makes it uncomfortable. Your A.C. is running at all times. Allstate Windows and Siding says, look, let us come in there. We retrofit your windows. We measure the windows as they currently stand, uh, you know, your your window pane, uh, your frame, rather, and then we will make them. We, we custom make them if we need to. They're made right here in the state of Texas for Texas tough weather. They get the installation up with no glass breakage when they're taking out your old windows. These are double-pane windows that help to eliminate noise. They help to keep dust out. They beautify your home. They add safety. But most importantly, they can improve your energy efficiency by 40%. That's real right there. Knock that number off your electric bill. Man, so while you can go as high as 40%, any bit helps, and beautifying your home also adds to the value of your home. It's allstatewindowsandsiding.com. If you make sure you tell them you heard about them on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5, they will give you a big discount on your window. So make sure that you mention my name. That's uh, that's allstatewindowsandsiding.com, allstatewindowsandsiding.com. You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. All right, welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Hey, we got all kinds of stuff to, to uh, get into here from this weekend, including our Astros and their start, including college basketball, pro basketball, whatever. We got a bunch 
of a sound that we have to get to. But let's get uh, to the phones. Anybody wants in, someone 3780-3776. Stafford is here. He wants to talk about women's college basketball. Hey, Stafford. Hey, good morning, y'all. Man, women's college basketball was up this year. Yes. And I, I'm i wondering, like, is it going to stay up? Because Caitlin Clark, like you said, man, she, she drew it all. And will this – will Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, and Paige Becker, them going to the NBA, WNBA, the NBA should come up, right? The WNBA should rise. And with that being said, what happened to the comments? We won the first four titles. And, I, you know, after that I kind of went to the military and I, I came back and the comments were gone. Like, what happened? <laughs> Well, I mean, it, a pretty easy one. They, you know, the WNBA when they came up, there were the league was trying to force the NBA owners. It was a dual ownership type thing, and and Les Alexander simply didn't want to let the Comets basketball team play it uh, uh, in the Summit at that time, and so oh. they didn't have comp, they didn't have comp, no they didn't have Toyota Center back then, John, did they? No, 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 not at all. So they ended up having to go to NRG Arena, and they played. I mean, they basically didn't really have a home. They went to a place where nobody goes to watch basketball games, and after that, it was gone. Uh, I mean, completely gone, because there used to be people at Comets games. I mean, the Comets were a good team. There were people at those games, but once they yeah. once they moved from the Summit, it was a wrap. No one went anymore, and it was done. But it is – you're looking at it now, John. Thanks for the call, and, and, that's, uh, and I agree with you. The WNBA – Caitlin Clark, Clark should bring the WNBA up and really bring more attention to what is already a bunch of really good players. I mean, that's the reality of it. Whether you like women's basketball or not, you don't have to watch it. They, you know, I've never said anyone has to watch anything they don't want to watch, but, um, but Caitlin Clark is going to bring attention to, to women who, if you like basketball, they probably deserve more attention because there's going to be some really good players. But with that said, John, can you see yourself locking in, sitting down on a Tuesday and watching a Sparks versus Indiana Fury or whatever their name is? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's that's. I don't know either. I think she, I, think she I could, will. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna. It, I'm, and I'm sure it's gonna involve Caitlin Clark, um, but I'm not. I'm not sure that it's going to draw the same attention that Iowa has. Here's the deal: Paige Beckers is not going to the uh, WNBA. She, you got to be at least 22 years old. And you have to have no um, remaining college eligibility. So, uh, Caitlin, while Caitlin Clark can still get her her uh, COVID year, uh, apparently she you know it, that's not that's not what they would consider co- uh, eligibility. She's already done her four years, so she is able to go to the WNBA, and she's going to. Paige Beckers is not old enough yet to she go. Is so actually, you, that's, she's actually twenty two years old because she's had multiple knee injuries where she has eligibility eligibility left, but she could. I think she even made an announcement saying, I'm coming back um, earlier, maybe a couple months ago. But her injuries have led her to be older than you might think. She just hasn't played a lot because ACLs do that to you. Right. She still has She still has eligibility. She still has what, yeah, non-COVID many- eligibility, eligibility left. But if she wanted to go, she could. She just decided, no, nah, I'm good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play here at least for another year. Okay. Um, yeah, so she's not going. I don't know. Are there any other? I mean, what about Cardoso? Is that? Yeah, she's, is going. She, she's, she's going. She's supposed to be a top four pick. Yeah, I would imagine. I mean, I guess you have to take Caitlin Clark But now first. you were at the Rockets, right? So did you even get to see the, the uh, Iowa yeah, I had Yeah, I had it on my phone. Okay. I watched, was watching so it on did my phone. you see the freshman? I don't know if you could listen to them. They had two freshmen that were unbelievable at South Carolina. Like, really phenomenal. That's why... <laughs> women shoot you know Caitlin Clark's going to have an impact on so many girls coming up who shoot like she's going to have the Jordan effect and the Steph Curry effect on on people wanting to be like you can't you can't want to be look with Jordan's athleticism and all that stuff kids wanted to be him every growing up I saw everyone wearing sweatbands on the arm you know and there's all the Michael Jordan stuff. Steph Curry has had an enormous impact on the game of, of how guys are shooting and the distance and the range. He had an impact on Caitlin Clark, obviously. Um, Caitlin, but LeBron is somebody like he can't have that impact where you I'm going to play like LeBron. How? He's a physical freak show. Like his game is not defined by 
is the game is defined by greatness in a lot of categories and a physical a physical DNA that you you just can't match. Caitlin Clark shooting from the distance she, she did, do you know there's going to be a lot of 14-year-olds and 15-year-olds who want to start becoming better with their handles, who want to become better passers, learn to penetrate and kick, and then, of course, shoot and shoot and shoot. And the amount of shooters that are in the women's game today, like, it's staggering. It was so atrocious when WNBA first started. The shooting was so bad. And you, you fast forward – all these years, I guess, 20, whatever it is, 25 years, and it's like, I don't even, their game doesn't even look the same. It looks completely different in 25 years. So she's going to have a big impact on a lot of people wanting to become better shooters, and I, I think it's going to really uplift their game for sure. I, when are we going to get into – we'll probably have to do it in the 8 o'clock hour because did you see what Lynette uh, – Del, yeah. do you have Lynette Woodard's comments? Yeah, but she pulled back on it. Well, she, she pulled, pulled back, back after what? After she already made him? She made him because that's in her heart. What do you mean? Yeah. And and well, she, she said that after she had – Iowa had already honored her. Iowa had honored her. She got a standing ovation and all this. Then later she made these comments. Now she pulled back just because she had some heat. You don't think she actually believes that? Uh, Yeah, well, okay, so there's a that we have to – Tell the, the whole story. We we'll have to play it, and it's and yeah, it's seven and it's seven forty, and we got what do you, what did you learn uh, this weekend in one sentence coming up? So, uh, Lynette, for those who don't know, Lynette Woodward was the one who uh, Caitlin Clark broke her record, but apparently she didn't actually she didn't actually play in the NCAA. She played in the women's NI whatever it was at the time, and there was no three point line. So she said, "You know, I you know feel like I'm still the greatest scorer ever." And whatever. with a men's basketball, yeah, right. And so and so there was yeah women just, women didn't get uh, into the NCAA, women's sports didn't get into the NCAA until 1982, I believe, was the year. So she all of her records weren't NCAA records but her but she still passed her either way where did she where did she pull back on it I don't see that she in the pulled news. back after the game yesterday apparently she tweeted out that Caitlin is the is the all-time oh, leading school Iowa fans weren't having it so because yeah. she was honored by Iowa they brought her to the game right. um, to to acknowledge what she had done and so they were very upset that wait a minute we welcomed you. She's a head we coach at Winthrop, you. too. And she's you're she's gonna, a women's basketball head yeah, coach And right you're going to do this to us, or us, I guess. Uh, Caitlin, I guess. And then, the, so she pulled back. Caitlin's great scoring record. She tweeted it out with a, with a, with a, with some graphic, and she tweeted out that Caitlin's great. She has a scoring record. My comments were blah, blah, blah. Some, like, taken out of context type stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. There was no context it was taken out. By the way, we went on Twitter. Because she hasn't tweeted since 2019. Well, the graphic came out, and she acknowledged um, that she's sorry. I'm sorry that Iowa fans are nuts. I didn't know I would have to deal with this, so I'm going to apologize. Oh, you Good. didn't know co- collegiate sports fans go crazy? Yeah, Iowa fans yeah. lose their mind. It was probably led by Tony. I mean, oh, my goodness. No, Iowa fans, well, all college fans are, are crazy. But, man, when I said something, because the angle they showed on TV, I thought UConn, I thought that was a bad call. I thought that was a call you don't make, I should say. At the end of the game, the moving screen that they called on UConn. And I, I don't to see- I don't agree. I I think that was a great I think it was well, a right call. Well, I didn't see at, at the time watching the angles they showed, I absolutely yeah. didn't think so. Now, when I got to see the next day they had angles that they didn't show on TV and I said, yeah. "Okay, it's you can tell it's more egregious than that yes. I thought from that backs from the back angle that they had cuz it did not look like enough when I made the comments. Oh my god. Iowa fans, I guess my followers on Twitter, who were they not happy? But I want to break it now because this yeah. is always the highlight of the week. Well, it's, what, what did you, you learn, learn this weekend in one sentence? What did you learn this weekend in one sentence coming your way? So you got 713-780-3776. Give a call right now. Get on the board. As soon as somebody hangs up, you can get in. But we got uh, a good one here this weekend. What did you learn this weekend? You get one sentence to tell us. Right now, I've got HRP. HRP.net, 281-880-6525 is where you go to get your HR and your payroll on. Your business is your business. You know your business. You know what you're doing with your business. Your business is successful right now because you are really good at whatever that is. You're not good at payroll. You're just not. You're not good at HR. You're just not. You, that's not your expertise. Let the people with the expertise take care of your payroll and HR and let them do it better than anybody. We love them. 
you can call up and talk to Laura and ask her about HRMP. We love what they've done for our business. It's it's kept it to a one person department. It's Laura, okay. And if your payroll department is growing, or you're not completely satisfied with the payroll company that you have, and that actually happens too, or you feel like maybe they're taking advantage of you with the 401ks and the all uh, your your benefits packages, that ain't what HRMP does because they don't they're not in the benefits package business. They're in the payroll and HR, and they'll give you choices for all the other stuff. You're looking for that payroll company, 281-880-6525 or hrp.net. Yeah, thanks for that, Dell. Speaking for our plumber, now I got to get to my ortho. Orth- this isn't really orthopedic so much. This is regenerative medicine. And regenerative medicine, you know, my wife went to an orthopedic doctor, got the MRIs, got the um, x rays, and found out she had a bone on bone knee issue. And we thought she was done. I mean, this is it. No more, no more marathon running, what she absolutely loved. Now she's back to running. Uh, she finished the Berlin Marathon after she had treatments from QC Kinetics. It took five treatments. It's a hardcore situation that she was dealing with, and yet she got mobility back. She she had a lot of the pain began to subside in one of the worst conditions for knee issues, and yet here she was running the Berlin Marathon just a year after running or two years after running the uh, uh, the Boston Marathon. She is training once again, plans on running uh, London at some point. And I'm telling you, QC Kinetics can make a huge difference in your life if you're just dealing with chronic pain. You don't have to be someone who's trying to compete at any kind of level. If you just want to get, you know, just pain reduced out of your knee, uh, out of your hip, out of your shoulder, your back, wherever it is, QC Kinetics can help. They regenerate damaged uh, and uh, damaged and inflamed uh, tissue. It begins to restore damaged tissue. It can regenerate new tissue when needed. And so that that reduction in inflammation means more mobility for you. QC Kinetics, four locations here in Houston, qckinetics.com. You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. All right. So I am in Dallas, and uh, I am not able to see the board here. So Lance is going to take it. We'll see. We'll, we'll run see them jewels fast. We will run them jewels really fast. You're not really all that good at this thing. I'm great. You've never, ever just kept it to one sentence. Well, I'm just introducing people. Yeah, I know you are. I know I'm just introducing so people, we'll, so I'm not we'll going to. We'll see how it goes. All right, let's go to Matt. Introduce right me now. first, then. Yeah. I'm right. going first. Oh, so okay, okay. Dell. what did you learn this weekend? Yeah. What I've learned is that it doesn't matter the gender. Old ballers will hate the new ballers. Whoa. 
Mm. Man, what I learned this weekend is that the show Ripley on Netflix is one of the some of the greatest cinematography that I think I've ever seen. Hmm. What I learned this weekend is that Modelo blows. Okay. Oh, that's, recovery. That's a, that's this that's is all. PR spin crisis. All no, right, let's the, get let's start at not, the top. That's not what it is. It just there's no Coors Light in the arena, and it, that blows. <laughs> let's get LSU Brian in here. What's up, LSU Brian? How's it going, guys? John, you mentioned it earlier. I didn't learn it this weekend, but I was reminded that Cam Whitmore, if you notice, he whines every time he's not in the game. So start paying attention. It, it, that one it, sentence. It, it, That's all. One, one sentence. sentence you but we, you made you made your point there. Let's get Ocho in here. Ocho, what's going on? Yeah, I learned that if you read or listen to the lyrics of Bruce Springsteen's "I'm on Fire," you'd be inclined to think he's a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got to go. I got to mm-hmm. go listen to the song now. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's a strong well, comment. I, out. I don't know if he's referring to his da- to your daddy as to your real father, or in fact, your boyfriend or husband. So I wanna, I, he just yeah. said, read the lyrics. I'm going to go yeah. read the lyrics here well, in a second. Let's get right. uh, Matt in here. What's up, Matt? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, I learned this weekend that I know more college, uh, women's college players than I do men. Hey, I don't know any men, to be honest. Uh, it, well, I mean, you know what, John? I don't think that's the only person who would say that. Yeah. Not after, yeah, after I this. mean, if you're, not a col- if you're not a men's college basketball fan, there's definitely a better chance that you tuned into Caitlin Clark. Yep. Yeah. Because she's just something just... that's different. Like we just haven't seen this kind of crazy range and these. She's all the time assist leader and score. It's so, just different. I mean, she's... she didn't do it. She did it with a three pointer and a women's ball, so it doesn't count, according to Lynette. But anyway, uh, who is that? LV? Is it Lou? Lou. What's up, Lou? I learned this weekend that if I'm talking about tattoos with my wife and we're talking about tramp stamps and explaining that fat women are the only ones that get tramp stamps, my response to my wife being, uh, saying, well, maybe you should go get one, shouldn't be the best response. Wow. <laughs> Holy crap. Wow. wow. A wow. tramp stamp or a woman with a tramp stamp? A big girl Holy with a tramp stamp. Crap. Which one does she only want you to go get? girls get them. Maybe you should. Wow. Wow. That's that, Man. that's that's couchable. That's yeah. couchable behavior she should right go, there. Yeah, she should go on a couch. What, she doesn't know that she's a, a large woman? Oh, wow. Well, maybe not. Maybe well, she I guess, doesn't. Doubt. I guess she's not looking for that information from Wait, her husband. I guess I misunderstood that one. No, he's they were having because it's a long, long run on sentence. He said that he, he and his wife were having a conversation about tattoos and tramp stamps and i guess they came to the conclusion that only big girls have them and then he suggested maybe you should get one mm. he told her that yes. yes oh i thought she told him that no he no, told her he oh that. you her can't that. say that well he said it <laughs> you can't say that dude <laughs> tell it to lou lou yep lou let's or get matt. Or uh, matt. Or who, maybe it was matt yeah is yeah. that isaac yes it's like a reading exam in here what's up isaac you just have hey what's up fellas i learned that Mr. Ronel Blanco really doesn't like giving up hits, does he? Man, Ronel Blanco does not like allowing hits at all. No. no. Hunter Brown doesn't mind, but Ronel Blanco is a he's an autocracy. He believes in no hits for anyone else but him. He'll decide Nobody. when you get a hit. Hunter Brown is very democratic. Did a lot of he spit sleepy Hunter had so much, so many hits out there. There's an inflation now because he just gave hits away, and now there's a hit inflation. Nah, he was dropping singles. Sleepy Hunter. Giving out singles like he was at a strip club. He's like, everybody wants some. You want a single? You, you want, want a one? single? People are picking up singles and putting them in their pants, putting them in their see-through baseball pants. Hmm. Let's uh, get Brandon in here. What's up, Brandon? Morning, guys. Uh, I learned that after a history-making run of winning LPGA tournaments, Nelly Corder will be topic A on the Mopey and Make show this morning. Oh, hmm. wow. Ooh. I don't know who that is. Well, Nellie Corda is uh, she's the best women's player in the world. You better go study up if before you say the, so. You better yeah. study up before the show. How did starts. he learn that? He's he's suggesting that the Mopey no. and Mape shows doesn't start generally with women's golf. No, <laughs> well it, it should. Uh, well, but it you're should. still young in your show. I'm you're not, still young in your. Why are we putting on 
obscure topics on my show. Like, hey, let's talk about horse yeah. racing. Now it's what women's golf. Did yeah. did Hunter call in? Did uh, Reagan call in? No, he did not. He yeah. only wants to talk to you. He doesn't want to talk uh, to me. Let's get well, other no. er, other Eric wants to uh, tell us what he learned. What did you learn this weekend? 713-780-3776. We still have a line open if you want to jump in. Other Eric, what's going on? The Texas Valero Open turned into a cage match in the final nine. Hmm. Turned into a what? Cage match. Cage match. Well, I mean, it was a two-man show. I don't know. I didn't watch it. I just, I did keep up with, I had some interest in who would win that, and I was disinterested. For reasons. I was disinterested in the two who were down at the, playing it out. I was like, ugh, gross. Let's get Tom in here. (laughs) Tom, I've never heard of these guys, John. I don't think you've ever heard of them either. What's up, Tom? What'd you learn this weekend? I learned that if I'm in the NBA, joke my girlfriend, get traded to Oklahoma City and cut, that I will be embraced fully by Greek basketball fans. If you missed it, Kevin Porter Jr. playing in Greece. Oh, is he really? That's what he's talking about. Oh, he's yeah. talking about KPJ. Yeah. Mm. He's in Greece. Well, he ain't going to be playing here. Well, no, yeah. there's always there's, another country. You can always leave to another country. I saw Tom Ripley do that. You can go to another country. It's KPJ. Well, never mind. He has been accused of crimes, too. Never mind. Yes. Yeah. KPJ may be. The, he's talented, too. But anyway, uh, Keith, what's up? What did you learn this weekend? Hey, guys, I learned this weekend that Jordan Spieth might be the first player in PJ Tour history to have a hole-in-one and hit a ball on the roof in the same tournament. That's not easy. That's not. That's no, not easy. That's inconsistency is what that is. And by the way, I do know who Akshay and Denny, McCar- Denny uh, McCarthy are, Lanzo. Who yes. was the first one you mentioned? Akshay Batia. Yeah, you mispronounced yeah, he his was, name. He was actually here. He played really well. A little, And, and actually, yeah, that's a, right. a friend of mine went and followed him last week at the Houston Open. I think he and was following second. him around. He played great. Didn't he finish second? He finished, uh, yeah, he was up there at the, on the yeah. leaderboard. He finished here's second Bruce, last week and he won this week. Here's I'm on fire lyrics. Does this sound like a pedophile? Hey, little girl, is your daddy home? Did he go away and leave you all alone? I got a bad desire. Oh, oh, oh I'm on fire. Yeah. I mean, it is t- troubling lyrics when you just read them at the, at the start, John. Yeah, it depends on what you mean by daddy. Is that Tell me husband? now, baby, is he good to you? Well, he's, he's just trying to sneak in there. Does he do to you the things that I do? That that would mean that that he oh, is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, Either yeah, the dad's that's, the pedophile, or or no, it's just, just a girl calls her guy daddy. Yeah, yeah. maybe that's sugar, it. daddy. or maybe Bruce Springsteen likes to call other dudes daddy. Uh, right. We can't we cannot let this go without La Raza getting in. What's up, La Raza? La Raza, qué, ¿Qué pasó, pasó, mijo? Janet, Matty, el el lunch sneak. <laughs> Delvincito. Delvincito. Oh. <laughs> Balloon. Balloon. So, gentlemen, what I learned over this weekend is apparently there's a new word for zesty. It's called Ziddy. <laughs> if you missed it, DJ Burns <laughs> yeah. mentioned yeah. Zach 80 being seven inches taller than him and then said, like, no Diddy or something like that. Um, he said no diddy. He was like he was like inch seven inches and then no diddy. Something like that. Oh my gosh. DJ Burns has a sense of humor. DJ Burns reminds me of uh Derek Lewis. All right, let's see. We got who who do we have here, Dell? Let's go, Marcus. All right, Marcus. Oh, Marcus wants to play. Okay. Marcus, what's going on? What did you learn this week? Man, I learned that the big Brazilian for uh uh South Carolina can get it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not get it, get it. No, I think he, you, he, he meant mean, what get he it, meant. Get it? I think he, he meant said what he meant. meant. Yeah. Okay. Cardoso? <sighs> I was... That's hey, that's Marcus's opinion. No, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you got to respect another man's opinion. Um, I was hoping he meant rebounds. No, I don't think that's what he meant. And layups near the basket. Nope. Not the way he said it. Yeah. Huh. huh. He said that's get it. Six, seven. Huh. He, he acknowledged her size and still said she could get it. From the favelas of Brazil. He called her the big Brazilian, too. The yes. big Brazilian, he said, yeah. He said yeah. what he said. He meant what yeah. he said. He meant what he said. That's fine. We got two more to go. That's fine. The 6'7 is not my, you know, 
Is that my thing? Oh, your name's not Marcus. Right. No, that's right. My name has never been Marcus. Let's get uh, Ryan in here. What's up, Ryan? Hey, sports fellas. Uh, hey, if, if Caitlin Clark was using a regular basketball, she wouldn't be near as good. I know. That's what I heard. That's what I learned that, too, from Lynette Word. Shout out, Lynette. Let's get Jimmy in here to wrap it up. Jimmy, what did you learn this weekend? I learned that if you have a manager that's using your work to get ahead in life, all you have to do is make subtle changes in presentations and spreadsheets. Oh, man. Mm. I want to hear about this. You got them busted. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Change some stuff up and, whoop, hey, this ain't so good, is it? No. Now it ain't so good anymore. Now you're not a hero anymore, are you? That's what some teams do to find out who the leak is in a building. Yep. They put some bad information out there and see if it makes its way to the public. Yeah. I'm um, watching this last play again. Man, hit a free throw and then foul with no timeouts left. They have no timeouts left. John's reliving foul. the Rockets lost to the Mavs, which he saw from – Close up, so yes. he, he must. It must have hurt a lot. Did it hurt worse when Jabari missed those free throws from when that? You're yes. right there holding uh, Cam Whitmore's hand on the bench. Yes, yes, it hurt more. Yes, it hurt more. John could have done Cat, Cam's twisties. He could because have, at halftime he could have done we, his hair. He was so close. If well, you at halftime that close, we opened it just up. Matters more. Yeah. It ho- well, it mattered more because at halftime we opened up a 14 parlay with the other three open. And the Rockets, with the Rockets and the other three open. And that's why it hurt even more. Oh, yeah, that okay? hurts. That hurts. Yeah, that All right, hurts. 801, we got to break. You know what else? Hand. You know what else hurts? What when else? you get your stuff stolen and you don't have Houston safe and lock on your side. Stains that's right the there. problem. You don't have a, a safe that, that you can trust. You don't have a safe that's going to keep your stuff safe. It's called, That's why it's called a safe. It keeps it safe, okay? You will... Certified, top-rated, quality, new, and used burglary and fire safes. American Security. It's the number one safe in the whole world. And they keep extensive inventory in their own local warehouse with the largest selection of American Security safes at the best price in town. It's not even arguable. Half of the safes, somewhere in that neighborhood, half the safes in the city are come from a Houston Safe and Lock or King Safe and Lock, which is the same company. It's at, at I-10 and work is the King Safe and Lock. Uh, Houston Safe and Lock is at Westheimer and the Beltway, both easy to get to. And you go there, you pick out your safe, and you get a better price for it. You just do. You just pay less because they have many more than anybody. Many more. There's many more safes there, and you're going to love it. You're going to love saving, and you're going to love keeping your stuff safe, be it at home or be it at work. Derek is going to help you out. He's the best. 713-522-5555, 713-522-5555, or 975safe.com.
You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. All right, welcome back. This Okay, so Renel Blanco, 44 outs before his first hit allowed, most by a pitcher to begin a season in, in at least the expansion era, 1961, since 1961. The prior record was 35 outs. Uh, Austin Cox, Josh Hader, who, by the way, is not is giving up a lot of hits now. He's not that same 2020 Josh Hader. Um, and Brad Klontz, they started the season with 35 outs before the first hit allowed. But let me ask you guys this question. If the first hit allowed is by a steroid freak, is it count? does it count as a hit or not? Uh, Yeah, we're baseball. We... We're baseball. We allowed steroid freaks to to, okay. to because play. Because Adolis well, Garcia. Well, you get caught, you get in trouble. But, yeah, no, it still counts. It still counts. Holy crap. Adolis Garcia, his, it just is free. It's cartoonish what he's looking like right I'd now. Way, I care way less about that than I do him grabbing his mom's stuff. I mean, that's. That's Araldus Chapman. No. Oh, wait, what? wait, wait. Oh, Araldus Garcia. When he got Adolis the hit. Oh, Gar- Adolis Adolis Garcia, Garcia and Oraldis Chapman are yeah, two I'm different reading people. the story now. Getting a hit. Okay, not allowing a hit. Uh, yeah, Adolis is clearly, I mean, allegedly. Uh, I'm alleging that it's, you alleged, so you alleged that he is a steroid freak. So I'm going I didn't off allege what the streets anything. are saying. I'm anything. going off what the streets are saying. And since the streets are saying that, yes, he does look like, Especially when I saw pictures of what he used to look like, it's very curious. It's, it's got a lot freakish. of Sammy Sosa to it. Like, hey, this looks way different. Or Mark yeah. McGuire. Hey, or Barry Bonds, or any of these guys. We've seen it before. Why would we not think that Garcia is the same way? But Garcia will ruin If you are an Astro, he will ruin you. I mean, this has clearly become one of my – I despise seeing him come up to the plate. Yeah. No, he yeah, and and he even ruin he, he ruins everything. He even ruined Renel Blanco's no hit streak. Yep, I mean for f sake, and and that was going to be he that was going to be his last batter. Got off um, on Hunter Brown the other day. He, like Garcia is a nemesis. Yeah, he he was he, Renel Blanco wasn't nearly as efficient in the, the, yesterday's game as he was um, in his no hitter, but he still was he's still good, still so good. He only got gave up one hit. But he was a little bit wild, a little out of control. But, um, but man, it's good to see. It is good to see Renel Blanco stepping up like this. And with JV coming back, 65 pitches now. We'll find out what the schedule is for JV when he comes back. Some decisions to be made. Either you go to a six-man rotation or somebody's got to go. Did you see JV and that's somebody. yesterday? Did you Pardon see me? that performance? J- JV's, yeah, seven runs. Ooh, it was bad. I talked to somebody who was there, and they said it was gross. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know what he was working on. Is he just throwing, you know, we, we don't well, know. I imagine you're trying to get people out. I don't know. He might not have been. He might well, have been you know what? To... Whatever he was working on was not good. Right. Well, right. I mean, I mean you'd I... like for, if you're working on it, you'd like to, I mean, what working on never really means is I'm going to let you hit this hard. That's not what you work on. No, I'm trying to get my, my curveball down. I'm trying to find, you know, and I don't care about getting you out. I'm just trying to, you know. I'm just trying to get my pitches the way I, I want to throw them. I hope that's what happened. Right. I hope don't he know. wasn't trying to get anybody out. JV doesn't need to get minor league outs. You know, he's got to get he's got to get ready for the major league season. So I I don't know. We don't know. We and we'd have to hear from him on you know and whether or not. Well, but you he still didn't want have... to throw good pitches, John. Yeah, you do. You do. I but mean, you're if you're not throw... getting guys out, you're not throwing good pitches. No, it, you can also throw very hittable pitches, but you're just trying to work on stuff. That's all. That's not true. You're not trying to get. I mean, well, if now this isn't spring training. This well, is, yes, him it is trying to get. Yes, back it is his spring training. It's yeah, exactly what it is. But John, it's, he's trying to get. He's trying to throw pitches that you can't hit too. Even if you throw any pitch, you that's like shooting. That's like saying a shooter who's just working on stuff and he doesn't care if the ball goes in the net. No, no it's not. Shooting, it's not. It's not even close to the same thing, Lance. Why? It's not even. There are plenty of pitchers in while they're getting ready for the season are trying to work on know, certain pitches, like, not trying to get guys out. But you're acting like they're mutually exclusive. They're not. You can work on stuff and try to make guys swing and miss. Well, yeah, obviously. But you could. are you sure that in spring training or when you're getting ready for a season that you're going to throw the okay. same pitch sequences? Okay, are you sure that he wasn't trying to get that he I wasn't trying to I have no idea. I said well, he might have. I, 
I, I said he might have been. He might have been. I don't know. You don't know. We might don't know. Might have been a bad outing. It might have been. It might have been. Yeah, but uh, but it also could have been he's working on stuff. That's all. I don't I don't care what he did at the minor league level. If you want to know, and he I'm sure he doesn't either. You know, what I doesn't? like former Cy Young award winners who get people out in the minor leagues. <laughs> I I like that. That's what you like. I in like your... that. I want my former Cy Young award winners to get guys out on the AAA level. Yeah. I don't think that's asking too much. Even if you're working on things, I prefer you don't get shelled. Like you want to, you want to work on things, give a couple hits. I get it, but let's not have the equivalent of the Savannah Bananas right. rake you around the yard. What I don't want mo- Clark Trudeau and right. Barry Derner. You know take what you is into more the like? It's not at all like a shooter shooting baskets. What it is more like is like a preseason NFL game where you don't game plan. Where you just go out there and you run some plays. But that's you what want you, that's execution. What it's more like. You always want execution, though. Yes, that's you always want execution. That's the only thing I'm execution. saying is you want to execute, and clearly he didn't execute or he wouldn't have gotten raked. you got to execute. And so that's all. It's one performance, but he's also an older pitcher who had an arm issue that popped up before a season even started, and the Astros stink right now. It's all a concern for me. It's all I know we're still early. But there are the Hunter Brown thing hasn't cleaned itself up. There are some things I like with the batting with the lineup, though. I will admit there's some things I, I like that Jeremy Pena seems to be showing up again. Um, yes, that's the, nice. I don't like that the only runs they can that they score are they they scored in one inning again. I know, you know, one three run homer. Show us some and, crooked, and that's it, and yeah, they shut us down. Other than that, it's 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 get, becoming alarming. This this. This uh, this lineup is so much better than it is showing. I mean, they have zero clutch hitting. It is it's amazing how brutal they are right now. But it is early, and this is still the greatest team that the Astros will ever have. But man, they just suck right now. If you want to know the truth, they got the win yesterday thanks to Ronel Blanco once again, and thanks to one three run homer. Uh, but Josh Hader didn't look good. Uh, uh, Jose Abreu is. Absolutely, the worst hitter in baseball. Maybe worse than Anthony Rendon. Bagwell Lytics sucks. Bagwell Lytics really, really have hurt this team. Montero did come in and throw a nice inning, got a strikeout, um, and didn't give up a hit. So that was that was nice. That Bagwell Lytics worked. The Jose Abreu at Bagwell Lytics not working, not working at all. It is awful. And the only other option that you have is John Singleton. What a disaster first base is right now. It has got to be the weakest hitting first base in all of baseball. I don't even. I don't think that's even arguable. It's got to be the weakest hitting, and that that's and maybe of any position. Remember, uh, Maldonado was he captured that it, the worst hitting position in all of baseball. Maldonado owned it. And it now now Jose Abreu and John Singleton got it. Congratulations, guys. It's got to be the worst. It has to be. I don't know that it could possibly be worse. Certainly not in, not not at first base, but maybe in all of in any position, it might be the worst. So uh, that's 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 an awesome way to start the, that season right there. I thought Jose Abreu had turned a corner in the in the postseason. Apparently not. That time off the bat, his back must be hurting again because man, he just sucks. Or maybe he's an old player who's on the decline, and we need to start remembering that old players get bad. That's what yep. happens for everybody. It's just a matter of when it happens. And he was showing decline numbers at, with the White Sox despite having won. You know, the Astros had a lot of things come together for them in the last, in the last couple weeks. We, are, we, are, we were this close to not making the playoffs. Honestly, this team is looking more like the team that maybe shouldn't have made the playoffs last year as opposed to the team that had a lot of things come together and got them to another ALCS. And Abreu's year, for the most part, Blue yet last year. Wasn't a good year last year. You know, we can hang on to what he was very best at when he was at his best. But the fact is, so far, Abreu is not good in two years. Well, not two years. One year and just the beginning of the second year, it ain't looking great. And he's an older player. This could just be the – this could be toward, you know, the trail in for him. I, I don't know how – I don't know if he gets a new con- – he's a two-year guy, right? This is the last year with the Astros. So I don't know that anyone's going to be beating the door down for 
for Abreu. It's going to be a lot like Yuli, I think, where all of a sudden you just think, man, when they lose it, they lose it. Yeah, yeah. I don't. He's 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 lost it. It is awful. It is hard to watch him. Hard to watch him at the plate. And you know what, Joe? You got to move him down in the lineup. That's all. He's got to be eighth. He cannot be coming up right after Yiner. He just can't. Move Chaz up, move move Pena up, and move him down because that's where he belongs. He belongs to be – but you don't want him clogging the bases at nine either. So keep keep move him down. He's got a bad eighth from now on because you just can't have that dude up with, uh, with good hitters on base in front of him. You just can't. Uh, one thing you can do is get a broker for your mortgage. Brokers are better, more experienced, and better and a better deal. 75% of the public is doing it wrong. Don't do it wrong. If you were buying a house or you're in the market to buy a house, call Kent because Kent at Dream Rate, at Dream Rate is the ultimate mortgage hookup. Dude is going to work it harder than any of these other these other companies that put their names on bowl games. They, they, that's just volume. They're just trying to get through them. Listen, he's got all of the all of the all of the different loans that you want. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA, LTV, PM. He can do it all. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know. You don't know anything about this. I know I spent more because I didn't have Kent Jones on my side. I didn't use Kent when I bought my house. I know I spent more than I had to. He's saving people money all the time. So look, you're looking for the best way to get that mortgage, get the ultimate mortgage hookup. Kent at Dream Rate Mortgage, 713-520-5626. That's 713-520-LOAN or go to 975loans.com. It's time to take the game to the next level. If you are watching sports, you should be with my friends over at Underdog Fantasy. I mean, that goes for the tournament tonight. It goes for uh, basketball and the playoffs. It goes for, obviously, frankly, UFC, golf, women's basketball, where, you know, you could have, Cordosa, you could have gone higher on her rebound total and and had a winner there. You could have gone lower on Caitlin Clark's three-pointers and, and had a winner there. This is the thing. You pick between two and five players on the pick em part of the uh, Underdog Fantasy app, and on that pick em, you pick between two and five, and then what you'll find is there's also some boosters. If you see the little chili peppers there, that means there's going to be a, a booster there if you win that one, and it helps to multiply your wins. So you can win up to 100 times your original play, and i got to mention, 
this is all legal here in the state of Texas, and it's real money. There's nothing that, that you can't do here, and it makes it so much more fun to play along with your sports, including Major League Baseball, where you're watching and you're playing through the Pick'em Challenge that they have. You also have insurance features so that you, on that flex, uh, allows you to pick three out of four and still win, pick four out of five and still win. This is a great opportunity for you to start having even more fun while watching your sports. Use promo code Lance, and they're going to double your first deposit by uh, up to $100. That's promo code Lance. You must be 18 or older or president of the state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms and conditions apply. If you feel like you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Go to nspgambling.org. You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. <laughs> hey, uh, Luca can talk now. Luca can talk during the game. And, uh, I mean, he's always – he complains about everything to the refs. It's just sickening. Every, every, every shot he's complaining to the refs. He also had something for Ime. As he was going down the court, and Ime was asked by uh, Tim McMahon, you know, what did he say to you? And, and Ime said, I don't know. I don't speak Slovenian. So I don't know what he said. <laughs> <laughs> but Ime also talked about, what did you think about the Amen Thompson ejection? Uh, he got, uh, I mean, he got a pretty good shove in there. That was pretty good. And then, it was listen, in did the you neck see area? Like, I wasn't shocked with it. You know, the Rockets might be getting a little bit of a reputation. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you know what? That's good. But he, you, did you see on the other end of the court? He he also he gave him a shot on the other end too. He, he it was it was both ends of the so floor. So then, what did he do to deserve it? That's what I need. I need context, as Twitter yeah. would say. I need more. Are you context. victim blaming? Yeah. I need more context. Uh, it might. Hey, listen, Thompson Ahmed might have been the victim here. What right? did he say? Was there a and racial it, slur? Did he say something oh, about his mom? Oh, did Mac, somebody get punched in the you, face? Are you going after one of your own, Maxie Kleber? Saying did somebody grab? I'm just. I'm just. Uh, Twitter has taught me a lot of things. You just have to make the assume that the absolute worst thing happened, and that everything is justified. Well, so I'm going to well, say <clears throat> until I get more context on this. Amen Thompson should have stayed if, in the game. Yeah, if your guy is the one who's been punished, obviously he wouldn't have done it without something egregious happening to him. So what obviously. did Maxi Kleber say to him? Yeah, that, I don't, do we know? We don't know. Do we, we know, know what he said? I don't but know. I, did he say something about his mom? Did he grab him in the junk? Did he yeah. try to do the LSU fan? I don't I don't know. What did he happened? say something like, it's Sunday? I bet they are saying amen once you're off the floor. I don't know. What, what did he say, right? Yeah. What did he yeah. say? What stupid thing did Maxi Kleber say to Amen Thompson? Yeah. I mean, no, Amen doesn't. Have you seen him do that before? Somebody obviously did something to make him mad. Well, man. no, I actually I have. He, 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 amen ain't taking nothing off nobody. Wait, that's amen. what I'm saying. He won't take anything off you, but he doesn't start it, but, but he'll finish it. Yeah, he does finish he'll it. Finish that's it. for sure. Well, here's Eme talking about. Uh, um, and getting he he thinks okay he thinks LeBron is soft he thinks the league is soft too. Nowadays, anything's a flagrant too. Um, you know that might have been a n normal technical uh, ten years ago, but you know they get in the bumping match and if he's grabbed and gets the guy off him, well, um, you know like I said, it's a little soft nowadays. So they're gonna you got to understand that and know how they're gonna call it. So soft ass I, league. He, this is a soft ass league. <laughs> I'm telling you, there'd be so many football coaches who love Ime Odoka. Mm -hmm. He's just got that same energy. Uh, this league. Is, He's great. This he is great. So soft. Uh, and his team played played tough all right up until the end. I don't know. I don't agree with him not following, but that's you know what they're eliminated. So many, Does so many coaches. Can you, man? What an unbelievable knockout blow! Just. It took one game, and the Rockets just fell completely apart. Just yeah. fell apart. I mean, they were on the verge. They were .5 at one point behind the Warriors. Then there was the Warriors come out to play, and we were all excited, and then bang, eliminated from the playoffs. I mean, just slaughtered. Well, then the, the schedule got, got them, too. Yeah, no, I'm, hey. Listen, yeah. there were some favorable games in that schedule. I was yes. pointing that out, and it was always, what about the Cavaliers? 
What about the Cleveland game? Well, that was a good game. I, that's, that was a yeah. good game. Yeah. Well, I'm not, uh, you're, yeah, I mean, I'm not taking anything away from our team when they went on that run. Yeah. 11 you on the road. You got to beat teams. They weren't beating. They won games on the road. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you get to hear Don Staley's post game? If you did not hear what Don Staley said post game, there's a couple things. We'll play both of them. One of them is she was very, very at the end of everything. She came back and wanted the microphone again from Holly Rowe, and she was very complimentary of not only Iowa but especially Kate and Caitlin Clark. I want you to hear that. But her post game, her original post game commentary, is something that uh, was well. Let's just say Jesus is having quite a moment right now in the world of sports with post game thank yous from. We see it a lot with C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson. We saw it with Offensive Defense Rookie of the Year. But somebody put together a video with Don Staley that I think you're going to want to hear, John. It's 826. When we come back, we will play. Uh, well, actually, that. we should play it now because we got ship talk on the other side. Oh, we so. got ship talk. Okay, let's play it now. Here's Don Staley, John. It's been edited a little bit, although her words have not been edited. But Don Staley went to church on people yesterday. I got to give honor to the most high God for allowing us to be back at the same place in which we had sad tears. And I just want you to know that the God I serve, the God I serve, when he closes a door, he opens up a door that is, that's given you unimaginable success. This is uncommon favor. That's how you know you're at a black church, John. You, hear you, that didn't, organ? That. you didn't hear that John, organ you didn't at hear that, that church, that. did you? Uh, that's, yes, they did have an organ, though. Did it sound yes, like absolutely. that? Yeah. It didn't sound like that, All right, though. Then, no. How then you... good was that splice <laughs> the added job that people <laughs> did put the church organ in their comment? And those were unedited. That's what she said after. Yeah. Man. We just added a track underneath. That's all. John, that you is... got to love that, John. You gotta... That is sweet. Boy, she Jesus also was. a big post game. He's big in the post games these days. Yep. He's big. He is. God is having a great post game right now. Uh he, she also did have some really nice things to say about uh, Caitlin Clark, which was nice. See, John, I know you had you had a side. I don't know about in this game, but you had a side in the the Iowa LSU game. If you want God to be praised, pick the Southern Black women to win because that's how it goes. Don Staley will pray. Would, would Caitlin Clark have done that, John? Would you have gotten that from Caitlin Clark? Yeah. Would she no, have but, pr- praised? Well, yeah. apparently you didn't get that from Kim Mulkey either. Oh, okay. Kim's a different breed Kim altogether. Kim Mulkey's right. a bona fide yeah. hater. She's no. a hater of everything. She's gonna take her. She's gonna take her shots. Now, before- I'm gonna tell you this right now. <laughs> Step up. I, I, I wish she would do that. To somebody her own, Falujay Johnson. If you're gonna do that, Cordosa, I bet she don't do it to Angel Reese. She'll catch a smooth ass kicking. Four people. You saw, we'll, we'll jump up on the, from out of the stands on your ass, Cordosa. Like, man, Kim Mulkey, you got to call Or otherwise down. known on this show, the big Brazilian. The big Brazilian. The big Brazilian. By the way, <laughs> Coach Reese said, I don't like women whose feet hang off the bed and who have bigger shoes than me. That's, hey, now that's something to live by. That's a big woman. That is a big woman. We breaking it here. Um, Ship Talk is next on here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Del, Del has compiled what happened over the weekend with some Ship Talk. That'll happen next. Right now, though, Artisan Grange is happening. Right now, the Canstead and the Dew Blend. The Canstead and the Dew Blend are the way that you get out of the dip that you're dipping right now. You still get that sensation. You want that between your cheek and gum. You want that feeling. You want that sensation. But you don't want the nicotine. You don't want the tobacco. You just don't need that in there. You know what? It's not It's not natural, and it's causing a lot of problems health-wise for a lot of people. So stop already. If you're looking to stop that dirty, filthy, dirty, filthy habit of yours, uh, all you need to do 
is go to 975dip.com, 975dip.com. It's cleaner, hemp in a pouch made of hemp with CBD oil. CBD American Shaman says we love it so much, we're carrying it. It's happening right now. You need to get out of that dip and get into this one, 975dip.com. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit, H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. When you think of truck season, I want you to go to Gulf Coast Chevy Buick GMC. They're out in Angleton, great people, great prices, great selection, a lot of great stuff, but uh, it starts online for many of us. I love to go to the internet to see what's going on with the company. I don't care if it's a restaurant. I want to go look at the menu. Same thing with car buying. I want to I want to see the menu. I want to see what you have. Um, I understand that I'm going to negotiate my own price, but at Gulf Coast Chevy, they don't really mess around too much with you. They just want you to get the best price right up front because they want you to be happy with the car buying experience. That means doing more for you and trade-in value. It means going that extra mile to find you the discounts. It means 2.9% APR financing for 72 months on the new, uh, when you finance through GM Financial, on all 23 and all 24 Chevy Silverado 1500 models. And Gulf Coast Chevy is also going to pump in the generous discounts to go with that awesome rate. So get the rate that you want. Get the prices you're looking for, whether it's a lease or a purchase. Today is your day. Gulf Coast Coast Chevy in Angleton. Start your car buying experience at LanceZCars.com. Chevy, together, let's drive. You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. All right, welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Time for Dell to inform us uh, inform us who had the shippiest talk this week. Uh, who was out there slinging ship, Del? Well, we're going to s- s- go out to Los Angeles. Well, Anaheim, really. Wayne Redonzo. Radonzo is the Angels play-by-play man. And why are we paying attention to the Angels? Well, at one point, they had a rookie on a hot streak setting records, Nolan Shanoel. He was just out of college, and he he was a guy at least making the Angels a little bit interesting with, with his rookie hit streak until Major League Baseball turned a hit an, into an error, and, and the Angels broadcast was not thrilled. And you, you might imagine why. Uh, and he rips Major League Baseball up and down. So we'll start with. Oh, a fiasco in Oakland. You have this, these ridiculous looking jerseys. You have the MLBPA challenging the league about the pitch clock today. 
because of constant pitcher injuries and yet well, not to mention your global superstar is embroiled in a betting scandal. But on top of all of that you have a young player trying to make a name for himself who has come up and reached base safely in every single game that he has played and the league allows this scoring change to go on to end his streak kill this story a positive story that's happening in Major League Baseball it is an absurdity. Yeah I mean when you think about all the positivity from all over the social media world how it impressed everybody to start your career he was this in college last year he was still playing college baseball at this point and then they have that taken away on a base hit it was a base hit it was a clear hit it wasn't even really a borderline call it was a clear base hit you know, like I said in the pregame show the NBA doesn't take an assist away from LeBron James and he's got a triple double and he's trying to add on that on that record it just it just doesn't happen do you know the Nolan Shanowell thing was even going on? I know we don't know. No. Well, Nolan Shanowell. He's a rookie. Who's that? Well, exactly. But apparently he was lighting up social media because of his his uh, reaching base safely streak until Major League Baseball retroactively took it away. And then the Angels broadcast, you know, talked about everything going on. He was lighting on. social media up. I saw his name trending every day. Did you? No, I he, saw I, this is the first I've ever heard of this dude. Well, ever. I don't think he's re- is he a real person? Yes, he okay. is. Mm. Well, apparently it didn't reach you guys, but baseball ablaze with Nolan Shanoa until baseball took away. Here's a we're gonna stick with baseball. Here's noted baseball philosopher Ozzie Guillen on why guys are getting injured more. It seems like the same way. You mean like uh, running the bases? Running the bases. Everything is about legs. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, like I always say, that uh, John Krug say, fat never pull. You can't pull fat. Nope. All those eat right. Be careful what you eat. No it's cheeseburger. Here's the food. Nah, 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 man. I remember those guys go here drinking two, six, seven, twelve Budweiser. Give me three hamburger and go get it, boys. Didn't they, go on the injured list. And they play all year long. Yeah, so I don't know. It's uh, it's very confusing. God, I mean, I cannot listen to that and not hear Lima. That sounds exactly like something Jose Lima would have said. And then you have three hamburger, six ball, ball wiser, hamburger, a fat doll pool. What? I could have totally heard Lima saying all of that. Oh, yeah. Lima would have all said All of that. that. That's exactly. unbelievable. Yeah. You know. Well, it was because of uh, Robert. He he got hurt again for the White Sox. He and just stop running around stop trying to bases. be in shape. Yeah, stop, stop trying to stop drink a bunch of water, eat lean, eat clean, yeah. blah blah I mean, blah. I can tell you this right now: I am not going to pull anything right now, okay? Because I've got my Coors Lights, not Budweiser. I got my Coors Lights, not, Bad- not Modelo. No, not not crappy Modelo. None of that. Hmm. I got my Coors Lights, and I'm not pulling a thing, okay? That's, that's all there is to okay. it. Okay. <laughs> let's move on. to. We talked about Ime and the way he coaches. Let's let's hear a story about his mentor, DeJounte Murray. Uh, you might have missed it because it's Hawks basketball. He put up 44 points in the game. Of course, he took 44 shots because why wouldn't he? Uh, this is him talking about Pop, who called him after that game. All right. It was – no bullshit from day one, like from day one. Like he just texted me the other day, like yeah. you took 44 f- shots <laughs> past the f- ball. Like, you know, like that's our relationship yeah. though. Yeah. Like, you know, like yeah. I love that dude to death, man. Like he he was a father. So for wondering where he may got it from, <laughs> it's from that guy. <laughs> you took 44 bleeping shots past the ball. <laughs> <laughs> to get 44 points, by the way, so Pop had a point. Now, he, they went on to win the game against, I don't know, was it the Celtics, I think, but Pop had a point. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the WNBA and, and Caitlin Clark's transition. Where, well, here's Diana Taurasi, who had a show, a, like a side broadcast during the game with Sue Bird, discussing, but this is her first on Scott Van Pelt, and then on her show talking about who she would take, Paige Beckers or Caitlin Clark. Camilla's coming. Caitlin's coming. There's more than just that that are coming. What will the league have in store for them when they get there? Look, SVP, um, (laughs) reality is coming. 
Okay. Uh, you know, there's there's <laughs> levels to this thing, and that's just life. We all went through it. Of course. Um, and you see it on the NBA side, and you're going to see it on this side, where, you know, they, you look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Not saying that it's not going to translate, because when you're great at what you do, you're just going to get better. But there is going to be a transition period where you're going to have to give yourself some grace as a rookie. And, uh, you know, it might take a little bit longer for some people. I'm taking Paige. Next question. So you had the number one pick this year. You would take Paige over Caitlin. Absolutely. I like that energy. That was Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi at the end. And Diana, she was very, as you might imagine. Where did they go to school? Uh, UConn, hmm. oddly enough. Oh. Oddly hmm. enough, they're taking Paige Beckers. I'm taking Paige. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's crazy, though, if you want to know the truth. Paige I mean, Beckers? Eh, except Paige. Sue is a scorer. And yeah, I mean, you can't do it because of the PR. You, 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 I mean, just the oh, PR say itself. Oh, Beckers. Yeah, although Don Staley said she'd be the first. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Yeah, maybe the PR. But, I mean, the answer is obviously easy when it's the point guard. Beckers kind of disappeared in their game. In the second half, she was not a factor. Yeah, they got out there a little bit. Yeah. Um, final thing is furthering my agenda. Merrill Hodge noted for evaluating quarterbacks, getting some right, and they go viral. The ones he gets wrong don't go as viral. Well, he was on a podcast with Henry Lake or a radio show with Henry Lake, and he discussed my favorite quarterback, Drake May. Drake May will get you fired. Drake May is the kind of player gets you fired, um, and especially you draft him in the top five. You know, top three, you know, he's going to get you fired. And for, let's use the process and accuracy, I am not seeing, I cannot, Malik Willis might be the only guy I could think of that is as erratic um, as Drake May. Um, it is, I watched, I studied him for two years, and I am telling you, I have yet to find, actually, I would well, say probably his best game. I watched every one of his games last year. It's probably the pit game. And that was an average football game. His last game, the NC State game, was the most embarrassing display I'd ever seen from a guy who's supposed to be okay. an elite franchise oh. quarterback. Oh. Um, what? Come on. What? Come on. Merrill's overdue. This is the most embarrassing he was, display. He was he bad was against a, NC He was bad against he NC was, State. He was, but Merrill's – look, I'm with him that there's a lot of uh, – we're all on that side, but Merrill's really – I think he knows that if he puts the screws to guys and it and he's and he hits, I think he likes the fact that his old stuff came up and went viral. That was a little was that not a little much, John, to like he was an embarrassment. The most embarrassing. I mean, he was in a, the most embarrassment. I've never been so embarrassed for a person in my life. What a disgrace <laughs> to football and a disgrace he to that said uniform. He's as erratic as Malik Willis. You are dis- I mean, that's if you want to talk about disrespectful. That's a lot of talk right there. No, Malik no, was no, no, really. No. You insulted him a little bit. You got a little out of order yourself. I had to tell people that Malik actually had bad tape, and that was not like, wait, what? I'm like, I mean, his tape is actually bad. I know that I'm using a projection grade, so I'm higher on him than his tape is on my grade. But um, also, I just didn't feel like catching a bunch of heat from people. I'm like, why, why do you have Malik Willis there? Look at Lance. This is Lance's well, evaluation. He's afraid of the smoke, so he gets yeah. better grades than he should. Yeah, yep. I don't want to be yep. called a racist and lose my job. One guy already got <laughs> – the guy I took over for got called that for comments he made about RG3 and uh, um, Cam – Nolan Cam Naraki, Newton. Yeah. Was- but anyway, uh, and he was just saying a person – he was trying to write it like a real NFL scout. You can't do the Public's not ready for all the other stuff. And well, frankly, it doesn't need to be out there right. in the public anymore. Well, well, well uh, Malik Neighbors got slandered. Let's talk about that on the other side, right here on ESPN 97.5 and by 92. Wendy? By Wendy? Not by, no. <laughs> by not Wendy. by Wendy. fan, okay. No, but, but it was by one of your people right, being reckless again. Germans? Uh, yeah, Mac- it might have been a schnitzel. Maxie I don't know. Maxie Kleber said something Maxie, about Malik Neighbors? <laughs> Maxie said something? <laughs> he he might have. He might Did have. Dirk Nowitzki go off on him? We will I'm hear I'm American. A... I'm not German. I don't even speak once. But I could speak. I think I could go to Italy. You don't speak any German? Well, No, I don't speak any. I knew. I knew are as, soon sure? as, are as soon we... as you asked that question, Are you I sure knew. you don't speak those... German? This is pretty clear. <laughs> Those words did not mean <laughs> It sounds German because I'm good at doing imitations and oh, silliness. You speak fluent. But, 
That's <laughs> fluent, fluent German to us. I'm, you know what? You need to speak now. What? Air conditioning. Vanderford. Air conditioning. I'm fluent in Vanderford air conditioning. I had them come out and give me the, uh, the checkup that they do. This is pretty much essential for people who are going to get into the summer months. They come out and do a full-scale inspection. They take pictures of everything that you need to see. They clean out your line, which I had three years of not having my emergency drain cleaned out. Oh, my gosh. The stuff that came out of there, holy crap, was I close to having a backup that could have turned into water all upstairs in my attic that would have come through the roof and been a big pain in the butt. Uh, But that was one of the things. There was something that had come loose uh, from the actual unit itself. They showed it to me because they unscrewed it, looked at all the different parts of the unit. They showed where they they simply put a bracket in and, uh, and, and, and... the screwdriver and put that back in place the way I was supposed to do. They do a heat load on every single one of your rooms to make sure that your room is cooling properly. They crank the AC down low and make sure it's working. And if it's working great, that's a great peace of mind for you. If there's something that needs to be fixed and needs to be uh, improved, they can do that for you at a very reasonable price. And if it's getting time that you need a new air conditioner, then they're going to find the air conditioner that is going to work for your home and what you need cooling. They're not going to get a unit that's too big, and they're not going to get one that won't cool you properly that's too small. They get a unit that is just right in there, and they have 0% financing to help you make that decision. Listen, there's never any additional charges on emergency work or things like that. They understand you got to be cool. Vanderford is a company you can trust, and they will get out to your home same day within 24 hours. Make sure that you have this number ready. 281-557-COOL. That's 281-557-COOL or go to VanderfordAir.com. Amongst all the other things that sucks about being in Dallas is that I don't have my free rain coffee in the morning. I want my free rain coffee. Okay, my free rain coffee is the best coffee that I've ever had. Born in San Angelo, Texas, roastery. The roastery has been fueling folks to get up and get after it for over twenty-five years. That's right, Rip. Yep, Cole Hauser. He's the guy who started this thing up. And I'm telling you, he, he it's it's a it's a great product. If you haven't tried it yet, Dream Coffee Work Repeat. Get up and get after it. They and they love they love country. They love community, military veterans, first responders, nurses, teachers. That's what they're all about. Cole Hauser drinks it. You should drink it too. I drink it. I love it. If you're looking for a great different coffee, fuller, just cleaner, everything about it. Go to 975coffee.com. Get put in, in promo code ESPN20 for 20% off. 975coffee.com, promo code ESPN20.
You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. Okay, so Tony Pauline catching it. He's catching it from John, uh, Jordan Schultz right now. Do you know Do you know either of these guys, Lance? Yeah, I've known Tony for a long time. He's actually been on our show before. You wouldn't remember it, but Tony talks the way you would – Listen, I'm telling uh, Tony is a very New Jersey guy. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, when you hear him talk, he's Jersey, and then he and Jordan Schultz are getting into it, you said? Well, here's what uh, Tony Pauline said about Malik Neighbors. Okay. He says he has had to answer. He's There are off-the-field questions about Malik Neighbors. The LSU junior, quote-unquote, is known as a high-maintenance prospect who may struggle in a big city. So there are off-the-field questions Neighbors has had to answer during the draft process. Teams must feel comfortable with those answers if they're going to invest in an early draft pick and millions of dollars in his services. Have you? Are you getting any sense of this? Are you? Are you having off-the-field issues for Malik Neighbors? Um, I've heard that he's low high maintenance. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I don't know about the big. I don't know what the big city stuff. I don't know about all that, but he's highly, highly competitive. Much more competitive than his teammate, Brian Thomas Jr. Um, Plays with a chip on his shoulder. Is a little, um, you know, he's a wide receiver. So he's got he's got some of the some of the potential diva. He's once again, his whole thing has been he's just pissed off that Marvin Harrison Jr. is just considered this clear number one, and he is his entire thing has been about wanting to show that he's better than Marvin Harrison. So I love that competitiveness. I, there, you know, there's some stuff out there that he's a little extra. Um, well, but I, don't, also, I haven't heard anyone say it would keep them from drafting him. He was also arrested for carrying a gun on Bourbon Street last year. Okay. Well, yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so I mean, there's that. You know, I, a- I'm going to tell you it doesn't super shock me, but because um, that's just you know, it's just where we are. So why would that be any different for a? For a player to have one in, in Bourbon Street, it's a little concerning because if something goes down, you know, who's to say? That's the kind of thing where it's easy for people to get a little frisky on Bourbon Street. People have drinks, and are you going to pull a gun out and do something terrible? Like, yeah, it, it, that's a concern. That's a concern. So, so Tavondre Sweat also got a DWI arrest, yeah. okay, in Austin. And here was a quote by a preeminent draft expert. I would be surprised if he is still on their board, speaking of the Texans. I mean, never say never, but I'm not sure the Texans want to disrupt momentum with a player they may not be able to trust. That is just a guess. Do you agree with that statement or disagree with that statement? I agree with that statement. I, As a matter of fact, I agree with everything having to do with that statement. Okay, okay. Um, because you're the one that wrote it, and you're getting, you are getting aggregated, Dell. Is he's getting aggregated? Yeah, and you know because aggregate aggregation sites or people who use quotes that don't belong to them just tend to put their own spin on it. It's been classified as a rumor that yeah. the Texans won't draft Tavondre Sweat because of Lance's speculation about it. Lance, are you reporting that the Texans won't draft Tavondre Sweat? No. As I said, as you read there, my guess is he won't be off the board. My guess is but that's just a guess. There's a chance it's that he'll be a, a guess. Yeah, and I said that. Correct. In the, in you the did say thing. that, but according to the article, rumor, Houston Texans won't draft. Yeah, Devondre see, that's Sweat. what's so and, – and people act like new. there's nothing wrong. Look, there's a lot of new media stuff that's, that's great, but the fact that there's no safeguards or checks in here, I they will tag that to get engagement. They'll say that's the rumor. There's no rumor. I said in my tweet, that's my guess. I don't know anything. That's that's my guess. And that's what it is. I don't A, I already thought that that's not the body type for uh I, I don't think he's a body type player that D'Amico's gonna love. There's you know, if you really want to know the truth, Tavondre Sweat missed time at his workout facility. He when he was supposed to be getting ready for the, you know, for the senior bowl and all that stuff, he weighed way over his three sixty six that he had weighed. It was a big issue, big concern. He wouldn't weigh um, whenever he was at the Senior Bowl. Then he got his weight down down to 366. I give him credit, kept it at 365 for his pro day. That's still heavier than it needs to be. A lot of a lot of extra body fat on there. 
but he gets caught day drinking at 2, 2 p.m. on a Sunday where he has a DUI. I had somebody tell me, you know, somebody believes that we're going to hear something else. Somebody in Dallas tells me we're going to hear something else about maybe there was an accident that happened where somebody may have gotten hurt. We'll see. I have not seen that reported, but this is a guy in Dallas who is in the business, so we'll see what happens. But, you know, sweat is showing it's strike one. Okay, number one, I don't know if I want that body type. If It could be a D'Amico Ryan's thing. When you look at all the players that he's brought in, they're more lean mass guys. Number two, you have a guy who has had a hard time keeping his weight in check, supposedly played in the 370s during the season, according to scouts who went into Texas, and they got the updated weights. He's gained over 100 pounds since he's been at Texas, which is, you know, it's one thing for a 220-pound tight end to become a 320-pound left tackle. That's one thing. Sweats is not great weight. I love the player, but you see a pattern of poor decision-making or a lack of discipline. And now he's three months, three weeks before the draft, really two and a half weeks before the draft. Actually, and we're yeah, we're about two weeks from the draft. Tavondre Sweats out getting you know, day drunk on a Sunday driving around before the draft. The decision-making couldn't be worse. And every NFL team says, what will a player do with more time on his hands and more money in his pockets and more access? And I'm just telling you, the answer, why does D'Amico Ryan's, I, I think that he'd be a great help. If, if, if you could get Tavondre Sweat down to 350 and keep him, keep him locked in, dude, I would love to have him in the middle. But, why in the world would, is D'Amico Ryan's going to upset the apple cart? Why is he going to mess around with, with his team? I mean, he took a chance bringing in Joe Mixon. That's a little bit of a chance in and of itself. I don't think he's going to bring in a rookie who's never proven anything. I don't think he's going to do that and say, well, we've got some great momentum going. Let's take a chance. The old saying is the fourth round is where all sins are, are absolved. So NFL teams believe Tavondre Sweat's going to go in the fourth round now. That he he's not going in the second. He probably now won't go in the third. I, I think there's still a chance he can go in the third. But NFL teams that I, that I asked about yesterday, and there were three of them, they said fourth. Chance at third, more than likely fourth. Because fourth is where you say, okay, we'll start taking our chances now. That's that's the old, the the sins, of, the sins are absolved in the fourth. And I think that will happen with a talented player who's made a series of either bad mistakes or shown – poor decision-making or no discipline. It's just you don't draft those guys in the first two rounds. Absolutely. And 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 so, yeah, and I don't – yeah. The, the old Texans, Texans definitely wouldn't take them. This Texans, maybe. I don't know. Do you remember Lewis Nix? Yep. Yep. Ta-da. He didn't play it down. Lewis Nix. Camp. Lewis Nix, weight issues, had work ethic issues, there was nobody from this from this organization that was there when Lewis Nix was drafted, so I'm not expecting him to remember him. But Nick's been in the league. Nick remembers Lewis Nix, I promise you, when he was with the Patriots. Lewis Nix was a perfect example. Uh, you drafted him in the third round from Notre Dame, had much better talent, and he was a complete washout. Isaiah, um, you had Isaiah, what's his name? Wilson from the from Georgia Bulldogs. Real character red flag stuff going in, but actually didn't have any of these issues pre-draft. I don't. Did he ever play a game for the Tennessee Titans as a first rounder? Like you got to be careful if you don't fully believe in some of these guys. Now, you know, like I said, Tavondre Sweat's getting drafted, and I hope he ends up being a really good player. We'll see. Yeah, I and mean, hopefully he gets his life. You know, gets in. That's a that's a tough way to be coming. His agents here in sure. Houston, by the way. Sure is a bad way to go into the NFL draft, that's for sure. 713-780-3776, the number to hang out with us here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. If you want to come in, you are more than welcome. Right now, you got to talk about John Daspit. John Daspit and the Daspit Law Firm, how we doing? Is your is, Do you need someone to represent you or a family member, maybe a coworker? Have you been injured uh, on the roadway, injured at the workplace? Injured due to someone else's negligence at all. There's a wide variety of ways that this can happen. John Daspit is the guy who is going to represent you and fight for you. His law firm, there's there's 70 deep across the state, 10 different offices around the state of Texas. They are the biggest here in Houston. Uh, you know, his commercials are more NIL-based and more classy. He's not standing on top of trucks or 
shooting a flame torch in someone's face or whatever. He's just out. He doesn't do the gimmicky stuff. He just gives you great representation. Make sure that all the bills are covered, all the the physical therapy, the surgery, your pain and suffering means something to him. So he's going to make sure that he gets the most that he can for your pain and suffering because you didn't ask to be injured through someone else's negligence. And what's ha- what happens most of the time is the insurance companies will get to you quickly with a settlement and try to make you take less. And in some cases, unfortunately, it does not cover future uh, issues with surgeries that are going to be needed or physical therapy. So this is something that needs to take a little bit of time and let John Daspin and his law firm do their work. 713, call now. 713, call now or go to DaspinLaw.com. To talk about my peeps over at Chastain Ford. Love Chastain Ford. You will love Chastain Ford too. I, I'm telling you, if you have got to buy, if you're if in your you're in the market for a vehicle, there's only one place to go, and that's Chastain Ford. No add-ons, no markups. They're going to give you the best deal you can get. They still, if they have any of these 20, 2023 still on the lot, they're just. Get, I'm telling you, you're never going to find a better rate for a brand new vehicle. It's just that's how good they are right now. It's 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 fantastic with zero percent financing on the Bronco Sports with one point nine on the F one fifties with just it, it, they just got to go. They got to go, got to go. So you're going to get a great deal. But you always get a great deal at Chastain Ford. It doesn't matter if you're buying 2024, 23. If you're buying pre-owned vehicles, it just doesn't matter. You're going to get a deal from a square, a square deal from a dealership that you can trust. And you're going to join the Chastain family. You're going to love it. I have. I do. I'm telling you, it, if you're looking for a Ford car, truck, or any pre-owned vehicle, ChastainFord.com on 610 at Homestead, not Hempstead, five minutes from downtown, Chastain Ford. So, so uh, today's Eclipse Day. We haven't even mentioned the Eclipse. They were playing the stupid music at the game yesterday. Total Eclipse of the Heart and all kinds of corny stuff. My wife Here. left yesterday, <clears throat> stayed with her cousin. She's going to go in totality there near Kerrville and go see it live. She's very excited. Her, if, they're, if the clouds don't get them, which is apparently clouds are going to be an issue. And then she just drives right home. Just eclipsing, I guess. Well, yeah, apparently here in 
Yeah, well, in Houston, and all, I think all of Texas, it's really cloudy. So it's it's not the best place. I guess up in the north is better. Indianapolis uh, is supposed to be the best place. Indianapolis is the best? Yeah, totality, and they're going to have clear skies today. So it's supposed to be the best one. Um, you know, it's fine. I went to Nashville because that was totality for the last one. And it's, you know, that's it's, it's cool, I guess. It was, it's fine. I'll just rather play disc golf and write some players. I up. just would rather just, I'm just going to sit in, I don't know. Sit in just awful. You're going to be up there for a while, though, right? You're going to the Astros today. John was at Rockets last night. You go to Astros and hockey tonight? or is it No, two? Astros tonight and hockey uh, tomorrow. Okay. Are your hockey so, seats bad seats? They're going to they're gonna be all right. They're going to be all right. How about your um, Astros seats? They're going to, they're going to, you know, I'm going to be with the people. That's what I'm doing. That's which what people? I do. Yeah. Yeah. With Wait, people. I said which people? With the people. That's what I'm doing. Yes. I'm the man of the people. That's Can you right. reach out and touch one of the nets to keep you from getting a foul ball hit in your face? I would imagine I could. I will. Who are you some, with? There will be some nets. Who are you with? Me and uh, Justin. Oh, yeah. He balls. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't sit in bad seats. No, man, Justin just doesn't. He just doesn't. So but he's not paying for you. Well, he's getting no, 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 no. We're don't worry, don't worry about how that's <laughs> getting split. Up. I wasn't yeah. worried. Yeah, don't worry. Um, you buy yeah, beer. So it, it's what you buy beer. I do buy beer. I buy I buy the beer and the food and and we're gone. And what we're was going. your favorite Modelo moment of yesterday? It was people terrible. Are, there people was no are calling favorite. it a Modelo moment. Is what I had no had. I had no Modelo. It was awful. It's just awful, these parks that, you know, they're just all Budweiser products. It just sucks. I mean, at least it, it, me get a Miller Lite. If you can't, it, Coors Light is the, the only way to go, but at least get a Miller Lite. This Bud, Bud products are just awful. Why? I'm why sorry, are you fight? Why are you anti-Bud products? I'm just, I'm just not. I'm just not. You're I'm not, so ashamed that you got caught. I'm not. I didn't get caught it's anything. It's like the guy from it, Cheater ran up on you. And he's like, hi, what are you doing here? What? No, I swear, it's just my sister. What? I'm holding my sister's beer. <laughs> he talks about he talks about his favorite beer as if he would never drink anything else, almost as if it's like a significant other. Oh, sorry, this this place doesn't have my significant other, so I guess I got to drink something else. Just don't drink so, don't just don't drink it. Drink a soda. Why are you drinking oh, Modelo? Just no, go back to your not. hotel room and do your business there. You don't yeah. have to do something out in public yeah. with another woman. Yeah, just because no. just because something's not available doesn't mean you have to do something else. Yeah, no, you have to. I mean, I can't no. go to a game and not drink beer. That's go just to, ridiculous. You've you done to, that. You did that for like a month and a half. Don't you drink also? I know, and I hated it. Don't you drink hard liquor too? You, you drink bourbon sometimes. No, I can't. If I drink hard li- liquor, I mean, I can handle beer all look day. Look at the all picture day. of you. You look like you were... You I was like I was blinking at the time. I was blinking at the time, and it's and that's the picture that they put out there. Okay, it, right, right when I'm about to blink, they they put it out there. Oh, look at him, he's over. I, I was fine. I was Excuse absolutely. Excuse me, fine. sir. Is that your normal beer of choice? No, I, I swear, I swear, I'm holding it for my friend. <laughs> no, I was holding it for me, and it sucked <clears throat> because they didn't have Coors Light at the stadium. It just blows. I saw you holding hands with Modelo. I wasn't holding in hands public. with Mattel. I wasn't. No. Listen. Coors I Light. know. If Coors Light was there, John's, trust me, we're breaking balls. John, if they served Coors Light, he would have had course. Coors Light. But, but, but it's it, more fun this way. But it wasn't there, so he decides, you know what, I'm going to. Yeah, you didn't have to drink. You could have had a Diet Coke, John. You could have well, had water. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. <laughs> Why is he drinking Modelo when he knows it's an inferior oh. product? That's just the dumbest thing you've like, hey, ever said. I love you my, two say some stupid I stuff. I love my girl, but she's not here, so <laughs> no, this five it's, over it's here. Totally I guess she'll do. This five do not, over here will do. Do not compare my girl to a Coors I'm, Light. I'm being hypothetical. I'm not even talking about you now. Whoa. I your got, girl to a Coors Light, you wouldn't? You've got a nine. You wouldn't want that, John? Hey, mm-hmm. I love my girl. She's a nine, but, you know, she's not here, and I'm out of town, so I'm going to take this five. No. Oh, man, that didn't make any sense. John. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. That's, that's, the five is the Modelo. It's just out of town. Know, some people would say it's not a five. That's a little rude. Well, if he doesn't any, like Modelo. If he's there's telling anyone us, from our, our Budweiser people listening, I don't know if they advertise He's with telling us that Modelo stinks, but he drank it because it was the only thing that was available. That's Never right, and probably the same way tonight because I don't think that stadium has. You don't have to drink Modelo 
Yeah. You, you have to drink, drink something. Up. Yeah, Del G. That's what the difference it, between it me and you. It doesn't have to be Modelo, though. You have to drink something. <laughs> Listen to him. You have to drink beer. That's all there is to it. That's all there is <laughs> Even to it. Even if it sucks. Even if it's, yes. Even Speaking if it sucks. of sucks, the Astros avoided the sweep yesterday. Renel Blanco was fantastic. As always, the most unhittable Astro going today. And, uh, oh, well, I mean, going today in a figurative sense. He's not going today. Who's, uh, Who's up? Are we all the way to uh, Fromber again? Yep. Yeah, we're back to Fromber. So you're going to go watch Fromber v. Who do they have going for them? Uh, Fromber tonight is going. I don't. I'm trying I'm to get a little split ski going. Fromber to get versus a split. Haney. Haney. Heaney. Heaney. Andrew and then, Haney. Yeah. In the uh, in the in the uh, this is the last game. We got to we got to split here. So are we, we getting? Split. Good Fromber, or are we back to, eh, can't get through five innings Fromber? Nah, good Fromber. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, the last outing was really good. Well, the yeah. one before that? Suck. Yeah. No, Fromber uh, and Dallas, easy. this is a match made in heaven. No, this will be an easy win. <laughs> easy. Okay. I guarantee it. Put a lock on it. Yeah. <laughs> a, a lock. Yep. It's a lock. Hmm. Fromber and the Houston Astros are going to destroy the Rangers, and that's locked. I'm glad they bounced back from that 17 to four I am ass kicking they got over the first Fromber two games. Fromber is him. He is not him. He's him sometimes. That means you're not him. Fromber is sometimes him. No, that can't be him. Then you can't be him sometimes. The whole point so, of him is that you're him all the time. Hunter well, Brown has been him at various, very small sample sizes of him. Well, I'll tell you this. The Astros don't win unless their starter throws a no hitter or a one hitter. Other and other than that, they kid they don't win the game. So far, that's accurate. That's it. That's I, it. This is. I, I know they don't keep this, but it's got to be the first time in history that it's happened where where you have allowed zero, one, and one hits in your first three wins. <laughs> that's it. The starters. I mean, what if what about this Astro season if Ronel Blanco didn't exist? Ooh, gross. Would, God, it's not enjoyable right it. now, but if he didn't exist, what would wow. what would we be dealing with right now? Uh, I mean, what if what if maybe two wins? I mean, eh, how about two bring, and eight, maybe? Apparently, Joey Loperfito is playing some first base. Yeah, bring him up. Bring uh, him up. Yeah, or uh, what's his name? Uh, Chase brought up Brandon Belt. Like it may be time. That's a yeah. thirty-five-year-old, but. You know, he's a veteran. You can replace oh, they, one 35-year-old with another. Sal- they're not adding that salary. Right. Please. Well, I mean, he can – you need somebody right now, and I, I assume he can still hit. I mean, his OPS was over 800 last year. But, but. you got somebody right now, Joey Loprofito. We'll bring him up. Let's see. He's cheaper. And, mm. and you know what? You send, you send – just get rid of – just cut uh, John Singleton. Gee, it's I wonder bad. why you want to – Joey Loprofito. I yeah. swear this guy, Joey, he is the best. He has the sweetest swing through the – I mean, the way he gets the barrel of the bat with consistency and consistency through the through the plate, unbelievable the plate discipline Joey Loperfito has. Oh, he's beautiful, the way Loperfito swings. Great. Hits it to all pox. He's, oh, he's beautiful. So nice. So nice with the swing. Way better than the – the other guy they got, the, the the Canadian or the Puerto Rican or whatever his name the is. The Canadian or the, Puerto Rican? The Lo Profito, that's the guy. Do generally do people generally get Canadian and Puerto Rican confused? <laughs> Not usually. Not the, usually. My character is dumb. <laughs> Pretty dumb. <laughs> no, I swear. The guy with the beard with the with the thing. I mean, get him out of there. He's Dominican, Cuban, whatever he is. He's gotta go. I do like that he doesn't button up his shirt though. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I mean I'd like it better if he had the horn. You know, if he had the horn, it'd be beautiful. That would be beautiful. No Italian horn. What's your horn called that y'all have? It's the Cornudos. Cornudos, no. yeah. No. People are no. an- continuing to analyze no. John's picture at the Rockets game. Is there a – Is there what's it called, the uh, they, the video from the Subruder? Are they giving him the Subruder well, yeah. treatment? Well, I had a blue they, shirt on my own. They got a own. blue shirt That's on his shoulder. That's a Maverick shirt that he had. That's a Maverick shirt that they gave away. At, at least stadium. he wasn't wearing it. Why'd you it? put it on your shirt instead of wiping your ass with well, it? Or it leaving the, it on the chair. It was because I brought it home because it's going to El Salvador. As soon as Luz comes over, I'm going to give her. She sends him to El Salvador. <laughs> what? 
Well, You're going to be Maverick John before we know it. No, I'm not. Why I'm would not. you bring home a Maverick shirt? For, I told you why. For It's for um, it's for the people in impoverished countries. <laughs> that's, that, that's, a, <laughs> what? that's the kind of man of the people I am. No. No one yeah. believes that. Yes, it is. It's the truth. I'm sorry. That's I'm just not saying no believable. one believes it. We're not, we're not believing it. You, actually, you, Justin... Actually, Justin does go. He goes to a country. He's actually going there next week, and he brings them. He says half of the island has rock. I mean, it, it has rockets, Astro shirt, the, the, the whole thing, Warehouse Live. How often they, does the, he go the to whole this island? island he's got to go is, for fun, though. Is outfitted in, in Houston There's gear. no way Justin's just dropping clothes off like it's a Goodwill. Yeah. In the back of his car, and somebody wheels out a car. Does he have a prop plane? He just drops shirt at search out of the prop plane and then flies back. How often is he leaving clothes at, on this tropical island? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but he says he's that doing goodwill missions. Everybody on the island is is all geared up. Mr. Justin, Mr. Justin, Mr. Justin, come and 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 from the sky, from the sky. <laughs> the plane. Mr. Justin, the plane. Throw the San Jordan. Ooh. Air Force One, Justin. I'm, t- I'm telling you, El Salvador, my, my my wife gave loose, like, bags and bags. You should see the, how, how well-dressed they are in, in El Salvador now. Justin's Island <laughs> thinks the Cavs won, like, four titles in the, in the mid-2010s. <laughs> Mr. Justin. Can you bring more purses and high heel? <laughs> That's what they got in El Salvador. They got Wendy's, Wendy's clothes. They got Wendy's clothes, yeah. I I'm mean, telling you. Why El Salvador and why not just like Goodwill here? Why does well, Mr. We, Justin have to take his prop plane over there and drop? Because and they love him there. He, he sure outfits the whole island. He outfits the whole island. They got a bunch of black warehouse live shirts with different bands on it. Yeah, That's so <laughs> they funny. love it. Okay, he's doing he, he's doing God's work, and here you two are. No, it's making good. Fun. It's great. It's good I just that he didn't know it. that he yeah. made. Why did you trips. bring it? Why didn't you give it to Justin? No, instead well, of you I, bringing it to your it, own house because you were was, with him. I, I I had it. I, I was carrying it because it was the one on my seat. That's why didn't why. you go? Oh, here, Justin, and hand it to him as soon as you got there. Well, where, as soon as I got where to the game. I got it at the game, Lance. It, they, they had him on the yeah, seats. I know. The seats. I said, why didn't you grab it and hand it immediately to Justin instead of well, that Well, because I was going to your... take it home to El Salvador people, but I'm giving it to Justin to take to Antigua or whatever El, El, island. Antigua. Wait a minute. It's changing. El, well, he was using loose as his, his shield. His <laughs> now we're is on to Justin. M- meat shield. Yeah. 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 We got to talk about my bookie right now. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about you making some money on the game tonight. You don't? Okay. So, we were looking at, you know, how you look at at where the Rockets are in live betting. You go to my bookie. You got live betting all the time on all kinds of games. It's a lot of fun. Tonight's game, you're going to be able to live bet. So, even if you don't get in right before the game and you want UConn, well, you can get UConn. Especially if they fall behind early, the odds will change a little bit. Now all of a sudden you go, wait a minute, I really like, oh, I like them at halftime. I like them in the second half. You can do first half, you can do second half, you can do whatever. On big games, they've got an unbelievable amount of different bets that you can possibly make. It's happening all the time at my bookie. You get the bonus for signing up, but you got to put in promo code BET975. It is the place to play, win, and get paid. You will love my bookie because my bookie is going to get you. Uh, all of your, your when you win, you're going to get paid, and it ain't. Uh, it's not a great big hassle getting the money out. You're looking for a great way to play, win, get paid. My bookie, you can bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Mybookie.ag promo code bet nine seven five.
Maestro de Bell, the tequila of choice. Listen, Maestro de Bell is showing up in a lot of bars and a lot of restaurants around the city of Houston, but there's still places I go into that don't have Maestro de Bell, and that's not unusual. They've been very big in Mexico. They're beginning to get a much, much larger footprint here in the United States. It is a high quality tequila. It's a premium tequila at a very reasonable price for people who love tequilas. It is one of the great sipping tequilas that is out there right now, whether you're talking about the Añejo or the Reposado. The, the Añejo to me is like, the, it's unbelievably smooth. I just love the Añejo. But the Cristalino is something you can't sleep on. It's three different types of tequilas that are charcoal filter for clarity, and then it's aged and distilled in such a way that the flavor is unmistakable. Great flavor profiles with all of their tequilas. You've got the standard silvers, but also a smoked silver. I mean, there's a lot of different varieties to choose from, and it's 11 generations of tequila makers have been doing this in Tequila, Mexico. So you're getting an unbelievable product. If they don't have it at your restaurant, if they don't have it at your local liquor store, ask for it by name. Ask for it uh, Proximo Spirits as the the parent company that keeps them, that uh, distributes them. But I promise you, you are going to love Maestro do Bell. You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. All right, welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. 713-780-3776. If you want to get in here, you are more than welcome to do that. 713-780-3776. So the Rockets lost. Astros won. That was nice. Caitlin Clark lost. South Carolina won. Uh, that was that was a, a really good game to watch, though. Uh, although Caitlin Clark really kind of fell apart at the end. She was, I think, five of her last 20. So she didn't. She she had a chance to really do something really special. Although getting to the uh, women's final two years in a row was pretty special, I guess. The only team, uh, the last eighty one games, I guess South Carolina's lost one game, and that was to Iowa. One game of their last eighty is that the was that the stat I saw today? Um, yeah. crazy how good this team is. Did you see how, how they? I mean, I. I I do think I was thinking about this. What NIL has done now is teams don't have to be a, the really good teams don't have to be load up on one and dones. Like you don't have to do that anymore. You can, you can go get players you like, but now you start to pivot into four year players. And I don't know how it's going to change after, after the COVID years, you know, you're not going to be able to get extra COVID years, but they're going and getting these good teams like UConn in on the men's side are going and getting, uh, the guy Peters or Peterson, whatever, from uh, from Rutgers. They just go take other teams' best players, and they fill in via free agency is what they're doing. South Carolina added a really good shooter through the portal. And so it's becoming where this free agency where they take players, Mark Sears from Alabama. Where did Sears come from? That dude was their leading score. He was unbelievable. The the lefty with a three-point shooter and at, uh, that – was uh, I don't know where Sears came from. I'm trying to remember his school before, but I think he played at Alabama for just one year. Nate Oates brought him in, and this guy was incredibly instrumental. He played at Ohio. He played at University of Ohio, not Ohio State. So these mid-majors are now getting robbed of their best players, which is going to hurt mid-majors, and it's going to just strengthen because now you have a veteran presence on what used to be, John, really young teams <clears throat> who used to just load up on one-and-done type guys. Now you're adding veteran veteran player so it's really changed the face of how i've noticed that throughout college throughout the tournament i was like holy crap every single team including our own university of houston team with crier for example have very instrumental um players i mean they get deep into tournaments with players who were not on their original roster just a year ago or two years ago they bring in the portal and it's become a huge free agency uh, so now the one area that's really hurt in football and basketball is I heard that they're offering 25% less scholarship. Excuse me. Yes. Yes. John, when, when you started the segment, were you talking about women's college basketball? I wasn't really. What were you talking about? I forget. He I was, mean, he talked about South yeah, you Carolina started with South, and, and Caitlin Clark had a chance to do something remarkable. Correct. Isn't that right. what you said? Mm-hmm. And then. Lance, this show's called the pivot. Turned it into an NIL discussion. 
Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. My discussion is how teams can be built portal. differently now. Yeah, but not portal, like, but not on the NCAA. Not did, with wins. Did Iowa have any portals going? Uh, I don't believe so. I, did, um, I mentioned USC's portal, or when I say USC, see, South Carolina. This is why I'm confused. That's why I asked. Excuse me. Yeah, no, no, no. You, it can be confusing at times. But, <laughs> but, but, you know, Kelvin Sampson actually was asked about, you know, what about your point guard? He said, I think we'll find one. Don't worry. Yeah, it ain't going to be recruiting. They'll be fine. Now, I do wonder yeah. how this is going to – John, you've heard from people in the space also who who coach. One of the big disasters going on right now is a lot of kids are not getting scholarships anymore. Now, some of that's happening because of the excessive COVID years where you get extra years. It is really – and more and more people playing a player four games, like, for example, in football, play them four games and then shut them down. And then now – you had a lot of six-year guys this year, and it's really hurt. It's really hurt players over the last two years. We've seen a lot of scholarship offers no longer there for high school players because they, they just go to the portal. Because teams want to win now, coaches feel like the pressure to win now. I'm sure you probably heard that, John. Why would I wait for a guy I have to develop when I need I need to win now? I got to go yes, get somebody except, I can play now. Except, except, yeah, no, you can you can get a guy that's more ready, absolutely. Except I think without JoJo Tugler, I mean, JoJo Tugler is a good example of go get you some freshmen, go get you some uh, – you, you can't just do it with Portal. I mean, and plus you don't want to change your team every year. Now, you've got to hold on to your guys too. That You're, you're re-recruiting your own guys every year too. That's, that's for sure. So, it's I mean, the, the recruitment never stops. But I think you do – you still got to have the four-year guys. You want to have those guys no, that are going but to be you do, but they can be from other. But you can get like Mark Sears. You can get four year guys from other people's teams. Well, yeah. Well, then they're not your four year guys. No, but they're still a four year guy. And Alabama is in the Final Four. UConn is in the championship game. I don't know that I heard any. Uh, does Purdue have big portal, big time? I don't know. Players? That I'd have to look. I didn't. Well, they've hear. got Indiana guys now. So they're they're taking care of business in their own state. They've got a kid yeah, from Fort Wayne. True. They've got another one from uh, Indian. Uh, I forget where Gary or something. They got they got three. I think three of their starters are from but Indiana. NC State had. I mean, DJ Burns is a portal guy. Yeah. So I mean, you final know, four, the final four teams. The final I mean, four teams even had last year, yeah. FAU had multiple. I think if I'm thinking back, three of Miami starters last year were, were portal guys. It's just going to be part of the. The fabric it's part of, of the sports. free agency is part of the makeup, and John L. Davis from FAU just went into the portal. By yeah, the way, so he'll go to a bigger be. team now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's that's the that's that's life now in college mm-hmm. basketball, college football, and college basketball. It's it's about it's a lot of portal. I mean, you can fill in in a hurry and get really good in a hurry. Iowa needs the portal. The Iowa women's basketball team. <laughs> the difference in athleticism and talent on those two teams holy crap this is why i don't buy into some people maybe someone tweeted at you about this that caitlin's like insert nba player who can't get it done the the, the <laughs> playing field isn't level there's Look nobody at- who is going to be like she had no honestly i think the stalky oh, girl she's pretty good she had a great semifinal stalky I, she would have been able to play on that roster sure she's quick she she could play. maybe What's the other one? The bet's not king, but um, Kate. Kate, yeah, maybe she name. would. But neither one of those would have got starters minutes, and and I don't know that Kate even gets playing time. Stalky might have got some playing time, maybe. But Caitlin Clark, it was like a mismatch of epic proportions from a from a roster standpoint. Let's hear real quick from before we get into the lat next to last segment. Um, I want to hear from Don Staley. This is what she had to say about she came back to the mic and said this about the Iowa program and Caitlin Clark after uh, South Carolina won the – this is Don Staley, head coach from South Carolina. Don wants to say one more thing. I, 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 I really would just like to say that um, I, I have to congratulate Iowa on an incredible season. Awesome, awesome. And I, I want to personally thank Caitlin Clark for lifting up our sport. Her, she carried it. She carried a heavy load for our sport. And it just is not going to stop here on the collegiate tour. But when she is the number one pick in the WNBA draft, she's going she's gonna to lift that league up as well. So, so, Caitlin Clark, if you're out there, you are one of the goats of our games. We appreciate you. 
Thank you, Coach. Very gracious. That was nice from Don Staley. Mm-hmm. That was nice. Yeah, real nice. Usually, the coaches first thing they do is commend the other team. But you know what? Uh, she well, first of all, she commended God, well, which was yes. the right thing to do. And then she came back and did it later, which was just fine. So congratulations, Dawn Staley, really great coach, really great team. She's she's on top of the world right now. Women's college basketball tends to do this, though. Women's college basketball tends to have one team that is dominant for a period of time. It happened with Tennessee. It happened with Connecticut. Mm-hmm. It happens now. It's happening with South Carolina. Um, women's Dawn college Staley's basketball really, really, she's good. Now. Yeah, she's really, really good. She, ta- she right- took some heat. I, I thought it was kind of a cheap shot. Did you see somebody ask her about uh, trans women playing in the sport? And the guy asked her, which clearly that was his you know, intention. I thought that was kind of – I don't mind asking a question to, to a coach on the women's side. I felt like, man, I don't know if the Final Four is the right time. to. I know it's your platform. I get it that you want the biggest platform possible. But it felt like kind of a gotcha question to her and she didn't she said she ultimately she took a lot of time had a long sip of water you probably saw the clip Dell. yes um you know yeah, I, I don't necessarily I agree with her but she has a right no. to i mean she's in the space yeah. she has more of a right to a conversation than i do and the I context guess. from the report apparently at least for people who were there said he entered to ask that question as soon as he got that question off, he, he walked out so yeah it, he mm-hmm. wasn't he didn't particularly care about the event he just wanted Don Staley to speak on it, which, of course, if you're a reporter who covers that game, you're like, "This is I, this is the moment for us. What are we? What are you doing here, um, trying to hijack it?" But she answered it the way she answered it. So, yep, she she has her opinion. Everybody's got their own. I've got an opinion on TPC. Here's my guys: Houston Glover, Archie Lopez, great guys, uh, the really good, really good friends, and re- re- doing a, an unbelievable job, guys. If you're in the PVF or hose and fitting industry, you need pipes, valves, fittings, flanges, forged steel, couplings, hoses. Okay, they've got thousands and thousands of of, of items in stock ready for you. So well, I, I, how are you getting this, this stuff to your job, your job site? If, if you're having a problem getting any of this stuff, let TPC know and they'll get it to you, man. They are rapid delivery. They, they're right here in Mont Bellevue. Easy, quick access to I-10. They can get anywhere in a hurry. If they don't have it, they can find it for you. This is what they do every single day. So your job site needs this stuff, and if it doesn't have it, you're screwed. You know, you can't work. You can't get your job done. Well, if your current PVF supplier can't find what you need, call ours. 346-226-3866. It's TPC Industrial. So their website is tpcindl.com. That's tpcindl.com.
Hey, when you have an air conditioning issue, when things go wrong here in Houston, it doesn't take long. It could have been yesterday. You know right away uh, because your air conditioner is blowing warm. It's not blowing cold. Let Vanderford Air be your air conditioning company that you call the next time. It's 281-557-COOL, 281-557-COOL. They come out there. There's no emergency fees that they charge or overtime fees. They're just out there trying to do their job to get your home cool again. Sometimes it's just a matter of getting uh, the right part replaced on your system and you're back at it like new again. Sometimes you have an older unit and it starts to break down. So what they'll do is they'll give you a price for fixing it and then they'll give you a price for a new one so that you can make that decision. They have financing available. But the most important thing is you get a company who you can trust. I would not speak for them if they didn't do work for me. And if I didn't, I would never put my name on somebody that I thought was shady. And I I think that uh, Vanderford Air is going to be somebody that you finally have a go-to air conditioning company because they go that extra mile to make sure they get you cooled at the right rate, get you the most efficient unit you can and help you save money through your electric bills with very fair pricing. It's VanderfordAir.com, 281-557-COOL. You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. Welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. John and Lance here with you at 713-780-3776. That's the number to get in here with us to hang out. Do it quickly because uh, we are running out of time here. we got news of the weird coming your way next right here on the show. What did we miss Dell, that you will have. Okay, so we always get sound. I don't know if you 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 don't listen to Dell show, Lance, but I do, um, because I'm 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 pro station. But <laughs> he's always got stuff. He's always got sound that he holds that he that it's he doesn't play held. on our show. It's not yeah. held. There's yeah. some things I know you guys don't care about, so I don't play it. That's no, not no, 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 no. Not holding. Anything. What do you got that you're trying to hold from our show that you're gonna say? Oh, look how good my show is. It has it, and theirs didn't. Well, I don't. That's not how I operate. Um, I always hope that everyone has a great show. I mean, I put the stuff on the rundown that you haven't played. In fact, some of the stuff you asked for, like Jamal Shedd, uh, Verlander, after his, let's say, not-so-great outing, or we'll hear from him. He has an opinion on why players are getting injured. Other stuff. I'm not going to give oh. it all away, but other stuff. Okay, let's play Jamal Shedd. Oh, okay. Jamal That's, Shedd. Oh, I'm won. glad. I'm, I wish you wouldn't have said that because I was holding it for my show. I know. So Jamal Shedd won the Defensive Player of the Year in college basketball, best player, best defensive player on the best defensive team, and it went to Jamal Shedd. And he did well. You know, in typical Jamal Shedd, he he thanked everybody else. He thought he thought it was a huge team team effort, and it was. But Jamal Shedd, just awesome. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to my uh, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, without him, I wouldn't be here today. And uh, just allowing us as a group to play the game we love every day. So um, thank you to him. And um, thank you to my family, my mother and father. Um, it's been a long journey, and they've uh, been with me every step of the way. And just a fun fact, they missed two games in my four-year college career. And then thank you to my coaches and teammates. Um, Coach Anderson, you changed my life. Uh, the coaching staff grooming me and making me the man I am today on and off the court has been just, uh, I'll never create the words to say thank you. And uh, to my teammates, this is a, a team award. Being the best defender on the best defense team in the country is, is awesome. I just want to say thank you to my guys and love you. And uh, thank you guys tonight. That's nice. That's that's Jamal Shedd. I'd like for Jamal Shedd to one day be our president. I would too. He's... Like for him to study some of the, you know, he's got to learn uh, different international diplomacy. He's got to really get into the ins and outs of politics internationally and things like that. Um, but when he's ready, I'd like for him to be our president. Right, right. Um, I do, More so I do, than the he rock. is a sharp kid. I'll tell you that, man. Wow, <laughs> he is something. He I don't is want really people something. who He's are on WrestleMania to no be my what president. He does in his life. Um, Dylan Brooks, 
man, Dylan Brooks enjoys now. I don't know. I, I, are you are you satisfied with what you've gotten out of Dylan Brooks this year? Uh, for what he was, yeah. I mean, he was he was meant to be a defensive player, but also a culture changer. And yeah, I think they've I think they've turned a corner and headed in the right direction. So yeah, it's a it's a long contract to be a culture changer, but yeah, I'm okay with him. Yeah, I think he's been okay, yeah. and he kind of likes being a Rocket. Here, listen to when asked about you know being a Houston Rocket, what Dylan Brooks had to say. Amazing. Um, I feel like it was the right choice to be around this young core, be around Ime, be around Houston itself. Um, I love the city, I love the people, and, you know, I felt like I never made the wrong mistake. 100%. And, you know, this year was a feel-out year, and, um, and, and now, uh, you know, we made some great progress um, this year, and, uh, you gotta hang up that on that and you know end this year strong. Hmm. Um yeah, nice. I think they I did I think they did make big strides. I think they they de- they definitely are some are missing something still. But phase two was pretty damn good. Phase phase two kind of fell apart at the end here. Um and you're doing it a lot of it without your best players in, in Alpi and, and Tari. <clears throat> But for the most part, this was a this was a great successful season, so it was it's it's been really good. Uh, and Dylan Brooks has been a part of it. I think mean, his shooting could be better. That could be that'd be better. Um, but he does. He brings an attitude, and I think we see it with look at Amen yesterday. I mean, we ain't taking no guff off nobody. And you're right. I think the Rockets are building a reputation that is <coughs> that is probably around the league. They're going to be watched next year. Because of the, the style of play that they have, the the rough, the rough housing that they do, and they they ain't backing down from nobody. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. This is a different man. You want to talk about night and day from the sideless teams? Holy crap! This is so different, so much tougher, so much better. That's fun. All right, um, uh, we are done here. We've got uh, news of the week coming your way next, right here on ESPN ninety seven five. And 92.5, so you do not want to go anywhere. Hanging with us right here. I'm talking about Brinkman. Brinkman Quality. It's in the name. Well, it's in the website name, BrinkmanQuality.com. That's where you get it. Look, you may not tend to your roof. You may not think it's it's a big deal. You may not. It ain't like, well, it ain't like changing my oil. You know, I got to do that. Otherwise, you know, I'm not going to, you know, the car won't last. Well, guess what? You don't tend to your roof. And your roof ain't going to last. You make sure you get stuff done. And, oh, by the way, if you don't tend to your roof, if you don't do anything about your roof, if you just let it go and then you get some, uh, some, some tragedy befalls you, uh, you get heavy rains, hail, whatever, and the roof is damaged and water comes in through your house, guess who ain't paying you? The insurance company. They want to know that you've done the proper maintenance on your roof. Otherwise, they're not paying you. So if you haven't done anything with your roof in 5, 10, 15 years, time now. Call them, 281-480-7663, 281-480-7663, or BrinkmanQuality.com.
Rudy Giuliani says earthquakes are targeting communist U.S. states. He might have a point here. Didn't New York just have an earthquake? Doesn't California have earthquakes all the time? Yeah, they've always had earthquakes. Do you feel like they're communists? I kind of do. I don't know if California's communist. <laughs> it's very no, liberal. They, it's I don't know work it's... off of the same. That's communism. Capitalist. There's no communist so when a, a, stuff her... built into the system. It's a little it's bit communist. So do hurricanes target conservative states? Uh, They might be. It might be because Florida, Louisiana, well, the Texas, whole coast, the yeah. whole coast. So, do her, are hurricanes targeting that part of the country because yeah. it's conservative? And, er, and earthquake earthquakes are targeting. See, this is why you need someone. Natural disasters are having a moment, and we need to. Talk yeah, I'm about not it. sure where Rudy made this statement, but sometimes you got to have another person in the room to go, "Hey, excuse me, excuse me, do you think hurricanes have a specific?" You bit should too? be that person who just trails people around. And I don't want to do that. Just says, "Excuse me," from the. From the yeah, excuse rafters. me. I would just want to know what he thinks about hurricanes and and their targeting skills. Well, they do have targeting skills, and right now they're tar- targeting us. Well, no, we're people. supposed to be our our biggest hurricane year in years this year. It, and is it because Texas is a red state? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I I always feel like that's just you know weather patterns uh-huh, happen and but tectonic plates shift and all that but i don't know maybe maybe rudy's right you know maybe this everything is about politics mm-hmm. i i didn't know that women's college basketball was political i'm finding out everything you know what everything you know is. everything got, has a political we got to find out how including how, weather how cyclones feel because normally they're going after states that are well, generally red so we gotta figure out maybe they've changed maybe Maybe yeah, tornadoes are going after. I mean, hurricanes and tornadoes are going after us. We know the good, we the do good know, people. Yeah, we do know Christians will associate natural disasters sometimes to oh, God is punishing you for d- being bad. But her, but we're in the we're in a place where God is believed in. So why are hurricanes coming after we us? Have Joel Osteen, Gilbert, John Granado, like we got a lot of people on our uh, C.J. Stroud. A lot of who, Christians. by the way, has already started working out with Stephon Diggs. If you didn't see and that, yeah, John Mechie and Tank Dell. Which one of those doesn't belong? Yeah. Well, well, there was also another kid there that was they were there was some kid there that had glasses on that they were running routes against. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. I don't know what that was about. Maybe he's the videographer or something. I don't know. Uh, Chechnya. Speaking of, of of communism, Chechnya is banning music that is too fast or too slow. The Republic is said to have ruled. It's got to correspond to a tempo of eighty to one hundred and sixteen beats Jeez. per minute. Otherwise, it's illegal. Do you feel like music should have 80 to 116 well, beats so per they're minute? not going to like DJ Screw. So you cannot play DJ Screw. Chopped and Screwed Mix is 100% out in Chechnya. Well, I think it was anyway. But also, some of the rave music is going to be completely out in terms of the high-tempo stuff by Dead Mouse. And so, yeah, uh, Marshmallow. Yeah, so... Yeah, they want to do away with the rave scene, and they want to do a, do away with basically lean based rap. Well, I think they want to do away with that anyway, regardless. In Chechnya, I'm pretty sure. Um, a job has been posted. You guys want to count uh, penguins? Not how much are they paying? Uh, My answer five is no. People. And Dell said, "How much are they paying?" Yeah, a five month stint. Okay, you got to go live in Antarctica. Okay, Still not Del, I think you're. What's well, the most important thing, John? John how much? To get to the check. It doesn't. It doesn't say how much. I can't make a decision without knowing how much. Yeah, you pay. can't ask us that question unless you got a. You have an offer. Yeah, I don't. I do. I don't have the authority to offer you guys jobs. Well, maybe. Well, you've done that for me in the past. Uh, maybe not for. Maybe not count penguins, but you have offered before. Um, but I'm talking about. In the article, it doesn't tell it tell you. No, it doesn't say how much you're getting. Well, then I can't make. I don't have. No, an answer I can't for make you. the decision. But you just gotta. You know what? You can you can negotiate that once you get the job, Del. Well, no, I don't want to negotiate after I get the job. I'm not gonna say yes beforehand. Like yes, like, I want to go count penguins like in you, Antarctica. You know how much it costs. Or I think how- the most important thing is actually wanting to do that, which you're mm, gonna find very few people. Mm, the most important thing is how much they'll pay. That'll determine how many so. people want to do it. Like the cost, the what they're paying people to pick up human excrement in San Francisco, that might make it worth it for some people. 100K, whatever you said the number was. 
Yeah, hundred and a quarter. I think they're paying. That would make it worth it for some yeah, people. Yeah, really? I don't think yeah. I'm taking that. One hundred twenty-five k would make it worth it for some people. Not in San Francisco. That you're you're the one that's going to be pooping in well, the street. Well, you don't have to live in San Francisco. You can just work there. You can always well, move someplace else. It, it ain't easy getting there every day. Um, Dublin man appeared in court completely nude and refused to wear clothes after his emotional support cat went missing during a traffic stop arrest. I feel like this guy shouldn't be driving. If you want to know the truth, he's he's naked in court because his emotional support cat went missing. They can't force someone in court to wear clothes. I think they I can. I mean, when I go to jury duties, I say make sure you don't have your hat on. But in Ireland, you can't force someone okay. to put clothes on. Apparently not. Apparently not. He wouldn't put them on. He said, "Nope, not until I get my emotional support cat back." You better. This guy's got mold. He's got layers. Speaking of layers of problems, a man was arrested in a Tokyo park for allegedly rubbing his buttocks against a water tap. Their water taps nope. are side taps, and apparently he backed up into it. Oh, he backed, oh. you a big, fine woman? Won't you back, back that, that ass up, up onto the water tap? Back that ass up? We yeah. have a juvenile out here trying to get men from Tokyo to back that up into a side side Water panel. tap. Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. The man has admitted to the charge, saying he Thankfully. did it to satisfy his sexual desire. Well, I mean, can't, we can't blame him for that. Now, I don't know if I ever want to drink water in Tokyo love again. Is love is love. Certainly that. not from that tap. Not from that tap, for that's sure. That's not a love is love. That's no. not love. He was trying to satisfy yeah, desire. Yeah, that's not love is love. He was trying <laughs> to get him some. That's no, all. I don't. Th- I didn't see anywhere in the story where he said it was love. Do you think people who use that as a, as a way to explain to people who may be against their lifestyle that they appreciate what you just did? Some Tokyo man rubbing his ass on a tap. Oh, love is love. <laughs> well, and then I came back and said, actually, that's not love. Well, that's not thankfully, love. Thankfully, you, yeah. you no, cleaned I it up. Things, I well, thought things through after I said something first. He said it was just a sexual well, desire. Well, he, he told us. Nothing nothing in there about love. That man said, I'm trying to but get something. But you know some. what? Sometimes you have a one. You know, sometimes you. it starts with that, that and then it develops into something it, serious. It, and people well, get married could. off of that. So. <laughs> I feel like he was just using that tap. That yeah. tap. Hey, you didn't call uh, me back. I can't believe he tapped I, I don't. I didn't see any long-term relationship in He this just one. dabbed in here because he said, I can't believe he tapped it. Yeah. Oh, he's, he tapped he's doing it. a tornado dab right now. I wish you could see it, John. <laughs> he, he, he's doing a tornado dab right now. <laughs> I wish I wish he'd just talk about Zadok instead and then and, and hand it over to Mopey and Mapes. It's not the name of the show. Well, I can do that, as a matter of fact, and I will do that, as a matter of fact. Let's talk about Zadok Jewelers, and I love Zadok Jewelers. Zadok is fantastic. It company started in the, the early 70s. Although they've been doing it. It's been in their family for longer than you possibly imagine. But um, they opened up back in the uh, the early to mid-70s, and they started with 1,200 square feet. They are now at 28,000 square feet, two-level store, and they have a reputation for carrying the best luxury watches that Houston has to offer. Their jewelry is a one-stop shop for anything and everything. Necklaces, engagement rings, the luxury watches, uh, the hottest types of jewelry and the hottest names that are in there. Their in-house service department has seven master watchmakers who are trained by the leaders in global watchmaking. They have to go get certified to to repair all of these different international watches. It's truly amazing when you see it. And not only can you purchase more than 30 of the world's finest and most sought-after watch brands, but they're able to keep all your timepieces in the best working conditions as well. Zadig Jewelers, they are the best in the business for all things watches. If you're a watch connoisseur and a watch fan, get over there because they have exclusive timepieces you cannot get anywhere else in the city and in some cases anywhere else in the state. It's Zadig Jewelers. Go to Z-A-D-O-K.com or just stop in off Post Oak. It's 1801 Post Oak Boulevard.
Welcome into the show. It's Monday, back from the weekend. I mean, I can pretend like I did something, but I didn't. I just watched a disappointing weekend if we're talking about local sports. The Rockets get swept over the weekend. They lose Monday. Excuse me, they lose Friday. They lost yesterday. The Astros lose two out of three to the Rangers. Ryan Presley was awful in one. You, you could see the sigh of relief yesterday after he got out, he got out of there with a clean inning. Um, almost He looked to the skies and pretty much said thank you after a couple of nice defensive plays. And this this thought and this question I asked in the previous show, and it kept it keeps crossing my mind. Where would we where would we be with the Astros if Ronel Blanco didn't exist? Like if he wasn't the story of the season for the Astros, how miserable would this season be going right now? Exclude the no hitter. Like like great. But the wins at this point are even bigger than just, oh, he threw a no hitter because he, he's he's got two out of their three wins. He's been dominant in in his starts. He's given the Astros a chance to win, even in a game last night where Jordan hits a three run homer. That was it for the offense. They were done after that. So if he is like most Astros starters this year, they probably lose that game when you consider Hader couldn't get through an inning clean. If you if we are trying to find clear positives, they begin and end with Ronel Blanco. Sure, Altuve's good. He's always been good. Uh, but as, as far as the surprises and what we can be thankful for, <laughs> I don't know if there's anyone more, more responsible for any positivity regarding the Astros than Ronel Blanco. And the problem with baseball is – you can you can respond with anything with oh it's a long season, eh, it's a long season. All the pushback you need is is it's a long season, and everyone goes you know what you're right it is a long season. What can I say to that? 162 games means anytime you say that, until probably July, you are right. So anyone who feels like this Astro season will turn around, and you're right to believe that because history suggests that it will. You just tell me it's a long season, and I'm be like you know what. You got me, but you can't tell me it's been good the first 10 games. You can't fe- tell me you feel good about watching this team because normally at this time of the year, the Rockets are done for. Now they are done for. We'll get into that. But we look at we think about the Astros and go, this is my respite. This is a team I'm going to watch after whatever has happened during the day and go, I'm going get, to get to watch my team play and feel good about it. I don't feel that way watching them play. I feel I hope now I'm hoping and praying they find a way to win a game and sure it can change because Sean it's a long season that feeling can go away quickly but right now like Fromber's your ace right now Verlander pitched on this very stage oh 92.5 excuse me he pitched for the face Cowboys yesterday didn't go great he was asked about the rash of injuries in Major League Baseball we'll get into that he has some thoughts very eloquent Justin Verlander uh, maybe get some outs though. Maybe, 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 maybe get some guys out. <laughs> that that would help the cause. Now he's just working on stuff. I get it. There's always a caveat yeah, for baseball. He felt good. He felt good. He, yeah, felt good. Didn't pitch particularly good. Well, the word is well. I would have used good, but that's not pr- proper English. He didn't pitch particularly well, and and some of the reaction shots of him giving up hits and runs, he didn't look like he felt good. But at least he came out of it uninjured. But do you feel? All hyped about watching the Astros. Now, this is the wrong show for this, to be honest with you, because we're we have stated we don't really care until July. But I would like to go into games feeling like I don't have to worry about the team and hope they're and know they're going to win. Even with Fromber, as I get back to that, even with him going tonight, I'm not sure there's going to be a good outing. I would say that I I find the Astros very interesting. They which, are, which is like you know normally. They're not very interesting. They're just very good. Or they're kind of interesting. But the early in the season, the first 10 games are normally not like, man, like this is this is kind of a must-win game. <laughs> like, wow, they really need this one. You normally um, don't feel that watching the Astros. So yes, I I I do I do feel like it is it is interesting. And I, I want to disagree with you with one thing. You said uh, from Valdez pitches tonight. He's the Astros ace. You could argue their ace pitch, uh, pitched yesterday. Yeah, there's there's true stopper. He does <laughs> stop losing streaks. He, that's what to, he does. You are right. He talked about what Blanco did in his first start, stopping a losing streak. You know, they had lost four in a row. 
The first four games. The, the first yeah. four games, and he ended that losing streak. Now they got their brains bashed in for different reasons in Arlington. Yeah, it was a pitch in them. Yeah, he, did, he, <laughs> didn't, he didn't get the awesome. pitch till the third games. They were outscored 17-4. to four. We'll get into Presley's numbers before last night's outing. They were bad, and they have been bad until he pitches. Now, Fromber tossed one in there and pitched well, certainly, but Blanco's been their stopper. But Fromber is the ace in name before Verlander comes back. Maybe Blanco is that guy. Maybe he's a guy who's going to solidify himself in this rotation because if Hunter Brown's going to pitch the way he did, he can he can beat it. He can get out of the rotation. Uh, there's nothing performance-based that suggests Blanco shouldn't be in this rotation. But by name, Fromber is your ace. But I don't go into it thinking, well, we're going to get six strong for Fromber. I don't know. Yeah, it so could it, be. It, it could be three and a third of miserable baseball. Not that he's going to be out and out terrible, but watching him fiddle around and walk guys and and go from O two to walking a guy, that stuff is possible too. Yeah, it's definitely not like an ace level of uh, performance and ease of performance. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. It is like man, got out a couple jams it's in that. Like, one. It feels like it's on a knife edge all the time. That's what we, that's what we've been dealing with, and that that's why the Astros are interesting. They are interesting. They're, they're interesting. They're not good, but they're interesting. And the hope is because, as I'll say again, it's a long season that they eventually will be good again. Someone who's not good is Alex Bregman. Six out of thirty-five to begin the year. There was a a thought on on um the on the previous show that. Could Caitlin Clark score more points in the NCAA tournament than Alex, and that would be higher than Alex Bregman's batting average in the month of April? He's got time, but you never know, and that's a problem. I think she's in like the 180 range or so, um, as far as points, close to 190, maybe a little above it. And he is at a point where it's still up for debate. It is early, it is April. We know he always starts slow, but. He can't. This at this point, as far as with this team struggling, we're gonna need more. We're gonna need more. I don't know if at any point Espada will be more proactive and go. You know what? You are bad. We're gonna drop you down permanently in in the lineup. But the six of thirty five isn't like in direct contrast to what Ronel Blanco's doing on the other side, where he was. Where what was it? Forty four batters before he gave up a hit, and then of course it came to. Adolis Garcia, uh, because why wouldn't it? he? He's an astral ruiner, of course, but uh, he so he ruins the hitless streak of of Ronel Blanco. But setting records and the best feeling and the best story of this team is a 30 year old that wouldn't even be in this rotation if health didn't come into play. This is where we're at. 44 outs before his first hit was allowed are the most by a pitcher to begin a season in the expansion era. It's error it, era. Excuse me. The Astros are at the point where they don't just have heartwarming a heartwarming story. The heartwarming story is kind of saving their season. Yeah. <laughs> that they like, wow, against all odds. Look, look at them go. The what a beautiful story. And he had a baby the la- before the last. Uh, I guess it, I guess it was spring training, but he it was a, in Minute Maid Park. He had a baby. He pitched well against the Space Cowboys, and a spotter told him, "You're in the rotation." And then and he, he throws a note. It's like a Disney movie. Unfortunately, the Disney movie consists of a team that's awful, and yeah. it and Disney wouldn't even make this story because they would only have to pay attention to the team every five starts, or or it'd be a miserable documentary or di- miserable movie because who wants to watch a bad baseball team over the course of an hour and a half? In a in movie form, hell, I don't want to watch him over the course of two two and a half hours the way <laughs> the way sometimes it goes, and we'll see what Fromber does tonight. But Ronald Blanco, the story of the season, and another good performance, and it shuts down the Rangers who who had just bashed the Astros over the f- first couple games. So they have a chance for the split. If you feel confident about Fromber, you would be unique if you're on this show because I don't know how much confidence there is. But he's he's good. He was great in his last outing. You just hope you get another performance like like you did in the previous outing against the Blue Jays because they need it. Three and seven, trying to split the series against the Rangers. Try not to lose your second series in three. And far, and not that the standings matter, but you just want to start stacking wins at some point because you could be in a situation like we were last year 
where you you always assumed you catch the Rangers and eventually in the Mariners and eventually you did. It just took to the last game of the regular season. We hope for that not to be the case. And um, it's I won't say it starts today, but it would help if mostly because you want Fromber to put two two good performances back to back, and maybe it is a precursor for a really good year after a shaky start to begin the year. So the Astros win. They got a chance to even the series tonight. The Rockets did not win. We'll get into that. We'll get into the official end to their play-in chances, although that probably ended when they lost to Dallas to start this losing streak. Now the losing streak is a real one, and we can almost forget the 11-game losing streak because this team has stacked losses on top of each other to close out the year, and we'll see if they can finish above 500, which seemed like an almost certainty just about two weeks ago. Now we're really wondering about how this Rocket season will finish. We'll hear from Ime Adoka. Another Rocket got into a scuffle. This one led to another ejection. Amon Thompson is that Rocket. We'll hear from Ime Adoka on that, and we'll kind of go through what happened as the Rockets blew a big lead and lose to the Mavericks in overtime. You know, making free throws would help. We'll be back.
This is the Dale Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Dale Olalea. Welcome back. We'll get into the Rockets here shortly, but I did want to talk about Ryan Presley a little bit. I made reference to him kind of looking up to the sky and thanking whoever he prays to, I guess, for getting out of that inning last. I don't know who he prays to, Sean. It could be anyone. I don't know. Um, just I have an idea. <laughs> I just put it that way because I you never know. Statistically, it's very likely. <laughs> You're guess, but it's just a, you don't know, Sean. You don't know. I guess I don't know. But you, but you can guess and make it a, certainly an educated one just by context clues, I guess you, you would say. But he looks up to the sky and gives and has a sigh of relief after getting out of that inning, and rightfully so. Uh, this stat, courtesy of the Astros locker on Twitter, Ryan Presley has allowed six runs in the last two and two-third innings pitched. He's allowed six earned runs in his last 38 postseason appearances combined. So needless today, needless to say, Ryan Presley's had a rough go of it. He was awful. On Saturday night, responded with a good outing last night. Of course, Josh Hader couldn't get out of the couldn't get out of the ninth inning without giving up a run. He that is a Ryan Presley save. You're up by three, you give up a run, it's still a save. It doesn't matter, it didn't cost you anything, but you weren't good. Which you could say that about plenty of the Astros bullpen. Hasn't been good, but it was enough because of Jordan's home run. They were good enough to get out of the uh get out of last night's game with a win. So Ryan Presley has struggled, did not struggle yesterday, which is good news, and who knows if it becomes a thing that that leads to better pitching performances. But you take last night and go, thank you, we appreciate it. Hopefully some of it rubs off on Josh Hader going forward because he has not lived up to the billing. But as we'll say all the time, it is still early. We can't jump to conclusions about the Astros. Well, we can't jump to, it's not even a conclusion anymore. It ain't early, it's late. And the Rockets are done in terms of competing for a playing spot. They were up big yesterday against the Mavericks in a mid-afternoon game. They were up by 22 in the first half. And they were only up. They were up by single digits going into the half. Kyrie Irving and Luka, just too much. The Rockets couldn't hold them off. It looked like that game was going to be an inevitable blown lead where, where, you're, where you're ruining the fact that the, that the Rockets couldn't hold on until... They made big shots in the fourth quarter and had the ball up three and got fouled. Now, Fred Van Fleet missed free throws, but Jabari Smith missed the most important ones of the night. He misses two, gives the Mavericks life, and Dante Exum hits a three. There was a discussion about philosophy. And you you watched it play out. In If you were just watching a lot of NBA last night, you watched it play out in two different philosophies. The, the Rockets don't foul. It leads to an Exum three. The Pacers up by three. Foul. The Heat go to the line, shoot a, make the first free throw, try to miss the second on purpose, lane violation. The Pacers get the ball, game over. Difference of philosophies, difference of results. You could you could always ask, why would you ever allow someone to shoot a three? It's the only way you can lose a game. It's the only way. And of course, Exum was open. He makes it. You loot. You tie. They tie, and then you go on to lose. I'm of, the, I'm of the belief that, yeah, shooting a three to tie a game is more difficult to, than making one, than missing one on purpose, and then getting a rebound and a putback. Sure, those happen, but we see far more often you give up a shot, generally sometimes, generally open, and it because everyone has a play for that situation. Everyone has a play, and they practice that to get a wide open three or at least an open look. How often are teams practicing the miss one, excuse me, make one, miss one, get an offensive rebound to tie the game. I don't think they spend as much time on practice as the other scenario. And it costs the Rockets. And, of course, you can talk about Ime for, you can blame him for that. But, of course, the players were involved in missing. Missing the free throws is is the killer. So it was just a calamity of errors for the Rockets, and they lose. And they're now completely out of the, the playing mix. They're now two games under five hundred, But they are a team who likes to fight. Well, Maybe fight strong. Let's just say they like to get into altercations. And they won't back down. The latest was Amin Thompson. If you missed missed it, it was the second of two <laughs> physical altercations in a matter of, a matter of probably thirty seconds with Maxi Kleber on the offensive end. He tosses Maxi Kleber to the ground, and then he comes back on the defensive end and does the same. 
the refs reviewed both. They they considered the second one a flagrant two. Amin Thompson gets thrown out of the game. And if you missed it, he didn't play in Friday's game because of an injury. He's back. So it was he was there for a good time, not a long time, if you want to call it that. And here's Ime Adoka discussing the ejection of Amin Thompson. Nowadays, anything's a flagrant two. Um, you know, that might have been a n- normal technical uh, 10 years ago. But, you know, they get in a bumping match, and if he's grabbed and gets the guy off him, um, you know, like I said, it's a little soft nowadays. So they're gonna, you got to understand that and know how they're going to call it. We understand this Rocky coach is about that life. You call LeBron James a soft-ass boy, you're about that life. But I'm going to disagree. <laughs> I understood that the game has changed, but it wasn't just, hey, get off me. It was a little high. Now you might say, yeah, it was aiming for a shoulder and the elbow rode up. It was a little high. And, and we know the rule. That was going to get you thrown out. I was hoping for a flagrant one because – Maybe the referees had my interpretation and he was aiming for his shoulder and then the elbow just kind of rode up because of physics. But the refs were like, you got to go. And I'm in Thompson didn't didn't come close to finishing that game. And it didn't seem like the Rockets were going to miss him until they couldn't get any stops. And it seemed and it certainly seemed like they missed him. Doing it twice is also. Yeah, the back to back didn't help. I, I don't know if I don't know if the refs are supposed to, you know. Be like, you know, the previous play that we didn't review and he did that, but. Yeah, well, soccer does that. They'll give you a yellow card if they say, oh, you you committed like three fouls. Now, three of them individually doesn't add up to yellow, but you've done it a number of times in a row, so we're going to have to give you one. And I don't know if that was the case, but they were probably like, okay, he's already thrown him down twice. We're, we can't let him stay in this game, or he might actually punch Maxi Kleber. It, it's a little bit like it's a smaller scale version of the uh, – of what happens with Dylan Brooks, where every ref is like, "Hey, Dylan Brooks, I, I know your game, all right. I know, <laughs> I know what you're. I know you might not be getting up to it now, but I know what you normally get up to. And it's could it, it could happen at any point. We're taking, we're kicking you out right now. Like, yes, you grade someone's uh, nuts, all right. You're out. <laughs> like, but we can't let you. We can't give an inch. We here. can't pretend like we didn't see it coming when it happens. Yeah, like we see what you're doing. You're we're on familiar a familiar with your game. <laughs> yeah, unlike Shaq, we're familiar with your game. So I'm in Thompson and the Rockets. Maybe the refs are familiar with their game. It has been now it was through the winning streak and now it's through this losing streak. They will get into altercations. They will have guys thrown out. And now that they're on a five game losing streak, maybe maybe tone it down. Maybe, maybe, because if you get a reputation for it, you're going to be a target. And we know Dylan Brooks is a target. In fact, we'll probably we'll get to it on the other side. He talks about how he's changed his defensive philosophy because of he he knew the refs were paying too much attention to him. But he said he's going to get back to it. It's a little late now. I mean, you're 38 and 40. Four games left. Now you want to get back yeah. to that the defense you were playing before? Is this like an offseason thing? Yeah. You're telling, are, talking to us about? Why the last four games? Are you are you just saying, are you letting the world know that when next season begins, we're getting the old Dylan Brooks back? Because this version of him, we don't need you for the next four games. It's over. Why do I care what defense you get to now? Who cares? Maybe body up Luka and knock him on the ground last night or in your previous meeting so he doesn't go for 22 points in the first quarter. Oh, I'm going to do it now. I don't care about it now. Yeah. Season's Kyrie, over. Kyrie just scored 48. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's too late for it now. We put him on his ass. Yeah. Right. At some point, maybe get maybe in the middle of the two Maverick games where you were watching their superstars destroy you, knock one of them on the ground and say, the old Dylan is back. <laughs> the villain. Yeah. Oh, you know what? It might be for uh... – for uh, not World Cup, uh, for the Olympics. Oh, for it, Canada. Yeah, for Team Canada. Canada. He's, maybe he's letting it known that hey, I'm coming. Whatever Argentinian international he knocks on the ground, let he should have known. Dylan warned you. Hey, Bojan Bojanovic, <laughs> watch out! I warned you in April <laughs> that this Dylan was back. Unfortunately, this Dylan and the rest of the Rockets got no stops late. And really from the first, really from the middle of the second quarter on, they got no stops and it cost them. But as I said, what cost them most was the free throw misses and then the philosophy of not fouling. I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation for it, but 
if you box out on the missed free throw, you're probably going to win the game in the make one, miss one scenario. You, instead, you gave, gave up a wide open three, and it led to extra time, and, and you lost. So the, the Rockets now have lost five in a row, and the Warriors and the Lakers are your 9-10 in the Western Conference play-in scenario. And the, and the Lakers got a chance to move up to eight because the Kings have struggled. They've had injuries. The Lakers did lose, lose last night to the to the Timberwolves, who are still fighting for the number one seed. So a promising month of March has turned into a less than stellar April as uh, the Rockets do get swept over the weekend, losing to the Heat at home in a game that they weren't really competitive outside of, like, the first eight minutes. Once the Heat took a lead about midway through the second quarter, the Rockets – I mean, I mean, Jalen Green hit a couple threes back to back in the in the fourth to make it a six point game, but after that, it was about over. Heat bounced back with a couple threes, and the Rockets didn't compete. So, a diff, differing games where the Rockets were in control throughout, but in game two of the weekend and lost it, and then in game one, outside of a, a spark to start the game, never really had control, and and the Heat kind of just systematically beat them. And the Rocket season, now 30 and 40. Season's over. I mean, the hope is to stay above 500. They have their Orlando Magic coming up here. The, the Magic all of a sudden in a spot where they can get the two seeds. So that'll be a game that means something to them. We'll see how the Rockers, Rockets respond with nothing on the table to earn outside of finishing above 500, which would be an accomplishment. Some people don't care because they bet the over and the Rockets are already there. But for the Rockets themselves, maybe a chance to get over 500. And that would be a good thing in Ime Adoka's first year, particularly in this soft-ass NBA that he has to coach in. I mean, so soft. Let's get over, let's get over 500. Imagine how good of a coach you'd be in the 2000s. Where, where no one gets thrown out of games? Yeah. Or I guess when he was a player, too. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's an era of basketball he would prefer. Um, defense, bad shooting, that's kind of his team right now. <laughs> So I oh, think yeah. I think he. Would, oh wow! Yeah, imagine imagine if this they weren't obligated to take like thirty threes a game. Wait, what if they what play if play in twenty twenty four? What if they could just? What if everyone took mid range jumpers and, to match the Rockets missing a lot of their shots? What if everyone was like that? Jabari, no, Jabari Smith, watch out! No spacing. What if there was no spacing? Throwing how, entry passes to Alperen Sengun. How good would this Rockets team be? This, this is a two thousands team. Just, yeah. just with twenty year olds. Yeah, Jabari's out here taking, taking corner threes. We don't do that here. Hey, pump fake, take two dribbles in, then shoot. All right, <laughs> yeah. take a get the better shot. That's the real turn, NBA. Turn down a good shot for the great shot, and the great shot is a twenty footer. <laughs> Ime Udoka at the like end of season like coaches meeting, like meeting with all the players, the exit interviews. He just slides a uh, a VH1 tape of Lamarcus Aldridge. Uh, <laughs> he was like, "Watch this." Mm-hmm. You win in the mid-range, everybody. You win in the mid-range. If, if it's good enough for Kevin Durant, it's good enough for you. Um, unfortunately, Kevin Durant's a generational player, and Jabari Smith is just trying to find a role. But a disappointing end for him, you miss those two free throws costly, and, and the Rockets go down. But, hey, take, take heart that this team, at least in the month of March, showed you what they're capable of. Um, of course, some of it I think I will couch by saying – you didn't even have what many consider your best player. So what does it mean overall? It just means you have a team full of fighters, and despite it looking like a lost season, they made it one where we cared and had meaningful basketball in the month of March and into April. So we'll give them credit for that, and we'll see how the season plays out over the final four games. We'll hear from Justin Verlander, who we believe <laughs> is still an ace. It didn't look like that against... Minor league competition. He pitched for the Space Cowboys yesterday. We'll we'll give you some of the numbers from his performance. We'll also hear from Verlander on his with his thoughts. He had thoughts about what is happening in Major League Baseball that's leading to all these arm injuries. And as you might imagine, he kind of put it on multiple things. We'll talk about that when we come back.
You're listening to the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Dell Olalea. Welcome back. I mentioned the Verlander thing. We'll get to that. But Sean brought up something a couple of breaks ago. We were discussing something, and he said so much happened last night that it made him forget even really about the Rockets and the Astros. So if we were ranking the things that happened, because Sean, I didn't know this, he watched WrestleMania, said it's the first time he's watched it in, in, in years now. I didn't know WrestleMania was a two-night thing. I thought I had my fill of it the night before, then I got punched in the face with it on my on my For You page um, mm. the the next day, or last night, excuse me. You had that, you had, you had the Astros, you had J. Cole apologizing to Kendrick Lamar for his diss that people didn't even think was very good. Said it hurt his heart. So J. Cole's out there apologizing. And I was thinking about that. Like in rap, it ain't gonna that didn't go over well, the apology. It did not go it, over well. People at like, all. what are you doing? Because <laughs> in rap, everyone wants a, likes a beef, particularly when it's of guys of that caliber. And then he's gonna apologize. He went on, he was on stage, dream he was talking to the crowd, saying, It's not who I am, that's my brother, blah, blah, blah. And people are like, Shh, stop it. Like you didn't even let it go for Two weeks before your apology, not For even a week weekend. before your apology. You're apologizing <laughs> over the weekend after after he you put out a project and went after Kendrick Lamar. So that was out there. I can't wait for all the. Uh, I'm sure that stuff is already out there. The 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 rap podcasts and blogs and all the stuff going. J Cole's not gonna have a good time. You mentioned you mentioned I haven't watched uh, WrestleMania before last night. I. I haven't listened to a full Joe Budden podcast uh, before. Whenever the next full Joe Budden podcast yeah, comes, yeah, I mean the, the he the that is something where sometimes they have Patreon exclusive stuff where they get into stuff they don't want the general public to hear. But I imagine this one because they've talked about this particular back and forth will be on one of their 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 regular podcasts. Um, yeah, the Joe Budden show discussing J Cole apologizing. Um, will be one that people want to listen to. So that's a great pull by you. So which one which one had more impact on you? The J. Cole apology or was it Cody Rhodes, whatever happened with him? If, I don't know. I didn't watch any oh, of WrestleMania. Uh, yeah. Co- so they, they spent all this time building up Cody Rhodes, son of Dusty Rhodes, uh, building up to be a champion f- for the first time, something his dad never did. While uh, being in uh, wrestle, being in WW, I guess F at the time or WCW, but um, and they it's all all this build up, all this build up. He loses uh, on Saturday night, which means that it's bloodline rules for Sunday night, which basically means just anything can happen at any time, just a free for all. And so uh, as as he's fighting Roman Reigns, uh, different like whatever Roman Reigns allies come come out start beating up Cody Rhodes then uh John Cena comes out to defend Cody Rhodes then The Rock comes in to fight John Cena and then The Undertaker comes in to fight uh uh The Rock I mean it's just like literally they're just nothing but cameos of like the all-time great wrestlers and then Cody Rhodes eventually wins to finish Kind of finish the story. Yeah, you named the Undertaker. Like, when's the last time he does he only show up at like pay per views and the biggest ones to do one thing? Okay, yes. yeah. like he did last night. Yes. What do you think? What do you think they're paying him to? Hmm. If we're thinking of an appearance for the Undertaker, I'm trying to think. Two hundred grand. The the equivalent. Like, is he is he getting more? Is he getting less per game than Caitlin Clark would get in the Big Three? Like, it was an eight game potential ten game schedule for five million dollars. Would is he getting more per game per like his appearance with that equal one game? Do you think, or he's or she getting, or would she get more? I can't imagine he's getting like half a million dollars for what he did last night. Because literally, what he did was the lights went out, he pops into the ring, lights come back on, he's in the ring, he choke slams the rock. The pop of getting the other checker lights lights go back out. Undertaker. I don't know, man. That appearance fee's got to be pretty high, though. I get. I mean, for WrestleMania too. Yeah, he probably it's WrestleMania. Has some, How, uh, negotiation, uh, some leverage in negotiation. And maybe he gets part of the buys. I don't know. Whatever yeah. his deal is, the Undertaker showing up. I was it like, made it worth it for him. I was like, the Undertaker. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, go go watch. I mean, you don't even really need to know the full story. Just like go watch the like five minute clip of when all, or it might be longer than five minutes. 
they they do a lot of reacting <laughs> where they're just like staring at each other for 10 seconds okay uh, <laughs> so it might it might be like a five minute clip uh just watch like the five minute clip when okay. all the cameos happen it, it was literally like the scene in endgame like that's that's what it was on for your wrestling. left yeah, on that's what it was. That's what it was for wrestling. <laughs> I just saw it. It, it. The timeline was popping with WrestleMania stuff, and I was like, "Oh, okay." I thought I thought I had my fill the night before, but it was still there. And apparently, the Undertaker of all people. And I say that like he doesn't show up at a WrestleMania every every now and again for that type of a uh, pop. And The Rock has had a storyline, I guess, building up to this. And people are like, "Look!" At some point, someone said. His knee gave out. I don't know. So apparently, The Rock isn't as fit for WrestleMania or wrestling oh, as he used to be. He he'd spent a he had a twelve month or no not twelve month twelve week uh, training camp for it. So. Okay, but someone said of steroids. <laughs> which, he, yeah, the which training is, camp was he did a cycling cycle. A cycle? <laughs> okay, I uh, I don't want. Yeah, no wonder The Rock won't. I could, do you have to steroid test a president, a potential presidential candidate? Is that part of the deal? Because I, so. I know they had they had. When their, would it have ever come up? Yeah, well, exact. Well, yeah, because Arnold could never do it. I guess I don't know if they had, to, they had to steroid test the governor of California, but, but you know the presidents have to get phys physicals. Just a report. Look, he's fully healthy, even though he's he's really old, so probably not. All these people are seventy five. Yeah. yeah, so they're, but they're completely healthy. Uh, but the Rock, uh, HGH in our president, I'd vote for him just just for the for the med exam, just to find out what they find it. <laughs> what's in his system. What's in our president's Just system? See all the commas on his testosterone levels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But The Rock, um, making making moves and sure getting paid a lot of money yeah. for the, for that for that particular storyline. Also, uh, so that so yeah, you had the Cole, you had WrestleMania, and then you had Coach Calipari leaving in the middle of the night to yeah go. <laughs> to go to Arkansas. Could you, could you imagine that this was all set? In motion because Andy Enfield left USC to go to SMU. That's how this all started. That's the yeah, the dominoes. Yeah, it's that and Jack Golke making ten threes. Yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like true. If now you, all of a sudden Chris Beard is going to be the next Kentucky coach. Yeah, if if you missed it, John Calipari. All sources say he's going to be the next Arkansas head coach. It's not official, but it's official. They, they're saying like in the process of finalizing yes. a deal, which is yes. like which means done. John Calipari is leaving the University of Kentucky to coach at Arkansas. Following Eric Musselman going out to USC, and he he said the living out on the West Coast and going to the Big Ten all played a part in his decision, and I'm sure the money played a huge factor as well. So Eric Musselman's done a really good job at Arkansas. This year wasn't wasn't great. He's produced pros. They've been to a Elite Eight, Sweet Sixteen. So he's a guy who made Arkansas a winner again, and he cashed in by going to USC, who had who had Bronny James and. That was the big storyline, but they had a good recruiting class. It just didn't yeah, result. Man. It didn't result in anything, though. Yeah, they had another like five star, like uh, Collier. Yeah, or, Isaiah Collier. Yeah, and, and they won like twelve games. They stunk, and SMU was like, "We want that guy as our coach." <laughs> yeah, it is funny that it is, it, and we saw this a little bit in the college football uh, coaching carousel, uh, carousel where it's like, it, I, it, the new move seems to be, you have a disappointing year. And you're on like the scorching hot seat of like, well, uh, the bu the buyout's big, so we can't actually fire him this year. But well, we want to fire him, and then you just go, all right, all right, then I will take a job at <laughs> SMU, <laughs> or I will take a job, I will leave Kentucky for Arkansas, yeah. which is like obviously that's not a step up, no, but it's it's a basically re restart the clock on uh, how long it'll because. Cal Perry has been at Kentucky for 15 years. Yeah, he's been there a long time. If he has the career, so like, there's a lot of you know think pieces and questions about like, was Coach Cal Perry? I mean, I looked up and I saw it on first take. Is Coach Cal Perry's tenure at Kentucky considered a success? Let me tell you, if he has the exact same tenure at Arkansas, he is one of the best. Ar he's one of the best coaches of any sport in Arkansas history. So that that's what he's doing is, hey, you know what? I'll just take what I'm doing here, take it to a whole bunch of people that will be grateful for one title in 15 years, and, uh, yeah, people will yell at me less. I like to call it the Frank Haith, who, yes. who is your, an assistant on the Texas staff now. Welcome. He dipped from Miami even though they wanted to fire him, but his buyout 
was at a point where they couldn't because Miami wasn't going to do that to a head basketball coach. They weren't going to pay that type of salary to, or that money to get rid of him and then pay another guy in 2012. All of a sudden, in, in 2011, all of a sudden in an offseason, Hank, Frank Hayes going to Missouri. We're like, what? He's going to Missouri? We're Everyone was shocked and thrilled. And he did to Missouri, too. He was he yeah, left he Missouri to, to go to Tulsa. He sent a text to the Missouri AD. Oh, by the way, I'm taking the Tulsa job. Everyone was like, great, but we didn't know you were leaving. Um, so the Frank Haith is to leave before they fire you. Yeah. And Calipari, I don't know if he wasn't at a level where he would get fired, but the 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 seat was hot. People yeah, weren't thrilled. He had a meeting with the AD to d- discuss the future of Kentucky basketball. That's yeah. not good. Yeah, it's not good when the future of Kentucky basketball is being discussed after you lose a Jack Golke type. So, or just Jack Golke. That's who they <laughs> who he lost to. So he had he saw, as you pointed out, there was there's a, a greener pastures, and they won't yell at me, and they'll be fine. Although Arkansas is going to have expectations. I told you, Eric Mosman turned them into a program who expects things. And and, and Calipari is going to have to deliver. But the initial shine of stealing a coach from Kentucky will will help him quite a bit. He has he has two or three years of yeah. just like gravy, and yeah. then then he's got a uh, at the earliest year four. It's like oh, got to prove something, Cal. But he's he's going to be good. But yeah, I mean, it's a move that we. I mean, we saw Chip Kelly leave. Uh, leave uh, being a head coach at UCLA to be the offensive coordinator for Ohio State. We saw um, uh, the Boston College head, head coach, whose name I forget, um, he Halfley, to, Jeff Halfley. He went to go be the D.C. Yeah, went to be the D.C. at uh, in Green Bay. Yeah. So, like, there's – this is this is now the new move. It seems like in in college athletics to just be like, you know what? Before they fire me, let me just get out of here. Yeah, Jeff Halfley was he's finished up a seven and six year now. What the expectations are at Boston College? Who knows? They're, they don't they don't get enough talent to really win anything. But his overall record because of a three and nine in twenty twenty two was twenty two and twenty six. So maybe maybe he, his agent went in there going, eh, you want to give us a little extension? And they're like. No, have you seen your record? We're not yeah. paying you any more money. And then, then they realize it was time to go. So Jeff Halfley's he also probably gets either paid a raise more or pretty close to a Although raise. Although if I'm a the shareholders with the Packers, I'm like, why are we, why are we, why are we so thrilled about <laughs> Jeff Halfley? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why do we have to pay? And I say shareholders because we know they're not owned by anyone but the fans. Uh, but so why are we paying Jeff Halfley? Why are we thrilled by that move, Lafleur? Uh, Lafleur. But uh, Jeff Halfley, he's been an assistant in the NFL before, so he has a track record there. There you go. That's why you should be excited, eh, shareholder. Yeah, he's never been a DC on the NFL level. He was a he was at most a co DC at Ohio State. Why am I? Why are we rushing to hire the co the former co DC from Ohio State? They couldn't even give him the job by himself. Now we now we're making him our full time DC after we got rid of Joe Barry finally. Lafleur might have a blind spot when it comes to defensive coordinators. We'll see. Um, the the Packers are certainly drafted for that for that defensive side of the ball, and it hasn't really lived up to their expectations. But we'll see, Jeff. But to Sean's point, you get out when you can. Don't fire me. I'll take a job before you do that. That's kind of the way of life. Always have that resume out. That's what that's what I was taught. Yeah, and, and it it helps the you know I'm not a fired head coach. I left on my own volition yes. because I believe. In the good people of Fayetteville, Arkansas, that we're going to build a basketball contender. Or the one I could not build at Kentucky. I'd, instead of running my own program, yeah. I want to be the defensive coordinator in the NFL. And that's an easier sell. Because you could probably suggest that the defensive coordinator at in Green Bay is better is a better job yeah. than the head coach at Ohio State. Uh, excuse me, at Boston College. Bill O'Brien would tell you that's wrong because that's now his job. Then we bring it all the way yeah. back to Bill O'Brien as we're way late for a break. We're way late. We will get to the Verlander stuff and what he said about what is happening to the arms in baseball. And we'll give you some of the numbers from his, let's just say, less than stellar starts for the Space Cowboys, which you could have heard right here. Well, I say that. It's part of the st- it's part of the overall gl- gal conglomerate, but it was on 92.5 that you could have heard the Space Cowboys and Justin Verlander start. He's due for a second start, too. So if you want to hear Verlander hopefully not get shelled by AAA hitters, you can listen to him on 92.5. We'll be back.
Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's the Dell Olalea Show. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Now back to Dell Olalea. Welcome back. We are way short on time here because of we just reviewed everything that happened late last night. So we went over there, but I did want to talk about this because I've talked I've mentioned it a couple of times. Justin Verlander had his first rehab start and it was with the Space Cowboys. And according to him, it went well because he he feels good. I mean, if, if you look at the numbers, it didn't. And of course it's baseball. So caveat, throw it in there that was he working on stuff? Was he trying to get people out? That's how you that's how you talk away the bad outing. And to be honest, he you could you could lean on that. He is working on things. He's trying to get ready for the for the for the comeback to the big club. But I don't know. I would have preferred he got more guys out. But he was he was just trying stuff. I'm just working on things. And he had a one two three first inning, and then he gave up five runs in the second, throwing 29 pitches. He had a clean third, and then he got pulled um, in the fourth with guys on second and third and no one out. So he was every other inning. So was he working on things in the second and the fourth and was trying to get guys out in the first and the third? I don't know, but it was a it was a performance that says he's Justin Verlander, so why, do, why are we paying attention to this? As long as he comes out healthy. That's how you talk away things when they, when they look like the way they did. But Justin Verlander was asked, and he had a lengthy after game press conference, if you want to call it that, with reporters. Because of course, he's going to get attention. He's out there pitching and making his way back to the rotation. But he was asked about the rash of injuries in Major League Baseball. A lot of, a lot of guys, a lot of big name guys are losing seasons to elbow injuries, Tommy John. And Justin Verlander was asked about it. And did he have an explanation for the rash of injuries? I think the I think it'd be easiest to sit here and blame the pitch clock. Um, you know, I think in reality, uh, you put everything together and um, everything has a little bit to a little bit of influence. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is the the, the, the style of pitching has changed so much. Um, you know, everybody's throwing as hard as they possibly can and um, spinning the ball as hard as they possibly can. And, um, you know, it's hard to deny those results. Obviously, uh, how can you? It's 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 a double-edged sword. How can you tell somebody to go out there and not do that when they're capable of throwing 100? And and you know this this, this young guy comes up and throws a pitch 95 and gives up a big homer, and everybody's like, "What the hell, man?" Um, so something needs to change. Uh, I, I I don't have all the answers. He went on in that, but the gist of it was the way the game is played is leading to these things. You're asking guys to do pitch a certain way, and that is why they are uh, being injured. Lance was on earlier and he discussed the the strain it puts on a pitcher's arm when they're when they're young. The way young pitchers are being treated is leading to that. So you heard Verlander talk about it's multiple reasons, but at least in his eyes, a big reason is hey, they're asked to throw like this, and that that is leading to the increase in elbow injuries. Tyler Glass now talked about it, and he said he said this years ago now. He talked about the sticky stuff not being on the ball anymore is affecting the way the guys throw the baseballs because if he says if you fill these baseballs, uh, they will put stress on a pitcher if he, they don't have the ability uh, to use what was it called, Sean? It was tack something. I forgot what the spider tack. spider tack. They don't have the ability to use that to control their ability to throw the baseball. It, it just puts a strain on the elbow and, and it's causing these injuries and the shoulder injuries. So. There are multiple guys who have a stake in the game putting it on different things, and you have Major League Baseball, the, at least the PA, saying it's a pitch clock. Is it really because you throw pitches? You have to throw pitches at a higher frequency that arm injuries are occurring? I don't know. Um, we There have been, there've been studies suggesting that's not the case, but Major League Baseball and the Players Association, at least the Players Association, is pushing the agenda that, hey, if you get rid of the pitch clock, these elbow injuries and shoulder injuries would decrease. And, of course, these injuries were on the rise before the pitch clock, so that would be the that would be the response by Major League Baseball. Actually, you guys, are, you guys and your arms are falling off beforehand. You can't blame our rules. They were already happening. Either way, uh, you're losing young pitchers 
big name pitchers to these injuries, and it certainly has affected the quality of the game. And it, it's affected. Now we know baseball doesn't have a lot of stars, but when you're when you're trying to market guys and guys who get get guys out and they're going to be your all stars and they're no longer available, it changes it changes the game. And there's no clear answer, just multiple possible reasons for it. And I don't imagine Major League Baseball is going to say, you know what, this this thing we put in place that has made the game more more exciting and fans have reacted to it positively, we're going to take it out. I don't think it's happening. Uh, so arms will continue to fall off, Sean, and Major League Baseball is like, hey, if if they die, they die. I mean, like you said, like it's been going up for a while. Yeah, so. yeah. it's it is. I think it's made the Players Association trying to carve out a reason to – to to get rid of it because their players don't like it, and they're using the pitch clock, as, uh, they're using arm injuries as as an excuse as opposed to the studies that suggest it was going on way before then. Yeah, and and I, I get it. You want to finesse something? I understand the finesse, but you ain't fooling me. Science, and we're gonna believe in science. The science says your arms were falling off long before the pitch clock became a thing. Just get up there and throw pitches faster. We're trying to get through these games, okay? Yeah. Yeah, just take a little bit off of it, all right? Yeah, stop, yeah Justin Verlander says, stop trying to throw us hard. If I got to sit through 10-2 Astros, it, I don't I don't need it to be four and a half hours. Let's make it a smooth 245 so I can get through it when the Rangers are bashing the Astros' heads in. I don't, I don't, I don't need the, the, I don't need the absence of the pitch clock. I don't care how fast it is. All right, Hunter Brown, just get this over with. <laughs> yeah. You're not, you're not pitching well anyway. I don't need you to drag it out. Just get it, get it. Get rid of get rid of this game. Who wants to sit through a four and a half hour 10-2 beating for your favorite team? It's not enjoyable. Not that the two and a half hour one was enjoyable either. Just that I'd rather have it happen quicker. That's all. In my in my misery, quicker, Hunter Brown, or just pitch better. One of the two. Uh, we'll see how it goes in your next outing from Braval Des tonight as the Astros try to even up the series against or well close out the series with the win to even it up against the Texas Rangers a Rangers team who I'm getting sick and tired of because I always thought of them as losers, and now they're not anymore, and it's less fun. That'll wrap up Hour 1. We'll come back with something I think is a little disrespectful. It broke in the last hour, at least it came to my attention in the last hour, that a legend's number has been given away to a player who you wouldn't consider a legend, and when the guy might be the greatest player to ever play in your sport, giving it away to this guy might be deemed a little... Disrespectful. We'll talk about that when we come back.
Welcome to hour two. And I get caught sometimes for forgetting that not everyone listens all the time, every minute of the day to the shows here. So I've been doing this since seven. So I just assume that something something is, that has already been talked about doesn't need to be talked about again. So that's on me. So I want to let you know it's always an open forum. So if we haven't gotten to something that maybe you didn't hear earlier, because I produced a 7 and 10 show, so I'm thinking, oh, we already talked about that. So if you want to call in about something we haven't gotten to on this show, 713-780-3776. Of course, the big news was, at least in college sports, was the women's national title game. Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes got off to a great start. And then South Carolina just wore them down. There's commentary about about what Caitlin Clark means for the game. Can it transition to the WNBA? Uh, Dawn Staley was very gracious in her praise after for for Caitlin Clark. We've got the UConn women, as far as the former UConn players and Diana Taurasi, most most notably. A little hate, a little hate. You had Brianna Stewart asked about can Caitlin Caitlin Clark be considered to go if she doesn't win a national title. Uh, Brianna Stewart famously, well, or maybe not so famously for some of you, I think she won four national titles. She won every year she was there at UConn saying, well, yeah, she's got to win one. Of course, Brianna Stewart joined a WNBA team on the college level. Meanwhile, Kaylin Clark doesn't p- play with one WNBA player. Maybe Hannah Stolke, uh, her, uh, the big on the team, might become one. So different, different levels to this. But certainly we had some people want to discuss that. So if you want to talk about that, call in. And it's an open forum, as I said. You can kind of call in about every, whatever you want. Hell, we spent five minutes talking about WrestleMania just because it was a big thing that happened last night. But I did want to get to this. It's something I mentioned before we went to break. And in the discussion with Sean during the break, I asked about retiring numbers and do people just hand out numbers to anyone because I don't remember the Packers handing out a four to anyone after Brett Favre left last year. Did they hand out a 12? Now that's a quarterback number, but who, what quarterback in their right mind would want to take the 12 that Aaron Rodgers wore for so long with such great distinction. And now Joe Namath said Aaron Rodgers could wear his number in, in New York, but Aaron said, no, I'll wear, I'll wear eight, which was his college number. I bring this all up because there's one guy who's been handed out a legend's number, if we're to believe his Instagram and the locker room and his locker. We're going to hear from that guy first, and then I'll tell you who it is. But at least from the sound, it doesn't appear that he's adjusted all too well to his new surroundings. Yeah, Boston a little different. I'm out here long sleeve with a sweater on, still freezing. Folks walk around in skirts, shorts, no beanie hoodie, nothing. That's Antonio Gibson, a new Patriots acquisition, been a commander. He was given the number 12 by the New England Patriots. If we're going by what his locker says, they gave a middling running back Tom Brady's number. Which makes me think, draw males like f Tom Brady, f that legendary stuff. Can th- can this last? I th- I don't even know how the Crafts were like. Yeah, that's fine, because the Crafts, despite their issues with Belichick, have been nothing but, and you would imagine, positive in their in their thoughts about Tom Brady. He had a Tom Brady day. How does Antonio Gibson get the number twelve in New England? It's more believable to me that like. Every locker just has the number 12 on And they're honoring him? <laughs> yeah, like just every single locker in the offseason is just like, this is the this is this the, is the Tom, stand, This is the standard? <laughs> this is the Tom Brady Memorial locker room. Like, <laughs> But it has, yeah, maybe you put a 12 up on the ceiling or you, you put a 12 in the carpet. You go, don't walk on 12. Like some, some <laughs> college locker rooms do that where don't walk on the logo and make people walk around it, particularly if you're visiting. Which is like, why, why'd you put a logo on the yeah, floor? Yeah, you don't. Yeah. There's a there's a giant space in this floor where I can't walk on. Thanks. Why, why would you do that? Just put it on the ceiling. Like other people do. I'm, I'm glad this locker room costs three million dollars to make. It, yeah. Now <laughs> and I, I take can't a, walk on. I have to take a detour I to get to walk my on locker. Twenty five percent of it. Yeah, but Sweet. the picture is up. Antonio Gibson, his Patriots locker has the number twelve. Is there like? I don't know. I feel like I feel like Rappaport should report on something now, like this. Now, like yeah, like like. Uh, uh, oh, Florio. See, we're getting tricked. 
Oh. <laughs> they got me. It's 21. So, somehow, because. Was it backwards? Yeah. No, there are images of 12, but apparently it's been switched. Someone decided for whatever reason to mess with his Instagram post and change it to a 21. Just got to scroll down a little bit. So Antonio Gibson is going to wear 12, but somehow then the, the initial image was of t- uh, it's, he's going to wear 21, but the initial image was a 12. Uh, I don't even, it's not even a ball sacking thing because. Just just someone did so, it for the love of the game? Don't, someone did it for the love of the game. He will wear, the uniform numbers have come out, so he will wear 21. So Gerard Mayo's not <laughs> not disrespecting one of the, uh, well, the legend of Patriots history. He will wear 21. I was just trying to, that makes sense. It. What makes more sense, Sean, that, Every locker had 12 to honor Tom Brady or someone said, you know, I'm going to take some time out of my day <laughs> to switch those numbers to see who reacts. Get on Photoshop, you know, cut the cut out the two on the front, put it behind the one. Boom. We just got uh, we just got a thousand retweets right there. Yeah, um, it's a very good. And I just assumed because it came directly from his Instagram story that it would be the case. But it's unbelievable. And. And it's not real that so he would have been twelve. Screen, someone screenshotted his Instagram. Yeah, if you switch just ty- the number, if you just type in Antonio Gibson, you'll see they screenshotted an Instagram story and then flipped the numbers for whatever reason for fun. Um, I didn't know. Was, I, I guess anything's easy as long as you're capable. But it's it's a really good job. You would not be able to well, tell. Well, yeah, because the font all, all you're doing is just changing where the numbers are. Yeah. So no. He will be. He will not be wearing twelve, which seemed inconceivable, and it is. He's wearing twenty-one. They should have done it as like, they should, uh, like the Patriots should have done it on uh, April Fools. Just been like, we're so happy to to give like they, this. Wow. They this, can't do it on April Fools. No one's gonna buy it. Running back. No one's gonna buy it. <laughs> this is number twelve. Yeah. Um. So it is. It is the off season, and someone decided they wanted to do it, and they got me. But I thought it, it looked it looks real. Um, but Antonio Gibson's wearing twenty one, so that's enough about the Patriots going forward. Um, they're going to be a bad football team, and they may be up. Drake May should ask for the number twelve. Drake May should ask Merrill Hodge to stop talking about him. To be honest with you, we'll get to that coming back um, as we are due for a break. I was going to get into the Patriots are going to be a bad football team, and they're going to be looking for a quarterback. It shouldn't be Drake May if we're listening to Merrill Hodge. Merrill Hodge, known for ripping quarterbacks and and sometimes being right about them, the ones he's right about go viral. He had he had words for Drake May, and they weren't positive. He did he did a podcast, and I don't I didn't know when he became a quarterback evaluator, but he is one now. And if you want you want virality, you want you want Merrill Hodge to say something and it to go viral. Just have him talk about quarterbacks. So he talked about Drake. He talked about other quarterbacks. He wasn't very complimentary of Caleb Williams. He's done that in the past. But who he compared Drake May to and, and what he went on to say, if you think his evaluations are dead on, you're not taking Drake May. So we'll talk about that when we come back.
The Del Olalea Show continues on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's your host, Del Olalea. Welcome back. We know it's draft season. The guy who sits in the seat from 7 to 10 is your preeminent draft expert. So if you're looking for draft questions, a lot of you guys call him. And as we get closer and closer to the draft, those questions will keep coming. Um, we're only, what, about three weeks away now from the NFL draft. So that means the prominent voices will be asked for interviews and they will give their opinions. And, a, and one guy who gives his opinion openly and isn't afraid to tell it like it is, at least in his opinion, is Merrill Hodge. He went on WCCO radio and gave his opinion on some of the quarterbacks because WCCO is based out of Minneapolis, and it's a place where quarterbacks are going to be the topic of conversation because of Kirk Cousins no longer being there, and they have two first-rounders. One of those is thanks to the Texans. So Minnesota is a prime spot for a potential trade-up. So they're going to ask about quarterbacks. Mayor Hodge was asked about multiple quarterbacks, but his most flagrant comments were about the UNC quarterback Drake May, who a lot of teams are going to be interested in because of Daniels and Caleb Williams are the first two off the board, not necessarily in that order, then maybe the draft starts with Drake May. Here is Merrill Hodge on Drake May. Drake May will get you fired. Drake May is the kind of player who gets you fired. Um, and especially you draft him in the top five, in the top three, you know, he's going to get you fired. And for, let's use the process and accuracy, I am not seeing, I cannot, Malik Willis might be the only guy I could think of that is as erratic um, as Drake May. Um, it is, I I studied him for two years, and I am telling you, I have yet to find, actually, I would say probably his best game. I watched every one of his games last year. It's probably the pit game. And that was an average football game. His last game, the NC State game, was the most, embarrassing display I'd ever seen from a guy who's supposed to be an elite franchise quarterback. Um, when you talk about accuracy, it is erratic everywhere, not in just some areas. Like everybody, you know, I, I get people who've heard me talk about him. And like, well, Josh Allen was a, was inconsistent. Now, Josh Allen, okay, was inconsistent vertically, period. And there's a reason for that. My, my son played at BYU. My, my son played quarterback at BYU. Josh Allen and him cross. I've known Josh Allen for a long time. And even Jim Kelly told me this before Josh Allen. You know, he was like the one thing. And everybody said it, which it was true. Like, you know, Josh Allen from, you know, 50 in, he was not erratic. It's when you went over 50. He could throw it 150 yards or 250 yards. He swore it was going to go. And, and, and that was absolutely true. And here's what the problem is, which goes to another layer of college. You have 20 hours to work. And I was even talking to him. He's like, you know, I got 20 hours to work. We really didn't work on it that much. And um, we were- Merrill Hodge, if I'm Drake May, I'm going to need your, I'm going to need Merrill Hodge to keep my name out of your mouth because he has been on a tour of getting after Drake May. And look, my agenda is that Drake May isn't as good as what people think he is. Not that he's not a first rounder, not that he's as erratic as Malik Willis, which is the most disrespectful thing you could say. Because Malik Willis was inaccurate. You couldn't trust where the ball was going. And that's shown on tape. I don't know if Drake May is that bad. Now, I wasn't watching tape. I watched his games. I watched a lot of ACC football and couldn't see what people, what other people were seeing before the season, during the season, and now after the season. People still love Drake May. But Merrill Hodge, if I'm Drake May, I'm putting out something where a cease and desist. No one ever asked Merrill Hodge about me. Because when he talks about me, nothing kind comes out. And um, so if you are, I don't know if you're Drake May defender, but maybe you like Drake May as a quarterback, you and Merrill Hodge will be at odds. And even I, noted Drake May hype hater, ain't going to go as far as calling him Malik Willis. I wonder how much of Merrill Hodge is just like, what if I just say everyone stinks? And it like, might be part of that. Chances are. Chances are. I'll be I'm right. Gonna be, I'm going to be right more than not. Because most quarterbacks aren't good, even if they're drafted in the first round. Not most. It's, just, it's a little bit more than half. Uh, the 2021 draft, most quarterbacks weren't good. Also saying specifically, like, he'll get you fired. Where it's like, hey, listen, 
all of these guys get fired. Yeah, Justin Herbert. Who <laughs> Bill, tra- Bill Belichick just got fired. Yeah. Justin Herbert cut just, his Justin coach Herbert, who has been pretty good last year, notwithstanding, wasn't great, and then he got injured. Two co- head coaches have been fired with him, yeah. and he's been a pro bowler. Uh, Trevor Lawrence was the n- number one pick, <laughs> got, got a coach fired. Yeah, who who doesn't get fired? But I get it. He, he, he's, the, he's the quarterback that if you draft in the first round, is going to get you fired, specifically because you backed him and maybe not someone else. It, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, isn't that what people said about Josh Allen, too? And he brought up Josh Allen that he was only vertically challenged or whatever he was yeah. talking about. He, yeah, throwing the ball down the field. Yeah, Drake May is, if you watch him, at least I've watched him, the accuracy issues, I think Merrill Hodge is dead on. Whether he's Malik Willis inaccurate, that's a different story, but crossing routes he'll hit guys on the back shoulder he'll stop them from running because they have to slow down he he does a lot of that uh lance has talked about him throwing the ball too hard uh on those routes like if he wants to throw the ball downfield great put something on it but the guy who's screaming across the field five yards down the field give him a chance you, you're putting too much on it so there are some concerns and and as i said i have them myself but the malik, the malik willis stuff the guy who who lost his job to Josh Dobbs a couple years ago, Tennessee couldn't even ride with Malik Willis. They had to go get Josh Dobbs. That that one's a rough one for, for Drake May now. All he has to do is go out there and prove Merrill Hodge wrong, but he is another one on the hit list for Merrill Hodge, and uh, we'll see. Um, I think he's a mid to late first-round talent, but he's going to get drafted in the top six or so because – Quarterback, quarterback starved teams are going to have to make a move, and maybe the Vikings are one of them, but not if they listen to that interview. Yeah. I, I, also, it says, like, the description of this, like, because I just played it off the player uh, online. It says, why he doesn't see Drake May as a star, not being a big fan of uh, – of and not being a big fan of J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, so, he didn't like J.J. McCarthy In case either. you're wondering, also doesn't like J.J. McCarthy. I don't get the J.J. McCarthy thing either, but but I'm probably never going to be as aggressive on it as Merrill Hodge is because, um, as you said, his job or maybe his thing is just to say everyone sucks. Like, I just I, – I don't know what the Merrill Hodge, like, this guy's awesome take is. Yeah, everyone knows the Johnny Manziel one. Which <laughs> was dead on, clearly. I don't know what he said about the good quarterbacks. <laughs> like, what do you, was he like a big Pat Mahomes guy? I don't know. Yeah, it would be, some, be something t- – <laughs> He's been wrong on quarterbacks, Mitch Trubisky too. is the quarterback that gets you fired. The, well, good one. <laughs> um, the question is, is he – not just is he wrong on the guys who were – like because he, he thought they were good and they were wrong and they were bad, but is he ever wrong on the guys who were who were, um, who were were who are bad that he thought was good? I don't know if we, we have those I, answers. I'm just asking, does he think anyone's good? He's got to because he's got to balance it somehow. You can't <laughs> like, just say everyone's bad. I just I've never heard him say someone's good. I, I don't those, know because those don't go viral. I'm not listening to every Merrill Hodge interview. This uh, one struck me because it's part of my agenda, but also because of how strong he was in his opinion. Part of my agenda. My agenda is Drake May is not as good as what people think. Not that he's not a good player. Um, I never would have said he's not as he's as bad as a fourth round talent like uh, Malik Willis is, but I just think if you draft him. You're going to be sorry. I hope the Patriots do draft him and give him number 12. <laughs> See how it works out for him. Well, he won't have to uh, – at least he won't have to uh, bribe uh, Antonio Gibson. For the, <laughs> yeah, the because the Photoshop got me there. And speaking of that, we didn't even talk about it, that Jimmy Ward was bribed by – no, it wasn't Jimmy Ward. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy it was Ward. Jimmy Ward. Was bribed by Stephon Diggs for the number one because – 100 grand. 713 is what they're pushing. CJ, Stephon, and Tank. Seven one three. I don't know if that's the reason they did it, but that's the, those those are the photoshops I've seen. I don't think that's worth a hundred thousand dollars. If I'm Stephon Diggs, if I'm uh, Jimmy Houston, Ward, definitely is. If I'm Houston Texans uh, media, then yes. Yeah, if they please, can- Stephon Diggs, whatever it takes to get you into number one, so we can have uh, or the social media team, so I can so I can have a post of the. These three guys it goes the seven one three. Now great offenses generally get nicknames. If they're great, we're calling it the seven one three offense, right? That's what it's gonna get called, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean I the, what else would it be? Um uh, Or is is NRG in the seven one three? 
I don't know uh, Houston Texans offices. I'm sure it's seven one three. Run, run, uh, C J S D T D. That's too much. <laughs> it's a reference to basketball. It's just too much. The seven one three offense is probably what it'll. It's what, also passed. I want to be run. Yeah, yeah. Seven one three offense is probably what it'll be called if they're really good, and that's the hope. But C J and the double D's. Diggs and the Texans have gone yeah. gone far beyond who I think they would acquire as far as their past, but they're not calling their offense. They're not sanctioning the double D offense. Okay, <laughs> that's a step too far, Sean. All right. Um, maybe maybe someone as clever as you will put it on a shirt, and then the Texans will shut that shirt down. You're not using you're not using our logo, and you're not using that terminology <laughs> for our, for that your shirt. That filth, filth and flarm, that dirty, filthy <laughs> stuff. But I wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure they'd have to buy it, a copyright from someone. I'm sure someone already has that as as something they're going to put on their own shirts, the 713 offense. But I'm sure the Texans wouldn't mind. Eh, they probably would, cutting out a chunk of change to get it. I'm Maybe sure not can, 100K like Stefan gave Jimmy Ward. They can do something. Where, yeah, the 713 connection, the 713 something. offense. Yeah, the, yeah, something. Connection works. Phone, yeah. throwing the football. 713 connection would work. Uh, we'll see. But... That's that's the other news that Stefan Diggs is in a Texans helmet. It's not really news. It happens all the time. Stefan Diggs in a Texans helmet working out with CJ and Tank Dell. So they're already trying to build a bond, which will evaporate the first time Stefan Diggs doesn't get enough targets. What? Now, what? Why maybe, are you doing that? Okay, maybe by week week eight. Let's say he'll be okay the first four or five weeks if he thinks his targets are lower than he wants. But by week eight. And then uh, November – uh, you know, w- three targets, one catch, 19 yards, then he's out. He'll finish out the year, but the, the, the rumors will begin about Stefan Diggs won't be back as a Houston Texan. There'll be, there'll be tweets from, like, DJ BNMA and, uh, and Cody Stutes and the, the Texans press core Brooks Cabina being yeah. like, oh, no, actually Brooks left, uh, being like, you know, there's a lot of shouting overheard in the <laughs> Texans locker room before uh, before the media was let into. Uh, <laughs> I oh uh, yeah, that that, that <laughs> report after their you know 34 to 27 loss to whatever. Yeah, the they'll, Jags. They'll, they'll lose to a, or yeah, maybe the Jags or someone else. Is lo- it could be heard overheard. Yeah, the close <laughs> through the closed doors. A lot of shouting before the media was allowed in. Yeah, that we hope that tweet doesn't happen. Because it would suggest that Stefan Diggs is being Stefan Diggs. I, I like how we're blaming him for it already. He hasn't <laughs> even done anything. He hasn't done anything yet. We're just going off reputation. And it appears he's thrilled to be here already working out. But we can we can suspect. And hopefully he, he's, he feels great. He gets his 90-plus targets. He's productive. The whole offense is productive. And we don't have any problems. And then we're having the discussion we want to have is, what at what number should we bring Stefan Diggs back? Because everyone will want him back because the Texans have had a good year offensively and he's been a main cog in that. Either way, that should be a good offense. We'll just have to figure out who gets the bulk of the targets, or maybe they're distributed evenly because it requires that. Because who can you guard when you've got Tank Nico and Stefan Diggs? And we'll that'll be figured out as we get through the season. But positivity for the Texans and Stefan Diggs already working out with your with your favorite Texans. 713 offense, Sean. Copyright it before it's too late. Yeah, it's already too late. I'm sure if you find, if you look for it, it's probably already been copyrighted. SDCD with the uh, Collins. Maybe maybe include the number one receiver you're, from you're, last year's team. You're really into the initials. <laughs> I don't know. Because what do you what am I supposed to do with Diggs, Dell, and Collins? And Stroud, C.J. Stroud. It's not, it's not a great name. A tough one. It's not great name, a name to co- combine those names. But I think if you find some way to include Houston, Gulf Coast, H-Town, whatever you need, there there are many options that way to try to make a buck. And if you like to print out shirts, uh, that's got to be the combination. Creativity, needing to make money, and maybe you got a good deal on shirts. You can sell, sell them out in front of the stadium. Before. Oh, I need a press pass. Why? Sean just walking around selling shirts at the games for the Texans to throw <laughs> the, them out. The trunk of my car is open. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're tailgating <laughs> with T-shirts. Yeah, hey, hey, just don't don't snitch. Let Sean make his bucks. We got a couple more segments to go here on the show. We'll get more, we'll get more into the Astros as they 
as they get a win, they'll try to get the second win tonight of that series and even it up before they head out of town. And our very own Lance Zerline got aggregated for a quote or at least a tweet about your one of your guys, Devondre Sweat. We'll talk about what's going on with Devondre Sweat. We'll get into some Astros and some Rockets before we close it out. We'll be back. The Dell Olalea Show continues on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's your host, Dell Olalea. Gallant and George won't be in studio because they're going to be broadcasting live from Space Cadet Bar. Then they'll be followed by the Killer Bees. You can join the guys to watch the National Championship game and the Astros versus the Rangers tonight. They'll also have special burger and beer combo deals. Well, not them, but Space Cadet Bar will. Uh, bucket specials and victory beers for the Astros game. And if you're asking what a victory beer is, kind of self-explanatory. The Astros win, you get a beer. But you have to arrive by the third inning, and clearly, once again, the Astros have to win, and you'll get a free victory beer. So make sure you get to the Space Cadet on Monday, which is today. <laughs> this is what happens when you read the copy word for word. You hang out with us and stay for the Astros and the national title game. So Gallant and George will be out there and the Killer Bees get, getting you ready. At least Gallant and George will be getting you ready for the title game, and you can stay and watch the game with the Killer Bees as uh, they'll be out there. Unfortunately, the Cougs aren't involved, but Jamal Shedd did win National Defensive Player of the Year. He won the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year Award, and we saw the impact of Jamal Shedd 
by his absence, if not for his absence in a game where they're leading 16 to 10 and he turns his ankle and what would have been a layup that would have been would have led to the Cougars being 18 to 10. They probably win that game against Duke. You saw the offense, excuse me, the defense, particularly in the second half, kind of fall apart because their stalwart, the guy, their plan of attack defender was not around. And Jeremy Roach had a big second half. And that certainly contributed to the Cougs' loss as uh, they bowed out in the Sweet 16. But Jer- but Jamal Shedd, certainly a guy who's being acknowledged for what he meant to the program and what he just meant as a basketball player. And uh, he was given that award over the weekend. So congratulations, congratulations to Jamal Shedd and the Cougars as they, as they produced a National Defensive Player of the Year. I did want to talk about Tavondre Sweat. Devondre Sweat's a defensive tackle because of where he played. A lot of people have been interested in where he might go. Are there, there are certainly weight concerns, and now beyond what some people question as far as his off-the-field stuff, there's even a bigger deal. Devondre Sweat was arrested for a DUI, and you can't really think of an excuse why he would put himself in that situation other than a lack of care. Um, and this is just even beyond the fact that he's a pro prospect. We all know what a potentially dangerous thing that could have been if someone was involved in an accident occurred. We all know what something like that could do to to a life and then a family who was affected by it. But thankfully, no one was hurt, but he was arrested with the DWI. And our one Lance Sterling tweeted about it, and he tweets this. I would be surprised if he's still on their board, and he's referencing the Texans, I mean, never say never, but I'm not sure the Texans want to disrupt momentum with a player they may not be able to trust. That is just a guess. And that is not simply because of the DWI. He is a guy who had questions, as I said, about off-the-field stuff before. And, of course, because everyone's looking for a pop, everyone's looking for aggregation, the SI arm, at least the Houston Texans arm of SI, put it this way. (laughs) Among those, the Houston Texans who have been connected to the player, but who now, according to one plugged-in report, might not be at all attracted to sweat. Plugged-in report. Lance, who said, I'm just guessing, assuming the Texans might not want him, was given the the headline of plugged-in report. I don't know by reading that how plugged-in report came into play. So plugged-in? He's... He is a preeminent draft analyst. He is, and he is in the city of Houston. In the city of Houston, and a report. That's not a report. His, his tweet was over 10, 10, uh, 10 words long. That's a report. <laughs> That's not a report. No, uh, no. When he's... you when you write at the end of it, just a guess, it means it's not a report. <laughs> Again, it was over ten long, ten words long, so I didn't get to the end. <laughs> I only read what I wanted to read. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's the danger. Beyond being tricked into thinking Antonio Gibson's wearing 12 when someone just photoshopped it, this is the, the other danger of just uh, using the internet as a source. Lance, simply giving his opinion, is now being sourced as a report about why the Texans won't take Tavondre Sweat. Hey. Okay. I, I, you know what? I, I When Tavondre Sweat is drafted by any other team that isn't the Texans, we have to say Lance Sirline was right. He was he was on that, it first. That plugged in report first reported by Lance, Lance Erline. When he they was don't all, pick him, he was always off the Texans board as soon as the DWI arrest occurred. I always wonder with like off like they're off his or you know he's off their board where it's like all right their last pick of the draft Tavondre Swift's still there. You're still not picking him. <laughs> like like you're still not picking him. How far down does he have to fall before? The off the board stuff becomes well. You know what? He's fallen far Th- enough. I don't they have two fifth round picks? I think they have two, or either they have two fifths or sixth. Come on. Will they not burn one? <laughs> you have two of them. You're already not really expecting this person to be a super key cog. Like what? Are, yeah. It's a dart throw at that o- point. Off the board means get this guy an Uber and we're good. Yeah, a driver. Get <laughs> yeah. him a driver. Off the board means until you can't until the value suggests you can't you can't pass them up. Even in the deep second round, like their second of second round picks, is he going to be off the board then for them? I imagine I imagine that he goes from being a second round pick to a third round pick because of this. Yeah. 
Well, it happened with um, what's his name, the 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 Georgia defensive tackle. He still he fell, but he's still a first round pick. Jalen Carter. Jalen Carter. He was still a first yeah. round pick, and his driving involved something worse than Tavondre Sweat. And they're like, you know what? But he was also. We're talking about he he was being talked about as like a top five pick, and, and he, he was, was the ninth pick. Yeah, he he dropped or like eleventh something. He like dropped that. to not even midway through the first round, and he was a convicted of or at least accused of something heinous if you want if we want, we're talking about the speeding and and what and what happened i mean the story is not a good one and and you know what the, the eagles are like he's too good of a talent now Tavondre sweat isn't think, thought of that highly but how far is he going to really fall when we've seen an example of the team not caring that much and eagle fans rejoicing because four teams decided they didn't want him and it, if it was even really four, because other people had different needs. So yeah. how many teams really decided we can't trust this guy? We can't take him. Yeah, I mean, I think you. I mean, Will Anderson uh, was Will Anderson the only defensive player that was taken before him? I guess uh, Witherspoon, but he plays corner, so that's not really the same. Yeah, and multiple teams needed quarterbacks. Yeah, it's like three quarterbacks went a, ahead. A of team him. traded up for Will Anderson. The team being the Texans, obviously. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. Um, to Lance's point, I don't. I maybe don't disagree. To his report, no. His plugged in report, no. Despite what SI says, uh, to his Sports Illustr- I have on one hand Sports Illustrated, and the other hand, I have a guy who said just a guess in his actual tweet. <laughs> does does the name Sports Illustrated not mean anything? Not anymore, oh, does it? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it doesn't. It, doesn't, it means <laughs> nothing anymore. Uh, so no, it doesn't. And this is one of the reasons why when you have a guy in the tweet saying I guess and uh, plugged in report. No. Again, when he's not on the Texans on April t- whatever twenty ninth, whenever the second round is, it it'll be a plugged in report as first reported by Lance Erline. I'll retweet it and be like, <laughs> Lance had it first. <laughs> uh, the he, Texans are never the hashtag Texans were never going to draft him. Well, well at as, Lance Erline, lo- you're right. As long as they don't draft him, then his you can classify it as a report, and then we can give Lance the credit, which. He would take it. He would take it. I was right. See? My that, reporting is that's right. The, that's the, that's thing the with problem. Lance. That's the thing with Lance. If you said as first reported by Lance Zerline, he'd be like, You're thanks. Thank right you. Now, I was right. But right now, I'm guessing if you show him this, he's he, like, Oh, I oh I sh- it was part of the show, the previous show. He wasn't thrilled. Yeah. He goes, he goes well, I didn't this is not a report. I'm I'm I told you I was guessing. <laughs> because you never wanted to come back where the Texans do take him, and then everyone's like, Oh, <laughs> I mean, actually, it is funny. Every sentence of this, he is kind of like covering his own ass, hedging the entire where time. It's like, I would be surprised if he's still on the board because he he has a. He, despite us making fun of him, I mean, never say never. He's got a prominent voice, <laughs> and people are following. And he, if that gets out there that he is being definitive on something and he's wrong, he's going to get crushed. Oh, I thought you said they wouldn't take him. And now that size, like, well, yeah, and then that's just. <laughs> Never say never, but I'm not sure the Texans would want to disrupt the momentum that they may not be able to trust. He tried everything possible to <laughs> make it, to make people aware that he's not saying it won't happen. And he tweeted like a player they may not be able to trust like 12 hours after he was arrested for a DWI. And he, you and, might not be able to trust them. And guy. he couldn't avoid. He still couldn't avoid being aggregated and that is just a guess and putting it out as a report. But shout out to SI because if. If Lance is wrong and they do take Tavondre Sweat, we'll just make fun of him. And we'll say, hey, they told us you were plugged in. Apparently you're not. We'll see how that goes. If you want to be- if, if you want to bet on where Tavondre Sweat goes, I'm sure that prop will be up at some point. And a place it may be up is my bookie. You can go to mybookie.ag, the website, to place bets on props, on the games. You have a thought on who's going to win the national title game. Or maybe you think, maybe you think Connecticut doesn't cover for the first time in the last couple of tournaments, my bookie will take care of you there. If you sign up now and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit, all the way up to one thousand dollars. But you can also, if you put in just two hundred, you get three hundred ready to play instantly using promo code BET nine seven five. And of course, the fun doesn't stop there. You get up to the minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions, and help you decide who to put your money on. And the best part about my bookie is you can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere. So you've got the sports gambling aspect of it. You also have the casino as well. So if you like poker, blackjack, MyBookie has you covered there. Just go to MyBookie.ag. Remember, use that promo code BET975 to secure your welcome bonus today. 
only with my bookie. Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's the Dell Olalea Show. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Now back to Dell Olalea. Perfect timing. We all know Jeremy Branham loves to give you his draft class. It just so happens that, now this happened before Tavondre Sweat was arrested, that Chad Reeder of NFL.com, you know, the place that Lance works, has Tavondre Sweat falling to the Texans at 59. Now, th- like I said, this is before the DWI. Plugged in report. <laughs> this is actually a report, or at least a mock draft, by Tavondre Sweat, uh, excuse me, by Chad Reader, that has Tavondre Sweat falling to the Texans. So, so it's Chad versus Lance. We'll see who wins. Let's pin them against each other, uh, pit them against each other, excuse me, and see who's right. And who knows? Uh, maybe, maybe Lance knew that the Texans liked them until – this DWI occurred. So there is some smoke about the Texas defensive tackle joining the Texans, or at least them drafting him. And we'll see if his off the field stuff changes the Texans opinions who have shown a willingness to ignore off the field stuff. The last couple, well, the last couple of weeks, the Stefan Diggs stuff was really not off the field. It's just the diva wide receiver narrative that is around him. And then we know about the Joe Mixon stuff that, was probably more shocking they made that trade as opposed to acquiring Stefan Diggs. Sean and I started this show saying the Astros weren't particularly fun or good, but they were interesting now, and that's the case. Because of their slow start, the assuredness of this team being really good, I don't know if it's dissipated for everyone, but I watched the games not really sure – If this Astros team will turn it around, I don't think there'll be a team that's around 500 throughout the year. I just, because of how they've played and how they've pitched on all levels and mostly the back half of the bullpen, which has been the probably one of the more disappointing aspects of the season so far. How, how can you trust them? And when do we start to feel good? I think if Robert can stack another good start, on top of the previous one, I start to believe that maybe, maybe Fromber is the Fromber of 2022, not the one of last year. And then, and then when Verlander comes back, if you missed it, he probably will make one more 
minor league start with the Space Cowboys before he rejoins the major league club, as long as there are no setbacks. And he felt good. I mean, didn't pitch particularly well in the second or fourth inning of his outing yesterday, but he does feel good, feels healthy, so that's good news. So you get him back, you get Fromber pitching well, and at some point Josh Hader stop, give, stops giving up runs. I'll feel better. But right now, I'm with Sean. Their, their Astros are interesting because I'm not sure what's going to happen from night to night. Yeah. Can, can the Astros just win two straight games? Then I'll start feeling better. Ooh. If they just a two-game win streak. Ooh. That's not a bad milestone <laughs> at this point in I the was, season. At first, I was going to say a three-game win streak, and I thought that would be let's get that's the, a bit much. Let's get the two first. Let's, yes. yes. Let's get the two first. And then when, when the Astros do get a two- or three-game win streak, at some point this season, I will feel better. Well, but right now. Hopefully it's not in June. Yeah. <laughs> if it's in June, you're not going to feel better. I, okay, addendum. Before In the month of April, they need to win. <laughs> they need to have a two- or three-game win streak before I start feeling I'm going to say before April 15th. <laughs> that works, too. <laughs> Let's win two in a row before next Monday at some point. And then I'll feel good. Hopefully it starts tonight. But because if we're still doing this thing, because the Astros, the way they play, they're gonna if they lose, it'll probably a two to three game losing streak until Ronel Blanco's Blanco's on the mound, and then we'll then he's our stopper, and then he'll end the losing streak. Have you have you seen their schedule by the way? I mean, it's not it's not it doesn't feel, make me feel good about yeah, the possibilities. The, tonight's game against the Rangers, and then uh, the Royals for a three game set in Kansas City. And then the Rangers at Minute Maid Park. So Oof. playing the Rangers in Minute Maid feels like you're hoping to avoid the sweep. And then and then a three game uh series at Minute Maid again against the Atlanta Braves. So the real opportunity is the six and two Atlanta Braves. <laughs> Oof. So at home. And we and know then, and we know they own that ballpark. And then you get you know, then you get to go on the road to uh to the Nationals and Cubs and Rockies. But I'm going to hope Fromber wins tonight, and then you you stack a couple in Kansas City. Yeah, take win tonight, get two out of three in Kansas. And City. And all of a sudden, you're feeling a little better. Astros baseball is back, folks. Yeah, you you get uh you get Christian Javier at the good start, JP France. Then you hope and pray Hunter Brown doesn't blow up. I was gonna say, doesn't matter who gets the wins, or is it just? I, I feel like yes, because I feel like if. Christian Javier, Fromber, and er, and France get wins or pitch well at least. Then when Verlander comes back, he can dump Hunter, Hunter Brown into the bullpen. Or Hunter Brown starts pitching well. What's more like? What's the likely scenario? Because if hey. Ronel Blanco is going to keep pitching well, they're not going to drop. They're not going to drop Javier or France for any reason when when Verlander comes back, right? So it's either going to be Brown or Blanco. So I'm. I'm going to assume that's how a spot is going to operate. So I would just assume that Brown won't pitch. I'll take Javier, Fromber, and and France pitching well because I feel like those three are going to be in there no matter what. And then if Brown's going to be terrible, then okay, there's some guy coming up in a week or so that's going to get you out of there anyway. Hey, I'm just saying a lot of people compared Hunter Brown or just Hunter Brown to Justin Verlander when Hunter Brown just first came up and I now know, look at him. I know. Now look at him. Well, they they had basically the same outing the last the last time got, out. Fellow people, he got to that joke before I did. I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> they both had very similar appearances in their last outing. So yes, at, um, least, at least Hunter Brown stunk it up against the World major, Series champ. Yeah, at least not, it was against Major League hitting not the Albuquerque Isotopes or whoever. <laughs> Whoever uh, Verlander pitched. Yeah, whoever. Whoever. Uh, the first and third, good. The second and fourth, disasters for Verlander, relatively speaking. He didn't get hurt, so we'll take that. But, yeah. Um, I'm, the the I, second I rehab start, I want a few more outs. This, this, this <laughs> is what I said earlier. Sure, he's working on stuff, but I would like my former Cy Young to get people out, even if he's working on stuff. Triple There's, A hitters? Yes. Can he not get You can work on stuff and get those guys out. That's what I'm asking for, and he didn't do that in two innings. Can the stuff he's working on be get Good. outs? <laughs> yeah, work on getting outs. Not giving up runs work. To, to guys that make $40,000 a year? Yes. <laughs> work on getting outs, please. And we hopefully that continues in his next outing before he's back with the Major League Club. We are done for the day. As I mentioned, the rest of the lineup will be out at Space Cadet Sports Bar. Go out and join them. Get a chance for a free beer. Fromber pitches well, and the Astros win as long as you're there by the third inning. They're handing out free beers for that. And, of course, the national title games, they will be out there enjoying it as well. So hang out with the lineup. 
And we'll be back tomorrow. Happy Monday. Welcome into Glotton, Georgia on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from Space Cadet Bar in the Heights. Uh, make sure you come out watch the national championship game here tonight or the Astros game. If you get here by the start of the third inning and the Astros do something for maybe the fourth time this year, which is get a win, uh, you can get a free victory beer Hell as yeah. well. So it would be nice if the Astros uh, did some people some favors. And got them some free beer here at Space Cadet. But right, because the only guy doing gosh. anyone any favors is Ronel Blanco. Everyone else sucks. Uh, everyone else is bad, Paul. That, that's how I feel right now about the Astros. One and two this weekend. You lose 10 to two, seven to two, and then you win three to one. The Astros three wins this season. They've given up zero hits, one hit, and two hits. So when they give up less than two hits, they're incredible. That is not sustainable. It's not. Are you sure? I 100% know that, Joe. <laughs> They are so bad at the plate. I don't understand. Two for 13 with runners in scoring position this weekend. 18 left on base. And all of the offense over three games came on three plays. Friday, Jake Myers hits a two-run homer when the game was decided. A two-out error on Saturday when the Astros had the bases loaded. And a three-run homer by Jordan yesterday. You have too many bats. Texas is not even throwing their top-notch arms at you because they're all injured. And that's all you could muster. And again, it's taken Ronel Blanco to do legitimately historic (laughs) stuff. 44 outs without a hit to open the year. An MLB record. Which is awesome to see. But good God. It'd be nice if some other things happened with Ronel Blanco. But nothing good is happening. I, I, he's so good. And the but, change up is special. Yeah, and and, and they talked about uh, Josh Miller talked about it yesterday. I think it was before the game or after. He's like, it's just a change up. 
He's just using it more. But it's just a changeup. Like, there's nothing there's nothing groundbreaking about this changeup. It's just a changeup. But it's worked so well for him. I mean, that game, again, like, he, he's on point the, pretty much the entire time he's in. Yeah, there's a couple walks, but he navigates it really well. But the offense is really it, – it's the story of the weekend. The bullpen, Ryan Presley sucks. Apparently, he's – Well, mentally. he was good yesterday. That's great. <laughs> he bounced back. He gave up four runs the day before. Perseverance. Um, Yeah, that's nice to see. I – Maybe he is one of those guys that has to be a closer, even though he wasn't a closer yeah. before and was good in Minnesota. And now he's apparently unable to be good again. There's there's so much good and bad, but we'll we'll go with. I'm with you. The offense. There's. I just don't even know what the answer is. Like when you look at the names in the lineup in, in the lineup card, and Jeremy tweets out, "What's wrong with Joe Spada's lineup?" Every day I look at it and I go, nothing. Like it looks pretty good. They move Jose Abreu down to the seventh spot. So I thought that was a good thing. Like, it, just because I like the aggressiveness in which Joe Espada is not afraid to try to change things around to make him better. But, man, like, all these guys just left on base. It, it is – it's, what, we're nine games into the season, whatever it is, ten games in. And every single part, every single game, even the ones in which they're winning, they're leaving guys on base all the time. And not just guys on base. They're leaving bases loaded. They're leaving two guys on. They're not leaving one out, one run out there. They're leaving multiple runs out there on a daily basis, and it's it's a different guy. It's the problem every single day. It can be Bregman. It can be Abreu. It can be Chaz. It's been a lot of Bregman, honestly. A lot of focus is on Jose Abreu right now, Paul, but I think a lot of the heat should be looking at Alex Bregman because he, he just is. just starts slow. This is too slow. Come on, though. He starts slow. You don't know ball, Joe. You don't follow the Astros enough. They're just, but they're, why are they so broken? Why well, are they so broken uh, there's no with Dusty runners? There's Baker anymore. I, the lineup just doesn't work. And I hope it fixes itself. But there's just something about this lineup that, on a day in and day out basis, like they just can't get guys home, and it's been this way since last October, and that's why it's not an overreaction at the beginning of the season to what they're doing, being three and seven through their first ten. This is an ex- this is an extenuation of all your problems that you had last year, and it's not just home anymore. You're on the road. You're in Arlington, where you put up 36 runs in three games last year, and you're putting up a dud all weekend. I asked a question on Saturday and I was hoping for the wrong answers only what's the worst reason that you've seen for the Astros slow start because I saw all sorts of takes out there some people are saying well they miss Dusty Baker I remember when this team used to have fun play with confidence and swag like Bregman used to we should have never brought in old man Dusty Baker. He ruined this team and their confidence. It's still carrying over today. So some people are blaming wow. Dusty for being here. Some are blaming Dusty not being here anymore. That's a, that's a, that's quite a take, Paul. <laughs> to blame Dusty Baker on the 2024 <laughs> Astros struggles because he took the fun out of the game is so stupid. I love people. They look lifeless just going through the motions uh, <laughs> it is very amusing to me to see all these excuses being put out there. Now, it is a disastrous start. They are running into some bad luck with the schedule that they have and the injuries that they have. But the injuries are not the reason for this slow start because the injuries are all in the starting rotation. So, uh. yeah, this isn't like, you know, like if let, let's say, you know, Verlander, McCullers, Garcia, or Key, all those guys were healthy, and they were pitching the way they were. If if it was Altuve, Alvarez, and Bregman were the guys that were hurt, and this is what your offense would do, and you'd be like, okay, like you're, you're missing three of your best guys. Last year, that was part one of the big excuses, and it was valid because there was a lot of time where Altuve and Jordan were not in the lineup, either one of them or both of them. Like you lost last year two of your best players for huge chunks of the season, and then this year, everyone's there. They're all there, and – the people are wanting to change the lineup again because of Jordan Alvarez hitting second. He his quote the other day he had about you know just being different. It it wasn't like a red flag of like he's not comfortable. But at this point with all these guys in position, I I do want Joe Espada to change the lineup pretty dramatically. 
You wanted to change the lineup. I thought you said the lineup wasn't an issue. There's one part of the lineup that's an issue. What's that? Alex Bregman. But what are you going to do? Uh, honestly, this one, I want him to lead off. If he's just going to sit there and not swing, I'd rather him do it with no one in front of him. I'd rather him do it with no one on base. I'd rather him potentially get walked to have Jose Altuve come up second. Like, he is a hole in the lineup. But he's a slow starter. <coughs> Don't you know, Paul? Come on, Joe. He's so slow. He's a very slow starter. Okay, I mean, that could theoretically shake things up, but I think the reality is just no one's hitting. And I wish there was a simple fix for that, but everyone getting mad at Dusty Baker no longer being here or that Dusty Baker was ever here or at Joe Espada, which is a lot of the blame game is being directed all of their way. Um, maybe you should have done more on offense this offseason. No, the, the lineup should be good. Yeah. Really, they have no one to look at but themselves in the mirror, and they better figure it out because they could find themselves in, once again, a very difficult spot by the end of the year that they might have too much ground to make up to win the American League West. Yeah, seeing a, a win tonight, I know it's not a must win, but at least tying the series. Every game's a must win because you try to play to win the game. Yeah, but tying the series 2-2 two to two would, would make everyone feel much better. I would feel be, better, Before yes. Kansas City – before you play Kansas City, and then you play the Rangers again. Mm -hmm. It's like this. You're right. This schedule, the Major League Baseball did the Astros no favors, and now you get to the stretch in May where you play the Tigers, who are really just beating up on bad teams. You play the A's. You got the Nationals coming up soon. Like, like there's a weak stretch coming up. But Paul, I wish I had the confidence that the schedule was just going to magically make all these problems go away. This is the same team that got swept by the A's last year. They got swept by the Royals. That when games mattered the most and they were trying to chase down the Rangers, they were getting bullied by the two worst but, teams of baseball. But it's a new year, new team. Come on, Joe. It's a new year, new team. They're they, trying to, like, lift me up. No that. way I, they'll lose to the A's or the Royals. They're bad, and the Astros are good, despite everything that we have seen thus far. They're good. It's not just Ronel Blanco that's carrying that. Oh, wait, it really is. That's, that's the sad part about it. You have all the guys that you were expecting to carry you going into the year. Who is, who is behind Ronel Blanco? <laughs> like Rafael Montero? I mean, you have to really think long and hard on the Astros. What twenty six to open up the year? Who on this lineup was going to be less of an impactful yes. person than Blanco? Who you were hoping was the first start? You're like, all right, give us four innings. Blanco is please. Is Blanco in theory, should have been Taylor Scott. Like, that, that's who he should have been. He, he should have been Taylor Scott. <laughs> Poor Taylor Scott. Like, no, sorry, Taylor. But, like, it, it's Tyler Scott? No, it's Taylor. Um, uh, Tyler Scott, uh, what, one, of, one of many. I, I was trying to remember this Fine Gal Media Empire. Trying to, trying to remember this, this kid's name. And that's my point. Like, to your point, like, that's what Blanco was. Blanco should have been just a middle relief guy. And, look, he's been incredible. It, it, he looks so different. And... I, I it's a huge surprise. If it's sustainable, is a different question. Oh, I do you think they would have left him in if he would have had the no hitter going more, or they would have pulled him? Probably would have pulled him. I think they would have pulled him too. Like they kind of alluded to before the game that he was going to be on more of a pitch count after going 105 in the no hitter, but it, he was good again yesterday. And really, he's the only. I think is is he the only positive from this weekend? Yes. I don't know what else it'd be. Jordan, yes. Jordan's homer was awesome There's yesterday. There were three moments of offense, and one of them was because the Rangers pooped their pants. Yeah, Corey Seager got a double error. Yeah. Like, like there wasn't much good. I, Chaz McCormick had a great catch. J Jake Myers uh, had a two-run homer to, to keep yeah. him from getting shut out 10 nothing on Friday. Yeah, that was fun. We, we all left um, after Fred Fowler's uh, ceremony was awesome. Got to hear from John McClain and Jerome Solomon, among others, Jermaine and J Juggalo Trey. It was it was fun. A lot of funny stories about Fred. We're all in a good mood. And we went to uh, Little Woodrow's um, nearby afterwards, and we all get there, and we, none of us have been paying attention to the Astros game because yeah. their phones are off, and it's like eight nothing. We're like, Jesus, what what, what, did, <laughs> what did we what did we miss? You're telling me like you weren't like checking your phone. You're a good person. No, I, I noticed a couple people checking their phones. <laughs> it's a regular season Astros game. Those are terrible people, that, you, and that's what they were doing. You, you, should, you should turn your phone off during a, during a tribute to someone. Now, I will say there were a couple people who was like, did you need, did you need to speak? 
do you need to speak? Yeah. There was one person who, like, everyone was like, okay, it looked like we were wrapping up. And then this one person like, got up and he spoke for, like, 15 minutes. And That's he was, tough. Like, and, the, and the story was basically, like, TL didn't listen was, yeah, we drink. We drink a lot. <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, cool. Thanks. Thanks, man. Thanks for the 15-minute speech. We all want to go and actually do what you're talking about. Right it's like, now. it's go drink and go celebrate. <laughs> you know, celebrate life. Fred would have been rolling his eyes at that one. Yeah. Uh, that's, it's always a tough one. That's why you got, that's a tough moment, too, because what are you supposed to do? Kick him off the stage? Give him the hook? You can't do that. You play him, you got to play some music in the background. It's just like, like you got to go, dude. Yeah. It, 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 it was interesting. There was another speech where, you know, someone, someone told a great Fred story, but like sort of humble bragged about his dong size while doing it. Like it, it, it was, it was fun though. I, I think Fred would have been proud. So RIP Falcon. That's good. That's good. good. Time. Um, all right. Uh, what is your reaction to the Astros one and two weekend? They got the win yesterday, but ugly on Friday, Saturday, the offense just not doing a whole lot of nothing. All three days over the weekend. 713-780-376. The text line, twitch.tv slash ESPN975. And on YouTube at ESPN Houston. We're live here at Space Cadet here on ESPN975 and 92.5. Before we go to break, I want to talk to you guys about our friends at LaBerge. Paul, Sean, myself, we're going out there on the 24th. We'll be doing the show from LaBerge Lake Charles. Great place to place bets. Only 90 wins to go. I can't see Sean Mapes right now, but I'm sure he's just so happy to be uh, reminded that we only have to win 90 more games to cash our over-under on the Astros this season. Brian's giving me the thumbs up. Maybe he feels better than I do about that win total right now. But great place to place your bets. If you're leaving Texas and you want to go bet in Lake Charles, LaBerge is absolutely the place to do it. Great casino as well. Plenty of good restaurants. Great food at the sports book. So when you leave Texas, go to LaBerge Lake Charles. And when you go, download the Pen Play app and win up to $2,000 in Pen Play cash. It's Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Space Cadet Bar in the Heights. Here's Paul Gallant and Joe George. Broadcasting live from Space Cadet here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. If you arrive by the start of the third inning and from Rivaldas and the Astros get a victory tonight over the Texas Rangers, get a free victory beer, so come on out. Watch the Astros, watch the national championship game. UConn, Purdue. I was watching this TikTok. This guy says he's from the future. He's predicting all what? the all the championships this year. So far, he's two for two. He got <sighs> he got Michigan down to the teams they beat in the semifinals in the championship game. Wow. He got the Chiefs. 
Not like I mean, look, neither of those were huge. Oh my risks. god, he picked the Chiefs. Now he to picked win the Super Bowl. Now he picked. God, uh, he's so smart. He picked Purdue tonight. Oh wow, he picked a one seed. Whoa. <laughs> And I saw like the first. This is like the only like the eighth time yeah. one seeds this, have matched this up. This person patting himself on the back. So I I prefer to just give him a big kick in the ass. Shut up. But no what one if? Cares. But You're what if? Psychic. But what if he's? What if he is? You're not special. But if he is, that means the Boston Bruins and the Boston Celtics won championships this year, Paul. Wouldn't that make you happy? Celtics. Yeah, I don't give a sh- uh, <laughs> damn about the Bruins. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Oh, from the two A one. So it was five years ago. Bregman was the nearly AL MVP. How does he trend down like this? That's a great question. Uh, what has happened to Alex Bregman? Uh, my my initial reaction is that he has over tinkered to an extreme level. I mean, this is a guy who constantly talks about changing his swing, adjusting it. Some spring trainings, he comes in 25 pounds heavier. It's all muscle. Sometimes he comes in lighter. Sometimes it's somewhere oh, in between. I thought he always came in in the best shape of his life. He does, but sometimes it's extra best shape. Okay. But so, this is extra best shape this year. I think extra it is. Extra best contract year shape. Yeah. It's not exactly uh, getting a large uh, contract right now. I mean, look, it's early. It is early. He does start slow. This is just very slow. I just don't understand how it's gotten to this point where all the power is pretty much gone and how it was so good in 2019, and whatever fundamentally changed with his swing, with his approach, why he hasn't tried to go back a little bit. What do you mean by going back? Whatever going back it means. I mean, it was... <laughs> well, you gotta, you got to define that. I, I don't, don't know, know what that means. Uh, he was, thir- he was the, uh, the thir- third nail MVP in 2019. Whatever you changed away from that, go back. Well, what if he didn't change away from it? That's a good point. I mean, That's we don't we don't know we don't really know that he changed. We, he's just oh. off to, to a slow start. I just go off what well, I just go off what he says, and that he he tinkers a lot. Like okay. he he does he is he's talked about how he's always working to improve and tinker his swing and and just make it that much better. And it just kind of screams like he's over tinkered to a point. But I'm I'm sure he'll figure it out a little bit. Yeah, I think he's going to be fine. I I I think the the big problem with the lineup is everybody and I I think, you know, you you see hitters go through slumps all the time and Bregman is traditionally very slow this time of year. Maybe it's cuz he tinkers as much as he does, but I'm I'm not panicking over Alex Bregman yet. Yeah, what is the uh with going back to Blanco here just for a second. Is he has he I know Verlander was awful yesterday in Sugarland. I'm not going to act and sit like I didn't go to the game. He was just working on some stuff. Yeah, I know he said he, that after the game. He said it felt good. It was erratic, but it felt good. Yeah, That's well, what all pitchers say after every start ever. So, especially in spring training or the minors, it's all about just, it just feels getting good. out there. Just feels Just get out there. He gave up seven earned runs. Yeah. Like five homers yeah. or whatever it was. Uh, but Blanco has solidified a, a spot in the rotation for yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, he, I mean, he is a guy for you. If uh, France pitched – and well enough for you uh, on on Saturday. He wasn't the reason that you lost. It was entirely the meltdown by Ryan Presley that uh, uh, did you in on that game. But I think for for the rotation, if Blanco has one pitch that even if they're saying it's not that special, clearly to other teams it's befuddling, mm-hmm. then – you have to keep going with the hot hand as long as you possibly can. So, yeah, this decision's been made already. He's in the rotation going forward. Yeah. Now, until they get everybody back. Yeah. No, and, and honestly, and who knows? He could even uh, – the best thing for the Astros right now would be for Roto Blanco to force you to have some uncomfortable conversations. It's like to give to make you question the return of Jose Arquiti when that eventually happens. When Lance McCullers and Garcia come back in July and August, whenever that is, Hopefully Blanco – he's not going to be this guy. I mean, this guy – this is not sustainable, obviously. One hit in two games. He has been spectacular. Um, But clearly, like, these teams have no idea what to do with this changeup. So, he's been very good. But one guy that's catching a lot of heat, even though he hadn't pitched in five days, Josh Hader was not great again last night. Yeah, he's getting paid way too much for this stuff. And I know some people are going to say, oh, it's this early in the year, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, I mean – can you make it – can you at least make it not stressful? Is that so much to ask? I feel like if you're getting $90 million, you don't necessarily have to be a god like Hater was his first outing where yeah. he struck out the side. But I would like to not feel stress, which happens when you give up a walk, which happens when you throw a wild pitch and get the runner – that you put on base 
via walk on second, which when you give up a hit and all of a sudden a run has been scored and since the Astros can't score a damn run, it's 3-1. Mm -hmm. I would like it if it wasn't stressful. But that's just me. It's just me. Some people, you know, they like that adrenaline in their life. Um, in the postseason, maybe. I don't like that adrenaline in my life in the regular season. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need Josh Hader to be his first. Wait, he had six outs, six strikeouts his first two games. Not, look, this is not a bad con I did see people tweeting last night, like, this is a terrible contract there. And I'm like, guys, okay. That's, that's pushing it a little bit. Well, it's a five-year contract for a reliever. I'm not going to push back on them saying that. Relievers are so year-to-year -year <coughs> inconsistent. Oh, that's true. What do you think about Presley in his new role? Because he looks uncomfortable. Good luck. That's why it all, th it all feels bad right now, Paul. Yeah, because it is. They should, be way, they should be way better than they're at right now. We can't even have like the – I don't even know if we can have the conversation about them having a lead in every single game. <laughs> I think they did at one point. I think they led most of these games still. It's just – it's all bad. Yep. There's, there's not a lot of good right now. Not a lot of good. Yeah, Jordan Alvarez, at least he looks back. Like, he, he's, his numbers aren't super flashy, but at least he had a tank yesterday. That made me feel a little Right, good. but where the hell was that on, on Friday and Saturday? Great question. Yeah, it I is. Mean, uh, he did it against the Blue Jays, but it's every single person in the lineup, they, they should be looking at themselves in the mirror, and they should be angry with themselves. This is a – this offense is too good to continuously play like this, and this is also the same ballpark where you won all three games in the ALCS and is the same ballpark that you put an ass whooping on the Rangers in, beating them 39-10 to 10 in early September of last year to the point where I killed the Rangers. I thought they were dead, and you're not even going up against good pitching. And it, <laughs> What is it again? Uh, I think th three for 18. Um, uh, wait, is it 18 left on base and three for 15 with runners in scoring position or something right, yeah. like that? I mean, it was a ter it's been a terrible weekend thus far. They, they better blow up, and <laughs> that's, that's really all I got to say. Yeah, it, two it's for 13 runners in scoring position, 18 left on base. There's still there's still a, a, the a confidence just like looking at the lineup and who this team is that they're gonna figure it out. It, this is just, I, I'm hopeful that this is really just a bad start to the season. I, I cannot imagine that this lineup with the talent that they have is going to struggle this way for a long period of time. Whether it's one like one or two games. I thought maybe last week when we had the big explosion of runs, like that would be the turning point for this lineup and they would really figure it out and they kind of went right back down to where it had been, but they're just like a tick off is how I would describe the Astros right now. They're right there and that's why there's not widespread seasons over panic for me already. <coughs> they're, they're right there. I think they are. I still think they are right there. What do you mean by right there? I mean, all those guys that are on, like, they're getting guys on base. They're just not getting them home. So, the bullpen, it's been a roller coaster. You know, the ERA looks bad. But, like, you have a good outing from Presley and a bad outing from Presley. Like, it's, it's just been all over the place this season. That's why, you know, to be as bad as you are with runners in scoring position, you have to have guys on base. So they are getting them on base. They're just not executing when it matters most. And sometimes Altuve gets picked off. Yeah. yeah. It's happened again. It, yeah. That one I've got no words for. That, that, that's a tough one. <laughs> it, should he just not take a lead? <coughs> That'd be nice. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. If you're going to do that, don't take a lead. Uh, there's a lot of blame going, going around to a spot as well. I don't get it. I don't get it either. The manager has such little impact on the day-to-day -day performance of a baseball team. It's why the people that were blaming Dusty Baker last year were over the top with it. I get it. They could have played Yiner Diaz more. We all know. To me, it seems pretty clear they just don't want to blame the players. Right, but it's weird because the players are really easy to blame. I know. Starting pitching sucked in the ALCS last year. The, hits, the, the bats, specifically Kyle Tucker, not good enough in last year's series, but it was Dusty Baker. Like, like playing... Diaz over Maldonado would have won them that series against the Rangers, which is just tr untrue. Yeah. Um, so people are looking for the easy scapegoats, but ultimately this team is way better than the way that it's playing, and I, I don't know what it's going to take to wake them up, if this is just a slump or, or, or what, mm -hmm. but this is how we get into the realm of people talking about 
whether or not they care anymore. Like That's the kind of ridiculous stuff you're seeing yeah. right now. And I don't buy into that, but I understand why it's happening because you're like, well, why are they bad? We know that they should be good just looking at the paper. Yeah, I always think that's kind of a cop-out when, when a team's not struggling and you try to just say, oh, they, they must not care. Like, they're just not, you know, they're just not, it's early in the season, so they're not trying. Like, this is not the NBA where, where LeBron James and Steph Curry and these guys – do not try for 50 games into the season. And really, they don't try for 82 games. They make the playoffs and they turn it on. Like, baseball, we all know, like, it's just not played that way. I mean, like, what do you say to Jose Altuve, Yiner Diaz, and Jeremy Pena? Okay, Jose Altuve is hitting 375 this year. He's been very, very good. Jeremy Pena continues to be very good this season. Yiner Diaz continues to be very good this season. But they're just the only three guys trying on the team. Blanco's the only guy trying. It's just such a – it's another one of those arguments that I think fans make when they just don't want to realize and just b- blame a majority of the team for just not performing well because that's what they're do- – they're just not performing well. It's not that they're not trying. They're just not playing good. Maybe Jose right Abreu now. isn't trying. Well, he might just suck. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> what you can really do as an alternative, but just like Joe seems to be stuck with this cough, I don't know. It's, it came back out of nowhere today. It came back out of nowhere today. Do, do you secretly smoke? Are you ripping darts <laughs> after after the show? No, I know. No. I know you like a little t- uh, lip tobacco. No, I don't smoke. You don't smoke. Okay. So, Sometimes I have hookah, but not like. Oh, you have hookah. So you, yeah, you you you've got the lung cancer. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. Listen to that cough. Oh my god. No, I just got this like tickle on my throat. I've had this. Yeah, you've had it since the show began. No, that's dude. not true. I didn't have yes, it at the start it of the is. show. What are you talking about? No, it was like a week into the show. Okay, well, that was good last week. What, what's gonna What's gonna help figure itself out? Joe uh, and his cough. All I know or is Jose Abreu. I haven't coughed like all weekend. All of a sudden, I was sitting next to you and I start dying. Yeah. Maybe it's you. It might, maybe you're trying to blame this on Paul? Yeah, maybe this is, a Paul, this is Paul's I gave fault. You, I gave you COVID. So all, Paul, I, all I know is I played Red Dead Redemption 2, and as soon as Arthur started coughing, he had emphysema and died. Uh-oh. So, Uh-oh. Uh, I'm just saying, Joe. Uh, uh, Fred sa- says I have the alien flu. Uh, I don't know what that is, but I don't want it. Um, this is the new, it's the new strand. Uh, Dab says Joe has baby lungs. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, that's true. Uh, King says that's a cough of an overreactive baseball take guy. Ooh, damn, he just told you you don't know ball. Got me, King. You going to stand for that? Uh, yeah, because I, I understand I'm probably being a little overreaction. All right, we'll talk about Jose Abreu a little bit next. You're on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5 in Glotton, George, broadcasting live from Space Cadet Bar. First, let me tell you about my friends at the Highway, Highway Cantina. Guys, it's right by all of the events. And he's downtown, right by the baseball stadium, right by the soccer stadium, right by the basketball arena. And it's the perfect place for a little happy hour action if you're working in downtown or if you just want to impress the boss with a fantastic spot that doesn't just have your traditional Tex-Mex goodies like fajitas. The chicken fajitas, they're amazing. I don't know what they do with the seasoning, but it's very good. Or, you know, some you know really good salsa verde. But, no, they bring everything to the table Wood fired oysters, what mesquite sausage, so many options on the menu, and of course you got the 975 tall Texan margarita. Not a victim of inflation like Marg's at other places. It is the Highway Highway Cantina. It's on Saint Emmanuel in East Downtown. Get yourself over there, whether it's before a game or just because you want to get yourself a good old Marg and tell them Paul Gallant sent you.
You're listening to Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Space Cadet Bar and Scratch Kitchen in the Heights. Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5, broadcasting live from Space Cadet in the Heights. Come on out, watch the Astros today, the national championship game between UConn and Purdue. Um, couple, couple things that we haven't gotten to yet. First with Jose Abreu. He's really bad. <laughs> we kind of asked there, like, what's the what's We the have gotten to it, but we need to keep getting to it. I have less answers. Like, I'm baffled. People keep on hyping up Joey Loperfido. I mean, he hits a lot of tanks. He has five home runs for the Space Cowboys. He's been playing a little bit of second base. I saw that from Brian McTaggart. So, I suppose that that is something that first they base? are paving the way. Yeah, first base. Did I say first you base? You said second base. Oh, whatever. Same thing. Uh, it, it's the, you know, they're all the same. They're all they're all squares, whatever the case. Uh, it seems like they are paving the way for that already. And yeah. on top of that, I mean, you could put Yiner Diaz at first a couple of games a week. But there has to be a point where the Astros <coughs> say enough is enough with Abreu. Oh, I just don't know when they get to that point. And when you get to that point, are you cutting him? Are you DFAing him? Because I don't think you're just putting Jose Abreu on the bench. That's why I think it's a uh, – this isn't just – this isn't Jake Myers' conversation, I would say, because Jake, you just don't play him. He's your, he's your fourth outfielder, no big deal. If Jose Abreu is this bad and you want to move on, I, I'm genuinely curious if you keep him on the roster. I think you have to. You don't have any – from the scene, sound of things, you don't have any guys who can play any of the infield positions that are ready to come up from the minors. Yeah. Loperfito played well in spring training, and that's really the only reason that buzz is still there. But speaking of recent spring training heroes, Justin Durden, they just cut they his ass. Cut him. So, I mean, that was a guy who killed it last year in spring training that had some people getting excited about his future possibility. So this yeah. this is the stuff that – you're stuck with right now and if you're stuck with him there is an element of you just trying to have to make it work uh I, i'm curious as to what the conversations between dana brown and joe spada are right now i'm curious about what those conversations between jim crane maybe jeff bagwell and uh dana brown would be right now as well mm -hmm. but at some point they're gonna have to make a tough decision with this guy because this is a lot like what we saw for the majority of last year. And the hope was that this season, with a full year here in Houston, with a, I, I guess, just healthier body, because he was doing the Pilates during the offseason, that everything would be a thing of the past, but clearly not the case. Yeah, I just got on my calculator because, you know, math. Uh, Joey Lopefito is striking out 38% of the time. In Sugar Land but right that's now. fine because in 2024, it doesn't matter if you strike I mean, out. Launch hitting, angles. I mean, he's hitting 258 in the minors. Like, he struck out 40, 14 times and 36 plate appearances. Yeah, he has five home runs and 11 RBIs. But he, he so he has a home run or a strikeout in 19 of his 36 at bats. Yeah. It's not good enough. It's like, that's where he's, he's not an answer. This is just, uh, this is anti Italian discrimination. Okay, no, so no, 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 Mar no, 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 Mario, no, no, no. Mario Joseph Loperfito. You could bring up. Uh, what? Hey, that's his name, Mario Joseph Loperfito. Is it really? Yes, you racist. <laughs> yes, he's you, an Italian. I, I a love proud Spen Italian what about, American. But I, but I love Spencer Arigetti. He's not Italian. He's not? I don't know. I made that up. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea what he is, but I do know that somebody. You tried to box me into a corner. And I was not is, prepared. His name is Mario, but they call him Joey. I mean. Just, we're, we're going double whammy with the Italian here with Joey Loperfito, and here you are. Yeah. You know, almost uh, almost six months from Columbus Day, you know, like to the day uh, being anti-Italian. Mm -hmm. How dare you? Yeah, I am in this moment. But, I mean, that's the problem. You don't you, – to, to be serious, you really have no alternatives. You this don't? Is, you, can, you can bring this guy up, and he's got a fun name. Maybe he's Tommy DeVito 2.0, you know? We can have a Loper Fido sanity. No, oh, great! I'm I'm so excited for Loper Fido insanity. He's just it, it's not it's not going to be good enough. Uh, it's a great idea. It's a fun idea. I know everyone loves the minors. Spencer Arrieta is the guy. I mean, look, he's only pitched eight innings and two starts, but he's got below three ERA. He's pitched really well so far. But in the Sugar pitching Land. is not your problem, though. You know, like, that's like, the thing. Yeah, the, the, you need you need a bat, and this is legitimately the only name that you can think of in the minors. 
and you're not expecting that guy to come up and do well because generally all the statistics that you get at that quadruple A level uh, are misleading. Like they're, they're, I, I just feel like this has been the case every single year. There's always some random Astro in the minor leagues who is hitting the absolute cover off of the ball, and then he comes up to the majors, and it doesn't translate at all. Yeah, and then sometimes – and the pitchers for the Astros, it's funny how, how opposite they have been. These guys come out of nowhere – and they're, they've been incredible. Uh, Blanco is the latest guy. J.P. France, Javier, Arquiti, when they came up, like they've all been good right away. But, yeah, they, they have a huge, huge hole at first base. And unlike Bregman and other guys in the lineup, I have zero confidence that Jose Abreu is going to turn it around. Maybe it won't be this bad forever, but it's not going to get that much better. He's yeah. just not He's not good anymore. Like, he's just not. That it's, <laughs> of all the moves – that they made after getting rid of James Click, that one in Rafael Montero, there's there's no justification. With the Abreu at the time, you could have talked yourself into it, but a lot of the metrics that measure his power and everything, they were trending in the wrong direction. And mm-hmm. he gave him a three-year deal when he's in his late 30s, and with Montero as well. There's one good year that he's had in the major leagues, and he gave that. So those two are hanging around your neck like an albatross, and you're just stuck with it. And I think if you are Dana Brown or Joe Espada, there's probably some pressure from upstairs that they have to make it work with this very expensive item. That's what I – that's kind of the vibe I would get that they would do is that, like, these conversations that they're having, it's, uh, hey, guys, we got, we got to figure this out. Like, we either have to change his approach completely – or, like, something has to just – we have to figure it out because they don't have an alternative. You know, John Singleton, he can play a little bit, but he can't play every day. Um, Victor Caratini hasn't really played first base yet for the Astros. Honestly, what's – what's what, something to keep an eye on tonight, I'm just curious about. Chandler Rome tweeted this yesterday. Jordan Alvarez was getting work in left field. And Chandler's hypothesis is that Jordan's going to start in left tonight. Yiner will DH. And for the second straight start, Victor Caratini – We'll catch Fromber Valdez. Oh. And. They found a guy for Fromber. That's what I'm wondering. Like, it, it's if that happens tonight, just going to, my antennas will perk up a little bit. Of, like, that's when you would want Jordan on left with a ground ball pitcher. And then a Caratini, two starts in a row. It'll be interesting. Just like, maybe they found their new Maldi just for Fromber. He has a personal catcher. I, I think he does. He might. He might have a personal catcher. We'll see tonight in the lineup. Like, Chandler was just – it was just a hypothesis from Chandler. So, he might be wrong. But it, it would be interesting to see two starts in a row. Victor Caratini is Frommer's catcher when we've given Joe a spot of credit for everything else, you know, chain, changing the lineup, stopping Frommer from calling his own pitches, immediately going to his own catcher would be an interesting note. I do wonder um, – you put this in the rundown about how much the bullpen misses Maldi. You really feeling that? I wonder if that's why the bullpen has taken such a long time to get started. If they're getting used to working with a new catcher. And I, I, there has to be some sort of adjustment on that level. Oh, yeah. Because in in spring training, I imagine you're not getting that much work with them either. It, but it's legitimately the only thing I can think of as far as why it's been such a problem for these guys. Yeah. I, I otherwise you're looking at them on paper and you know Abreu hasn't been good Hader hasn't been as dominant as you want Presley has had some bad moments what is the commonality because I think we all believe all three of those guys are better and that that would be the one thing I would point to I, I bet it'll get better over time but that's really all I've got as far as possible reasons for this slow start on that side of things yeah no I, I think I think it's definitely a, a valid question you know as much as as good as Yiner is behind the play is is there a learning curve that's steeper than we anticipated you well know, honestly I don't think you really anticipated that I think you've been talking about this quite a bit like I, I it, so it's steeper than I thought it would be that Yiner seems to be maybe that he is part of the issue he's not the issue but he's part of the puzzle of what's going wrong with the Astros King at switch suggested playing Yiner at first base uh, you know King I, I think that's a great idea but two managers have now told us that they don't want to do that. So I think we got to move past it. Dusty Baker wouldn't do it. Joe Espada isn't doing it. He's choosing Singleton. I w- if, if Diaz really could play first base, and they really believe that, I would rather Diaz play first and Caratini catch 
then have Jose Abreu at first. It reminds me of the Jordan Alvarez conversation. For three or four years, we talked about Jordan Alvarez playing first base. We freaked out every single time before a game or in spring training that Jordan Alvarez was at first base. Well, he doesn't play first. And I, I kind of think Yiner Diaz might be the same thing. It sounds like a great idea. I agree with King playing Yiner at Diaz at first base would make some sense. But now you've got two managers that are telling you by their actions that they don't agree with us. So it's also not a solution. Because right. if it could be the easiest solution, frankly, like would you rather have Yiner at first and Caratini as your catcher with Caesar Salads, Salazar, or whatever the kid's name is, who can't hit a buck fifty in the minors as your third catcher on the roster not playing, or would you rather do the Abreu experiment? I'd rather Diaz at first. But if they're not going to go that route, then you just kind of have to keep on hoping that it's going to get better. And at a certain point, that's insanity because it's just expecting different results while doing the same thing. But that's what I think they're going to do. And that's not fun. It's not enjoyable. I, I, I hate that Singleton is the person that they decided is going to be the, the, the corner infielder. And there's this weird element of, well, if they DFA him again, that he's out of options. Is that really a problem? Is someone going to claim him if he asks for yeah. him from him? And even if they did, like, what are you missing? No offense. That sounds so mean. Possible walks. Yeah. Okay. Like, all right. Okay, possible walks are gone. And I, I'd rather get, then put someone – I get like a – like Chris Carter, who all he did was hit strike out, strike out or hit di hit dingers. Like, I'd rather get like a guy like that than a possible walk be on my bench. But just things are bad. Watch, they're gonna ask, watch the Astros win tonight. We'll feel so much better. Two and two. Uh, in the Rangers here. Since I, the I first two games were so bad. I'll be honest, I won't feel that much better. It is, it's, you, you To lose in the ALCS like that and to come out dead on arrival in the first two games against the Rangers in Arlington, yeah. that is how I could see some people who are like, oh, they, they don't even care. Because it does feel like to the average Astro fan, if you're getting shelled in back-to-back -back games and your offense just stinks against this team that you're beating the hell out of last year as late as, as September, yeah, I could see, like, oh, they're, they're not trying. They don't care. Yeah. They might, maybe. Would you rather them not care or just not be good? I think I'd rather them just not care, I guess. Because then you can, in theory, be good again at some point. Well, I mean, it would be a convenient excuse. If I got to pick between the two, though, I don't know. I'd, I'd rather them be good and not care. That'd be nice. Because that means that they, there's still more that they could do. Yeah. Well, you know, the rocket season's over. The vibes were so good, like, two weeks ago. Astros baseball was starting. Yeah, the golden age of Houston sports. It was a great run. Yeah. It was a great one week mm -hmm. of just the Rockets winning all those games in a row and the Astros not playing and the Texans not playing. It was a great time. Yeah. Well, the Rockets lost. They officially have been eliminated from the playoffs. Big lead. Jabari Smith can't hit his free throws at the end of the game. And for, like, the fifth time this season, when they have a lead, the Rockets decide not to foul a three-point shooter when if they just fouled him they would be in an okay position. We'll talk about the Rockets' season basically ending yesterday, next year, on Glott and George, live from Space Cadet on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5.
Back to Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios located at Space Cadet Bar and Scratch Kitchen in the Heights. Gallant and George broadcasting live from Space Cadet here in the Heights. If you show up by the start of the third inning, the Astros get a victory tonight. You get a free victory beer. So let's, let's pull for a dub tonight. That's what we need. We need a, we need a W tonight. Get the vibes get hopefully the vibes can get going a little bit good again. You play Kansas City and maybe the one of the best players in baseball next and Bobby Witt Jr. Who? Oh, you'll know soon. I, I so, doubt it. He's so good. I doubt it because if the Astros are keep trending in this way, then I don't have to pay attention to baseball anymore. <laughs> what are we gonna talk about? Not baseball. <laughs> That's for damn sure. We do it. Are we gonna be going back to like? I'd rather talk about the solar eclipse. Oh, we'll get to the solar eclipse. Well, is it is it happening right now? What's no, going I think on? It's, isn't it one forty? 140. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, we got we got time. But I think we're in the window where it's starting to starting to get a little blocky, blocky. Yeah. I I, I, I doubt we make it. Anyone hears us talking about the solar eclipse? The solar Why? eclipse probably like kill our signal for like 15 minutes. I would imagine. <laughs> Honestly, 15 minutes. I'd be happy if it was just down that long. <laughs> I'm so, the Rockets lost 147, 136 to the Mavericks in overtime. Yesterday, officially eliminated from the um, playoffs. We have to talk about them. We don't have to. We could talk about them, but, Mike, I, I want to put them in timeout for the rest of I'm, the year. I'm so mad that we gave them this attention. I know. And then they lose five in a row. And to lose the way that they did, I watched the end of this game. My friends dragged me out. I was trying to have a productive Sunday where I didn't actually drink. They dragged me out. I watched the end of this game, and there's multiple moments where it seems like they have it ice because they just have to, you know, make a free throw, mm-hmm. which is called – Free throw for a reason, because it's supposed to be free. And guess what? Clank, Fred Van Vliet misses one. Clank, Jabari Smith Jr. misses one. Clank, Jabari Smith Jr. misses two. Game tying three at the end of regulation, and you lose to the Mavericks. And I was thinking to myself, you know what? Hey, they didn't respond on Friday night against the Miami Heat when Ime Udoka called them out for not looking ready to play against the Golden State Warriors, a team that they were trash-talking against. But here we go. You're missing free throws at the end of a game that you should have won. Infuriating. It is infuriating. Their their season was so, like it, ever, the vibes were so good. They Immaculate, were, some would say. They were everything looked play and push. The Rockets have arrived. Jalen Green's turned a corner. Nope, not any of those things feels true now. Yeah, they're in timeout. They're in timeout. They're in timeout for. At, my, I don't need to give them any more attention the rest of the year. You know, three more minutes and then they're in timeout until uh, someone drops like s- juicy trade rumors. This off season, Ooh. I mean, like, what are we going to talk? Like, they're out of the playoffs. This season's over. It's you don't fun. like talking about the NFL draft. I'm not going to get you talk about the NBA draft. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't want to talk about the NBA draft. I mean, the NBA draft is even trickier too. Because, all right, if you're not picking the first overall player, I mean, let, let's be honest. Like most of these, like Victor Wembanyama, we were like, yeah, he's French. <laughs> yeah, we've never seen him play, but he's French. <laughs> he, he's tall. Yeah, he's tall and French. That's like I loved when the men Thompson got picked, and people were trying to portray that they watched overtime elite basketball. Okay. Where would you watch that? That's a great question. I'm assuming YouTube. I'm assuming, like, there is some. I, I wonder if they even let them on YouTube. Oh, I meant more like just, like, the replays. Yeah, they are on, like, they're, they're on some knockoff version of Twitch. Like, they're the G League. This would be ironic. Only on Rumble. Oh, that pa- would make sense. Only on Parlor. Yeah. So it's like just right-wing vi- uh, video apps. Yeah, that, man, that's that's a great marriage right there. Mm-hmm. G League basketball and parlor. I feel like they feel like they see eye to eye in a lot. Like the conservative values of the uh, NBA, they're hand yeah. in hand. Mm-hmm. Most people would say, at least. I would say that too. Um, yeah. So the, yeah, the Rocket season's over, and, and now we just we wait till the off season because the, the the questions are endless. I mean, we'll do like a State of the Union at the end of the year, but I, I, it's, what's Jalen Green? Like, Green seems to be reverting back to in between where he was for much of this year, which was one of the worst starters in the league. Yeah. To but also down from the ridiculous Jeremy Lin-esque run that he had for a month. Yeah. I hate to say it like Lin, because with Lin, though, it, it, it was surprising. Green's athleticism is still there, but the shooting numbers the last couple of nights have been pretty rough. And that, that's kind of what you expect. He's athletic. He can get to the hole, but he is extremely inconsistent as a shooter, and that's a huge problem. Yeah, and, and that's where it's you can, in theory, just put in a, a ton and ton of work to fix those problems. And we've seen – we have seen – there are examples of this in the NBA where you see guys who have broken jump shots and then they fix it. The thing about Jalen is, like, 
Like, his jump shot's not broken. Like, when you watch him take it, you don't just, like, you don't flinch. Like, when we, I think when everyone saw Men Thompson take a three for the first time, like, just on highlight videos from Overtime Elite, you go, what is that? Like, it's almost like Joakim Noah shooting a free throw. Like, it's it's ugly. It's it's not good. It's kind of flat. But, like, you can, in theory, fix it. Jalen Green's jump shot looks great. It just doesn't go in. And so, like, I don't know how you fix that besides just, Lock hours him and gym. hours of practice. Just lock him in the gym. Yeah, but yeah, they're in timeout. I'm I'm with you on this, Paul. Yeah, th- it's it's annoying because it felt like things were heading in the right direction. As you said, the vibes were immaculate. But they've played a bunch of contenders in a row, and they've lost to literally all of them. And the thing is, even though this game went to overtime, when you got to overtime, you got ran off the court. Um, when it got to overtime, I knew the game was done. Yeah, there's no way that they're going to rebound from that. They had it in hand. They just had to make one free throw, yeah. and they missed three consecutive free throws. Yep. You know, you can get mad at that last shot and how wide open it was. It was very wide open. Uh, Dante Exum hitting that. But, I mean, you had three opportunities to ice it, and mm-hmm. you missed all three of them. Yeah, and, and they, they should foul there, just on a, a side note. Like you, you should just foul the Yeah, game. they're like reenacting what uh, Kelvin Sampson and the, and the yeah. Cougs do. Like, just, just foul him right there because then he only gets two shots instead of three. Yeah. And then you get more chances to miss free throws. And if you foul him, you also, you're, you're probably not leaving him wide open for a game-tying three at the end of regulation. Yeah, so RIP to the Rockets season. Officially eliminated from the playoffs. Five-game losing streak. They lose to the Mavs. And, and now there's just tons of questions about just what, what's next for the Houston Rockets in this offseason. There'll be trade rumors. There'll be free agency rumors, I'm sure. There's going to be a bunch of people that tell you to draft Bronny in the first round so LeBron can come here. Um, there, there, it's going to be a wild offseason for the Rockets. But the, the regular season's over, and we have officially – Paul is finally a parent now. He has yeah. put the Rockets in timeout. They're in timeout? They are in timeout until we get trade rumors for the I mean, most part. Even even then. It's got to be – got to have, like, real meaty mm. trade rumors. So is there, like, certain reporters that you would only it take be, them from? Well, only, only Woj or Shams. Mm, I don't even know. If, juicy. I don't even know if they're gonna float NBA rumors, but yeah, we're not. We're gonna we're gonna be ignoring uh, a lot of uh, Brad Doe and uh, who's the other one? H Town biased. Oh yeah. We're well, be just uh, ignoring ignoring the positive. Well, they showed uh, their wishful true, thinking. They showed their true colors this weekend. Um, what when, happened? Well, Ime Doka made some comments about. Oh, Luka. that's true. He said he said that he doesn't speak <laughs> Slovenian, and if we're gonna keep the same energy, we should get mad at, at any use of uh-huh. a proper adjective that could possibly yeah. have like a small note of negativity yeah because that's racism in 2024 yep just like calling uh Schengen a stiff <laughs> well, well so. turkish stiff turkish you stiff. can call him a stiff right. but god forbid you call him a turkish stiff all right is it time to move on oh, from free agency Slovenian. hashtag racist is it time to move on hashtag and racism. from free agency and it's time to focus on the nfl draft Paul's favorite thing. Oh, no. That's next here on ESPN 97.5 and 
Glenn George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5, broadcasting live from Space Cadet Bar here in the Heights. Uh, if you get here by the start of the third inning today, you get a free victory beer if the Astros win. So hopefully, show up, watch the Astros, watch the National Championship game, and hopefully get an Astros victory and a free beer. It's a good deal. Hell yeah. It'd be nice if the Astros won some more games so you can get plenty of free beers, but, you know, it's like a co- that's a complicated issue, I would imagine. Because you want you want to give away free beer, but at the same time, the less they win... The less for beer you have to give away. Yes. <laughs> so it's like it's like which one do you really this want? This is the best math <laughs> you've ever done. <laughs> which one do you really want? <laughs> you want it to be a close game, so they stay throughout. Then maybe you want them to lose some games. Just depends on how busy it is that night, I guess. I just, I just wanted I just wanted to drown away the drumbeat of time. Yeah. With, with the beer. Uh, speaking of math, I really feel like you've done a. You guys have really broken through on me. Every time I do math now, I reach for my calculator. I feel like I've really, like, you know. Well, that's good. I feel like I've really, like, started to preserve some intelligence, it seems. You know, <laughs> trying to make sure that I don't sound like a total idiot at all. The time. It, listen, it's it's endearing. I think you should keep being bad at math. No, I, I don't know. You could be a famous TikTok star and be a complete I got, yeah, I mean, I got bozo. People, it's fine. I got, I got people texting me that are mad at me now because of you. Why? People from back home. Well, like, they're losers. They don't even live here anymore. They're Bears fans, yeah, that's Joe. A, no, but they're mad at your, your, the video we posted today, that you posted today, about you trying to convince me to not be a Bears fan anymore. Well, yeah. Where I start to concede in the video. Because you like, should. They're, 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 you, you're going to let these people bring you down, the other crack addicts who are <laughs> Bears fans? Yeah. Because, I mean, it, at least at least with uh, – at least with the sweet release of crack, at least there is at least one moment of <laughs> happiness where the Bears That's true. the Bears don't provide any of that. I'll be happy in a couple weeks. Yeah. On draft night. When they draft Caleb Williams. And then Marvin uh, Harrison Jr. Rome, probably Roma Dunze, I think. Okay. So they'll take the wide receiver from Washington. What if they draft a defensive lineman? That's fine. Because then you can just jump off the bandwagon. No, no, no. I'm good with And the get onto the Texans bandwagon. Mm-hmm. Nope. If they don't draft Caleb Williams, you'd be okay. Oh no, I cry. That's what I mean. That's what I was saying. If they I think dra- I might cry. If they drafted, if they don't draft Caleb Williams, because it can't. There's oh, got to be a one percent t- probability if that they, they take, don't. If they take Jaden Daniels, or Drake May, or like my worst nightmare, JJ McCarthy, I promise you, I'm out. Oh, what's wrong with JJ McCarthy? He sucks. Why? Jim Harbaugh told you he sucks. Jim Harbaugh said he's the greatest quarterback of all time. Yeah, off the field, he said that. But when the games were close and the games mattered, they ran the ball every play. Well, that's because you got to run to win. In football. I guess so. I mean, it's Big Ten football, so yeah. it's a little bit different. It's than different. Like, you know. Yeah. All right, so, but we're done. are we done with free agency with the Texans? I feel like, is it, is it draft time? It does feel like there's going to be no moves going forward. We saw, for context sake, if the Texans are looking at safety still, Kyle Duggar just signed an extension with New England. Mm-hmm. I think it's like fifty-four to fifty-eight million dollars or something like that over four Ooh. years. It's a lot Pricey. of money. I mean, yeah, I, I was pretty surprised by that move. That's what these guys who were still available, I imagine, and specifically Justin Simmons are looking for. Yeah, I, I think right now, if you're a Texans fan, you're hoping that one of the safeties falls into their lap. I prefer to be Quandre Diggs because I think it'll be cheaper. But Justin Simmons, same thing. At the same time, it doesn't feel like right now. A move is on the horizon. Yeah, I, w- I would say, like, between Quandra Diggs, Justin Simmons, you know, Xavier Howard has publicly said he wants to be a Houston Texan, Stephon Gilmore, Steven Nelson, those cornerbacks that are out there. I- at this point, free agency is pretty much over, I would imagine, for all of the NFL until the draft. So, you know, Nick Casario might have his eye on a cornerback with the 42nd pick in the draft, and if that guy's gone and they pivot elsewhere – then we could see a reactionary move after the draft. But, yeah, I would say at this point I would be shocked if they make another, like, notable addition. I would, it's not splashy, but, like, like you'll know who the player is. You know that they're going to have an impact on this team. And it's funny. It's like we were joking around a little bit, but I think I kind of do buy into the theory that Jimmy Ward had to have some assurances to Stephon Diggs that he was going to be on this roster if he sold him his number. I would think so, too. I mean, like – We've been having some fun with that, but the the idea that he could have just waited this out yeah. to determine if Ward would be on the roster, I, I'm assuming it means that they're going to bring him back. But I got to say, I the, the, the deep coverage by the safeties last season was so bad. Mm-hmm. It was poor. I don't understand how you can't look at that and address it in some way. And sure, you could draft a safety. You could theoretically move one of the 
two corners that were former top ten picks, um, C.J. Henderson and Jeff Okuda. Jeff Okuda. You could move them to safety. Maybe that's something the Texans have a, on as a backup plan. Mm-hmm. But they also need a second corner too. Yeah, that's where it, it's because in theory, I'm all, like if they had Steven Nelson on this roster, I'd be like, okay, one of those guys is going to be a safety. Like they're they're going to figure it out, and then they'll be your third safety this year. I mean, even like your your depth at the safety position, you haven't really replaced either. You know, Kareem Jackson, who you acquired, is a free agent still. So in theory, if you wanted to bring him back, you could. But yeah, that is the when you look at the Texans, like all all this talk about it, they're talked about so much right now in, in terms of being. Super Bowl contender, second best team in the AFC, all over the place. It, it is so clearly their number one issue is how they're going to do against a Patrick Mahomes when he wants to throw out 50 yards down the field. Even Josh Allen doesn't have Stephon Diggs or Gabe Davis anymore. Like, how do they stop the ball from being thrown deep down the field? That's going to be their their biggest challenge. So yeah, we're on to the draft. That's all. That's what I think we are. Okay. So I the the good thing is. I don't know anything about it, but the the better thing could be, how about, how about we do this going forward? Like we, we figure out what positions the Houston Texans need to draft, and then I'm just gonna go through Lance Zerline's write ups okay. on some prospects. I'm just gonna read you all the things that sound erotic. You have to determine whether or not you like the player based off of that. I think I'm okay with that. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna tight hips. Yeah, real strong power source. That's that big sounds quads. That sounds good. Big arms. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I do. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read it and make you uncomfortable. While I you do really it. like the. I really. It'll really speak to me if there, if it says like first one in, first one out. Ooh, yeah. Um, I guess it depends on which player you're talking about, <laughs> which descriptions you're gonna get. Like if it's Cooper DeJean, it's gonna say first one in, first one out, coach's son. You know all the typical cliches. Oppressed minority. Yeah. I mean, he'll be the first of his kind in a long time. Well, hang on. Did they not let the other guy from Iowa go play corner? Who was the other guy? Isn't he playing safety now? No, I think maybe uh, you're right. That's, tr- that's probably true. They never let us play corner. I mean, anymore, there's so Joe. few; it's hard to remember. They who's never who. let us play corner. You know, we, you know, it's 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 sad. <laughs> the poor white corner. Yeah, just, doesn't exist. Yeah. Jason Seahorn, the last one, like the last of the Mohegans, I, I who probably, also was a white man. I Daniel Day. I would have probably, <laughs> probably imagined the he last was. samurai, white man. The last samurai, Tom Jason Cruise. Seahorn. Yeah. I think that's that's a great. The last cornerback, Jason Seahorn, played by Tom Cruise. A Cooper DeGene is going to be. Uh, is, I can't. I think he is going to have the best draft day Twitter reaction by far. Like when you look at whoever, you know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select, Cooper DeGene. Yeah. Just going on Twitter. Black Twitter is going to roast him. I can't wait. I, I can't gonna be, wait. It's gonna be. I It'll think it's hurt gonna, my feelings too. I think it's it's gonna be the funniest part of draft night. <laughs> is like the social media reaction to the team that drafts a white corner. They're gonna be very upset. Wait, he's white. Yeah, be like timeout. Is it, he playing safety? He's got to be a first round pick, though. Is he gonna be a first round pick? Is that I that I wonder about. Is he going to be the awkward guy, like, sitting in the green room just getting clowned on? Oh, I feel so bad for those guys. I do, too. Just don't show up. Yeah. I, first of all, I like I like the – There's nothing that can possibly go well for you there. Especially yeah. if – where is the draft this year? Green Bay? Detroit. Oh, God. Okay. You might die on the way home. <sighs> yeah. And then next year's Green Bay. Some inter- interesting speeches going on in Michigan <laughs> these days. Uh uh, yeah, that's not that's not good. Yeah, I would uh, I would not want to. Uh, Don't go to the draft party. Have uh, do a thing at your home. Yeah. You can welcome somebody in with the cameras, but I wouldn't even want that. I I, I don't want people seeing my reaction when I got picked. <laughs> yes. What if you get picked by like a du- like a garbage organization? And you're like, ah, oh, damn. Like you're excited. Yeah, like, you what if you get picked the by the Bears? <laughs> yeah. What, what if you get picked by the Panthers? Or what, what if you oh, get picked yeah. by uh, all sorts of the the many bad teams in the league? That would suck. Yeah, I it would be. I think my funniest one, the funny one of the best stories I've ever heard, just like McAfee told the story about draft day, and how like the first day, like he knew he wasn't getting picked, and then so like they just went out and drank, and then the next day they went golfing because he was like, yeah, we're gonna get picked. This is back when the draft was what, rounds like like two through six or whatever it was, or two through five in one day. So he thought he was gonna get picked. He didn't get picked, okay. and he just kept going. And he just kept getting more drunk. The more golf they play, just more and more drunk. Oh just boy. kept going. What was he drinking? Uh, pet, no, and Pat, probably something hard. Hard? I would imagine. 
I know he's a beer guy, but I think he's a hard liquor guy. I mean, he did get arrested once upon a time for jumping into a river. Wow. You didn't know that? At West Virginia, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, doesn't count. <laughs> it doesn't count because it's in college? Does it? No, because it's West Virginia. It's West Virginia? Right? Yeah, like everyone at West Virginia. Like, that's how you get in. You yeah. need to get arrested once. But he just talked about how, like, he was by the time – because he never thought he was getting picked, and he just got absolutely blitzed, and then all of a sudden Jim Irsay was calling him on the phone. Like, Honestly, the one person you want to talk to when, like, you're probably blitzed is Jim Irsay. Jim, Jim Irsay, yeah, probably was like, oh, man, we should have drafted you earlier. Like, this is my kind this of is, guy. This is my kind of guy. Uh, all right, well, we're moving on to draft talk here on Uncle Hunt and George on ESPN right. 97. I'll, I'll, I'll try to find the most erotic uh, Lance, Lance Zerline write-ups. Do you think like, you're going to ask for like hints from him? No, you just go th- – there will be – Are you going like, to like, control F words? I can like, – I can, oh, no, I'm just going to read like through thick. them. I'll just look for the. I'll just look for the one or two sentences that sound – Paul, a, he's got 500 of these. Yeah. I'll just – I'm going to go read the guys at the top. There will be a couple of sentences in each of them that sound a little erotic. All right. So when, when you don't hear from Paul over the next couple of days, it's because he's reading it's I've been all 500 of Lance's draft yeah, profiles. Yeah, like it's a romance novel with yeah. Fabio on the cover. Can't wait. Yeah. I, you're you're going to try to make me uncomfortable? He's got, he's got quivering arms. I think I'll be okay. You might make other people uncomfortable while you read it. That's probably true. Maybe we should have you read it to Jeremy. He'll get really uncomfortable. Why? He gets uncomfortable about, about man body parts? I think he just gets uncomfortable. Really? Yeah, he seems like it sometimes. He, he gets uncomfortable and he's doing afternoon drive? I mean, I've seen it before. Wh- what, what is he uncomfortable about? Talking about women? Really? He just doesn't do it. Well, he's married. I think that's his get-out-of-jail-free yeah. card. Yeah, my wife just doesn't listen, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I can say whatever I want. I think it's kind of – there is a certain point where we do sound a little skeezy talking about uh, women, and I, I'm probably pretty close to that. You it know? happens. I, I think the only the only I thing know, I've I got like, is I'm like a single we're, man. Well, That's think, all I got. I think you're pretty responsible with the way you discuss it. Just tongue in cheek. Yeah, I don't think you've said anything that's like red flag. No, mm-hmm. not yet. Yeah. The day's young. The day's young. We have plenty of time it's to go here. Solar eclipse space here. might be the last day that we're all alive. All right, we'll talk. Well, do you care about the solar eclipse? Because I don't at all. Plus, we got the NCAA tournament going on. March Madness ends tonight. Uh, the women's tournament happened this weekend. None of the main conversation point has been about basketball, once again, which is just like the biggest struggle with their sport, it seems, that no one can focus on the actual game unless there's controversy within it. We'll discuss all that next year on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. About two miles from here of Space Cadet is O Athletic. Uh, I'll be heading there tomorrow morning. Got a training session with my guy Cam, so uh, rest in peace to my body and how it's going to feel for the next week. But when you go to O Athletic, they got over 100 classes per week that you can sign up for and participate in, whether it's before work or after work, even have some during the day, Monday through Sunday. They have classes going on all the time. Uh, you can get personal training sessions like I'll be doing tomorrow. You can just work out on your own. So whether you're looking for, to add agility, to add strength, to you know, just lean out, or to, like me, try to lose a bunch of weight, make sure you head over to O Athletic, 767 North Shepherd, and sign up at oathletic.com and tell them that Joe George sent you by.
It's Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Space Cadet Bar in the Heights. Here's Paul Gallant and Joe George. Coming out to Space Cadet tonight, you get here by the start of the third inning, the Astros get a win, you get a free victory beer, great spot to watch the Astros tonight and the national championship game between Purdue and UConn. Too bad the... uh, too bad they're just so stuck in the way they do things, though, Paul. 8-20? What are we doing? It is the latest start for any championship game in any sport. Yeah, that is bizarre. I, I don't understand why these games start so late. I also don't understand why they're on Monday. Exactly. I've never understood that for the national championship or for um, for football or for college basketball. To me, it's bizarre to have it on a Monday night. I know I'm going to watch very little of this game. Same. It'll be on the small TV. And I think UConn's going to absolutely smoke Purdue. Yeah. I mean, more like Nerdu. It will be everyone who goes there is a nerd. There will be, it's true. There will be an interesting trend, though, if Purdue wins tonight. Yeah, the 16 seed that lost the year before, uh, excuse me, the team that lost to a 16 seed the year before uh-huh. wins a title the year afterwards. Yep. Virginia and Purdue could well, both do it. The, the, the styles of basketball that Virginia and Purdue play do not deserve national titles. They, they're literally things that make most people's eyes bleed. Uh-huh. So I, I'm hoping, I hate to say this because I, I would, uh, honestly, I don't want UConn to ever win another national title. Oh, what do you have against UConn, Paul? I went to Syracuse. That's true. Yeah. But they're not really rivals anymore, I would say. No, they're still rivals. Even though they don't play? I mean, UConn's better than Syracuse. So it's not a rivalry because UConn's so much better than uh, Syracuse. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, they don't play each other well, Keep telling yourself that, Paul. What? They're not better than UConn anymore. I, I said UConn's better than Syracuse. Oh, you said UConn's better than yeah, Syracuse. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, they're way, they're way better. But, I mean, that the best moment that I had in college was watching Syracuse beat UConn in six overtimes there. Ooh. And that's that's a fun one. I was like, that's our national title. Yeah. Um, so, the, yeah, that'll happen tonight. Uh, I also think UConn will win. Um, the the solar eclipse is about to happen, though. Are it you, is. Are, you, are we, are we going to – am I going to lose you? <laughs> no. I'm are not you, you, you going to go outside and look? I, I mean, I have never seen one, and apparently we're not going to see another one until 2078 in Texas. So, I'll be dead by then. <laughs> are you sure? Well, yeah. I'd be like 91. Yeah, that's true. You're a little bit older than I thought, so. Yeah. I mean, you can live to 91. No. You don't think you're going to make it to 91? I don't want to live to 91, no. How, how far do you think you're going to make it? 70s? I mean, not that far. I mean, my brain is going to be gone by my late 60s, I would imagine. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see where it goes. You're not going to be 65 years old doing radio, <laughs> yelling at people, telling them about back in your day, the golden era of Houston a- – Houston sports that one month in 2024. Well, how, every year's the <laughs> golden age. <laughs> when when everything sports. was so great. We just have to have like three good sports things happen in one week, and you can just say it's the golden, golden age of Houston sports again. Um, yeah, I will say this is one of those things that like it doesn't it doesn't do anything for me. I don't know why. The solar eclipse doesn't do anything for you at all. <laughs> no, not really. I, so I don't know if you're allowed to look into it. I went on this a couple of articles that were dispelling myths about it, and the sun is not poison. It's not going to harm your plants that comes out of it. It's not going to um, it's not going to blind you either. Uh-huh. But you should wear protective uh, sunglasses. Yeah, that, that was from like I remember there's a Tube photo that they got that always goes around of him in those glasses. But that's part of the problem. I don't have those glasses though. Apparently they're available at a like bunch everywhere? of locations across Houston. Hmm. Yeah, and I guess you could just get them for free. But they're essentially like the 3D glasses you yeah, wear yeah, yeah. to a movie that was in 3D. That you used to wear. Now they're just these, like, giant big glasses. They don't look cool anymore like they used to when we were growing up. Did they look cool? I thought, they're, like, they're cooler then than they are now. <laughs> they're not cool. They're just not the means to seeing 3D. <laughs> I don't know. I thought, like. What are you talking about? I think, like, seeing, like, Spy Kids 3D and those <laughs> things was awesome. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? Spy Kids 3D. I probably was, like, 12 when that movie came out. So you were, like, 15, 16, whatever, I'm sure. I remember the original Spy Kids. <laughs> yeah. But. Those were the days. Today's so need to wear 3D. <laughs> your days, man. What's wrong with and, that? And you're a Bears fan too. What like, are you hating on my movie choice from when I was 12? What's wrong with that? 
I mean. What were you watching when you were 12? Not that. Like the Young and the Restless? No, that's a soap opera. <laughs> I know it is. It's a soap opera. But no, I was I uh, I had graduated past uh, children's movies at the age oh. of 12. I thought I was such a mature kid because I watched South Park secretly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was that was your your secret that you watched. See, mine was you talking allowed to, right? Yeah, mine was wrestling. I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling, so I But you still did. Yeah, I would find a way to watch Damn, it. Do you f- do you think you're demonic now? Nope. That's what they were, they were saying about everyone who did that. You you might be a demon someday. No, I think I'm okay. You're I okay? I, I don't think I'm going to be a demon. Well, Dave's still young. I mean, yeah. I the mean, solar maybe, eclipse is about <laughs> to hit. It might turn you into a demon. Yeah. But yeah, it's just not solar eclipse doesn't do anything for me. Like, I don't know why. I don't know if it's supposed do to. Do you not care about space? I mean, I do. But not really. Okay. Like, it's not something that just, like, it never, like, ca- caught my interest, like, growing it up. It never caught your interest. Not, like, yeah, not it wasn't, once. Like, I, more, honestly, more now than before. Like, I, I, I would, I love watching, like, NASA documentaries and stuff okay, like so that. Okay, so you should be into it then. No, but it's more like about, like, the going to space than exactly what happens in it, I would say. Does that make sense? Well, we're in space always. Okay. We are. You, you in one sentence said you don't care about space, and then you said you watch NASA documentaries. Yeah, no, but, like, it's like I, like, care about <laughs> going to space, not what's in space. But if like, you went into space, that would be seeing what no, but is I think in it's, space. I think it's more interesting, like, how they get there. Paul, I'm lost here. Can you help me? No, I, I'm no, not no. understanding like, the logic. It's like I'm interested in how they how they get there, not what they find when they're there. Well, what's the point of going why, there? Yeah, why would you I go don't know. there? There's nothing there. I don't know. It's just vacuum. There's nothing out there. That's why I'm kind of like, it's like, it's interesting why so, they go Joe there. Joe was the astronaut who would get up into orbit and like, all right, let's turn around and go home. <laughs> yeah, <pretty> <laughs> there, <much>. was, <laughs> there was plenty of people like that. <laughs> you want to go to the moon? No, nah, no, nah, let's go back. No, we just want to get out and then go back. <laughs> the first like 10 Apollo missions just did that. They just went around the moon and came could, home. Because they couldn't yet. They yeah, didn't well. have the technology. Well, you know, we, don't, we haven't landed on the moon in how long? It's I think a while. I think I'm right. We just go. We go to space. We don't do anything in space. We just go up, come home. We just send robots to space. It's true, and monkeys. Um, so yeah, that's the solar eclipse talk on the show today. <laughs> Did I miss anything? <laughs> what? I'm shaking my head. Why? You know, I, I I don't care about space, but I watch I watch NASA documentaries. <laughs> and, and I mean, it, I think look. I made my point clear. It's interesting getting there, but once you're there, what is there to do? Walk, explore, find explore, things. Yeah. What are they exploring? Worlds. No, they're not. Galaxies. They haven't gone to Mars yet. We've sent rovers. Yeah. We're trying to We've get there. We've landed on it. Elon will get there first. That's all I know. Look, it, I think most people haven't seen this, so it is pretty fascinating. Oh, it's just not for me, yeah. I mean, also, maybe if, I, maybe if I had the glasses, we would do it. Should we just go look at it and see what happens? Uh, I, it's probably going to be as close to during the next commercial break as to. We could break early. I, I I think 140, 140, I am legitimately curious to see if the sky, like, completely Cause it, So you have it on there. It's, it's going to drop 10 degrees when it happens? Supposedly, yeah. Interesting. Well, I mean, it is blocking out the sun. Yeah. I just uh, So how long is the eclipse there for? Is it like a minute? <laughs> I don't know. You should look into it. I don't know. Literally just without <laughs> your glasses. <laughs> no, I don't want to be blind. I got to drive home. That's a myth. It's a myth, they said. You, no, you said you think it's a myth. No, I read online. It's a myth. Where did you read it from? Uh, uh, KHOU's website. Okay, okay. So, like, like or and they, they, and no. Joe, they stand for Houston. That's so a, not going to lie to you. That's, yeah. a, that's a good answer. I was like, <laughs> I was curious what your answer was. It was, was one of the be. local TV websites because I was looking for some dumb, like, Texas lo- local stories to potentially throw in. And, uh, yeah, uh, there's a lot of myths about the solar eclipse. Like some people think that it might, you know, poison your babies and, and, and other things, but nope, those are, those are all myths. But uh, yeah, the temperature is going to drop by like ten degrees or so. Uh, uh, from the two A one, the eclipse will give the Astros power, and they will come back stronger than ever. Mm. Well, that would be nice. So maybe the eclipse will be the reason why the Astros do great tonight. The, the eclipse allowed the home slice to escape in the movie Apocalypto, where he's about to, you know, be turned into a little uh, sacrifice buffet to the uh, Aztec gods. I don't think I've seen Apocalypto. Oh, it's nice. You know, Mel Gibson, just real, not graphic at all. No violence, okay. you know, just just a run-of-the-mill Mel Gibson movie. It's on my list of things to watch. It's it's pretty good, actually. I'm going uh, to watch Dune 2 tonight, I think. I thought you watched it. No, because when I – You sent us a link. Uh, no, I sent, a link. I sent a Twitter link because someone posted the whole video on Twitter. By the time I actually went to it, they had deleted it, and then I went to the illegal streaming sites that I normally use, and it was still the camera footage. Mm-hmm. But then when I checked late last night, 
it was updated to the HD version. Okay. But it was like midnight. That's a three-hour movie. Yeah, it's too late. So I, I'm going to have to wait. But I watched – what did I watch this weekend? I wa- I illegally streamed or legally streamed uh, Iron Claw. Have you watched that? Oh, God. You watched that? It was hard to watch. Yeah, it's – it's but it's, it's like – It's really good. But, like, I thought I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. The the Lors Terrell movie. The Lors Terrell TV show, Iron Claw? No, no, no. It's about the Von Erichs in wrestling. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Zach Efron's in it. I thought you were talking about that horrible no, no, no. Marvel show. No, 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 no. no okay, no. that's good. No, no, no. It was, it that's, was, that's Iron Fist. Iron yes. Fist, okay. No, that show is terrible. That I, was, I, I yeah, watched that, that show. That was terrible. That was a waste of my that time. That was so bad. And then yesterday I went Jenny and saw. Rats. I went and saw watch uh, Godzilla yesterday. The new Godzilla. The new yesterday. Godzilla. Dude, that's movies like they have no point to them, but they're awesome. How, I don't understand how you haven't seen Dune two though. My, I only have like certain time where I can. But you, you watch know, Godzilla. Get a you watch Godzilla, but you can't see Dune two. I, I wanted to. Go, I went. I wanted to go see a movie with my brother, and he didn't want to see Dune two. Why not? I don't know. It's I don't legitimately the best movie that's been in theaters this year. I was really bummed that he didn't want to go see it. He hadn't seen the what first. What was his one rationale yet. for? It? Oh, he, that makes sense if you haven't seen the first. I think one. he's just not interested. And I was like, dude, you're a huge Star Wars fan. This is what Star Wars is based on. Why haven't you seen it yet? So we just ended up we ended up seeing Godzilla instead. It's Fast and the Furious with monsters. Yeah. It's a buddy cop movie apparently. Yeah. That's I think a, that's a poor description. It was billed as a the relationship between King Kong and uh, Godzilla is buddy cop esque. Yeah, there's one's a good cop, uh, one's a bad cop. Doesn't play by the rules. Got to turn in his badge and his gun. Yeah, I would say whoever wrote that description hadn't seen the movie. Well, the movie hadn't come out yet, so I, I, I that's a bummer. All right, we'll uh, we'll get to the what happened over the, in the women's tournament over in a little bit here. Uh, but coming up next, our ten minute drill on Glott and George on ESPN ninety seven five and ninety two five, broadcasting live from Space Cadet in the Heights.
10 minute drill here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5, broadcasting live from Space Cadet Bar. Get here by the start of the third inning. And if the Astros win, you get a free victory beer tonight. Great place to watch the national championship game as well. So this weekend, uh, former Texas defensive tackle Tavondre Sweat, who has been a big name in Texan circles. With, specifically, I mean, look, the way they handled the offseason, they added a bunch of pass rushers who are a little bit smaller, but really none of the big dudes. And Tavondre Sweat was a guy that a lot of Texans fans have been hoping for. I... The thing is, is normally I would say this crosses them off the Texans board, Paul, but I'm not so sure anymore. Why not? They added Joe Mixon, and then they added a, a locker room guy in Stephon Diggs. Like, I just, I don't know if the Texans' philosophies have dramatically changed. I saw Lance Zerline tweet in response to a lot of people asking about whether or not the Texans would take him off of their board that he thinks they probably would. But it will be interesting. I do think that we are in uncharted territory when it comes to Nick Casario bringing in Joe Mixon, whose incident that took place at Oklahoma is mm -hmm. not the only incident that we're talking about. There were a couple of incidents last year where at the very least you're raising an eyebrow and wondering what the hell was going on. Uh, both situations involved guns. Um, again, just saying that it happened in the last calendar year. So at the very least, you probably do your due diligence looking up what the hell went wrong there. It did feel like Cincinnati got sick of him and was going to release him. And the Texans trade for him, and then they give him an extension before he even plays a snap. So that's also interesting on top of that. Yeah, I, I wonder. Um, everyone who is way too into the mock drafting has been trying to pen or pencil Tavondre Sweat to the Houston Texans. This would certainly open the possibility of him being around that at that point in the draft. So if they want him, he's probably going to be there, I would think, now. Yeah, it's – I think the big difference between Mixon and Diggs and their – whether they're just locker room concerns or past history of what Joe Mixon has done with his actions off the field, the big difference is, is that Diggs is on a one-year contract now and Mixon is on a contract that you can easily get out of at some point if you wanted to do so. Whereas, you know, Tavondre Sweat – if you take him in the second round, you got him on a four-year contract, and you are specifically choosing him in the draft over another player who might not have a DWI. Now, not to say that who you draft is going to be innocent as well all their time, because you just don't know these kids that well. But I, I, I would be shocked if they took him at this point now, but the door is more open than ever before just because so. of what they've done. Yeah, yeah it, just seems, it just seems they're a little bit different than, you know, they were in the past. Yeah, they're definitely not completely removing players yeah. with character issues off of their board. And I know there's this idea, well, the Texans got to stop signing Boy Scouts. Well, hey, now uh, I guess if, if you want a guy who doesn't understand the greater ride share system, uh, then you can. Yeah. I, I, I do think that there was there was some pushback against Sweat for not using a ride share app, and, and I do agree Um there's probably a moment right now where I would imagine whatever agent he has, assuming he's going to be drafted, has fronted him some sort of cash. So he should be able to afford something like that. Yeah. We'll say that rideshare has gotten ridiculously expensive in the last calendar year or so. Oh, dude, it's brutal. It's terrible. Have you ever done one after, like, a major, major event? I remember in 20. Yeah, I did it after the rodeo a year ago. Oh, okay. It was $100 out. And on top of that, I also, I think on New Year's, New Year's Eve, it was like a – for, just to go two miles, it was like seventy-five dollars, and I was like, "Okay, this this sucks." Yeah, and it I, took an hour for them to even show uh, up too. Twenty eighteen, I remember leaving the Final Four in San Antonio, and it was like one hundred and fifty bucks to go three miles, and I was like, "I'm just gonna walk." Yeah, I'm just gonna walk. I think at that point I would too. Yeah, it's like hey, it's three miles. I've really been working all day. I don't really want to do this, but I guess I'm walking back to my hotel. Yeah. Um. So the, the Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson, he's like really verbally making a push. For the Kansas City Chiefs to come to Dallas. I see this. It's funny because, to me, it's a politician that just won't shut up. Yeah. But I think ultimately it's not going to happen. It is pretty funny, though, because, I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs are originally from Dallas. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they were the Dallas Texans. Huh. 
So the Houston Texans actually ripped their nickname off of a team that used to play in Dallas that now plays in Kansas City. Okay. But, yeah, the Kansas City were an original uh, – the original Arena Football League team were the Dallas Texans. Okay. And they had a red helmet with a white shape of Texas on the side of it. Oh, okay. I've seen the helmet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Interesting. Um, I am pro the idea of Texas getting another team at some point. Nah. I, I just – like, I think it would be cool to have a team in San Antonio. Nah. No? Nah, screw San Antonio. Why? I, I don't ever want to go there. You don't have to go to road – we don't send you to road games. Yeah, but I, I don't even – I just don't ever want to go to San Antonio. <laughs> Fair. Ever, ever. Yeah. In my life. But wasn't it a major issue with Jerry? Like, he wasn't exactly very pro the Texans coming? No, he definitely wasn't. This this won't yeah. happen, but it's just it's just a – just a mayor being annoying and saying, like, yeah, well, if we have the Chiefs, at least we'll have a championship team in town. And he did, like, a humble brag – or not a humble brag. He basically kissed Jerry Jones' ass while he was doing it because he, he said to uh, – he said, I guess, of the Dallas Cowboys to Jerry, well, they're like an international brand. So Dallas gets, like, a local team and already has an international team too. Ooh, wings. Um, Those look very good. They did look very good. Uh, Kyle Duggar signed. You mentioned this a little bit earlier, but he signed a four-year deal with the Patriots. What fifty-eight million dollars? That's a big contract for a safety. I. That's what all these safeties want, and it surprised me. If the Texans were to sign some guy to the kind of deal that he wants, that is probably what the asking price would be. Yeah, he's a little bit younger than some of the guys that are on the market, so maybe it'll be a little bit. I would imagine it's much cheaper, just because. This is clearly an organization just, like, taking care of one of their own guys. That's why it might be a, a little bit different for if the Texans want to go get Quandry Diggs or Justin Simmons. Now, Simmons, I would say yes. Shorter-term deal, but maybe similar value overall. Um, one other thing I, I found interesting this weekend, just all speaking of Dallas, all the drama that's been going on, people are already anticipating a holdout for CeeDee Lamb. This offseason. Uh, th- that's interesting because also on the screen earlier, I the saw Micah another Parsons graphic story. that they're sick of Micah Parsons, the yeah. Cowboys might be. They're like, they're not going to get rid of him. <laughs> that's bizarre. But they're sick of his behavior, whatever that means. Like, just being a little childish, a little egotistical, it sounds like, the way the story comes off. They probably are annoyed with the podcast that he does. Oh, I don't know. I don't think that a lot of that stuff go over very well for a lot of teams. Probably not. Like, I... Because they're because they're honest, right? Because they get put they put a microphone in front of their face, and they don't really always think what they're gonna say. So they say things that might <coughs> might get Oof. them in trouble. Almost died there. It's a <laughs> solar eclipse that's happening. Yeah, it's dark so. outside. It's not not as dark as I thought it would be. To be perfectly honest, I think it's because it's cloudy. Oh, uh, okay. So I think I think, I think well, the sun. I mean, the sun is still you know, the moon's there. It should no, be like yeah, the light. but I think like the like the full full on effect. If it was nice outside, would be better. Gotcha. All right, uh, that's all the news in the NFL. Yeah, Micah Parsons, he's a problem for the Dallas Cowboys. C.D. Lamb might hold out. Dak Prescott might not get paid. I love the Cowboys being a complete dumpster fire. It's one of the funniest things we can have in the NFL. All right, the blame game is out. In Major League Baseball, is it the pitch clock? Is it velocity? Is it spin? What's going on with all these injuries? Justin Verlander and more. Weigh in on that next year on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5.
You're listening to Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Space Cadet Bar and Scratch Kitchen in the Heights. Glenn George here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. They're uh, trying out some new wings here, some new flavors. Nice. They just brought them out. I just had one. It was so good. Paul made a mistake by not having one during the break. So you have to do it in the next break. Mm -hmm. uh, we tried to go see the eclipse. Brian saw it. We missed it. Yeah, it we go outside immediately, and, and the, clouds. the clouds covered it up. Uh, underwhelming. And uh, if you are one of the people that drove to the direct path of the lunar eclipse – only to have the clouds in your way, I'm sorry for you. I feel bad. You do? Yeah, I feel bad for them. Um, how bad? Scale of 1 to 10. Worse than you feel for pitchers in baseball? Yes. Man, these guys are – they are – there are a lot of injuries going on right now in baseball. We've seen – so it's Spencer Strider, likely done for the year, not official yet. Uh, Shane Bieber, who had 20 strikeouts in his first two games, he's done for the year. Sturry Perez – uh, or Yuri Perez from the Marlins, he's done for the year. We were seeing a ton of Tommy John injuries to start the year. And it, it's interesting because Major League Baseball put out this – the Players Association put out this statement blaming the pitch clock. And Major League Baseball snapped back pretty much right away, saying that that's not true. It's not just the pitch clock that this is happening. It's not really as much of a factor – as you're leading on, and you are kind of skewing the statistics a little bit with it. But now we have this, you know, this battle going on between the players, the owners, or just the union in general about who's to blame for what's going on. At the end of the day, like, regardless, not just because with the Astros and where their rotation's at currently, it's a huge problem. Like, like Major League Baseball has a major problem. The one thing that you had most growing up, I felt like, Paul, in baseball was – you never knew who was going to be in the lineup. You knew you could get to the ballpark and your favorite player was not going to be in the lineup that day. But what you did know is that your favorite pitcher or one of your favorite pitchers was going to be on the mound and they were going to go six or seven innings. Now most of these guys are going four or five innings, maybe six if you're lucky, or they're missing 18, 20 months at a time. And it's just a lot of – it's part of the reason why I think baseball is struggling so much, honestly. Well, it's a boring sport too, so there's that. But I, I think when it comes to these pitchers – I think it's bizarre that all of a sudden these injuries that are taking place, there must be a direct causation. Some are saying it's the pitch clock. I don't understand how they can draw a connection between injuries and the pitch clock. I legitimately can't see how you do that. I've also seen others suggest that the bans that we have seen on being able to better grip the baseball mm -hmm. using – substances that's led to some of these injuries as well I, I think more than anything though these pitchers are just putting more and more torque on the ball every single year and it's just lending itself to it is this such a problem or is this just a couple of big names getting injured over the course of a week and people are looking for a cause and effect I, I, I think it's really that angry people are looking for something to blame when in reality I mean I, I just feel What's been happening to baseball has been the average pitcher does not have the ability to throw as many pitches as they used to. Yeah, it, it, it is. That's what's tough is it's not a one-off issue. To, like, it is all these things combined. Yeah, I'm sure the pitch clock is a factor. You know, I watched Tyler Glasnow's interview that he did with the Rays right after the sticky stuff and how he had to, like, hold the fastball deeper in his hand and grip his curveball tighter when they removed the stick, when he, when he, he said he was using just sunscreen and rosin. And he talked about how the next day when he woke up, his arm hurt in ways that it had really never hurt before because he just had to hold the ball so much more. And he could feel, you know, the tension in his forearm and elbow from holding the ball that deep and that hard to get the effect that he wanted on it. The pitch clock, I'm sure, is a little bit of a factor because you're not getting any rest in between pitches, I guess, is what. The theory is that this, to me, seems the more But where does the theory minuscule. come from? Everyone's a doctor online all of a sudden. <laughs> I think they're just looking for things to complain about because they don't like change. That, I think that this is mostly that. The, the complaint from Major League Baseball from the Players Association, it is that. It's not, a real, it's not the real issue at hand of what – because there is a real issue at hand with these injuries. Like you, you can't ignore what's happened in baseball over the last three or four years 
and the amount of injuries that we've seen and Tommy John's that we've seen. But this specifically, this to me screams more just we don't like it, so we're going to try to pin it on the pitch clock and try to get rid of it yeah. in that way. Yeah. But the union in Major League Baseball seem to be calling their bluff, honestly. And then, you know, and we'll hear Wait, here. The union, the union and Major League, what do you mean? Because the, the – the, Sorry, just Major League Baseball. Okay. Ba- Major League Baseball is calling the players union. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. And part of the reason why is because you have older, wiser pitchers like Justin Verlander. And Justin Verlander yesterday, obviously not very good in Sugar Land. No. But this is a big topic going on in baseball. And after the game, he was asked about the recent amount of injuries in baseball and what he attributes that to. I think the game has changed a lot. Uh, you know, I, 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 it, I think the – I think it'd be easiest to hear and blame the pitch clock. Um, you know, I think in reality, uh, you put everything together and um, everything has a little bit to, a little bit of influence. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is the the, the, the style of pitching has changed so much. Um, you know, everybody's throwing as hard as they possibly can and um, spinning the ball as hard as they possibly can. And, um, you know, it's hard to deny those results, obviously. So it's not – that's why I think it's it's really about that. Like, it's it's these guys trying to throw 100 miles an hour every pitch. Yeah, and throw some just devastating stuff that involves movement. I, I do like the argument that um, Tampa Bay Rays pitcher made. I think it was a couple of years ago someone found this clip and it went viral the other day where this guy was laying out how if they were to be able to use what they were using before, which is like – resin Mm -hmm. mixed with sunscreen he did have a better grip on the ball I think that one of the problems for these pitchers could be that baseball's manufacturing balls that aren't consistently the same feel for these hands so some are slippery others aren't as slippery and that back and forth kind of difference it's going to mess with a guy who is as routine oriented as a pitcher is so they might get frustrated with the fact that they could tell like these balls aren't and I mean that that to me seems very probable, especially in a year where baseball is getting ripped for the uniforms that are being produced. <laughs> or not produced? Correct. Have you seen that? No. What's the next? The Texas Rangers and the Philadelphia Phillies, their City Connect jerseys or like the Phillies blue jerseys, they can't wear them mm. because they're not being manufactured. So oh. They, like Fanatics can't even provide the Texas Rangers with their awful Texas jerseys. That they want to wear, and same with the Philadelphia Phillies. Oh, I thought they were light blue yesterday, didn't they? No, it's no. Remember, it's it's the it's the white one oh. with like with the weird Texas like the oh the Texas Rangers. Yeah, those ones. Homage. It's, it's the it's the blue Phillies that they can't they they're behind on production and fanatics, so the teams City don't connects. even the teams don't even have their own jerseys. Gotcha. At this point, this season, okay. that partnership is a disaster. So if they can't manufacture jerseys. What makes you think that the baseballs that they're putting out are also going to be manufactured properly? And, and yeah, they juice the ball one year. They de-juice the ball. Mm-hmm. There never seems to be any explanation of what they're doing with said baseball. And that lack of consistency combined with the lack of transparency leads a lot of people to have all sorts of hot takes as to what the hell is being done with them. Is it being put in a humidor? Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. I mean, it's, and that's owned by Major League Baseball. They own the baseball company, so it's like they, they go through. They can do whatever they want with them, and like, and they can change everything. It's just, it's a, it just sucks because like you have so many talented pitchers not in the game. And to your point, to a game that's like kind of boring and kind of regional, it, it those were kind of those were your cash cows growing up. Like whether it's Pedro Martinez and Greg Maddox and Randy Johnson and Roger Clemens, like those guys were if they came to your city. They were can't miss this start. If they were on television or on the radio, like there was more popular than games back then, like it's you wanted to be there and watch that, and now these guys are just gone. Um, you put – there's a story in the Chronicle that we have to get to here. It says Houston's the most uptight metro city. Yeah, I saw this. This is – it's not a great day for Houston because apparently Houston's also not a great city to date in or something like that. Oh, too. Well, you know that, Paul. I, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, it hasn't been going great of late. That is for damn sure. Um, so, yeah, I saw in this article, and the reasoning was ridiculous. 
there's 2.3 million residents, but a lack of leisurely activities. So Finance Buzz believes Houston's the most uptight city in the hmm. country and saying, quote, a lack of leisure activities relative to population size contributes significantly to this ranking. As Houston ranks among the bottom five when it comes to the number of theme parks, golf courses, yoga studios, and concert venues per capita. I love how yoga studios gets brought yeah, up. Yeah, I was, I was surprised by that. Also, it seems like there are lots of golf courses in the area. Maybe there aren't as many parks. Finally, Houston's workers average an even 40 hours per week on the job more than any other city. Well, we're a hardworking city. So we're uptight? I do. Okay, so the golf thing is weird, right? I, this, is, this is one of those, like, what is Houston questions I have of, like, it, it seems to be expanding all the time of what, what some, like, articles will consider part of Houston because there's plenty of golf to be had. You might have to drive a little bit for it. You have to drive for everything in Houston. I don't really feel like Houston's an uptight city at all. I don't either. I think people are welcoming and generally very warm with strangers, and uh, I also think this city likes to drink. Yeah, uh, this is the, the this is not what I would describe as uptight. But hey, not enough yoga studios, Paul. Not in the yoga studios, I guess, would make you by definition uh, looser because you're stretching. I guess. But yeah, it, that was bizarre. Like, to, uh, well, there needs to be more yoga studios here. No, I think I think we got enough. Yeah, well, then like bottom five when it comes to the number of theme parks, was well, zero. Do you need to go to a theme park? That's that what I'm saying, like, like zero, right? How many major cities have theme parks? There's no Astroworld anymore. Uh, Tampa, Bay, Tampa has Bush Gardens, but that's kind of far. Uh, Boston did not have a theme park. Uh, Seattle, I don't think, had a theme park. I'm just thinking of all the places I've lived. Chicago doesn't. New York does. New York City doesn't. Yeah. Like, so what, what, like, what is like what Orlando theme? number one because like of Orlando this? and L.A.? <laughs> I guess. Like, like, who has theme parks like in the city? So it's almost like you have to drive. To, yeah, well, there's plenty of drivable theme parks from Houston. Yeah. No, they're like two, three hours away, most of them. Mm-hmm. But, like, I just that, that was an odd one, too. I feel like this is an odd way to say Houston was uptight when all of your metrics are bizarre. I, then maybe, maybe we don't have enough golf. I guess Granada would know that. He would know better, better than us. He would know better. But, like, I feel like, I don't know, we go to different golf courses like four or five times a year. I feel like we do plenty of golf we, events. We definitely go to a few, that's for sure. East River 9 next week. We'll see you there on Hell Thursday. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, wrong answers only. What is the best or worst excuse you've heard for the Astros so far in 2024? That's next year on Glott and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5.
Claude George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5, broadcasting live from Space Cadet Bar in the Heights. If you get here by the start of the third inning tonight, or for any Astros game, uh, there's a sign in front of the building who tells you this. Um, and the Astros win, you get a free victory beer. Also, come watch the National Championship game tonight. Woo. The Killer Bees will be broadcasting here live until 6 o'clock as well. So, Paul, you put out this tweet the other day. Wrong answers only. What's wrong with the Houston Astros? First text we get here from the 409, the Eclipse. It's the Eclipse's fault. Got a couple of people that were blaming the Eclipse. For the most part, the explanations that we've seen for the Astros start have been the bullpen stinks and the lineup's not doing enough. Mm -hmm. But some people are going to take it a little bit further, and they're going to look for the real scapegoat for this. I thought it was funny that some people blamed Dusty Baker, who is not here anymore. I thought it was also funny that some people blamed the lack of Dusty Baker. Mm -hmm. Some people are blaming Joe Espada. For the most part, those were the ones that dominated as far as wrong answers only for the Astros' slow start. We also got a bunch of people that say they don't have the heart anymore. They don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think this is what happens when the team is 3 for 15 with runners in scoring position over the weekend, and they leave 18 on base. Uh, my favorite one I've seen so far, just looking through the replies, uh, a conspiracy theory that they are losing on purpose in order to stage a dramatic recovery and win the division. Well, baseball's so regular just, season is boring, so you do want to make it a little bit more lively. So why are the Astros losing so far this season the way they have? Because they listen to our show. Mm -hmm. And they say, you know what, Paul, even though he so elegantly sings Jeremy Pena's name, he's not entertained by us. So what we need to do is fall apart so that way we can lead a comeback well. and just be, on, be a topic of conversation and be on Paul's mind of what's going wrong and then what's going right and just leading to all the dr drama this season. Well, I, I hate to be the bearer <laughs> of bad news for them, but uh, when you play like crap, your boy starts looking for bandwagons <laughs> to jump on. I am not loyal. You better win, and if you don't win, I will find somebody else who will win. I will always follow the strong. I'm always going to be on the right side of history. I'm just going to wait for that history to look a little more right than wrong before jumping aboard. Uh, ben DeBose tweeted, I was umpires. Say, yes. <laughs> I saw it. Uh, it would be nice to blame the umpires. It would. Like that first, well, there was, what, one game in the Yankees series, which you could make that argument, I guess. It could be worse. Did you see that Angel, on a quick side, did you see Angel Hernandez yesterday? He's still an umpire. There was a pitch. It was literally in the middle of the plate. He called it a ball. I like it. It was one of the most egregious calls I've ever Bad seen. Bad umpires are good for baseball. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Why that, can't? that wasn't his only hit of the weekend. Did you see his other hit? No. There was a check swing where literally the batter, and I know the, obviously this is the visual, so go, fi go and find the video, but he literally just steps and is right here. And he, and he said, Angel nice. rung him up as he swore. Yeah, that's good. The why, baseball needs more of that. Why don't we get the? Why don't we have the challenge system? They're using it in the minors. No, 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 no more replay. It works. No, no, it's, it takes three seconds. Mm -mm. It's great. It's the, it's the best thing baseball has done so far. Honestly. No, I, I I like dumps that screw it up every now and then. Just add, add a little wrinkle of human error in there. Um, you know, it's an ancient game. It's an ancient religion. It's America's pastime. You gotta you gotta have some things that stay true. You can't have. Add the strike system with the robos. A bad call here or there is funny. People get mad. F f bench is clear. Guys get ejected. Sometimes managers throw temper tantrums. Like, no, no, no. you got to have some bad umpiring in baseball. Man, Paul, it does look in like the people in this response, like the people who don't get it, that it's supposed to be wrong answers only, there's a lot of a spot of blaming in here. Mm. I, I it's don't. Like, it's an honest a spot of blaming. Man, I, I don't know how you watch the Astros and, and the start to this season say it's on a spot. Like, like, what is he supposed to do with the bullpen? He's supposed to throw himself. I guess so. He's got to go in there and, and you know, s s pick up where the bullpen is clearly leaving off. Yeah. Which is blowing leads. I mean, like, it's his fault that, you know, Ryan Presley got four runs the other day that Josh Hader hasn't had a clean – in, in in his last three appearances. No, no he hasn't. Um, uh, uh, someone tweeted all the new bright orange accoutrement. It's blinding. And the Nike jerseys are chafing them. Mm. Could be that. Now, that would be uncomfortable if that's happening. 
So I, I can understand that. Um, signing Jordan Alvarez to a long-term deal was the start of the fall. First of all, Christian dude. Javier, too. Oh, my. Yeah, those are the, really the contracts we should be talking about. Not mm-hmm. not Rafael Montero and Jose Abreu. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Jordan Alvarez. Well, if, the, if, if uh, <laughs> Jordan Alvarez, I like that, too. <laughs> Oh man, it is just it's a it's a lot of bad right now, honestly, with the Houston Astros. The roof is closed when it's beautiful outside. All right, okay, I'm in. The batter's eye in Arlington got changed too. <laughs> so I did I didn't see a lot of batter's eyes in the tweets, so I, I'm surprised by that one. Um, the bullpens in the sports books like Shohei. Oh, he was at Wrigley Field this weekend. He was he's probably very happy to be there because they have a sports book in Wrigley Field. Did you now. did you see how Shohei Otani uh, had some goons from the Dodgers take yeah. that ball for the first home run he hit as a Dodger? They she claims and she bragged about this that security cornered her and made her feel like she should give the ball away for a lower than market rate. And the Dodgers, along with Shohei Otani, claimed that they met this woman when the woman said, no, I never met Shohei. Not even calling him a liar. Seems to be a Dodger fan. But we have already a lie by Shohei Otani in the wake of this scandal that he theoretically could be uh, just as guilty as his interpreter in. Yeah, this is, a, this is, this is weird. Like he said, quote, through his interpreter, I was able to talk to the fan and was able to get it back. But then she says she never met Otani, like you said. Is he just a compulsive liar? Does make you wonder. If, the, if you have a like lie. Why, why lie about this? this? There's no reason to lie about it. You're right. So if that's happening less than a week after he goes and gives his statement where no one got to ask questions and it's also – being delivered through an interpreter, you wonder. Well, Sam, it's funny. Sam Blum here, uh, he uh, who writes for the Angels and, and covers MLB for the Athletic, he says it's possible that there was something lost in translation from the interpreter. Well, first of all, that's the interpreter's job. Uh, so if you're that concerned that the interpreter is getting something that wrong, maybe get another new one. Yeah. Uh, move on. But it, if he's just lying, it just it just makes no sense. I guess it makes more sense that the translator doesn't know how to translate. Yeah. Than it does for Shohei Otani just in theory to just lie about this for no reason. But it's weird situation. Very weird. It, it's just. And they offered her what? A hundred K is what she got. Uh, no, she got just some some. some no, stuff. she didn't get anything. Some people were saying that that ball could have been worth a hundred thousand dollars, which is also insane too. Who the hell would buy a home? The first home run ball by Shohei Otani as a Dodger. A lot of people. For $100,000? What kind of a dork are you if you're going to do that? I mean, there, how, there's a you, lot. That is some F you money, but that yeah. it's not. It's his first home run. You're going to give that much for it? I would say the value of that should be capped at $5,000. Uh, yeah, but I guess it's more about like the idea of like how many, they, like, how many he hits in his career. And also, if they win a World Series, like it's like but it's like that first initial purchase is in the long run, it's worth way way did, more. It's it's doesn't make sense to me still. I, the I I don't understand how the sports memorabilia industry works at all. Yeah, Aaron Judge's sixty second home run ball sold for one point five million. These people are losers. Oh, I don't get that you life could just at all. Ma- you could literally make it up. Like what what is the person that's going to go see that on your mantle? Are they going to say like, oh wow, can I verify this? To make sure it's 100 percent true, yeah. It's a because baseball. In, unless you're going to resell it, it's it really has no value. That's the only reason why you purchase something for that amount of money. It's to hope in 10, 15 years. <laughs> I think it's a flex I or guess. write off as a tax deduction. I don't yeah. know if you could do that though. Yeah, but there's a lot more Dan Ravels out there on this on this world than there is not of people who just love to collect weird things. And he's at the top of that category. Yeah. Every year, Martin Luther King Day is still, like, the funniest thing in the world because oh, yeah. he tweets about his Martin Luther King con- uh, collection of stuff that he has. He's such a weird dude. Darren Ravel is maybe the, the weirdest. Belongs in a museum. Yeah, he's maybe the weirdest person we have in the sports media industry. Yeah, I would agree. Um, other stuff we've seen here on the text line. Uh, Brent Strom's fault. That's a real reason. Yes. Um, that's not a, a wrong reason. Um 
just 409. Last year when lineup was inconsistent, we blamed on injuries. Now what's the excuse? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the excuse is. 346, it's an election year. That's true. They're distracted. Yep. It's the fate of the country. It's at stake again, you know, between the turd sandwich and giant douche. Yeah. Yeah, it always like is. Two great options between the, the, best options. the sandwich and the and the and the turd. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that uh, that's a good one. I I just I don't know I don't know what's wrong with this team. I wish there was a way. Like this is this is one thing where it's like I know like the the the, the our lovely fans on on Twitch love when we talk baseball, but like it is the one thing that's different between baseball and other sports, like specifically football. Like I feel like when I watch football, I can figure out what's wrong with you. I don't understand why the Astros lineup just fails so much with runners in scoring position. I it's I to me it screams mental versus talent. Cuz we know the talent's there. We we know that these guys are incredible at their jobs and can be a, you know Kyle Tucker's a 30-30 guy. Alex Bregman hit 40 home runs and was third in the MVP in 2019 has consistently been one of the most clutch players on the Astros since 2017. What mentally would it be? Like pressure, I w- they're putting on themselves. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like like the the pressure of that they're bad right now. That like it's, you're you're in your head. We all, everyone is get you get some kind of yips, right? Like people have in their day to day lives and different things. But like baseball players, the amount of pressure you're putting yourself on. So you're swinging at bad pitches. Sometimes you're taking good pitches, Alex and Jose, because uh, I don't want to just sing out, single out Alex Bregman. Jose Altuve did it yesterday. But like it's that's where it would be that it's just you're you're putting so much pressure on yourself mm-hmm. in these moments that they're overthinking it and then they're just coming up short, like pretty consistently. Like that they just are not finding a way to get done. I hope the eclipse theory is true. That's all I know, Paul. That the, well, the, the eclipse after, is gone. Well, after tonight, the sun's out. Everything will be much better. Um, all right, there's one thing we haven't really got to with this weekend. We got to go back to Friday night. There is a. Uh, there's a pitcher on the Astros who's not been very good, I would say. His first start, he gave up no earned runs, but Hunter Brown only pitched four innings. Oof. Friday night was a disaster. Yeah, he sucks. And there seems to be a real divide, I would say, happening amongst Astros Twitter and media about the future of Hunter Brown and what he is. If we overhyped him, if he'll never be the guy we hoped he would be, we'll discuss that next year on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5.
Now back to the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios located at Space Cadet Bar in the Heights with Paul Gallant and Joe George. So Hunter Brown has pitched seven innings and two starts. He has a 6-4-3 ERA. I mean, his first start was he gave up no hard runs, but he threw 88 pitches to get through four innings. He gets rocked on Friday. Just Hunter Brown is not living up to the hype that he had. And this goes back to something that you've talked about a lot, Paul. It's Is it too much about just like, oh, yeah, his, his – his throwing motion looks just like Justin Verlander. He's from Detroit. Justin Verlander was his idol growing up. But at one point, Hunter Brown was the most well-regarded prospect in your organization. You had great success in recent history with guys coming up from the minors. So I think it's fair to expect that it's going to go well when it just keeps going well with guys you don't know about. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, is it fair to expect every single player that comes through your minor leagues to be good? No, but the Astros – no, it's not. It's not fair. But it's just it's what the Astros have done. And that's where it's – it's the expectations are high. Think about – I don't how, understand why they were high with Hunter Brown. I, I, I really never got it. I, I mean, it's not, not to say that he's, he's bad or anything like that, but I, I don't know. I mean, what, because he, he looked good in 2022? Yeah. I mean, the, the, minor, the minor league numbers, what he did in 2022, like that's it. And that's, and that's what you have. And plus, you know, the, the guy like Hunter Brown, he's one of – those players that when there's interviews being done around trade deadlines, you know, GMs get asked about. And they say, you know, we're not looking to move Hunter Brown. Like, yeah. to move Hunter Brown, sometimes the expectations for these prospects, kind of like Force Whitley, not to the level of Hunter Brown, but it was the same way with Kyle Tucker, that when you're constantly asked about trades and who's available and would you trade this guy, and the GM just instinctively, whether it's Click or Luno or Brown, defends their guys or just says we're only trading this guy if the price is right it kind of adds some expectations to that player in my opinion that are oftentimes unfair because you're now being told that this guy can't be moved at the deadline to make your roster better today so that when this guy when he gets to the roster in two or three years he's going to be awesome that's just not always the case nope so are you on the side of hunter brown of he's just not good though Pretty much, yeah. I think we saw him last year, and nothing has changed this year to open things up. Why is it going to change the rest of the year? Yeah, it's hope, hope and dreams. Well, that's a great way to operate an organization. <laughs> I mean, it's not. It's not like it's. It's not a great way to like to, you know, to operate and just hope that he's going to get better. I will say, I would send him down when Justin Verlander gets back. Send him down. Interesting. Because you think that's going to fix it. I don't know, but the Astros are in a position. It's not just because they started three and seven, right? But like, Ronald Blanco, yeah, this is not sustainable, okay? But he's showing that he's very good and can be very good. JP France can be consistent. He's not elite, but he can be a good pitcher for your team. So when Justin Verlander returns, you're either going to go to a six man rotation or someone's going to the bullpen or the minors. And if this is who Hunter Brown is, and he can't efficiently get through a couple innings and has stuff that he really needs to work on, the Astros are not in position, Paul, to him to be working on this in the majors. I, I felt like there were a couple of moments last year where Hunter was decent in middle relief, mm -hmm. and this was towards the end of last year. Um, I, I, I don't know if that's something that they could look at doing again because I, I think there, there's, there's a couple of problems with the idea of sending him down does he become absolutely despondent? Does it destroy his confidence if you sure. do that? Do you care about that? I mean, you have to to an extent, don't you? Yeah. So it's a tricky spot, but he's just he's just not good. Yeah, because I don't I don't know I don't know if I view sending him down and moving to the bullpen as that different. Is that fair? Because um, like you're still demoting him. Right, like yeah, but at least you're not demoting him to the minor leagues. No, you're true. You just put him in the bullpen or something. Yeah, I mean it's it's funny to think back. Like I know, I think like Joel and Jeremy would bring this up sometimes. That I think it was Keith Law, one time said Hunter Brown all he was was a bullpen or be would be best served in the bullpen. He might be right, but at the same time, part of it's a control issue. Like he just when you watch him pitch, it feels like he has no idea where it's going. Like that, that <laughs> like, like that's how I feel. Like watching him, he's like, 
think he knows, like, in a general direction of, like, what he wants to do with so it. So he's Wild Thing Vaughn. He's Rick Vaughn from Major League, played by Charlie Sheen. Does he need glasses or LASIK like Jameis Winston? Mm. Jameis, I love that story. That The reason why he was a 30-touchdown, 30 30-interception 30 guy was that he needed LASIK. That's, like, one of my favorite I, and things And I don't even ever think gotten. he got it. Ultimately. No, I don't think he did either. I don't either. think he even got it. He just used it as an excuse to uh, to you know make sure that he was he was going to be he had a good reasoning. I mm-hmm. guess it would be. But yeah, I would send Hunter but I would send Hunter Brown down. Because send him down. Yeah. I'm not I don't want to send him to the bullpen for the main reason is this is that your bullpen's already a struggle and I want the opportunity to bring Hunter Brown back into my rotation at some point. So what that means most likely, if you think back to Christian Javier when he was going back and forth between the bullpen and the rotation, is that they would only use Christian Javier every five days out of the bullpen. So for four four games, you essentially have taken an arm out of your bullpen by choice because you want to keep them relatively on the same rotation, the same schedule. And I don't want to do that with Hunter Brown because of the state of the bullpen right now, where if you're going to make him a bullpen guy, I think you got to kind of tear down everything so he can pitch two out of every three days or two out of every four days. Him out in the bullpen and once every fifth day does nothing for me. It's just it's just not valuable at, at this point. And him well, you don't have to necessarily do that though. Like, do, do you really feel like you got to do it the same way with as with Christian Javier? No, but that was was that the Dana Brown? I guess that would have been James Click era, technically when they did that. So I guess they could do it differently. Okay. I just philosophically, it just that feels like it was more about staying stretched out than it was about. And just being available when he was, mm-hmm. so I, I don't. You don't have to do that, but I would. I just kind of gut feeling that they would do it. Um, would you be upset if they sent him down? Um, no, 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 no. I mean, right now, I just don't want to see him out there. <laughs> I don't either. So maybe, maybe it's just a break entirely from the rotation or something like that. Yeah, it would be. It's just something's got to change, uh, honestly, and. Um, one thing with the pitch clock that we haven't talked about yet, we're going back to that for here for a second. Do you feel like that's part of the Fromber thing? Because when no. I watch him, see, I do. I think it's the ability to uh, those deep breaths that he needs to take. He, he doesn't need to take deep breaths. I mean, it kind of feels like he does. No. You don't think so? Pitch the ball. You don't think that like when he would like walk around after a bad pitch or a bad moment that helped him? I, I mean, he might say it does, but to me, it's just pitch the ball. Yeah. I think the more thought that you put into generally anything like that, the more you're going to potentially, like, zonk yourself out and overthink it. That's very true. And he's, I mean, he, what, does he does he need to get the same kind of uh, special permissions that people who took tests need? <coughs> oh, well, my little Fromber, he, need, he needs a good three to four more seconds so that he can get over his – uh, desire to throw at somebody's head when he has a bad half inning. Yeah. I guess, I don't know. I The pitchers are such babies. They are. I mean, that, the amount of complaining that we've seen from this weekend oh, is. Oh, the pitch clock is the reason my elbow tore. Sure. Yeah. Uh, sure. Well, You're a doctor, of- Dr. David Chow. You go inject Tyrod Taylor's lungs with well, a needle again. Speaking of Farmer Valdez. Uh, from Valdez is not pitching tonight for the Houston Astros. Wow. Um, Ari Alexander tweeted this 10 minutes ago. The Astros are calling up right-handed pitcher Blair Henley, who will start tonight in place of <laughs> left-handed pitcher Fromber Valdez. <laughs> who is Who is Blair Henley? What happened to Fromber? I don't know. Um, but Fromber Valdez is not pitching tonight for the Houston Astros. Per Ari Alexander. They're going to get smoked. Oh, they are going to get crushed tonight. Who is this guy? He's a seventh-round pick out of Texas, apparently. Um, so, no official word yet on what is wrong with Fromber Valdez. Right now, Ari is the only person that I've seen tweet this. Chandler Rome. It's not a fake Ari Alexander account? Uh, don't, don't do that. Now I'm scared. Who makes a fake Ari Alexander Twitter account? No, I follow this one. So this is the real one. So Fromber Valdez is out tonight for the Houston Astros. Um, oh, boy. Paul, that might just uh, – that's not good. That That is not good. 
Uh, no, that's bad. Where the Astros are already, I mean, the whole Hunter Brown conversation we just had just makes it even worse because if this is a significant injury that's kind of coming out of nowhere, that's not something you want to see. So we'll keep you up to date with the latest on that, what's going on with Fran Rivaldez, but he will not start tonight, according to Ari Alexander of KPRC Channel 2. Uh, Blair Henley will start, who is a 2019 seventh-round pick out of Texas, will be called up from the Space Cowboys and will make his debut tonight for the Houston Astros against the Texas Rangers. The latest on that and more, what's going on with Stephon Diggs? we got more drama coming out, more rumors, more stories, because that's what happens when a player leaves that situation. We'll talk about that next here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. First, let me tell you about my friends at MyBookie and MyBookie.ag. You go to the website, you enter promo code BET975. You're going to get a deposit bonus up to $1 thousand dollars that's right you put in a grand you're gonna have two grand you can play with it immediately maybe you want to bet on college basketball the national championship tonight between UConn and Purdue UConn seven point favorites and honestly I feel like they're gonna win by significantly more than that but maybe after hearing the latest for the Houston Astros game tonight against the Texas Rangers the Astros are one-and-a-half run favorites as things currently stand against Andrew Heaney for Texas. I don't know. I mean, I think you want to get to this website right away before they change the line because if that's not Fromber going, what's his name again? Blair Heaney? Okay, yikes. MyBookie.ag, though, not yikes. Free money. Huh? Huh? MyBookie.ag, promo code BET975. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere, only with MyBookie.ag, promo code BET975. You're listening to Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Space Cadet Bar and Scratch Kitchen in the Heights. Broadcasting live from Space Cadet here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5 here in the Heights. Come hang out, watch the Astros, watch the national championship game tonight. You arrive by the start of the third inning. And the Astros happen to win tonight without from Valdez pitching. You get a free victory beer. How about that? But if you missed the news, Ari Alexander is reporting that from Valdez will not start tonight. Blair Henley, drafted in 2019 out of Texas, will make his MLB debut. Spencer Arigetti started Friday 
for the Space Cowboys. So probably why he's not the guy getting called up today. But um, not not the news you want when you've already got four starters on the injured list for a significant amount of time this season. Not from Rivaldez. Um, who knows? We'll see. Maybe the text line's right here, Paul. From the 409, the Eclipse got Fromber. Uh, 713, I bet Fromber looked at the sun for too, sun for too long. He just vanished. Uh, Mega's asking <laughs> if he's getting his extensions put back in. <laughs> <laughs> Emergency extension surgery. I mean, at this point, I hope I, I would love that to be the story. <laughs> I really don't want to. Uh, this he is, had like, a tragic hair <laughs> extension mishap. <laughs> Well, who was that? Was that Joe Buck that got the hair plugs and, like, almost ruined his life or, like, ruined his voice or something like that? Because yeah. Because he, like, it did something to his – I don't understand how that works, but something happened with how his How does hair. that happen? <laughs> I don't know. How does that get to your voice? So, they must have given him a drug or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something ruined stapling it. Stapling it into his skull. Um, yeah, because he got definitely the, the staple one, uh, not just the – he didn't go to Doc Loonville, you know. Free plug for – for Joel and yeah. Granado there. Yeah. Uh, maybe one day, me too. I need it. So. I mean, you, you should be brown nosing them right now, dude. I know. Cause especially if you're kind of in this in between area where. Dude. You're, I mean, you do look like you have hair right now. Yeah, because I do everywhere except for where the hat <laughs> covers. Is it from the hat? Is that an old wives' tale? No, it's a family thing. Oh, it's a family thing. Yeah, yeah. I do wear hats often. But gotcha. I was, I was losing it before I started to wear it. The hat became more frequent when it, the hair went quicker. Well, some people say, though, that if you wear the hat, it makes your hair go. No, yeah, but my hair, maybe it made it worse. I, I, I'm not asking for you specifically. Yeah, I no. just mean, is that actually true? I think so. You wear a hat, your hair starts to go? I don't know. I don't know. I'm it's pretty, an old wives' tale. I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty convinced that this job accelerated my hair loss. Damn, you aren't drinking enough then. That's, the, that's the, why I still have my the, hair. The stress of the of being paid $12 an hour and working 40 hours a week and being underpaid and overworked uh, helped me lose my hair. Oh, okay. That's what I think happened. That's not, Well, I mean. Or maybe it was the, the PD that we didn't like. Help, help. Which one? <laughs> the one not that we, here, <laughs> not by here. the way. Well, we don't have not one. Here. <laughs> we don't have one. <laughs> 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 yes, we here. do. Come on, what are you talking about, Joe? Uh, oh, but yeah, so that's why I think I think the radio industry uh, accelerated my hair loss. That's my theory, at least. Okay, and uh, Fromber's hair loss is literally was by he, choice. He got rid of his extensions. Yeah, maybe they're coming back, and that's why he's not pitching tonight. Or maybe he looked at the is eclipse it, too long. Is that a balance thing? I, 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 what are the odds that it's a weird baseball injury? I lean that. I would say, Paul, my gut tells me like 60%. 60%. He looked good. In the, wasn't he good in his last start? Like, I, he, he didn't have anything where it seems to. Now, now think back to what, 20, wasn't JV? JV was really good in his start, but he got hurt in that game that he pitched. So, I, I don't know if there's been any signs with Fromber. Like, it's not like Josh Hader. If everyone's talking about Josh Hader, his, his fastball is is slower this year than it's been in years. So, like, I for Fromber, I, I just don't – I don't see it of, like, an injury. No. That would have happened. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's true. JB had two great starts. What, you said JP? Oh, Shane Bieber. Oh, that's right. Yeah. J, Shane Bieber struck out 20 guys in two starts and then had Tommy John. Oh, God. Don't put that out there. I mean, it's just – that's a fact. You never know. <laughs> Everyone's getting Tommy John surgery right now. I mean, that'd be the Astros would be at four pitchers. No, Lance did not have Tommy John this time. Okay. It was Luis Garcia. We're still waiting on Jose Arquiti. Verlander's not Tommy John. So I guess it'd be two, either having it or recovering from it. Uh, to, to what King of All Twitches is saying, is it possible that they just don't want Fromber to face the Rangers and have his fragile psyche affected the same way it was <laughs> In the playoffs, or the same way it was in that regular season game, where he, of course, gave up a home run and then threw at Marcus Simeon mm. right immediately afterwards. I hope not, because by telling him not to pitch in the All Star game seemed to be what unraveled him last year. Uh, honestly, I kind of don't want him to pitch against the Rangers. The more that I think about it, I think the Rangers just don't Fromber. I mean, they do kind of. 
I mean, the, the Rangers kind of own the Astros right Dolis now. Dolis Garcia to be honest. owns the Astros. He was the one that I think got the he, – he's the one that knocks in the – or did he score the run or knock in the run that we saw yesterday? He had a home run on Friday. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's on the national broadcast as well, so he's just getting absolutely um, you know what it by the broadcast teams. Yeah. All right, well, we'll keep you up to date if we see anything. We're still no, – it's no offense to Ari Alexander. I like you, Ari. I met you a couple times, but right now he is the only person – that is reporting that Framber Valdez will not be on the mound tonight for the Houston Astros. So we await uh, more confirmation from another reporter or just the Astros to make an announcement at some point here. So, yeah, Paul, we got, nothing. we got more uh, more Stephon Diggs stuff coming more out. More Stephon Diggs. Now, in a not as negative way, it reminds me of when Bill O'Brien got fired by the Texans that all of a sudden everyone and their mother had a Bill O'Brien juicy story to report on about issues that that was going on between, you know, J.J. Watt, um, other players, just like the the tenor of the relationship with Bill O'Brien, stuff that we all kind of assumed we just never heard until really the end of the year uh, or until week five when he got fired. But Stephon Diggs, since he's been traded from the Buffalo Bills to the Houston Texans, there's just been more and more that's been coming out. And here is Tim Graham, um, who covers the Bills, talking about a story about Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs after only one game this last season. I didn't include it because I didn't know what Stephon Diggs said to him. But Josh Allen snapped at him. And he said, it's one game. And kind of mentioned, motioned like, I'm not talking to you here. And Diggs walked away. And John and Josh was sat there. And in retrospect, I mean, keeping in mind this was week one when, for all we know, everybody's hunky-dory. But looking back on it now, I wish I would have included that in my story or made some sort of reference to it. Um, Maybe Stefan Diggs was saying something nice to him. And he was just – but he didn't snap at anybody else. A, a, A stream of players were coming over, you know, popping him on the shoulder pads, I think, or back patting him on the back or, you know, whatever. Like I said, dapping him up. Hey, man, we'll get him next week. And whatever Stephon Diggs said to him, Josh Allen wasn't having it. What's interesting is that was not too long after Josh Allen seemingly cleared the air on the Rich Eisen show about the relationship that he had with Stephon Diggs. After that season opening loss to the Jets, where Allen threw three interceptions, everyone in the Bills locker room went up to Allen, had his back, and whatever Stephon Diggs said to Josh Allen was not that. Abe Allen is responding to it like that. So it's something just to keep in the back of your mind. Stephon Diggs, supposedly always honest, also somebody who perhaps has never understood the word timing yeah, yeah. when he is yapping his trap. Yeah, it, and the, the more I hear about Diggs, the, the more I tend to believe like there was real frustration with Josh Allen, the quarterback, not Josh Allen, like the teammate or person. You know, that it's kind of the recklessness, the, the Brett Farvish tendencies that Josh Allen has seems to frustrate you know, Stephon Diggs, but also very clear, like, if he's not getting the ball enough, he he was frustrated with Josh. And especially, and, like, this is a guy who's got tons and tons and tons of targets since he became a member of the Buffalo Bills, but clearly thinks, based on what we saw on Twitter, that he's a large part of the success of Josh Allen, not the other way around. It just, it adds to these questions of, like, how this dynamic's going to work here in Houston. Uh, Now, they're already together. We saw... Yeah, they're uh, all working out. Some streamer named sketch Sketch, who is is very interesting i i did some research so he does live sessions with madden Mm -hmm. he has catchphrases like what's up brother and special team special plays special players so really just sounds like an absolute drip but (laughs) has six hundred and fifty seven thousand followers on twitch a half a million on instagram and two hundred eighty one thousand on youtube so one of many people that existence makes me jealous and 
you know, think about just ending it all. Uh, he, apparently, his character on this stream as well has been under flack, this sketch guy, because he is acting autistic, but he's not autistic, and he's actually admitted to this, that it's a character that oh. he is creating. And, yeah, he got to run routes with C.J. Stroud, Stephon Diggs, Tank Dell, and John Mechie, and Why? not going to lie, seeing him run those routes, I wish that I had been over in the middle of the field to deliver a little bit of Shorecrest Preparatory School Charger justice. You know, just a little shoulder to the mm -hmm. chest to just drop his ass on the ground. Now, I don't know if he's like a kid or something like that. I feel the same way. He shouldn't be allowed to be working with our, with our guys. I think he's old enough to where you can legally hit him and you'd be okay. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, they should. If there's nobody over the middle, like, come on. You gotta have somebody there, and his route running—it wasn't route running at all. Uh, honestly, I'm embarrassed that he thought that that was a good thing to show of himself. My question was, why was he wearing socks on a turf field? Good point. Well, yeah. what, was he not wearing shoes? He wasn't wearing shoes. Uh, when he was running that. routes. Well, he's that seems like bizarre behavior. He's he's something. But anyway, uh, yeah. So this this streamer uh, was out there with the guys. Interesting that Nico Collins wasn't there, no? Mm. Do you want to turn that into something that it, we absolutely would be reaching by doing? Nico Collins not happy that Stephon Diggs is a Houston Texan. I mean, Nico Collins not there. Mm. Got to mm. wonder of the first workout. It is cool to see them working out this quickly. Yeah. Um, and obviously Diggs has a lot of things to prove this coming season. But, hey, they're all, they're all out there. C.J. Stroud, that's our quarterback. Yeah, I think that I think the Texans have really done a, a masterful job of getting the most out of Stephon Diggs. Just by the way they set up this trading contract, he's not going to be a Texan in 2025. He's going to want to make 30 million dollars a year, 25 million dollars a year when he hits free agency. Probably not. I, you're going to get best behavior, Stephon Diggs. I think this year. I, I really am not because he's just want to go into the offseason next year when he hits free agency, whether it's here or somewhere else. Like I wouldn't completely rule it out. Uh, the Texans bring him back. I, they have five wide receivers and set to hit free agency in 2025. It's a lot, lot of wide receivers. Uh, of your, so that's like five of your seven, mm -hmm. I would imagine. So I guess you know Tank Dell and Xavier Hutchinson would be the only two that are under contract technically next year. So it's not inconceivable that Diggs comes back, but I would imagine he goes somewhere else. So I think you're going to get him on best behavior this season. I would think so. It... it Though remains to be seen if he can get whatever things that aggravate him to be on the back of his mind as mm -hmm. opposed to at the front. And because and, I, I think that is going to be key as far as developing a rapport with Stroud. You can't be an obnoxious diva. You just can't. And, and I, I don't think Stroud's going to allow for it. But what if. Stroud can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. uh, from, from the sound of things, there have been some interesting conversations about Diggs' relationship with Josh Allen. I know Mike Florio and Chris Sims got in a shouting match over this on, uh, I think, PFT Live or whatever, Pro Football Talk Live, where I think Florio's of the belief that Allen let Diggs get away with too much. Mm -hmm. And that certainly could be the case. You know, if you're Josh Allen, you're like, finally got a good wide receiver. I kind of have to do whatever I can to keep him around. Yeah. I Ironically, that. he's got less game with the wide receiver than he does with the uh, with the Marvel Disney star, his girlfriend. Why do you say that? Well, I'm, he, 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 knows, he knows how to deal with celebrity women, but uh, doesn't seem to know how to deal with diva wide receivers. I feel like diva wide receivers are more high maintenance than most Hollywood stars. Oh, man, I don't know. I mean, I think it's pretty close, but <laughs> – I mean, like, now, like I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio can't even date somebody we'll older than 25. Now, okay, so see, now that there's like, I guess there's like two That's levels of celebrity, right? Yeah. Like you have like, kick control age. You have like Leo, the Kardashians, Paris Hiltons of the world that are like obviously like incredibly, incredibly high maintenance, and then you probably have NFL wide receivers, and then you have like the next tier of celebrity. NFL wide receivers are the second are, are the biggest divas then that there is. Yeah. The, the people that you're talking about at the beginning are like Illuminati members. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. So like they're not they're almost like not real people. <laughs> no. <they're laughs> but not. like you have Josh Allen's girlfriend who's in like been a ton of things, but we don't know Guardians her name. Guardians of the Grove. Like that's I don't know her name. Uh, I forget. Haley Steinfeld. Yep, that's right. Yeah. And I probably this is self shaming. I know her more from Pitch Perfect than I do from. She was in Pitch Perfect. She was in the third one. There's three Pitch Perfects. Yeah, I'm not ashamed to admit that. Well, you, you are a musical guy. I am. 
Can you I'm sing? Gonna, can you sing? I'm going to get crushed for that. Why? For just admitting that. You haven't seen Dune 2, but you have seen Pitch Perfect I'm going to watch Dune 3. 2 tonight. How about Pitch Perfect 4? Doesn't exist. I will watch Pitch Perfect I, 5, The Legend of Curly's Gold. If I don't watch Dune 2 tonight... You don't have to watch Dune 2 tonight. I Because, of course, you're going to be watching the great starter named uh, uh, Herbert... <laughs> uh, Blair Henley. Same thing. Herbert Henley is, is on the mound for the Houston Astros tonight. No hitter. Here we go. Here we go. No hitter. Does he have dad strength? Not sure because I don't know much about him. But he also was only drafted in 2019, so he might be a little young for dad strength. We'll find out. Blair Henley on the mound tonight just for Framber Valdez. Just give why, him a little juice. Why give, is, give him some greenies. Why is Framber out? 713-780-3776. We don't know. We'll find out uh, later during the Killer Bees. Uh, it is Glenn George live from Space Cadet here on ESPN 97.5 and Back to Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios located at Space Cadet Bar and Scratch Kitchen in the Heights. All right, if you missed the news, uh, Ari Alexander, I am going to make the, point this out here just because I feel like I have to. He is the only person that's reported on this uh, so far, um, but he, he tweeted out at 2.17 – that from Valdez is not going to be starting tonight for the Houston Astros, and they're calling up right-handed pitcher Blair Henley. Uh, Henley was a 2019 seventh-round pick out of Texas. Um, according to Ari, will make his major league debut tonight. I'm a little skeptical just because he's the only one. No disrespect to Ari here, but uh, it's been quite a little bit since we've got any confirmation from anyone else 
about this story, but regardless, uh, this is now numero concerno uno for the Houston Astros. Definitely not good, and you hope that we're not about to hear about the, what, third or fourth massive <laughs> Tommy John surgery in the course of Ugh. three days? Yeah, Shane Bieber, Perez from the Marlins, and then um, there's one other one. Oh, well. yeah, old Herbert Hendricks. Oh, yeah. From the uh, North Dakota Stars. It is just uh, it Jim is Richards. Spencer <laughs> Scooby Doo Doo You got yeah. the first name right. That's it. Yeah. Spencer Strider. Yeah, that guy. We got, we're, you got, we got there. On the Braves. Took a little bit. <laughs> we, take a we, little got, bit. we got there. I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. I'm just going to assume the worst. Oh, now. Paul's got negative vibes. Sam. Well, yeah, cause uh, the, the solar eclipse was such a dud. I, I I can't believe that that was what that was so hyped. I can't uh, believe it. Yeah, we got the we got the bad end of it for sure. No, I, we I, we didn't get an end of it. Exactly. I, I thought it was supposed to be like five minutes away from us. No, they uh they just showed this photo. Uh, our, there's this photo going around Twitter right now of Progressive Field. These are the White Sox players and Indians player. Oh, Guardians players canceled and their fans outside. <laughs> About 20 minutes that's ago. That's just a night game. What are we talking that's from about The here? day game today. That's uh, from the eclipse. Uh, so that's what that's what the eclipse could be. We just didn't. We get didn't that. get it. All right, let's wrap the, up the, the roof show. Roof is closed. It's time for garbage time. So I was driving around in my automobile on Friday. And while driving, I was stuck at a stop sign. And I had something unfortunate happen to me. Uh Uh-oh. A homeless man came and decided that he was going to try to wash my car for trinkets. Here's the problem. And I'm pretty sure that we're all in agreement here. Despite their best efforts... Has anyone ever had their car made more clean by a homeless person no. getting out a rag? In fact, has anyone just not had all sorts of smudges on their car when that's happened? I, I, I got to say, I, I think that the homeless have got to work on the, the trade side of the operation at these stoplights, right? Like, I have an idea. You know who I'd really want to be with if things hit the fan a homeless person so like for an apocalypse i'd l- if if i could hire a homeless person on retainer for the apocalypse like okay. sign him to a contract or something yeah. like that for- that would actually be worth five to ten dollars as opposed to the crappy car wash that you're trying to guilt trip me uh money out of me with uh i it's my least favorite thing i wear i because i don't want it i don't want it i and i, I try to stop them I put my sunglasses on so I can avoid eye contact. I just go, seem like a horrible person. I just try to wave him off. No, no, no. But, but no, I wave this person off, and he's still like sm- there's smudges all over the car now. And the now wor- I actually have to take it to the car wash. And the worst part is, wh- wait, so he tried to wash your whole car? Yes, he like went around in a circle, like the whole thing, and it, there's just smudges everywhere. Okay, so I thought you were just talking about just your windshield. No, no, no. He, the, the windshield was totally fine. Oh. So it just goes around the entirety of the car. Yeah, I could see like just the windshield. <laughs> like you could kind like maybe. I'd let you do that, but no, they gotta they gotta work on their skills provided, okay? And I think yeah. homeless, homeless person on retainer for zombie apocalypse. That's a good way to go. That sounds good. Uh, are you sure that this story does not take place in Florida? Uh, a Texas nurse was arrested for having the relations with, let's just say, not a human. In fact, the Great Dane. Uh, the clip was found on her husband's phone after he was caught flashing at a supermarket. Mm. This is uh, uh, Jolie and uh, William Mitchell Keene. Uh, they were arrested March 27th near Houston. Uh, the story amazingly gets worse. <laughs> Do we want to go further into it? But this is the most Florida-sounding story that I think I've ever seen take place in Texas. Uh, the headline that I'm seeing, oh. moment Texas nurse is arrested for having sex with the Great Dane, clip was found by cops on husband's phone after he was caught flashing at a supermarket. Texas! Taking, taking a cue out of Florida. A dog? Uh, it's g- Great Dane. Multiple, multiple acts. It's the world's biggest dog breed. That's so weird. It, it is. That is certainly one way to describe it. I think that's the, it. the weirdest thing you could do. Mm-hmm. 
There's well, there's actually worse details in this story, and I'm not going to no, read no, them. No, no, no. I am not going to read them. All right. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit earlier in the show about how Texas is the most stressed, or excuse me, Houston is the most, I guess, uptight city oh, yeah. in the United States. Well, also, uh, Houston is one of the worst cities for dating in okay, the United why? States. Texas cities are known for being sprawling, unwalkable giga suburbs. <coughs> Less known is the fact that they are, statistically speaking, not great for single men either. Houston is the worst on both of these metrics with the worst walkability and the worst male to female ratio at 0.97 young women for each young man. It has very good barbecue, though. And it says the two types of girls that you will get in Houston are those who are aggressive drivers and those who love talking about her southern heritage (laughs) but have no accent. And yes. Okay. uh, Yeah, I guess so. My wife fits into the first category, the aggressive driver category. Oh, that's good. So can't be a can't be a passive driver. No, you can't. I mean, if you try to be a passive driver in Houston, you're you'll never be in a Fast and Furious movie. You'll, like, just, hey. you'll never go anywhere. If no, you're not an aggressive you, driver. You really never will. All right, that does it for us. Uh, we are broadcasting live from Space Cadet Bar in the Heights. Uh, Ari Alexander reports from Rivaldo's will not be on the mound for the Houston Astros tonight. We'll keep you updated with all of that as the Killer Bees broadcast live here from Space Cadet from three to six. We'll talk to you tomorrow at noon. Goodbye. Peace. Ooh, what up, H-Town? Hey, how we doing? He's blank. I'm Branham. Brian is out here. We're at Space Cadet in the Heights. Austin Rodriguez, A-Rod back at Gal. Uh, come out to Space Cadet. They're usually not open on Mondays, but they're open today for us. Also for Championship Monday, the NCAA Tournament Championship tonight, UConn, Purdue, Astros play the Rangers, final game of the series. Astros have a chance to split. You wouldn't believe that with as many people complaining about the Astros that they could split on the road against the Texas Rangers. But 
Some news, get out here to Space Cadet first and foremost. If you're here by the third inning and then the Astros win, they're going to give you a free beer. So there's that. That's awesome. Great spot to hang out with us. Great spot to have a drink. And their food is fantastic. Their food is uh, to die for. So get out here to Space Cadet in the Heights. Hang out with us. Can't make it today. Come out here anytime. Right before the show, you heard the uh, the Killer G's talking about this, Gallant and George. Ari Alexander at 217 tweeted, breaking the Astros are calling up right-hand pitcher Blair Henley, who will start tonight in place of Framber Valdez. Uh, multiple sources tell KPRC2. Henley, a 2019 seventh-round pick out of Texas, will make his major league deb- debut. I've never heard of Blair Henley. Obviously, we're burying the lead here. What is wrong with Framber, at, for, with Framber Valdez? Where is he? What's going on? What is happening here? Extremely disturbing news. Uh, a lot of people on pins and needles right now based on everything that the Astros have already been through. Very unexpected. And with a chance to, like you said, get the split in the series, bounce off the momentum of last night into possibly getting out of Dodge on their first road series with a split, that would be great. And now you've got a guy that no one, I don't believe, has really ever heard of, even the most diehard Astros fans. I'm not sure how much they knew about him. Spencer Arigetti, when we were at uh, the Space Cowboys game on Friday, pitched, so I guess he wasn't available, obviously. Uh, So they went to uh, another guy in their rotation. And it's going to be real interesting because that offensive lineup for the Rangers is pretty darn good. Yeah, the question is, what's what's Fromber like? What this is a spot start. This is an emergency start for Blair Henley. Mm-hmm. Like he's his career numbers in the minors are actually abysmal. Uh, Four forty seven career ERA. He's only made one start this year. Uh, gave up three runs in five innings last year in Double A and Corpus. Had an ERA north of five over a hundred innings. So. Play the over. Play, play the Texas yep. over. Uh, you're getting the Fromber number, and now Blair Henley's going get to get the start, which is terrifying. But the question here is, what in the world's wrong with Fromber Valdez? And I don't think that there's any way to tell the answer here. I heard Joe like, saying, well, you know, Ari Alexander, no offense to him. He might be wrong. I've never seen Ari Alexander break news that was wrong. He's got some good sources. I don't know who they are or where they come from, but he's got some good sources. I have a pretty good idea of where they come from. I think they come from minor league sources because all of his breaking news comes from the minor leagues. It's like a guy gets called up. It's a situation like this where a guy's making a spot spot start. Every source, every time I've seen Ari break a story, it's been about a minor leaguer. So he's got minor league sources, and I think that's why he doesn't know that Fromber is not, he doesn't know what's wrong with Fromber, and that's why nobody else has this right now. Chandler doesn't have it. Brian McTaggart doesn't have it. Ari has the angle from the minor leagues because that's where Ari gets his sources from. I thought yeah, – that's interesting you said that. I didn't even th- didn't think that or know that. I thought that there was a time or two, I want to say in free agency or something, where he had someone – I know he's got some connections to the Mets as well too, but he had someone that was signing somewhere. But, yeah, maybe that's the case. Maybe it's just in the minor leagues. But he does – I don't believe he's wrong. I, I don't believe that when he puts stuff out there – that uh, very, that I've ever seen him where he has been wrong. The, the Fromber question to me, you know, we've seen just a plethora of injuries to pitchers uh, in, in the majors right now. Uh, I was saying to Joe, you know, look at a guy like Shane Bieber who pitched very well in his first two starts, uh, 20 strikeouts in two starts. Now he's done for the year. Multiple pitchers down for the year. Fromber pitched really good so far this year. Better in, a, in his second start than his first start. It's puzzling. You hope it's nothing. But, boy, you can't help but be extremely concerned. It does, it's not all the time, but usually whenever you have that elbow, like usually you leave the game. Mm-hmm. You, like Usually it's something that forces you to leave a game. I don't know the case of uh, Strider. I don't know if he left the game with uh, his UCL or whatever. I don't know the case of Bieber. I don't know if he left the game. But usually when a guy, like we saw it last year with the Astros twice, uh, Jose Arquiti didn't need Tommy John, but Jose Arquiti left the game. Luis Garcia, who did need Tommy John, like felt it and left the game. Yep. So you like more times than not, I would, I would guess, that you leave a game whenever you have that. So like that's maybe – me putting a positive spin on it is that that didn't happen with Fromber Valdez. It's not completely, you know, dismissing that because there's been other examples of guys that have to have Tommy John surgery that it flares up after the game, they pitch through it or whatever. Um, so, yeah, we, we just have no idea what Fromber Valdez is forcing him to miss the start. I'm sure that it will break at some time today, and as soon as it breaks, uh, we'll have it. But other than that, you're just guessing. Yeah, um, because of the fact that it could be a variety of things, right? I guess it's the, the, the best advice is to not, you know, get too overly concerned and upset about it until the news com- comes out because it could be something with someone you know a personal matter family member uh something happened somewhere and suddenly you know he had to do what he had to do you just don't know but of course the first assumption and the first thing that everybody's thinking about is god i hope he's not hurt and obviously everybody that's an astros fan is thinking that based on what their pitching staff looks like right now could have ate some uh 
some bad steak in Dallas. You yeah. know, could have been as simple as that. So who knows? Uh, we'll be all over it though. We'll look for it anytime. Anything that uh, breaks, uh, we'll let you know. Good, bad, and ugly from the Astros weekend. Uh, they've haven't completed this series against the Rangers. The four game set, but they lost the first two. They won yesterday. You want to start with the good? You want to start with the bad? Your call. Could go either way. Okay, well, I'm, I'm more of the positive of the two. So I'll go with the uh, the good. Ronel Blanco. Ronel Blanco, no 14 and two-thirds, no-hit baseball. In my mind, he he's pitched himself into the rotation. Like, whenever Verlander comes back, hopefully Fromberg makes his start here coming up. Who knows about that? That throws another wrinkle into things. If Verlander comes back in a week and a half, Fromber is okay, and you're going with a five-man rotation. Ronel Blanco has pitched himself into the rotation. He should not be involved in the conversation of which starter goes to the bullpen. Not at all. I mean, he's earned to be a spot in that rotation. I did. I was very surprised. I thought no, no matter how many pitches he threw, as deep as he went into that game and getting into a hundred pitch plus range last game, I was a little bit concerned about where he would be with his arm and also what the pitch count might be, look like. But boy, oh boy, I mean, the changeup has been a, a extremely effective pitch for him. Uh, he pitched his tail off again last night, uh, and it's great to see because obviously they needed it desperately with the situation of their staff, and he has been a huge bright spot for this squad. It's crazy. Like, it, it, it seems legit because, I mean, last year he was a fringe big leaguer. He made more starts in the minors than he did in the bigs. He didn't really throw that changeup a whole lot last year. And now it's like, okay, we're going to throw this changeup into the mix. And it's, it's two starts. Like, let's – you know, pump the brakes a little bit, but two starts that are super exciting. He's given up one hit in those two starts, 15 combined innings, has not allowed a run. His command was a little bit shaky yesterday, but got out of all sorts of trouble. This is this is fun. Like, this is awesome to see a guy who you really didn't have high expectations for. You thought he was a big league arm, probably out of the bullpen when everybody was healthy. But to see this kind of start, it's like, oh, maybe the, maybe the Astros really have uncovered something. Maybe Dana Brown should get a lot of credit for converting him into a starting pitcher. They've had a knack in the past of finding guys that weren't rated in the top 100 and prospects that have been able to step up a little bit. But this is a guy that, look, it could be just what the doctor ordered in so many different ways. But if he's a guy you can plug and play that can be that kind of effective for you and you assume that – when JV comes back, that he's going to be, you know, top of the rotation stuff yet again. And, and you've got the rest of those guys waiting in line. Uh, what a pleasant surprise that would be to be able to have a guy like that be that effective and then be able to kind of plug other guys into the bullpen roles where you are struggling to try and find arms and find guys that can get outs uh, to get it to the back of the bullpen, which you assume is going to settle down and be just fine as well. All right, what good do you have, Blankers? Uh, you're done. I mean, to me, Jordan, the bomb last night, sorely needed. But we were saying early in the season he was hitting the ball hard. He just wasn't getting results. It just seems to me like, you know, he's starting to find his swing. He had mentioned to Espada before they hit the road, you know, I found something. You know, my hands were a little off. Uh, boy, he looks like he's going to settle back in to be the guy that they need him to be, and that is a, a perfect recipe for a team that uh, needs that power bat in the middle of the lineup. How many RBIs do you need from Jordan Alvarez? Because this, this, this has been the big conversation. For the season? Yeah. I mean, in a two-hole, I mean, the obvious answer is 100, 100 or more. But, I mean, I would say, yeah, I'll say that. I'll say about 105. I think 100's a lot out of the two-hole, but that would be fantastic. That would be a really good season. Fromber, or not Fromber, uh, Jordan Alvarez right now, when you factor in what he did yesterday, he's on pace for 97 RBIs. He's also on pace for 97 runs. So, like, this whole thought, well, you know, Jordan's not going to get these RBI situations. And I don't think Jordan, like, to your point, I don't think he's been on fire. Like, he's right. had some good games. He had the two-home run game. He had, of course, the three-run homer yesterday. But it's not like Jordan Alvarez is in one of those stretches where you can't get him out. Like, his, his numbers for Jordan's sake are, you know, kind of pedestrian. He's going to find his stroke and have a two-week, three-week, you know, tear where he's just unconscious. Jordan Alvarez is on a 97 RBI pace. And this whole, well, he's not going to get these RBI situations. Well, he's on pace for 97 RBIs, and he hadn't went on a tear yet. I would say that that's pretty good. I would say that's a lot of RBI opportunities. So just kind of you know taking a shot at those that say that Jordan's not going to get enough, enough chances batting in the two-hole. I disagree with that. Uh, that was great to see the three-run homer because it's all the offense you got yesterday. But there's going to be days like that. There's going to be days whenever Jordan, Altuve, you know, hopefully Tucker – Alex Bergman, he'll come up in a second, uh, that they, they they pick you up and they win a ball game for you. Uh, I'm going to go with Rafael Montero for another good, to stick with the good uh, of what's going on with the Astros. Rafael Montero has not given up a run since his first appearance, which I hesitate saying this because I don't want to jinx him. I'll knock on this wooden table right now. Four outings in a row that Rafael Montero has not given up a run. You know what his ERA is? 
I don't. 193. 190. Is Rafael Montero back? Is Rafael Montero back to where he's pitching at the back end of a big league uh, bullpen? I'm not going to say that because <laughs> that last out last night, I kind of. I mean, he's a fly ball pitcher. Yeah, that was it pretty good. But, uh, look, I hope he is because we talked about the, the biggest glaring weakness in this in this team right now is that, that middle of the bullpen. Uh, they they desperately need him to be the Rafael Montero, Montero of, of the second half of last year. I'm not even going to go back to a year before that. I'm just going to need a guy that's better than serviceable that when you plug and play isn't guaranteed to give up a run or two uh, that can get a hold you know can can hold the team down until you can get to your power arms. Uh, so let's hope so. I hope I hope for everybody's sake that he is back. Yeah. Uh- and it, look, it's five appearances, so you can't go crazy about the five appearances. But I'd rather see a 193 ERA after five appearances as sure. opposed to last year when it was probably 1193 after five appearances. And then the final good that I have. Do you have another good? Uh, go ahead. Uh, anyone have any good? 713-780-3776. Last one that I have. Jake Myers has the third best OPS on the Astros right now. Jake Myers. That's crazy. Jake Myers, he he, he does not have a stolen base, though. Oh, I thought does, I had one last night. <laughs> he does have the third highest OPS on the Astros right now. So, like, it's cool to see Jake Myers produce offensively. And, look, I don't think he's going to sustain the number that he's at right now, but just be average to above average. And then with his defense, he becomes an average to above average to maybe even a pretty good option in center field. The two Astros ahead of him in OPS are actually Jose Altuve and Jeremy Pena. So, like, Jordan's not ahead of Myers. Tucker's not ahead of Myers. Of course, Alex Bregman's not ahead of Myers. It's nice to see some production from the bottom of the order. Um, I, I list Myers here, but you could just as easily list Jeremy Pena. Sure. Because 8-9, you have two of your top three OPS guys right now. Yeah, look, I mean, the fact that Pena's hitting over 300 right now is great. The fact that it looks like whatever he was doing, tinkering with his swing and making the changes that he made, looks like that they're paying off because he does have a little bit more pop and lift, as you had mentioned, but also the fact that he's hitting for average, he's not striking out. He doesn't look silly when he, he's missing pitches. That's good. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously – have Yiner still settling in too in the middle of that lineup is a big thing too for him to be another guy hitting over 300 it's nice to see that you can rely on a guy like that when you, your top of your lineup is still kind of getting right uh any good 713-780 ESPN do you have another good blankers I think that's uh, Brian that's do you have good. any goods any no goods from Brian he's just an, a, a, I guess just an ever pessimist huh oh uh, you, you guys cover the goods oh okay any good 713-780-3776-5038 good Blanco in the bottom of the lineup all right let's get to the fun stuff Let's get to the bad and the ugly. 713-780-3776. What's the bad and the ugly from the Astros over the weekend? Also, why is Fromber scratched tonight? Why is Fromber not starting tonight? Wrong answers only. 713-780-3776. Killer Bees broadcasting live from the Space Cadet. 713-780-3776. The number. We're on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ESPN975. ESPN Houston on YouTube. Blankers is at Pac-Man Joel. Brian's at Sacked by BMAC. I'm at Jeremy Branham. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN975 and ESPN925. I've been telling all of you for what seems like ages now that General Ben is the best. It's the time that it's the age-old truth the gentle bin is the best it starts with the finest ingredients classic time-honored distilling methods gentle bin uses a revolutionary technology that eliminates impurities for the cleanest smoothest spirits you will ever taste you'll love what's not in gentle bin including vocs what are vocs volatile organic compounds the gentle bin purification process takes out these volatile organic compounds which can lead to coughing when you're drinking the other brands don't get the other brands with volatile organic compounds you don't want any of that you get all the flavor with gentle bin none of the none of the burn and none of the vocs the vodka the gin straight bourbon whiskey cast strength bourbon all are fantastic all are in my rotation what's in your rotation next time you head to dinner or go to the bar ask for gentle bin Look, at, look for Gentle Bin at the liquor store, or if you're looking for plans, head to the Gentle Bin Tasting Room in Alvin. There's also Gentle Bin at Minute Maid and Toyota Center, so you can get some Gentle Bin there. Why not? Just stop by their kiosk at either one of those, uh, either one of those arenas or stadiums. Also head to GentleBin.com to learn more about their incredible story, the legacy that is Gentle Bin, and you can also order straight from the website. That's right, the vodka, the gin, the bourbon, the whiskey. Order all of it at GentleBin.com, GentleBin.com. Gentle Bin, all the flavor, none of the burn.
you're back with the Killer Bees. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Space Cadet Bar and Scratch Kitchen in the Heights. We are indeed at Space Cadet in the Heights. I saw Brian eyeing the menu. Todd, GM, the suits, the suits upstairs are here. You know, they're not going to miss out on a good drink and a good bite. The suits are here. Uh, Todd has a beer. I see Joe has a uh, beer. Joe's eating for the second time, I see. He says he was a official taster of, a, of trial wings earlier. Now he's going f- full board to his own meal. That's a good gig if you can get it. Yeah, I guess so. I would, uh, I would love to have that gig. Uh, I didn't see that uh, Joe offered me any of those wings. I noticed that. What are you eyeing, Brian? What are you going to have uh, here at Space Cadet? The wing, the wing, the wing I had a pretty er, uh, earlier that uh, Joe also had one was pretty tasty. I think I'm going to go with wings. These guys are eating twice before we're eating once. I had one wing, Jeremy. <laughs> How many wings did we have collectively? Joe said one. he had one as well. <laughs> Collectively, we had one. No, I'm saying Blankers and I. <laughs> You've had the one. Blankers well, the wings and I are gone by the time you guys got here. Uh, I see Joe eating a wing. Seven one three seven eight zero ESPN. Good, bad, and ugly from the Astro weekend. Also, why is Fromber not pitching today? According to Ari, uh, Ari's called said that the the Henley fella. A former Longhorn, well, I guess once a Longhorn, always a Longhorn. But um, he's going to make the start tonight for Fromber Valdez. So why is Fromber Valdez out? Good, bad, ugly, all of that. Nine zero six two. Fromber Valdez is out because he's throwing a hissy fit about not having Martin Maldonado as his catcher. Put the what's the validity validity in that? Uh, I think very low, <laughs> based on the fact that he threw to Caratini the last time and threw very well. Maybe Victor could be his new Maldi. Yeah, I think that the. Um, the temper tantrum would have come before the season, not now. Uh, 60-30, Hunter Brown experiment over on the trading block right now. Abreu just cut him, and I say we trade for Pete Alonso. So that's a lot there. Um, trading Hunter Brown whenever his stock is at his lowest isn't good business. Now, I think there is a conversation about moving him to the bullpen whenever you're whole again. If you bring back Verlander and you go to a five-man rotation, look, J.P. France has been solid. If we're going off of results, J.P. France deserves to be in the rotation over Hunter Brown. Absolutely. Ronel Blanco deserves to be your ace if we're going off of results. So there is a conversation about Hunter Brown. Obviously, it's not that the experiment is over, that you're just trading him right now. That's no way to do business. Oh, well, this really big commodity with very good potential is, isn't doing as well as we would like in his second full year in the big leagues, so let's trade him. That's idiotic. That's stupid. Now, moving over to the bullpen, I think, is in play. Well, without question, because of the fact that, like you said, I mean, we didn't expect this from Blanco, but if this is what you're going to get, he's done it now in back-to-back starts, hopefully there's no reason to believe that the wheels are going to fall off. If he can continue to do that, then you've got guys that are getting outs and keeping you in games. And if if he's not capable of doing it, and that disaster that happened over the weekend uh, w- being blown out in his start, not a good look for him, and you got to do what you got to do, and maybe it's an eye-opener in the process. And it sends a message that, hey, no matter how much you were thought of in years past, this is a different team with obviously the same set of goals. We're going to do what we got to do to kind of give us a best chance to win, especially right now when we're down on arms. Uh, Coog Blaze says Fromber took the day off to try to get his Panda points back. I update on that. They did update. They gave me my Panda points back. Not only did they give me my Panda points back, but they gave me a free box entree. So Panda, Panda Express hooked me up. They're good in my book again. I cannot wait to dive into that black pepper chicken and that Kung Pao chicken with super greens as the side because they are healthy. Uh, 0635, Fromber Valdez is out due to having an appointment at his hair salon to get his extensions installed again, signed JD. Um, he did have those last year. Now, I don't want him to have the extensions. He pitched really good last yeah. year without the extensions. Yeah, maybe it's because of the fact that when we, came, we said he came into camp in shape and he looked like he had tightened some things up. Maybe also he was a little bit more – uh, flexible and wasn't weighted down by all the, the hair and the, the beads and such. But, yeah, I was thinking that similarly along those lines, he got a, a Joe Buck scare when he got uh, the, he was trying to get braids put back in and maybe got a little infected. Eric, the driver, the ugly, uh, Jose Abreu, the bad brown. I was, I was interested to see, or I was intrigued, rather, to see – a spot to put Abreu in that game late yesterday. Like As a defensive replacement. Is he and better defensive? defensive? Oh, like, they're both bad. The, now, he did make a nice play on the last play of the game on the scoop from Altuve's weak throw. Like, Singleton's not a good defender either. No. 
Like, I wouldn't – I don't know if one's better than the other. But you remember, they're both just bad. Was it the Yankee series where he made two errors in one inning where yeah. he, he tried to short hop a ball and it hit the heel of the glove and bounced out and then he couldn't stop another ball? And it's like, yeah, his defense has fallen off. I was a little surprised last night too when he put they put him in late. And it's also a bit of, like, uh, talking out of both sides of your mouth because it's, oh, they want to give Jose Abreu days off to get him off his feet. That way he's fresher and they think that that would lead to better results. Well, you're putting him in late in the game. You're kind of taking away the day off. Now it's like a half day off. So, like, what's the full result of having the half day off if you believe full days off are going to lead to better productivity? Although saying productivity with Jose Abreu sounds like that's a contradiction anyways. A 6-9-4-1 good Altuve 10-game hitting streak. He's been – he's had a great start to the year. Oh, no doubt. Really good start to the year. Um, the ugly is Altuve's base running. Did he, he got picked off. Was there another one over the weekend? I can only remember the pickoff at first base. I don't remember another. I think, no, that's that's the only the, one. I think that's the only one, yeah. Which you can't get picked off in that spot. Nope. Come on. Uh, 7506, why is Fromber not starting today? He looked at the eclipse too long. Everybody's using that one, so get some fresh material. Uh, hopefully that is it, though, right? Like, if all the things it could be, would you be cool if he looked at the eclipse too long? Because that's probably only one start. I'm assuming it's not going to blind him for good. Maybe no, it, it could says blind it's him for supposed good. to. Blind him for good? I mean, if, if, they, if, if you they burn, say that, uh, yeah, if you don't wear the, go- the, the the glasses, it is possibility. I mean, if you burn your retinas, that doesn't sound like a one-game absence. You don't need the retinas, right? Do you need retinas to pitch? <laughs> Do you really need retinas well, six, to pitch? Well, six walks in his first start suggests maybe his retinas were already burned. <laughs> if there is one Astro to look at the eclipse too long, who would it be? Fromber's up there. You know exactly what I Jake answer. Myers? Yes, yeah. indeed. Or Chaz. I, I, yeah, I, but definitely Jake is at the front of the list because it looks like he already did it once too often. Jake, Chaz, Fromber's I, probably I, I was, up there. I was surprised Joel didn't say Montero. No. You know no, my. You, you would have said Mashinsky, but he's already been sent down. Yeah. But well, the, I mean, there's a difference between being bad and stupid, I think. Yeah, well, look. Sure. My, they're my, not mutually exclusive, though. No, As my kids would not. say, the S word. If I'm going to associate the S word with an Astro, it's definitely going to be the center fielder because you know how I feel about the deer in the headlights, both offensively and defensively of years past. 4 2 9 4 at a softball tournament this weekend at Lake Jackson and heard a familiar voice in the stands. Was it, talking about, talking about you? in the stands. Was right there in the middle of the action on the field. That's what I was about to say. I thought you coached. Oh, yeah. So you weren't in the stands. He was in the stands. You yep. weren't in the yep. stands. 8818. Fromber has tickets to the championship game tonight. I wouldn't mind that because that means that he wouldn't have significant injury. Now, he was going AWOL from one of his starts isn't great news, but it's better than Tommy John. Yeah. I would take that. I think if you go with, like, top five kind of whew, we dodged a bullet type things, food poisoning, Something happened to a relative or something like that where, where, you know, a family issue that had to be taken care of, um, got got a virus, got sick, uh, just like a flu bug or the cold would be, I think, first three off the list where you go, okay, maybe had an accident or something like that and got, I don't know, I I would hate to say to his pitching hand, but a lot of times guys we know have gotten injured uh, doing things other than baseball related and get injured to a finger, an arm or something like that. Those are four right there, but those would be where at least you're going – I thank God it's not nothing like major structural damage to the arm. Everybody's saying the same eclipse joke. Every single one. Uh, seven one three seven eight zero ESPN. Wrong answers only. Why is Farmer Valdez not making his start tonight? Hopefully, he doesn't have Tommy John. <laughs> it's it's a fair fear to have right now because Maybe every pitcher is having Tommy is John. Is the eclipse seems, joke that he? He's just at looking it. at the eclipse. He's every single text oh, week, not everyone, but at least 90%. be creative to, to say he blacked out in the middle of the afternoon due to the eclipse and hit his head on something. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit more creative. It's, yeah. a, it's an additional domino. I, I like that. Ocho Frommer's not starting tonight because he's watching the national championship game at Space Cadet while drinking Gentle Ben. It's a great call. I mean, that's a great way to spend a Monday evening. That's the way I'm going to spend my Monday evening. You should spend your Monday evening doing the same thing. All right, what bads do you have from the Astro Weekend, Blinkers? Uh, I was torn between two really bads. Uh, to me, I, I'll, I'll say that the bad was Hunter Brown because of the fact that that was just awful. But the only reason why I say that is because that was just one outing. Uh, I, you know, my ugly is another pitcher. I'll just leave it there till we get to it. Who? Ryan Presley. The stress, Ryan Stressley. Just the good. reaction, too. Yesterday. Yeah, but just the reaction yesterday, too, when he finally got out of the inning, too. It, it was like, you know what? You're better than that. You're, you're supposed to be getting guys out, lights out, more times than not. The start of this season, last year, obviously, with the World Baseball Classic, there was a chance for you to be able to use that as an excuse. This year so far, I guess the only thing you could say is he's not comfortable going back to his former role of setup type guy, but he hasn't been good. Yeah, he was uh, – hopefully that was just a blip in the radar, but you're right, he hasn't, he hasn't been good. 
Uh, good to see him get on track ish uh, yesterday. I have uh, I have several bads. First off, Carl Ravitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh so bad. Oh, so campaign. hard Continues. to watch a game called by Carl Ravitch. So it's, it's, it's funny because I'm watching the game last night, and anytime he says anything that's even remotely questionable, I'm thinking Jeremy's going to crush that. He was bouncing around between saying RBI and RBIs. He doesn't even know what he wants to say. Like at least pick a side. It'd either be pick a side, be wrong, or pick a side, be right. He's going both ways. Not that there's anything wrong with that uh he screwed up before the first pitch he screwed up before the first pitch he's looking at the lineup they say in the Astros lineup which he can see it on the monitor it's right in front of him it's on his scorecard the first base no he goes there he goes they love Yonder Diaz's bat and they're giving him a day That's off his feet today yep no they're not he's literally catching as it says in your graphic and as it should say in your scorecard like he That's screwed exactly. up before even the first pitch That's the first one that caught me going Brandon's gonna crush him oh yeah. man it's painful to listen to Carl and it stinks because I like Eduardo and I like Cohen yeah they're good I like those did you guys. see to the and the ESPN graphic prior to that it was like one one segment earlier. They had multiple designated hitters listed for the Astros and really? no one at first base. I didn't see that. I wonder if that's what screwed them up. Maybe, because I was looking at it, the same thing. I'm, well, who's Obviously, I would think that Singleton has to play first, but he could play first, and so could Yiner. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. I didn't I didn't notice that. That's a bad, That's another bad one. I haven't seen Yiner play first this year. I wouldn't mind it, though, because that leads me to my second one. Yiner is a catcher. Yiner defensively hasn't been pretty. We know he's got a cannon. We know he's got a rocket for an arm. But Yiner receiving pitches and blocking balls in the dirt isn't been good. He's not full Evan Gaddis. Never go full Evan Gaddis if you're behind the dish. But Yiner Diaz's receiving ability needs some work, and I think that's why they moved this bullpen catcher to the dugout so he Saw can that. work to Yiner Diaz in between innings. Yeah, they said that they're they're shuffling some things up. The Sugarland bullpen catcher will be in the bullpen for the rest of the year, so their bullpen pet catcher can help the two catchers. I don't know that other than – full-time major league coaches that are in the dugout helping the catcher I I, I mean I guess from if, if it's defensive wise but if it's calling pitches and things you would think the bench coach and the and the manager and the pitching coaches are going to be in on that but I think it's talking to him about receiving like hey we didn't so. we didn't love the way that you caught that 2-2 breaking ball and you flipped the glove this is what you need to do I think it's to give real-time coaching as opposed to waiting until after the game because uh, he doesn't he doesn't receive well he doesn't present well he doesn't frame well if I'm Jim Crane I'm trying to get the robo umpire uh, immediately because it doesn't matter how you frame it you receive as soon as you get a robo umpire but then balls in the dirt too like he's sitting there trying to pick it like a you know like a shortstop instead of hey let's block it you got that chest protect yeah. let's block it uh so that's that's been a uh, something to, to monitor uh, he's not Evan Gaddis but he's not great defensively there the first base production I don't care who it is whether it's Jose Abreu who's got a 212 OPS or it's John Singleton who has a 368 OPS they're awful like these guys they would be awful in Triple A. Like you don't, you're that first base is the one position. Well, there's multiple positions, but first base is one of the top three, maybe the most offensive position on the field. Maybe DH, maybe one of the corner outfield spots. But you should be getting productive offense from that spot. And the Astros aren't getting productive offense from that spot. Not only are they getting like worse first base production from that spot, they're getting like worse starter in baseball production from that spot. That's what I was thinking. Like when we were down at Sugarland on Friday, and, and and you can't do any worse than the two guys. You, they're not getting you any power. They're not doing anything from an average standpoint. They're not doing anything to really help you. If you want to bring Joey Loberfino up just because of the fact that maybe he's a boomer bust, but at least there's a chance he might hit some home runs, put him up there, do something to change it up and maybe get Singleton out of there. It's an embarrassment what they're putting out there at first base every night. It, yeah. it, and, and Abreu looks like, I don't know, he's got, looks, to me it looks like he's got a whole lot of I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's just slumping and filling it. Um, Brandon Belt's out there. I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna bang on the Brandon Belt drum until Brandon Belt either signs with the Astros or signs somewhere else. And then the last one that I have, uh, Alex Bregman trying to get paid oh, man, yeah. by hitting a lot of home runs. I, Eduardo Perez said he leaned up this offseason, which is I heard that. not what went down. Bregman himself said he gained 20, 25 pounds. Uh, Bregman's trying to get lift. I think it's noticeable. I think he's trying to hit home runs so he can get a huge contract. And what it's leading to, because he has a fade swing, is weak pop fly, weak pop fly, weak pop fly, and I'm tired of seeing it. Yeah, I, I think you're onto it. We were talking about it when he came up uh, early in a count with runners in scoring position at the end of the homestand and popped it up to the catcher. And, and you just look at it and go, hey, one of the great things about the way he's always been a at the plate when he's been an Astro is not only his eye at the plate and being able to lay off bad pitches is, he also can adjust his swing based on the situation. He's not doing that. He looks like, like you said, he's, he looks like he's trying to drive everything, to put everything in the, se in the seats. Uh, and it's not working. And he's good enough and quirky enough with how he, how much he studies his swing 
that he's prob- he should probably start adjusting now and trying to make uh, a change because it's not working. The king of Twitch, Bregman, is not a home run hitter. No, he's a, he's a guy who hits line drives. But he wants to be he, a home run hitter. I know, and it's, it's leading to him stinking. Uh, any other bads before we give it to the audience? All right, 713-780-ESPN. What was your bad? What was your ugly from over the weekend for the Astros? They're trying to split the series. They can win today with this Hensley guy on the mound. Hinley, not Hensley, Hinley on the mound for the Astros, starting in place of the injured. Well, I shouldn't say injured. Starting in place for Farmer Valdez. Uh, 713-780-ESPN, wrong answers only. Why is uh, why is Fromber uh, not getting the start today? 713-780-3776. Killer Bees broadcasting live from Space Cadet in the Heights. Get down here. If you're here by the third inning and the Astros win tonight, they're going to give you a free beer. All right, when we come back, more of the good, the bad, the ugly, and why Fromber is not pitching today, wrong answers only. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Are you tired of repairing pothe- potholes? Of course you are. Who likes potholes? No one likes potholes. Maybe your driveway of your business, it stinks. Uh, you always try to throw asphalt on it, whatever you're trying to throw on it to cover up that pothole, and it just keeps coming back. We'll stop doing that. Get Third Rock Renewables in your life with their patented technology called mechanical concrete. Maybe you need a new parking lot. Maybe it's a road. Maybe it's a driveway. Maybe it's a laydown yard. Maybe you have some land. I don't know what you would need it, but if you have potholes, this is the solution for good. Third Rock Renewables patented technology. It's mechanical concrete, the only low-cost, industrial-strength, sustainable base which transforms end-of-life tires into a virtually indestructible building product. That's right. These end-of-life tires, they have no more good in their life except for filling these potholes because of this mechanical concrete. Uh, Call Third Rock Renewables at 713-305-0507 and find out how this mechanical concrete can cut your maintenance costs by 75% or more while lowering your carbon emissions. So you lower your carbon emissions, you save 55 75% on, on maintenance costs, so you're going green and you're saving green. How can you not like that? Visit thirdrockrenewables.com to fix these potholes for good. 713-305-0507 or thirdrockrenewables.com. You're listening to The Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Space Cadet Bar in the Heights. 
We are broadcasting live at Space Cadet in the Heights. He's Blank on Branham. Come hang out with us. If you're here by the third inning of the Astros game and the Astros win, they're going to give you a free beer. Can't beat that. And they do that each and every day. It's not just today. It's each and every day. Great spot to watch the uh, the national championship game coming up tonight as well. Uh, they're happy hours. Fantastic. Uh, daily specials, really good. Wednesday, 50 cent wings, 250 imported bottles, $4, 16 ounce draft. That's awesome. How about a good steak night? I love a good steak night. Thursday, $25 steak night special, $5 Maker's Mark Old Fashioned. Great. Uh, Friday, $2 tacos, chicken or beef. That's a cheap dinner. I love that. $5 bottomless chips and salsa. Uh, all day brunch on Sunday with a Bloody Mary bar. So each and every day, great time to be at the Space Cadet in the Heights. 713-780-ESPN. Why is Fromber scratched? Strong answers only. I like this one. 3311. Fromber is stuck on 45, coming back from missing eclipse totality in Kerrville because it was too overcast. It's a good one. There's a traffic I heard was really bad. Uh, I was driving yesterday, and you know how they have, like, on the highway, they have the little, what are they called? Digital readers. Digital readers. There we go. And on the digital readers, it was like, come early, stay late, wear red, go Cougs. No, I didn't say the last part. But it said, come early, stay late, expect traffic delays. Maybe Farmer got stuck in traffic in Kerrville. Didn't, he underestimated how many people were going to be involved to watch this on the highways, and he can't make it back to make his routine of his start. Yeah, I forget what I they call the, the bowling alley of best visibility for the eclipse, but I know that uh, – uh, Yeah, the path? Is this a path? There's some certain – technical term for it but definitely up north in texas had a lot of good viewing spots i think you're right is it Cur- yeah kerrville and there was someone else on this was one uh, this was one of the like, nbc was live from kerrville i think but but definitely the uh, indianapolis they said was like the hub they opened up the indy 500 to fill the oh, stands wow. and then let people out on the track right before it happened but some of the videos from some of the day games and some of the, the ballparks around the, the country, a lot of people are out there checking it out. Um, I know I-10 was a wreck, but there was a wreck on the way here. But that had nothing to do with the Eclipse. But you're right. They did say, like, once you once it's over, expect that everyone is heading for the hills and it's going to get messy on the highways. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe that's what happened. Uh, 713-780-ESPN. The, the Rangers just posted their lineup a little bit, and they're starting their left – their um, their lineup that they would start against right-handed pitching. So another clue that no Fromber Valdez on the mounds. Looks like Ari was gonna is going to be right. Ronel Blanco selected the American League Player of the Week, by the way. Uh, Well-deserved. Yep. I mean, you go 14 and two-thirds of no-hit baseball and you uh, don't allow a run and you pick up a couple of wins, you should absolutely uh, be the Player of the Week, and he is. You uh, see that, that they, they only gave up two hits. The one that broke up his, you know, his, his no-hitter last night was uh, Simeon, 80 miles an hour. To, just to the left of second base where Altuve couldn't get it. And then the second hit that they gave up late in the ball game uh, was another 80-mile-an-hour kind of bleeder over the second base back. Yeah, that was um, – I saw some people – you want to hear some uh, people tweeting about ball that don't know ball? Okay. I, I saw the dialogue out there that they should take Blanco out after five. Okay, like that's – I wouldn't have I, – I can say, oh, all right, like I kind of see your point. Like, he's starting to fade a little bit. He threw a bunch of pitches in his first start. I mean, he threw 105, but that's a lot for a first start, mm-hmm. especially for, like, a fringe starter who's kind of been a reliever. Um, so, like, I can I can understand the logic of taking him out after five. But then when people criticize that person for being, like, wrong because he pitched a scoreless six, he's like, I wasn't wrong. I was right. He gave up a hit. What? Like, because like <laughs> that's what you're looking for from a pitcher is a no-hit inning? Because what I look for in a pitcher is a scoreless inning. Mm-hmm. If he gets no hits in the inning, that's just an added bonus. But if you pitch a scoreless innings in the in the bigs, that is a successful inning, really, how, however it's done. It could be stressful. I might not like the stress, but you pitch a scoreless inning, that is a win in my book. So the fact that he gave up a hit and then you're dunking on people that you were right, you're a moron. Completely. The other thing that I would be very concerned with, especially because of what he did, I just look at, you're right, a scoreless innings great. Great. And also, pitch count down. Don't have a, a big inning with a whole lot of pitches thrown coming off of what the 105 he threw and the fact that the pitch count was getting up there. Yeah, that was uh, that one uh, That one bothered me a little bit. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Uh, 7612, the fact that we played, a, we played a closer. I think he meant paid. The fact that we paid a closer and he's not closing games. Closed the game yesterday. 
closed it yesterday. That This is a concern maybe before the weekend, but I don't think it's a concern over the weekend. He didn't use them whenever they were down in game one and game two. He used them in a safe situation yesterday and he allowed the tying run to come to the plate, but he got the job done. Yeah, it, was a, it wasn't perfect by any means, but, he, you know, you worry about Garcia. A lot of people were worried about Garcia scoring. The fact of the matter is you're just worried about keeping that three-run lead and, you know, they weren't going to try and, and put another guy in scoring position and, and really extend the inning. So he scored and, you know, he ended up getting out of it. I'll just mark it up as progress. He's been a slow starter in the past. I don't believe that Josh Hader is much to worry about, and I think he'll be just fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. And if that, that's not a concern over the weekend either. Uh, Josh from Seabrook joking here, just like the 17 World Series with the Texans injuries, maybe Deshaun, uh, Fromber is another of the Astros pitching staff being sacrificed for the Texans to win the Super Bowl. D'Amico's jersey number was 59. Fromber wears 59, Super Bowl 59. It's pretty good symmet- it's a lot of thought, symmetry. A lot of thought put into that pretty one. Pretty good symmetry. Would you? Ooh, don't. Say would it. you give up Fromber's UCL for a Super Bowl win? I would. I think so too. Yeah, I would. Take I think it. I would too. Make it unanim- make it unanimous. Yeah. I absolutely would. Would yeah. you give up? Okay, let's let's make this a little bit more difficult. Would you give up the UCL of every Astros starting pitcher for a for a Super Bowl mm. in the bigs? Nope, can't do it. I would. I mean, can't you're locking in a Super Bowl. I, I would. I can't do it because I think they still got a chance, and they got a chance in the next couple of years. And the fact that I enjoy watching baseball all summer long, and it would be excruciating would. to watch this team with no starting yeah, pitching. I, I think I'm with Joel. I don't think I could go that far because it feels like you're not only giving away this season, but it almost feels like you're giving away the the the. I know we're using increments of time and not windows, but with all the guys they have coming up for new contracts coming the coming year, you're kind of giving away the a, a bit of their window here. Yeah, but you're you're winning a Super Bowl. I know, I know. I'm taking the Super Bowl. I was with you for one pitcher. I'm taking I, the Super I, I Bowl. I might even go two or three pitchers. Because, like, Blanker's, every starting pitcher they have, I, I would probably back off Blanker on that. said that you have a chance to win the World Series. You're locking in a Super Bowl. And you've already won two World Series. Give me the Super Bowl. I'm, every UCL in the Astros starting rotation can be exploded. <laughs> Give me the Super Bowl. There's several. I mean, in the case of Lance, we expected it anyway, so we can deal with that. Verlander, people are losing their mind about Verlander yesterday, so maybe people think he already did something to his. But, yeah, I can't see doing it to the whole staff because I, I, just, I, want, I enjoy watching that team every night. Would you sacrifice every starting pitcher's UCL for the Astros? For a Super Bowl, 713-780-3776. HRP listener line, 713-780-3776. Why are pitchers' arms exploding, though? What's our theory? Tyler Glass now had a theory. What's your theory? Why are pitchers' arms exploding? 713-780-3776. Killer Bees broadcasting live from Space Cadet in the Heights. Today's a little rainy. You might have noticed that overcast. I think the rain's coming down tomorrow, and you're in a tough spot because – you probably should have mowed over the weekend, but you didn't want to because it was the weekend and you wanted to have fun on your weekend. You wanted to go golf. You wanted to have a drink. We understand. We get it. But now it's rain. You probably can't go out and mow today. You probably can't go out and mow tomorrow. Maybe your best chance Wednesday. But that's an issue. That's a chore. You're already dreading it. You don't want to do it. Well, you know what you should have in your life? Sin Lawn. Sin Lawn is the best because Sin Lawn will get your weekends back. They'll get your Wednesdays back. They'll get your nights when you can have a drink back, your afternoons from work back. You're wasting your valuable time each and every time that you have to go out and mess with your yard, whether it's to mow the grass, whether it's to pull some weeds, whether it's to try to fix these dead spots in your yard. All of these chores that you don't want to put up with will stop doing that and get Sin Lawn. Sin Lawn is the best in the business and what they do, and it improves your life, too. Stop mowing. Stop pulling weeds. Stop throwing mug money into an ugly yard that you're embarrassed of people seeing anyways. Sin Lawn artificial grass is the best on the market. Sin Lawn is artificial grass. Sin Lawn offers a lifetime warranty with products that are made in the USA. The quality is top shelf. It's elite. The people are elite. It's fully insured, fully bonded. You don't have to worry about a thing. They have their own in-house crews, too. They don't contract anything out. Sinlon's number one priority is making their customers happy. Sinlon is perfect for your yard, whether it's your patio, kids' playground, your pets, no more tracking mud inside, or how about that putting green you've always wanted? Uh, Jeremy, over there at Sinlon, I, I saw the post he had on Facebook where he, he did a, a yard. Um, his most recent one was Sinlon. They have pavers there along the backyard. The Sinlon, which is nestled up nicely to the pool and then tucked away in the back corner of the yard is a is a really nice putting green. 
Get that in your yard. Don't mow anymore. Have some fun with your backyard in a yard that is perfect all the time, whether the sun is out or the rain is falling. Head to 975-SYN-LAWN.COM to learn more. That's 975-SYN-LAWN.COM, 975-SYN-LAWN.COM. SYN LAWN, control the process from yarn to yard. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Space Cadet Bar in the Heights, here's the Killer Bees, Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. He's Blank, I'm Branham. We are broadcasting live, Space Cadet in the Heights. They open up for us on this uh, Monday. Usually not open on, uh, on Monday, but they are today. So they're honoring their Wednesday wing special today, which I'm about to partake. Uh, 50 cent wings on Wednesdays, but they're also honoring that today. So 50 cent uh, wings. Uh, 713-780-ESPN. Would you uh, would you have every Astro tear as UCL for the Astros winning or the uh, Texans winning a Super Bowl? The UCL, of course, the tendon in your elbow leads to Tommy John. Uh, Uncle Barney says mm. that he would uh, he would have every Astro tear their UCL not for a Super Bowl but for U of H National Football Championship. That's a stretch. Well, it depends on who your your allegiances are for. I get if it. If you're a Houston Cougar, you absolutely would take that. I, I, would, rather I would take that. I would rather have the Basketball National Championship. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it depends on where your rooting uh, interests are. Uh, Uncle Barney also says Fromber's not pitching tonight because he's playing golf with John at East River. <laughs> <laughs> That's we'll, a good line. We'll be out Did there you on see Thursday. Grade the joke. Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. I believe it grade was, the joke. Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, I would say seven. Oh, pff, nine three. I just spit everywhere. Nine three. That was a fantastic joke. It runs in the family. What were you saying, Blanker? Uh, someone, I think it was Dustin on Twitter. That they were posting screenshots of late in the game <laughs> at the Mavs Rockets game. And they're like, is that Granado right behind the bench next to the Rockets? And sure enough, there's Granado in his Granado. Clutch City T-shirt holding a beer, looking at looking at somebody like, what the hell just happened? And they're like, yep, sure enough, that wasn't even a joke. That's John. I, I, I was watching an Astro playoff game. I can't remember if it was last year or two years ago. And they were just having like the pan, you know, crowd, like the, the panoramic shot or whatever, where you're panning through the crowd. And I was like, that's Granado sitting like five rows deep and behind the, uh, I think it was behind the visiting dugout. But it's like, yeah, that's Granado. His boy Chad's got tickets. You know Chad. Yeah, but he, he wasn't with Chad. I think he was with the. Uh, I think he was with Wendy actually. 
Um, well, Chad and John and Wendy and Chad and his wife, I think they they hang out at the different games. Yeah, but Chad wasn't there. Oh, like I, I would have seen Chad unless he was getting a beer or something. Uh, Dab says I would kiss Joel for a Super Bowl. <laughs> well, would you accept that kiss for a Super Bowl, mm, Blankers? Uh, no, sir. Come on, sacrifice a little uh, bit how, for a Super Bowl. How many Super Bowls? It depends on where. How many? It depends on where. Three he Super my Bowls. Ass. Three Super Bowls. There was a um, yeah, getting get any you're not I getting mean, the mouth. You, you wouldn't take, you wouldn't let Dad kiss you on the cheek for a Super cheek, Bowl. Cheek, maybe. I would let Dad kiss me on the cheek for a Super Bowl. I absolutely would. There yeah. was a uh, my ass cheek. There was a drunk U of H fan. Why after that, hold on, why is that better? Because 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 it's, it's <laughs> why, it, why is that better? He likes those sort of things. <laughs> no, because there's a chance because it's a lot closer to the the ex- exit only, and I don't have to get near my mouth where the germs can get close. There was a. Uh, I didn't. Oh, that didn't answer my question. But we'll, we'll, let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. <laughs> well, the the day that we won the Big Twelve uh, championship, we clinched it against Kansas. There was a a drunk alum that I know well, a, you know, friend. He came up, gave me a big hug, and kissed me right on the cheek. It's like, well, I mean, I can't do anything at the mouth. Now he's giving me a big bear hug. I can't fight back. He gave me a big old. He's got a goatee too. Kissed me on the side of the cheek. Can I just tell you the most awkward that I've ever been in in that situation, is. Dick Bavetta, the one that raced Barkley yeah. for charity. Yeah. Before games, I would before I was on the radio, and I would go out on the uh, go out to check on Foley and Peterson, and we had a couple things we had to cross off before jump ball. And whenever Dick Bavetta was there, he would always go to give you the hug with the handshake with it, and and, and Foley started laughing at me one day, and he's like, <laughs> "Just wait, just wait." And I go, "I don't know what you're talking about," and I went to give him the kind of the bro hug with the handshake, and he pulled me in. And he he smacked me on the cheek the first the first time, and then weeks later when he came back, he tried to turn it, and I looked, and Foley was just laughing at me, and he goes, he says it's because he's Italian. I'm like, okay, I'm done. I, I think stink. Italians do do that. I think that's true. On the mouth? Well, I think they usually do on the cheek. I think uh, I saw uh, that. Does, I think the cheek is definitely does, something. That's does probably, Granado yeah. kiss Dell and Lance every morning on the cheek? I couldn't tell you. I'm not there. Hmm. I'm not there, but they, they do that like on mobster movies and stuff. Sure, they yeah. like give you kind of a little like you know. So yeah, I, I think it's not it's not it's not both cheeks. It's just kind of. It's usually like one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mwah, mwah. I, I see it both times. Some, sometimes. Some, I think European people do both cheeks. Yeah, I've seen it sometimes. Six nine four one. I would sacrifice every t- Texan and Rocket career for twenty years of the guarantee of winning ten more World Series. That's that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's, we're talking a lot. Uh, <laughs> I'll sacrifice Forrest Whitley's UCL. I mean, I think it already has been sacrificed. He made his return the other That's day. That's not though. enough. Oh, did he really? You got to sacrifice yeah. more than that. He gave up a home run to the leadoff guy, but then got the next three out. Apparently, his uh, his sinker is like at ninety six, and his RPMs is like rivaling Fromber. Like his stuff is sick. It's just a matter of staying healthy and like him putting it all together. But uh, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Uh, what do you think is going on with all of these uh, all of these pitchers that are? Tearing their UCLs, their elbows exploding. Spencer Strider, Bieber, the latest. Yep. Uh, Verlander was asked about it, called it a pandemic. What, what do you think is going on with all these pitchers' arms exploding? I think it's a combination of things. I, I think when I look at it, and it, you know, when we've talked in the past about pitchers having to get in shape because it is definitely taxing and different for them to 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 have the pitch clock and and you know always over your shoulder looking over the fact that you know you might. But I think that's just getting in shape. I, I understand that you have to th- get ready to throw it a lot quicker. But I think I believe that's more cardio than anything else. The big thing to me is is I think it's got something to do with the baseballs themselves because I I did I heard the 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 Glasnow interview as well. But I think overall Major League Baseball and we've talked about this in the past with other subjects related to the baseball. Major League Baseball owns Rawlings. Major League Baseball is responsible for the baseballs, and and, and you have to be able to be proactive in the fact that I get it. You do, you want to eliminate the sticky stuff from the game. Then you've got to do something to get a consistency with the baseball that is uh, that appeases both the hitter and the pitcher so that maybe there's a little bit more tactified cover to it or a different material, something something with the leather that can be done so that the ball can be gripped in a way so that even the hitters have said, look, it, it's in our best, best interest too if the pitcher knows where it's going and can throw it at least in that vicinity. And if they can't because it's too slippery or the seams are too low, that's a problem. I think a lot of it stems from the fact that there's inconsistencies all the time with these baseballs, and I don't think en- enough has been done to try and rectify that and do something so that it can be the best of both worlds. The pitcher has more control of it, but yet the hitters still don't feel like it's an unfair advantage. Yeah, I think I don't think a lot of it comes to that. I do think it's probably one of the variables, but like 
Tommy Johns are co- are kicking up in high school. Like there, there's J- Dr. James Andrew, who's like one of the first ones to do these Tommy Johns, and has probably done more Tommy Johns than anybody. Mm-hmm. The the latest great surgeon, Dr. El Atache, but. Dr. James Andrews says that he's seeing this spike at the biggest at the high school level. So this is before any sort of Major League Baseball. And Major League Baseball has tried to add their own substance to the ball before they ship it out, things like that. We all heard the glass now. You know, he, he the, the moment that he get, got rid of the sticky stuff, he had to dig deeper into the hand, blah, 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 blah. I think it's, I think it's part of it. I think it's a variable. I don't think it's the biggest thing. Um, I – I know Lance talks about this all the time, travel ball, whenever kids are playing, whenever they're very, very young and doing it year-round. I don't think that that's good. I think you need to take a significant break from throwing uh, just for the health of your elbow. The breaking balls when they're young, it, it depends on the theories you believe. Some people say it's bad. Some people say it's good. I've read I've read studies that it's actually good to start throwing it early because it kind of builds stuff around your UCL, builds up the muscles, and then you're doing it at a younger age when you're not throwing as hard yet. If you pick it up whenever you're like 12, 14 years old and you're already throwing it hard, that it actually increases the chances of tearing the UCL. Uh, I think that it's because we're looking for speed. I think it's because we're looking for RPMs. We're trying – like we live in this um, – what do they call it? They call it the um, the the Astros came were like the big innovators in this. Uh, they use it in golf too. The the, the little box that that reads the RPMs and it reads the velocity. Stat it's not Stat Track. Tra- Stat- Trackman. Trackman. Okay. The track we live in a Trackman era era where we're looking for velo and we're looking for spin and everybody's going to be noticed based on velo and spin. So everybody's throwing as hard as they possibly can as early as they possibly can. What does that do to a muscle? It's going to force that muscle to explode or the tendon to explode. So I think it's more because everybody wants explosive fastball, explosive breaking ball, and that leads to an exploding UCL. Uh, To me, that's the leading thing, but I think everything's in play here. I really don't think there's a fix. I don't think that there's anything that's actually going to fix torn UCLs because we want, like if you're a team, if you're a general manager or whatever, or somebody that's drafting players, you're going to draft a pitcher that has velocity, that has spin, because they're difficult to hit. So I don't think there's any going back. I, I think it, all things can be true and all things can contribute to it because when you look at it, look, we were told when we were growing up that you weren't supposed to throw a breaking pitch until you were at least 12 or 13 years old. Then you watch the Little League World Series, and every kid that takes the mound is snapping off pitch after pitch after pitch. I don't know that I agree that, that it, it gets your arm ready for it so that you, you can. It's actually it doesn't hurt it. Because of the fact that your arm is still developing, you're still gonna, you know, mature, and and the muscles and the bones and everything are trying to. And, and I think that if you start throwing it at a younger age, it can be taxing on, on those joints, the elbow and the shoulder. But I think to the point that you, you made, that Lance, you said Lance made too about the 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 travel ball and stuff. It's not only that they're pitching year round, especially down here, because it used to be you go sport to sport based on season to season, and and it helps you in so many ways with you know different coordinations and all those other things, but. It's good when we used to say this about Yao. It's good to have some time off when you play year round and you're playing the same sport. It's one thing if it's legs in basketball, but when it's an arm or arms in baseball, yeah, that's a lot of uh, of taxing effort on your arm all the time. And let's be honest, when when these kids, not only for the speed, but the pressure of I, we got a big game tonight, and so coaches and players, no matter, they're going to try and, and, and kind of slide by the guidelines as much as possible, have their best pitchers throw as many times as they possibly can, and and you get to a point where it's a lot of extra ta- uh, taxation on that arm for a pitcher younger now uh, and, and more often than it was in the past. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any reversing it, though. I, in fact, I think it's only going to get worse. Now, if I'm building a roster, though, why in the world – would you spend big money on a pitcher? Like, it, it seems it's inevitable for pitchers to get Tommy John. Um, More I would, than one sometimes, a lot of times. Yeah, once you get the second one, you're pretty much toast. Uh, you the, After one, you're fine. Like, the numbers – now, you're out for 12 months, but your your numbers are fine. Like, in fact, some people think it actually makes makes you a better mm-hmm. pitcher. Stronger. But the second one is what, like, absolutely destroys you. But if you're building a roster, why in the world would you spend $245 million on a pitcher? Why would you go seven years on a pitcher? Like, develop them – then use them for the first six years that they're under club control, and then when they become you know available to be a free agent, see ya. I'm not giving the pitcher a seven year no. deal now nowadays. Even the Lance McCullers contract was super affordable, like on an AAV point of view, but it, it was pretty lengthy. And you feel like that one is something that's really like hurting you and putting you behind because you don't have that money to spend. The largest contract for Major League Baseball in history. This is this is all time. Garrett Cole, three hundred and twenty four million dollar commitment. 
look, he, he's had a great start to that contract, but now he's got elbow issues, and that seems like that's going to be a ticking time bomb. Who knows what he looks like after that? Strasburg was the second highest money commitment at $245 million. He just retired. He, like, he didn't do and anything about on that. that contract. And think about that, Jeremy. You think about the fact that Strasburg was shut down when they were making a playoff run because of the fact that he had reached his, his innings. They were going to be careful with him. And what happened? He, they were trying to prevent Tommy John. He had it anyway. Jabba Chamberlain before him, the Yankees' bonus baby. They were like, we're not going to push him too far. He's on an innings limit. We're going to do all these things. He had Tommy John. He basically, his career was over. I, 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 you're, to your point that, that, that is the, the most press, pressing here is, no matter what you do, I don't know if you can avoid it anymore because if you go with the organizations that are going to border on the careful side and do the, the innings limits, no matter how big the game is, those guys are still getting their power pitchers like Chamberlain, like Strasburg. Yeah, but I'm, I'm talking about it from like a roster building perspective. Oh, no, I agree because Fromber's coming up. Yeah, like I'm not touching a Fromber contract. Like the Javier deal, like maybe I don't make the Javier deal. The Lance McCullers, I like the Lance McCullers contract at the time because he got him at a low AAV. Now it was lengthy, and now that's coming back to bite you as well. So like all of these contracts, I, would, I wouldn't give a pitcher a long-term deal. Club control the first six years. And then short-term deals on veterans. Like the trading for Verlater is fine because it's a short-term deal. Uh, you sign a pitcher later in their career on a one, two-year deal where you don't have this long-term investment. David Price, $217 million. Oh, That yeah. didn't work. Clayton Kershaw, two fifteen, dollars ish Like that one, that one worked okay. Scherzer, two ten. That one probably worked okay. Here are the biggest contracts given to a pitcher that, like, that are active. The Yomamata for the Dodgers, who's never thrown a big league pitch, got $325 million. That was probably because of Otani. Gary Cole, we mentioned him. Stephon, uh, Stephon. Steven Strasburg, he just retired. Jacob DeGrom for the Rangers, did not work. Aaron Nola, we'll see. He just mm-hmm. he just signed that deal. And then Carlos Rodon for the Yankees. Not, not, really. not so great. No. Not really. Why would you give big money to a starting pitcher? It doesn't make sense, especially whenever their elbows are ticking time bombs. There, there's no doubt about it, and there's no technology in the world that can tell you, hey, this guy's close, and, and yeah, they can look at it. You can see there's wear and tear on ligaments, but you just never know when they're going to go, and, and, and you're right. It, it makes zero sense. Now, the agents are obviously going to fight it. They're going to be teams that are so desperate to win or think it's going to put them over the top, the big money teams especially. They're probably still on a few cases. All it's going to take is one. That's going to actually bite him in the butt when you lose a guy and it's going to be a year or more paying exorbitant amounts of money to kind of set you back. If I was a GM running a Major League Baseball team, I would not sign a pitcher to a long-term deal. I would refuse to do it. Uh, Jake on Twitter, even in Little League Baseball, and you have two kids who had to get Tommy John surgery while they were still playing Little League. That's, That's unbelievable. Insane. That's ridiculous. That's insane. 713-780-ESPN, HRP listener line, 713-780-3776. It's Championship Monday. Not only in college basketball, which you can watch here at Space Cadet, or no better place in Houston to watch the College Basketball National Championship, but it's also Championship Monday in the Killer Bees Fight Club Tournament. Who's in the final and who wins? We find out next on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5.
Before we get to the uh, Fight Club tournament final, which is coming up today, uh, Chandler Rum just tweeted, it's still unclear unclear what, if anything, is wrong with Fromber. An Astros spokesman said Joe Espada will provide an updated 445, and general manager Dana Brown will also be available. I don't like that the GM's available. Mm. I don't like that the phrasing of what, if anything. Like, how, how could something not be wrong with Fromber? I, I think that's the, the positive. I, I think to the point. I mean, it's speculation. The though. positive that's, is what, if anything, so maybe it's nothing. Maybe it is like a, a, a stomach bug. Yeah, but that's speculation from, from Channel. That's yeah. not. Yeah. I think it's worse what Jeremy said. If Dana's involved, that means that it's right. something. Yeah, why would, the, why would the general manager be there? If the managers just give you an update, hey, look, we got back to the hotel last night. He got hungry late. You know, he ate something. That That's one thing that the, that Joe Espada right. can and, handle. And if that's it, there's no reason the GM would be out there. Now, Okay, so that's I'm going to read into that as not good news. That's not good news. It's bad news. Yeah. Now, from a Fromber perspective, what could potentially be good news? Like, you had to make a roster move today for this Henley guy to make the start. Their roster move was that they DFA'd Miguel Diaz. So, like, he was on the big league roster. He pitched in one game, a scoreless inning. Like, I don't know how much they really, like – I mean, obviously they don't love Miguel Diaz. They just DFA'd him. This guy I, they just picked up, right? Yeah, but I also feel like – don't they have that Ortega guy that they could have put on the 60-day IL? But I don't think you would have DFA'd Diaz if you were pl- placing Fromber, like, on the 60-day IL. Probably true. Like, if like just from a roster-building point of view, you have a 40-man roster <laughs> – you're not just going to get rid of a guy that you brought in and actually pitched a scoreless inning in the bigs if you could just put Fromber on the 60-day IL. So, that, okay, but you're also not going to know if he has a torn UCL right now. you got to wait for imaging and things like that. It's, if there's any kind of swelling and, or whatever, it's all, 15-day yeah. IL doesn't open up the – so I don't know how much good news that actually is. That's probably I, not that much good news, actually. Yeah, I just don't – if the general manager is going to be at the press conference, that means there's going to be questions to answer or a little bit more detail to where he, what, what happened. That's not good. Yeah. Long, long-term questions to answer. Because, yeah, yeah. Like, as you said, if it's missed one start because he got food poisoning, there's no reason for Dana Brown to answer questions about no, that. No, Spada handles that. Right, exactly. Yeah. He, he sprained his ankle leaving the dugout, which yeah. actually happened last year, right? Or was it entering the dugout? Uh, that, that's that's, in oh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Going down the stairs. Yeah, so – I don't love seeing that Dana Brown is going to be there. That sounds scary no, to that, me. That, I'm with you guys. That That is a red flag to me. Dang. Uh, if this was Miami, there would be an answer. This is not Miami. Great the joke. 713-780-3776. Brian? I, I'm still not even getting the joke, so you're going to have to. Yeah, what is the – is it the, the, the answer was Paul Pierce. No, it's the booby trap because when the Rockets would go to Miami every year, they would end up either holding guys out or guys would miss the game because the booby, oh, they were out, they were the booby trap, okay. yeah, and that's All the right. one where the fight happened in the parking uh, lot too with uh, KPJ and if you John gotta, Wall. If you got to explain yeah, the joke, yeah, that's the problem. If you got to explain it, well, because the obviously forever in a day in the NBA, 2. it's 4. like no, we yeah, get it. The guys are going to be out. <laughs> I, I understand. <laughs> I'm going to go one seven, one seven. Grade the joke seven one three seven eight zero ESP. Maybe we're just not cool enough to understand it. That's, go with that's that. definitely possible. All right, the two, the uh, semifinal last week. We saw Seth Payne have to take on Lance Zerline with a trip to the final on the line to get into the Killer B Fight Club uh, final against uh, – well, actually, we had two semifinals. Booker T, Clint Sterner, Booker T rolls past the Baytown Batty 68% to 32%. So Booker T punching his ticket into the uh, final as he beats up on Clint Sterner. And in the second one, Seth Payne gets through our morning show. He beat John Granado in the Elite Eight. He beats Lance Zerline in the final four, 55% to 45%. So our final is set in the Killer B Fight Club Tournament. It pits Seth Payne versus Booker T in the championship I, I, on Championship Monday. Before we get into the actual fight, I think this is the final championship match we all expected, is it not? Yeah, I, I think, think so we all too. predicted. Yeah, I think we all did, yeah. Yeah, this was – I think this is the uh, – This, you know, we're getting Purdue in uh, UConn tonight, two number one seeds. Obviously, we'd hoped the, the one seed on the other side of UConn would have been uh, the, the Cougs. But uh, it, we're, we're, I think we're getting a great matchup. So, at least there's that aspect of this. Yeah. So. All right, who's going to argue who? I, uh, I mean, WrestleMania was last night, so I'll, Jeremy, I will go ahead and let you take the uh, the wrestler with Booker T. Okay. And that means Joel Blank. You will argue on behalf of Seth Payne. 
Okay, I mean, look, this is an ex-defensive lineman that has actually gotten uh, leaned out and still strong. Uh, this is a guy that has been in the trenches. He knows how to handle the ground game. He knows how to handle hand-to-hand -hand contact. He knows what he needs to do in the ring. He's also intelligent enough to think his way through, have a game plan. He went to Cornell. He's going to do some things and think about some things and look at some tape on some things so he can get the five-time, five-time in a compromising position. And then a little-known fact is that his brother – works for the Rugby Association. So he's going to be able to use multiple sports with physicality to his advantage and be able to attack the five-time champion in a multitude of ways. And let's be honest, he's a little bit more fleet on his feet than Booker T at, at this stage in his career. And then when he gets him where he needs him to get him, he's still got enough muscle that he can take care of the, and finish the deal. Five-time, 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 five-time champion. Booker T is used to being in the squared circle. He's used to being in combat sports. Seth Payne has gotten skinny. He's gotten skinny in his post-professional career. Plus, he's removed from his post-professional career. Booker T is still very much involved and entered a rumble a couple of years ago. Uh, Booker T is the bigger man. Booker T is the faster man. Booker T is the tougher man. And Booker T is used to being a champion. And Booker T is going to claim the first ever Killer B Fight Club Championship. I cannot, in good conscience, pick against an ESPN 97 5 employee, someone on our station, someone from the great sport of professional wrestling. wrestling. Booker T, as, uh, as Jeremy pointed out, he's the faster man, he's the bigger man, he's the man with more uh, combat sport experience. I will go Booker T 10 9 to take home the inaugural Killer B's Fight Club bracket. Do you guys know that Wikipedia lists Seth Payne at 303? Maybe that, was yeah, yeah, that was his playing weight. Yeah, that was his playing weight. He's not yeah. anywhere close to 303 no, uh, now. I don't think Wikipedia cares about him now that he's not playing. <laughs> no, and they, well, they list Booker T at 254. I don't yeah, think Booker T's 254 anymore. Booker T's 254 pounds of pure muscle. Muscle weighs more than fat. I understand that concept, but I think Seth Payne also has enough muscle appeal. to be, right. yeah, at least at the same. Yeah, but he, he was carrying a little bit of extra weight when he was playing. Well, you had to be as a yeah. defensive tackle. Booker T's always been chiseled. Booker T's never had a, a, an ounce of body fat in his entire life. Still doesn't. Still doesn't. And he plays sports every day still. Booker he's still T on does. the pay – now he's on the payroll for WWE, right? Yeah, he he uh, he does commentary for NXT. There you go. All right, who's going to win? 713-780-3776. You can vote on him at Jeremy Branham as well. Who wins the first ever Killer B Fight Club tournament? It's up to you to decide. Rocket season eventually, if, if, I guess, officially comes to an end, at least their playoff hopes, officially eliminated after they lose in dramatic fashion. Yesterday to Dallas, at least a poor decision at the end. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Guys, before we go to the break, big game tonight. Big game to decide it all, and you can actually put some money down on it at a place that I always tell you to go to, mybookie.ag. Doesn't matter if you got a fighting interest in the game itself. It's the best place to go because they they take care of their customers all the time. They're doing it yet again, but they're doing it on a variety of different ways. They're taking care of now because now if you go to their website, you can get the next level experience because you can actually do the betting while you're actually watching the streaming of the game and betting the games right there from the mybookie.ag website. It's phenomenal. And now, again, they're taking care of their customers in another way with yet another variety of their bonuses. Now you can get a bonus all the way up to $1,000. Put 200 in, suddenly you got 300 in your account, instantly ready to play, and you can go to work. More money in your account means more games you can bet on and, of course, more chances to win. It's a reputable company that's been in, de in business for over a decade. They ain't going anywhere. Neither is your money. They're going to take care of you every Every step of the way. And you know they got all the sports, the in-game, the live game, all of that going on. It could be anything from golf and UFC to all the different ba uh, baseball action going on right now, college basketball tonight, NBA basketball with playoffs around the corner. And when there's not games going on, there's still gambling to be had because live dealers are standing by with casino games as well. That's why that they have your total one-stop shop for gambling covered. It's mybookie.ag, but the way to get those bonuses is use our promo code. Use our promo code BET975 whenever you get the chance. That's how you really, truly cash in. You get those bonuses, you get more cash in your account, and you have more opportunities to win. As I always tell you, bet anything, anytime, anywhere, with the only place I tell you to do it. It's mybookie.ag and use our promo code BET975.
You're listening to The Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Space Cadet Bar in the Heights. Space Cadet, your place to watch the Astros tonight against the Rangers. If you're here by the third inning and the Astros win, they're going to pick up a beer for you. Also, your place to watch the national championship tonight, Space Cadet in the Heights. Great daily specials as well. Usually not open on Mondays, but they're open today for you. All right. Rockets a loss to the Mavericks on Sunday, 147 to 136 in overtime. Rockets missed some free throws down the stretch. Jabari missed two. Rockets didn't foul. Exum hit the three. Rockets lose in overtime, and they're officially eliminated from the playoffs, although their chances of making the playoffs were less than 1% greater than zero. Uh, your thoughts from that game on Sunday and the Rockets uh, being eliminated and then just the the questions surrounding the final couple of minutes. Yeah, look, I think the bigger th- the biggest takeaway to me, because I saw people People saying should Jabari be on the on the floor anymore when free throws need to be made? It's just too young, too early in a guy's career to be saying he's not, he shouldn't be on the floor anymore. Yeah, he missed a free throw. Yeah, it was big. Yeah, it was costly. Uh, you know, it's a never-ending discussion about the, with coaches and everybody else. Do you foul there or don't you? I've always been an advocate of you foul there. It, you know, but there's an art to making sure you foul, making sure where you do it is important. They're not in the gather trying to get a shot up. But you can't be beat if you do it right. If you foul, you can avoid getting beat. And, and uh, I, you can get beat if you foul. I mean, a four-point play. Like or what I'm or you make a you make the first free throw, you miss the second, tip back, rebound, you hit a three, it's four-point possession. With, I'll live with the chances to foul and, and have all of that have to go right for them to have a chance. Um, I, there's, you know, I've always been an advocate. Van Gundy's rule, he hated doing it. He just, he almost refused to foul. But we used to always say, if you try to understand the logic and the thinking, because he did at least relent and say there were times you could do it. Under five seconds to me is hyper important, where if you can foul, the chances of all that other stuff going right are even more greatly reduced. I just believe in fouling there. Yeah, five seconds is tough because they're going to get a shot up. So, like, you don't want to foul him in the act. Right. Uh, I think the sweet spot's more like five to ten seconds. I probably lean foul. Um, I can go both ways. Like, three point. What does Exum shoot from three point range? Thirty five percent. He's not good. So a thirty five percent chance that he makes the shot to send the game into overtime. Um, I, it looked to me like Dylan Brooks was trying to foul. Like he was chased off the screen. He almost dove for Luca. Just couldn't quite reach him. And then Eme mentioned after the game that they are a fouling team in that situation. They just didn't do it. They didn't receive the message. So it's not that Adoka chose to not foul. They just didn't execute the, the foul. Adoka said he's always been in his entire life a coach who's going to foul in that spot. Now, I think this is the third time that they haven't done it this well, year. Well, remember the, what was it? The last time it was a man was supposed to and he didn't. And yeah, then, he did. And, yeah, and, and then they and they ended up again with the same thing where the shot was made, but they were using that as a learning a moment for a men. But yeah, I mean, from a, uh, from his standpoint, yes, he does teach that. It seems that he will he will foul. Yeah. So to your, to, I mean, he's on the same side of, as you that that he's going to be a coach that fouls. I, I could go either way. Like I, people lose their minds about this. I'm okay not fouling. I'm okay if you do foul. I think there's I think it makes sense on both sides, and I think personnel comes into play. Uh, I think a lot of things come into play. I think time comes into play. Like I, I know that they were, um, they were. I, I know a lot of Twitter was like upset at Bullock for not fouling. The other thing is you don't want to foul whenever they're at your free throw line. You want to wait till they come across half yeah. court so you're using some time. But the biggest crime was the fact that they missed all those free throws. Yep. Fred Van Vliet missing one. Pulling Jabari late in the game is silly to me. Mm-hmm. He's an 80% career free throw shooter. He's one of the best free throw shooters you have on your team. He just needs to buckle down and knock down a free throw. Um, so it was a tough way to lose. You weren't making the playoffs anyways. I think these losses are kind of good for the Rockets, and I'm not even talking lotto balls. I think it's good to have some difficult losses to learn from. Uh, you're at Dallas, one of the best teams in the NBA. They've been rolling, and, and you're right there in that game. You led for most of it, and you had a pretty convincing 20, lead for a good, point a good amount yeah. of time. Yeah. So there was a lot of good from that game. I kind of like that they blew that because it's like, okay, next time we're in this spot, obviously talking about next year, okay, here's what we need to do. Here's where we have to buckle down. I feel like the Rockets have learned a lot of lessons this year that, that is going to is going to treat them well, but – if you're an Ime Adoka needs to foul in that spot, well, Ime Adoka said after the game that he is a guy who fouls in that spot. So nothing to worry about there. They just didn't execute it. Yeah, no, look, and I think that I'm still a guy that believes, well, any any chance now that you can just stack and rack any extra percentage points to try and do what they say is probably not going to get done for you, so be it. But 
you, you can learn from all of these things, and this whole season has been a learning curve. The fact is is that you won way more games than you did a year ago. It's been a huge positive. They're playing basketball that's worth watching. You've seen, finally, the development of all these young players. So if they're learning along the way, and I go back to that game where a man didn't foul, he did learn. You could see that he was nodding his head, and, and as guys were explaining things to him, everybody's going to learn from these moments so that when the games do matter, hopefully next season, that they don't do the same kind of things, and maybe the big games will help them be better prepared for those ones that they have to win down the stretch. What do you think of the uh, man ejection, flagrant two ejection? I don't know that I, I, might, I must have missed that. He, uh, I forget the guy who was uh, it was that Keebler cookie guy. He, uh, he kind of ran Keebler. through a screen and then he threw like his forearm to the like the bottom side of the chin, but just kind of pushed him. It really wasn't like a punch; it was like a push. And they upgraded it to a flagrant, uh, flagrant two, and they they threw him out of the game. I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> Emei said after the game, it's like back in the day, that would have just been a normal foul. I think the NBA has gone soft. Like for that to be a flagrant two and an ejection to me is is wild. Uh, I uh, Silly to me. Silly to me. I think the NBA has gone super soft when it comes to plays like that. Yeah, I think that they've, they've gone over the top and trying to micromanage because they don't think basketball is supposed to be that physical of a sport. Look, I think a lot of it sometimes, too, is the fact that they're dealing with so much with the Draymonds of the world and the guys that take it too far, push it too, you know, over the limits. But there has to be some physicality in basketball. I mean, the fact that you took away a hand check and all they can do is touch with their forearm makes makes everything so hyper. It just changes the entire game. This is why we've seen so much fluidity in the offense and such higher scores is because you can't really touch anybody. But when you say you can't touch anybody, then when someone does, everything is magnified like it's this massive end-of-the-world type play. Yeah, I, I'm a fan of a men's physicality. Like, even though he got ejected from this game and you don't want him to get ejected, flagrant two upgrades, you know, all the time. Um, I like that you have a rookie who's in his first year in the NBA that isn't scared of a little bit of combat. Like, he's not backing down. He did it earlier that year with the, how do you pronounce it, Jeremy Sochan from San Antonio, the point guard from Baylor. Uh, he doesn't play point guard anymore. Yeah. But he, he they got into a little bit of a, you know, I wouldn't even call that one a scrum. That was more of a we're going to look at each other in the face and, hey, say mean things to each other. The fake tough. The, uh, the, one on, the one on Sunday was more he ran through the screen, physical, didn't back down. I liked it. Didn't think it should have been a flagrant two, but I do like that from the young kid. The thing that I like more than anything else is that I, he, he's done way more in his first year uh, in the NBA than I ever could have expected. The fact that you see a kid that uh, that takes that kind of physicality to the rebounding and gets offensive rebounds. He's long. The, the, he has a nose for the ball. He's willing to be taught and, 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 and wants to understand how to play the game the right way. But if you'd have told me in his rookie year, I'm not expecting much for a, a, you know, a, a just-turned 19-year-old kid to try and get minutes significantly in this league, and when he does do something with them, when you see the numbers he's been able to put up this entire season and all the different ways he not only affects the box score, more importantly, he affects the entire team with his play, you got to be super pumped to have this kid on your roster for the next four years. I mean, he's 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 just going to get better as he gets more physically mature and, and gets into his 20s. Hope he can develop a jump shot. That would be uh, that would be nice. But I, I do like what I've seen in year one. As far as the ping pong balls go for the uh, the Rockets, they, it looks like they can only approve one spot. They currently have the 12th worst record in the NBA. It looks like they could potentially get uh, – how do we say this whenever you're trying to jump a team with a worst record? Uh, they can get to the 11th worst because Chicago's 37-41. and 41, They're 38-40. and 40, But it might take a little bit of work, and by work I mean losing. And then you're only increasing your chances of getting a top four pick by 2.3% and then a half percent to get the number one pick. So – Maybe you finish with the 11th worst. Maybe you finish with the 12th work, uh, worst. Brooklyn's spot right now is ninth, which has a 20% top four, 4.5% number one. You're going to have to get lucky either way. Yeah. I lucky mean, either way. It's literally going to be the lottery this year. You just hope that the uh, ping pong balls fall your way and you, you, you get both both the picks. But nonetheless, it, it makes it a lot easier to, ha to swallow when you know you got Brooklyn's pick, and that should be a significant add to this team regardless. 713-780-ESPN, HRMP, listener line, 713-780-3776. It's time for our Mailbag Monday. What's your question for the Killer Bees? 713-780-3776, the HRMP listener line on ESPN 97.5, ESPN 92.5. Hey, right now, a moment for my good friends at X-Golf and Katie. Look, X-Golf and Katie is really picking up. It's taking on. Now I mentioned that deal they had going on where you could rent the bays out for the entire Masters Sunday, get the same kind of food that they serve at Augusta, use the bays uh, with the most accurate golf bays I've seen in Houston uh, from 3 o'clock until 8 o'clock. They're sold out. 
So that's a good thing for them. It's kind of a bummer for you. But now it's where you really got to take advantage of being able to play at X Golf. You can go in there and practice. You can go in there and play courses, 50 courses all across the world. But the big thing now is their 2024 spring leagues are starting up. If you missed the Sunday at the Masters, don't miss the league play because the league play is awesome. The league play for singles, Monday nights, 18 holes, a gross and net score competition each and every week. Winners receive two custom-fit tailor-made wedges of choice. They, the league runs from April 22nd to June 10th. It's a single event for single players, just not, not in any kind of forms with twosomes or foursomes, and it's $300 a player. That's on Monday nights, Wednesday nights. They are going to have a scramble league. It's nine holes. It's a two-man team. It's 300 per player, and you play every week from April 24th to June 12th. Again, gross and net score competitions. X-Golf is handicapping everything, so your handicap is going to be required. Winning team members receive tailor-made or Callaway drivers. That's amazing as well. And if you just want to go in and stop in, it's the best combination of a sports bar with the TVs, great food and drinks, with the best golf simulators I've ever been on. The putting is so fantastic. You can actually play your own golf ball that you play out with on the course by using it as part of the simulators. And every shot, you can calculate spin, distance, direction, and so much more. Check them out today. Check out X Golf Katie online. Time now for our Mailbag Monday. Killer Bees broadcasting live from the, from Space Cadet in the Heights. Great spot to watch your Astros. If uh, Astros win, you're here by the third inning. We'll get you a free beer after the game. All right, what's your question for the Killer Bees? 713-780-ESPN, HRMP listener line. 713-780-3776. Who do you, win, who do you think wins the uh, championship game tonight? I think UConn does. I just think that they're deep, they're talented. It's going to be interesting to see the, the battle of the two bigs. I just think when you look at the complementary pieces, the, the the UConn guys are are they got wingspans, they're rangy, uh, they're athletic. Everyone has um, a wingspan. I get it. <laughs> I, I think that they're a more talented team. I think they're a deeper team. I, I think that um, if I if I'm betting on it, I'm taking UConn. But I sure would like to see Purdue pull the upset. You giving the uh, six and a half points? Yeah, I think I think I think the I think UConn covers the six and a half. I, I think that UConn wins by ten. Yeah, I think they win by double digits too. Yeah. I'm with you, mostly because of wingspans. I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> man, you know. No, I I just think they have an answer. Like I don't think that they I don't think UConn has holes. How do you say their big man's name? Klingen. Kling, is it Klingen? I don't know. Um, I think he's. I think I think he's going to stop Edie. 
But he gives you some size against Edie, and he's more athletic than Edie. I'm really, I'm really interested to see how Hurley defends him. Like, do they send a double team? Do they just say, hey, go against – they also have that, that dude off the bench who's really long. He's yep, probably like a yep. seven-footer that's probably a seven-six wingspan. So I think they have some pieces that can slow him down. Plus, Purdue, you, you pressure their guards a little bit with some really good defense. They can have trouble. So That's what I was saying. Transition is where UConn just – they flourish. They get out in transition. They finish at the bucket. They can still pull up and hit the three. I, I think that Purdue is more of a – uh, get to your spots, kind of hit the open shot, kind of move the basketball type team. I think if they play with pace, UConn can play so many different ways and beat you. But I, I just, I just don't think Purdue has the answers. What's your question for the Killer Bees? It's our Mailbag Monday seven one three seven eight zero ESPN HRP listener line seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six zero one seven zero. Who is to blame for the crash between uh, Danny Ricardo and Albon at the Japanese Grand Prix? Uh, I, I. I would think that it doesn't matter because they're all playing for second any or racing for second anyway because Verstappen just keeps on stomping everybody down. Did Verstappen win the Grand Prix? He's, he's, he's so dominant. He's either won four of the last five races or three of the last four, but he just continues to just stomp stomp everybody. I'll usually check the results. I, I didn't. I was busy this week and didn't have the opportunity to do that. I, I honestly thought Joel was going with a bit there with the last name. You could you completely no. you, you didn't well, know Verstappen. Yeah, I have Verstappen, no idea yeah. who any of these people are. You don't know Verstappen. You no don't watch, idea. You don't watch Drive no, to Survive on Netflix. No, dominant. No. You should watch Drive to Survive. Yeah, I just never I think been, you would enjoy I, it. I've never been interested in racing. But uh, same. Mean, I know, but you're right. Maybe me the Netflix well. show, the drama, the uh, the reality show, maybe that'll get me uh, interested in it. The the Netflix show makes me want to watch the races, and then I'll turn the race on for like five minutes and be like, I don't want to watch the races. <laughs> the Netflix show is way better than the races, which shows me that I'm a huge – I'm not even a casual. I'm like – I'm a, what would you call a casual that doesn't even watch the sport? Uh, I yeah, like the I entertainment even, of the television. I don't, I don't think there's even a word for that. I yet, don't think Jeremy. so. I'm less than a casual when it comes yeah. to F1. No, I, I just like I'd, the Netflix. I think I'd be the same way. 713-780-ESPN. What's your question for the Killer Bees? 713-780-3776. Uh, 6967, I want some honest thoughts on why Zach Eady needs to play the victim like he's been passed over his whole life. Uh, he's 7'4 and not very good. He probably won't be drafted. Um, we'll form this into a question for him. What do you good. think about Zach Eady's chances to be a professional? Professional player in the NBA. I think he will get drafted. Uh, I think that there are still teams that that are intrigued by size. With you know, he's got some touch. He, he's not completely mechanical. You and I've had this conversation off the air a couple times. Uh, I don't think that you know most of the guys that his size. It's not taco fall type players. And, and you see guys that are going to get an opportunity for a year or two to develop in this league. Um, and I think that with touch, situationally, he can find a way onto a roster in the NBA. He's not going to be the dominant player he was in college, but I think he has enough of a skill set with his size that he can find a way onto a roster. Yeah, I could um, – I think he'll be on a roster. I've seen mock drafts that have him going in the lottery. I saw yeah, late, they, mid they, to late first. There was a pros- – there they up on the screens here at, uh, at Space Cadet, they had the ESPN rankings for, for the draft for, of these guys at the UConn-Purdue game. And Edie was, at a, was 13th overall. So, I mean, I certainly think he's going to be drafted. Now, yeah. we could argue about how well he'll do once he's in the league, but he's going to make a roster. He's a big man that has some skill offensively. Like, he's not a stiff. Like, he can, he can, he can score in the paint. Now, he doesn't have a great jump shot, which I think hurts him, like, is on the offensive end. And then I don't see how he can stay on the floor defensively over a significant period of time. Like, maybe specific to some matchups whenever he can guard, like, bigger centers. But you get him in some space where he has to use his quickness, like, he doesn't have a whole lot of that, I think he would be a major defensive liability. Yeah. Now, he's got such great length, though. I was going to say, that's why it's situational. There's going to be there's going to be times where you can find a place for him on the floor. And I do think he shoots it well enough, has mu- a good enough touch, that he, you know, that he can make a shot or a free throw or something that you need him to do. But it's like the last big kid from Iowa that was uh, either Garza. won Garza, won the Luca Garza, won the Wooden Award or either won it or was up for it two years in a row. You know, he was a a, a late second, I think, pick in the NBA. He's bounced around between Detroit and Minnesota, a few teams. He can find his way on a roster and probably have a chance to develop over a couple of years, but he's not going to be close to a, a the kind of player he was in college or have a starting job. Yeah. I don't think. I think he's I think he's better than Garza. I don't remember Garza's height. What was it, like seven one, seven two, maybe? Yeah. Was he seven, like seven it, foot? Yeah. So, so and he actually had a three ball for a while. I mean, it's, he it's, developed it his he last need year. Time, but he he could shoot the three ball decently. See, that's. I think Edie's made one career three. So, He's like, he doesn't space shooter. the floor at, lo- uh, at all. Like, he can knock down a free throw, yeah. But, like, can he knock down a 15-foot baseline jumper? Eh. Eh. 
So he's kind of limited offensively. Like he's got to got to go to the post, and then what happens on the defensive end guarding the NBA speed and space? I don't know. I'm he's, I'm actually rooting for him in the NBA. Though. He's got to guard like try to guard the the Embiid's of the world. Yeah, but or, even guys that can be can take you off the dribble. Yeah, but he doesn't have Embiid doesn't have, have crazy speed. quickness. Yeah, yeah. He can Joker would dribble. be a, a really hard I mean, guard for him. Embiid well, will bring you out because Joker gets out in transition, handles the ball. But he's slow. Like Embiid, I think is quicker and faster than Joker. Mm, I don't know because uh, you can he, ball handling. Passing everything that he does too, I think that he can get out and he's he's dece- again. We know he's doughy looking, but he's deceptively fast going up and down the floor. He beats a lot of his guy, yeah, guys. Who's who's quicker, Embiid or, or Jokic? I might think it's Joker. I think they're about even. Like I, I think they're both a little lumbering. Like they're Jesus. fluid. They're not they're not falling over themselves. They they have good control of their body. I don't think either one's like shifty or quick. Speaking of that, did you see some dumbass on Twitter today that, that said that watching Embiid, who, like, had a guy in space and dribbled it through his legs a few times around, yeah. said that he had, he's way better than Akeem, or Akeem doesn't yeah. have the moves of Embiid. It's like, yeah, I what, think, what the hell are you not I, I think missing the, here? I think the quote was, I, I, I've i never seen a center do do this. Akeem couldn't pull off the moves that Embiid did. And literally, of course, within two seconds, you can find a video of Akeem doing exactly that yeah. and more. Yeah. I mean. If, with any research, the, the, that person could have found that. That's um, that. Tell me you've never seen a Keem play without telling me you've never seen a Keem play. Yeah, it's play. just recent. Or on the flip side, I looked at the dude's bio and it, it, he's a big Sixers honk. So of course you're gonna blow up Joel Embiid, but easy how how far you go. Like I mean, Embiid's really good. He is. Like he's he's got some offensive skill and he's got some like guard like okay. skill. Sorry guys, not to bust in, but uh, there is a photo from Channel Rome. Jim Crane is here. Uh, not here at the, in the building. Oh, he's doing the press cadet, conference. But he's gre- he apparently w- greeted uh, tonight's starter Blair Henley. Does that make you more nervous? Hold on, what did you say? Jim, Crane, Crane's in the Jim building. Crane. What he's doing what with Henley? So he's greeting Blair Blair Henley, but it looks like he is at the ballpark. Like he might. I don't know if he's a part of this presser today or not. But this, I, I doubt don't, it. He's probably there because it's you know it's it's always. I want to see the owners. You know, like Tillman yeah, travel. Yeah, that's true. Tillman travels with the team a lot. Les used to travel with the team a lot. I'm sure owners, especially on the quick jaunts, will go to Dallas. I was thinking maybe because they needed him in a pinch that they used Crane's plane to, to take him to get to the game tonight. Rangers Rangers fans are spreading rumors that it's uh, PEDs, but I don't think that would be true because Major League Baseball announces that. Yeah, and they, and they also, would have a reaction. They might to want to check a guy that plays the outfield for their team first. Slow down. The fact that he's there, the fact that Dana – the Crane being there doesn't really change my opinion okay. at all. all right. Dana I, I think being involved is scary. Dana being part of the press conference is something that concerns me. But yep. Crane being there is not concerning to me at all. I bet you Crane makes a decent amount of road trips that we never even know about. And he's not – he doesn't like talking to the media. He, he probably wants to avoid that. At in in every sport, there's the owner's tickets. Yeah. So so the owner has the right to and, and has tickets to every game on the road if they want them. The um, – ESPN Houston, the YouTube, uh, Rocky. He says, Rockets need a legit center. What about ED with Houston? Yeah, I thought about him as a backup, uh, you know, backup. But I think Jock Londale might be more athletic. He, I think ED has better touch. I think Jock Lond- Londale is very much more athletic uh, than, than, than Zach ED is. I, I think it, it, I think Edie's a guy that has to he, – he's really kind of better suited for like a half-court type offensive team. I don't think the way the Rockets want to play, it fits his style at all. Yeah, I think Edie would be the fifth best center on the Rockets. He would be behind Alpi. I think he'd be behind Jabari. I think he would be behind Steven Adams. And I think he'd be behind Jock Lando. Edie would be their fifth best center. Jeff Green? Eh, I'm not going to go Green. I don't think Green's a center. I know he plays there oh, he sometimes. he does play there. But, no, I'm not going to give him Jeff Green. Eh, maybe. I'm giving him Jeff like Green. Like, if I had to give 15 minutes to one guy to play center, who who do I have better results I, with, I, Jeff Green or Zach Eady? You're probably I, right. Bro. Yeah, I'm giving him to Jack. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving Zach. So, sixth best Jeff center Green, on the Rockets. Yeah. I'd rather play a man at center. Seventh best center on the Rockets. <laughs> who else we got? <laughs> what team does he fit with? Who plays more of that half-court style anymore? See, I don't even think it's, like, their offensive fit. Well, I mean, it is. But I also think it's, like you said, matchup-based, yeah. depending on who the other opponent's center is. I mean, is. Even, even the teams that play the true center, a lot of them, you know, like Cat and, 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 and Embiid, there's still guys that can face up, yep. spread the floor, take you off the dribble, and, and he's going to have a problem with all those guys. I could see him going up against a Rudy Gobert because Gobert's not going to face the basket a lot or shoot the three. And, yeah. he's, and he's not real good, like in space. And he's not, it, a, he's not an offensive force. But yeah, if you all you got to do is run, run, pick, pick and roll, 
and, and, and rub him off onto somebody right. else, and he's in trouble. Carl Anthony Towns would eat, eat, eat his lunch. But even yeah. then, like, talk about defending a pick and roll. Like, you're going to – like, what's E.D. going to do on a pick and roll, and then you have a guy like Rudy Gobert that's going to the dunk spot or going for the lob above him. So, like, he's either got to commit to the ball handler or guard – or he's got to drop back and have Gobert towering above him on a lob. And, like, and like, what do you tell him in the offseason between now and his first year in the NBA that he has to work on to get better? I would say that the easiest thing is to say you got to be a better shooter facing the basket, but you can't teach what he doesn't have. He doesn't have foot speed, and he doesn't have the lateral quickness to stay with guys on the perimeter. Yeah, the UConn center is a way better NBA prospect. Oh, yeah, he's – Whatever, however you pronounce his name. All right, 713-780-ESPN. Killer Bees broadcasting live from Space Cadet in the Heights. Your spot to watch the game tonight. Also your spot uh, to watch the Astros. If you're here by the third inning and they win, well, they're going to buy you a beer. Uh, we'll see if the uh, Fromber news breaks while we're away. If not, what do, the di- what do Diggs and the Texans need to accomplish this season for a second-round pick to be worth just one potential season. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Hey, before we go to the break, a word for Vanderford Air. Uh, Vanderford is the best in the business being here local in Houston at taking care of Houstonians. It starts with all the different ways that they can take care of you. If you've got a plumbing issue, if you've got an air conditioning or HVAC issue, or if you just want to make sure that your systems are up to speed and your pipes and everything are good to go before you get into the dog days of summer, Vanderford Air is who you need to call and who you need to get with as soon as possible. The main thing is when we start talking about Houston we talk about the heat when you get to triple digits it's the worst time in the world for your AC unit or your HVAC to go down but the best thing to know is if you already got their number Vanderford Air when you call them within 24 hours will be at your door it's not going to take two to three days or a week because the company is overloaded or can't get to you they're going to make sure they they are there quickly when you need them most and we know that's when your units go down in the middle of the dog days of summer but they take care of you across the board you want to repipe the house you want to work on getting some humidifier action into your house they can take care of that too and everything they do is 100 percent satisfaction guaranteed or your money back it goes across the board performance guarantee what everything operates at factory standards whether it's a part or it's actually a replacement whether the quality of the workmanship is always going to be guaranteed and if you don't think so and may, they make everything work well then you can also get that 100 percent satisfaction satisfaction guaranteed and your money back best value at the lowest cost to you there's no place i'd rather send you i'm sending you to vanderfordair.com and call them 281-557-COOL easy to remember put it in your phone 281-557-COOL go see vanderford air and get that air conditioning unit tuned up today
You're listening to The Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Space Cadet Bar in the Heights. Yes, sir. Space Cadet in the Heights. He's blank. I'm Branham. Trying these wings. These wings are fantastic. Smoked and fried. Very, very good. A cold beer as well. It's your spot to come have a bite, come have a drink, watch the Astros. You're here by the third inning. They win. They will buy you a beer uh, after the game. Might be a little bit more difficult today with Blair Henley on the mound, not Fromber Valdez. We're monitoring the situation in Arlington, see why Fromber isn't starting. Uh, Joe Espada expected to meet with the media in the next couple of minutes. Um, also, general manager Dana Brown will also be available, according to Chandler Rome. So we'll watch to see what's going on, but uh, get out here to Space Cadet and watch your Astros, watch your college basketball each and every day. Uh, today, they're not usually open on Mondays, but they opened up for us because they're very nice. Uh, but they're honoring their 50-cent wing specials. They're every Wednesday, 50-cent wings, uh, $2.50 uh, and 50 cents in ported bottles, $4.16 ounce drafts on Wednesdays. Thursdays, their steak night, $25 uh, steak. Can't beat that. $5 old fashions as well with makers. Friday, $2 tacos, $5 bottomless chips and salsa, a $12 a Mitchell lot of flights on Saturday from 10 to 3, and then Sunday all day brunch, a Bloody Mary yeah. bar. You got news, Brian? Yeah, Brian McTaggart's got it. Yeah, so from Chandler Rowe, I'm sure McTag McTaggart has it as well. Fromber Valdez felt soreness in the top of his left elbow after playing catch, and he's in Houston seeing team doctors, according to Joe Espada. Okay, so left elbow discomfort. Yep. I'm always scared whenever a pitcher is reporting elbow uh, tightness. Because it usually leads to more. Mm -hmm. This is is this Garrett Kolish, but Garrett Kolish now finally starting to start throwing again. This would seem to me like it's not just missing the start tonight. That it's probably going to be they're going to shut him down for a while and hope for the best and hope that this can take care of itself without having to do anything drastic. But yeah, this this is not good. I don't think. No, I mean there's no way you can look at elbow issue and 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 be good news. Um, yeah, I mean now the question becomes. Can the Astros survive without Fromber Valdez? Like, who knows how long he's going to be out. Maybe this isn't a torn UCL. Maybe he's being super precautionary. Uh, even then, you're probably looking at an Urquidy type of situation. Because mm -hmm. Urquidy reported soreness in his elbow, right? Uh, this after time, spring right? Training. After training. Yeah, because the, the first two were shoulders. You know, yeah, now, now it's elbow. The yeah. most recent one was elbow, and then he flew home. They saw no structural damage. But then even him, even he was gone for, what, six to eight weeks? Just to before he could even throw, he was out like two to three weeks. Yep. So you're looking at minimum, I would guess, minimum six weeks without Fromber Valdez. Like, that's the range right now. They go get the MRI. There's nothing torn with the UCL. It's just soreness. They let that die down, starts playing catch again. I would say best-case scenario for Fromber Valdez is a return in six weeks. Yeah, because – Any better than that? No. Best-case be, best, no. best scenario. They shut down Cole the last week of, of spring training, right, or was it a week and a half before spring training was over and already announced he wasn't going to start the opener. And he's, he's scheduled to start throwing, I think, this week, later this week. So that's just start throwing. Now, to get him ramped up, depending on if you go Lance McCullers' calendar or, you know, how long it takes you to get fully ready to be able to throw, you know, start in the major leagues again and get stretched out, I would say, yeah, a minimum of six weeks. I, I, I think you're looking at probably longer than that. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about best case scenario. Yeah, Everything's yeah. completely fine, and it's just it was you're erring on the side of caution. You're you're trying to beat it before it ever becomes an issue. Absolute best case scenario is minimum six weeks in my mind. Uh, just experiencing elbow issues with pitchers. Um, worst case scenario, it's Tommy John. Yeah. I mean, that's that's quite frankly that's what it is. Worst case scenario, they find that he has a torn UCL and it's Tommy John. Uh, Lance McCullers was like the bone spur in the forearm, and he had forearm tendon surgery. That's like a 12 to 15 month in injury. Uh, so season ending is worst case. Best case scenario, you're without Fromber Valdez for six weeks. So now the question is, now what? Whether it's the better part of that range, six weeks, whether it's the worst part of that range, 12 months, now what for the Houston Astros? Yeah, I mean, you're buying time to get JV back, and I, so, uh, there's a ton of people losing their mind about – the results that he got, the good thing was he didn't have any problems yesterday in Sugarland, and and you know he he felt he said he felt good. So you hope that he makes one more start in Sugarland and then he's ready to go, which means you're going to probably see Spencer Aragetti or spot start until you get to that point. But then you got Verlander, and, and you start looking at it, going, okay, Hunter Brown's probably going to stay in the rotation. You, you've got you've got uh, Javier. You, I don't know when Urquidy is expected to possibly be back. But you're looking at Blanco, Brown, Javier, 
Verlander, and it wouldn't stun me to see Arigetti. Maybe because uh, I think Blair Henley is, is an emergency starter. Yeah, He's back to Sugar Land tomorrow and probably never pitches in the big leagues again. Quite frankly, just looking at his numbers and the fact that we've never heard of him before is like Best nowhere near the top he gets prospects the list. Once. Yeah, I mean, you probably want him to eat some innings, if possible. But I would think that if they're you know if they're in a good tight ball game, I don't yeah. think they're going to probably see him go further than one time through the yeah, lineup. You get an emergency starter though; it's kind of one of those we're throwing in the white towel before. I mean, you're going to try to win the game, mm -hmm. but you have to have him eat innings just to save the bullpen. Like he's going to have to pitch it a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Well, but but again, the bullpen wasn't too taxed last night. They were in a pretty deep, but. I just look at it and say, if they didn't get off to the bad start that they got off to, you're right. You probably just suck this one up and say, just go out there and give us whatever you got. I still think you do that. I, I would just I would just lean that if they're in the ball game after three innings, I think they're already getting guys warm. They're going to get a guy warmed up, and they're going to look to hopefully get someone with major league experience <laughs> if, to try and win, the, split the series, win the game. I mean, game eleven of the year. I get it. You're you're not. This isn't game seven of the World Series. Like this is Blair Hindley. This is going to be your only cup of coffee in major league in your professional career. Go out, throw seventy five pitches. Uh, go as deep as you can with seventy five pitches, and we'll figure out the rest. Plus, the Astros don't have an off day until the eighteenth. So, like, you're going to need some sort of coverage. Now, the coverage might only be three innings. It might only be, like, two and a third. But I think you're trying to, to get him as far as you can. Um, Verlander comes back. He's going to make another start, I guess, in the minors this week and then probably makes the, the turn in the rotation, next I don't know, week. week and a half away next week, something like that. So he could take the Fromber spot, and there's your five-man rotation. Now, if you eventually go to the six-man rotation, then I think Eric Getty is the guy that you, mm -hmm. you you bring up because he's been pitching pretty good in Sugar Land. He's better prospect than Henley. The reason you're not going with Eric Getty today is because he pitched whenever we were out there the right. other day. So he just he's not rested. He he, can't, he wouldn't be available. If he was rested, he would be the one making the start. Uh, if Dubin was rested, he'd probably be the or if he was healthy, he'd be the one that was making the start. Uh, they have no other choice but Henley here. The Arkini, like, he's going to be in the mix at some point here coming coming up. He started to throw a little bit. But then you're not looking at starting pitching help again until Luis Garcia, until Lance McCullers in the summer. This is why, like, all the all the talk of, you know, you, you can never have enough starting pitching. Like, people are talking, well, you don't need more pitching because you have these starters coming back. You can never account for your pitching staff to go a full season healthy. Right. You look at your 13 guys that you start the season with, you can probably, I don't know what the average is, but three or I bet you three of those guys are going to get hurt at some point, at minimum, at minimum. So you have to account for that going into a season. That's why I was critical of the, the middle relief, where it's like, hey, you know, this middle relief is not great. Other people would push back, well, you got starters coming back. They can just take those spots. Yeah, they can if everybody stays healthy. The likelihood of everybody staying healthy in a pitching staff is is a miracle. It doesn't happen. We talk about the pandemic the pandemic of these pitchers' elbows getting blown up each and every you know year, and the number keeps going up and up and up. Up, you have to account for that. You have to account for injury. You can't plan for your pitching staff to be healthy the entire year. Now, who gets hurt stinks. You don't want Frommer to get hurt, Verlander. You don't want your best pitchers to get hurt. But if you think that whoever starts the season with you, your 13-man pitching staff, that they're going to be injury-free for the entire year, you're living in a dream world. You're living in a place that does not exist. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I was going. I was. I was going to ask you if Belak would have been an option. They used him the other night for a lot of pitches. Oh, that's right. That's right. Whenever yeah. he was eating up the innings. Because yeah, when you said because he really would have been. Any, yeah, they'd have. That was another option, at least in a spot start. That guy that's done it before that could have possibly filled in. But yeah, I mean, look, injuries are going to happen. We've seen it happen even with this ball club in the last year or two. Everybody's dealing with it. They're in a luxury spot if all guys are healthy, and even when they're not, that you had. A surplus of starting pitching? Now you obviously don't because you didn't anticipate this one. Um, Verlander was a setback. Thank God it wasn't as big of a deal, and hopefully he's going to be back and then he'll stay there. Uh, but you're waiting for guys to come back, and while you're biding your time, you can't afford to have multiples. And now that you are, you might have to get creative. Dana Brown might have to start doing some things that at the start of the year he didn't want to and didn't think he was going to have to do, and that's talking to other teams, finding out other guys that are out there, seeing what you got to do. Every team in this league, we talked about it. The Braves are going through it right now, and they've got issues with their starting pitching. Obviously, the, the Indians ha have had problems with their starting Who? pitching. The, I'm sorry, the, the, the Guardians. You're right, the Guards. Um, all these different teams are experiencing what every team in Major League Baseball goes through every single season, from the, 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 the wear and tear to just fluke accidents and other things that happen. Pitchers are going to get hurt more than ever, ever and you've got to be prepared.
713-780-ESPN, HRMP listener line, 713-780-3776. What does the Fromberg news mean to the Astros? 713-780-3776, Killer Bees, ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. You're back with the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Space Cadet Bar and Scratch Kitchen in the Heights. We are at Space Cadet in the Heights. Your spot to watch the Astros tonight. Get here by the third inning. They win. They're going to buy you a beer. Good spot to watch your college basketball national championship game tonight as well with Purdue and UConn. All right, 713-780-ESPN. Joe Espada talking to the media says that it's a good sign they didn't place him on the IL. Um, I guess um, it could be a nothing burger, though. Like, if he comes back, he's not on the IL, gets an MRI tomorrow, they find a torn UCL, well, now he's on the 60-day IL. So, yeah, I guess that it's a good sign you didn't place him on the IL. Maybe it talks to the significance of the injury. Um, what the, the the good sign that I actually see that I think is a bigger good sign than the fact that he didn't get placed on the IL, I, I think the fact that he didn't place on the IL is almost a nothing burger. The good sign to me is that he didn't report it after he pitched mm-hmm. and he made the trip. Like, if, if his elbow was crushing him and his elbow was just throbbing and was hurting and, you know, it was really bothered last time he pitched was April 2nd at home against Toronto, if his elbow was just, you know, awful after that game and he felt it after that game – he would have never made the trip to Arlington and would have been playing catch yesterday because that's when he reported the tightness was yesterday when he was playing catch. So I think that that's a sign. Like, I don't know if it's good news or bad news, uh, but it's a bigger good news sign than the fact that he can place on the IL. Not being placed on the IL is almost a nothing burger for me. Yeah, I I agree with you on that. I think that because it it just happened, they're on top of it. If he was just, you know, between starts doing his normal throwing and and suddenly it became an issue, you also know that he wasn't throwing – you know, as hard as he throws in games. So he was loosening it up. He felt something. They're going to attack it uh, as soon as they possibly can. It's not something that's lingering or been there for a while, hopefully. Uh, and hopefully that the, it is a nothing burger, and it turns out to just be some extra inflammation early in the season or something that you can move past. But I think to your earlier point, regardless of if it's if it's more on the side of just needing some R&R and, a little, and some treatment and things, 
he's still going to miss significant start time. I think he's probably going to miss the next couple weeks of starts, and that means in order to get ramped back up, he's probably going to be out over a month, month and a half, and, and that does something to a team that's already taxed by, you know, a, a less than setup of, of starting pitchers. Yeah. Uh, again, I think the minimum here is six weeks. Uh, Brian McTaggart says that he, again, experienced this yesterday, uh, left elbow soreness. Uh, Valdez went to Houston this morning to be examined. He felt the soreness after playing catch yesterday. Espada said the fact they didn't put him on the IL is a sign they didn't think it's serious. Um, the interesting thing is usually, I mean, playing catch the day before your start's not, you know, crazy, but it, you're, you're throwing very, very light. Like, when you're playing catch right. the day before your start, you're just – I mean, you're playing soft toss. You're barely throwing the baseball. So, if you're barely throwing the baseball and then you feel tightness after that, now that's probably bad news. The other thing is, like, his he had a throw day in between these starts. Usually, what, two, three days before? I can't uh-huh. remember which day it is. But usually you have, a, you have a throw day in between your starts. Well, that one you're kind of amping it up a little bit to probably about 60%. So, he probably went through that. He probably went through that and didn't feel soreness. So he didn't feel it after the game against Toronto. At least he didn't tell anybody. Maybe he was hiding it. He threw his, you know, in between, uh, you know, ramp up, uh, his throw day, his bullpen, bullpen day. Session. He threw it. He had his bullpen day where he's throwing about sixty percent. And then yesterday he was kind of playing soft toss, and then he reported it. So maybe he was trying to hide it. Like we have no idea. But the fact that he made the trip could be, you know. If we're trying to remain optimistic, that would be the thing that I look at that has the most optimism, not the fact that they didn't place him on the IL. Yeah, I, I think, but he's going to make the trip. If he, to your point on, and I think this leads your, you to believe he didn't feel anything until yesterday, unless he unless he was covering it up, which right. is which is plausible. It, it, well, especially because he's coming up on contract, he doesn't want anybody to start thinking, uh, you know, because how quickly word spreads. Does he have arm issues? He, you know, he's he's got discomfort. We know how much they like to throw that word around. But, yeah, he was on the trip. Yeah, he made his bullpen session, but he felt it yesterday. I, I would be a little bit more concerned about the fact that he's probably just throwing any nothing but straight straight fastballs type. And I wouldn't even say fastball. Yeah, he's, he's not. He's just throwing straight balls. Uh, and he feels something. You you know, hopefully you can say, well, on the, on the positive side, maybe that's just he pulled something or he tweaked something and it just popped up and you caught it in time and nothing's going to show up on any of the MRIs or a- any of the x-rays or whatever they do. A- a- and, you know, a week or so later, he's back. That's the absolute positive side. But I don't think it's a positive that he wasn't snapping anything off. He wasn't ramping up the fastball and he felt something in his arm, that's not great. 0315, positive thing is the injuries are happening early in the season. That can be positive if Frommers isn't season ending. Yeah, I was going to say, unless he doesn't come back. Yeah, if, it, if it's season ending, then it doesn't matter when it is. I guess it's better to happen early in the season because you get them back quicker into next year. But season ending is season ending. Now, that is the case with the other pitchers. Like, it's good that Verlander is experiencing now, you know, this two, four-week injury, whatever it is, instead of in October. Uh, it's good that Arquiti's dealing with this now, and then you get him back. Hopefully he stays health, healthy. And then, you know, Lance McCullers, Luis Garcia in the summer. Uh, injury, it's a positive way to look at it for sure. But if it's a season ender, then you, I mean, you're losing Fromber for the entire year anyways. Uh, 9648, Fromber's only out because he will face the Rangers on Sunday, and they don't want him facing them two games in a row. He's not hurt. I can't tell if this is a Rangers fan or someone being facetious. I can't really tell. I, I mean, Fromber would make today's start if he was healthy. They're not ducking. This, even, even if you thought he was going to get shelled against Texas, he's still making the start. Yeah, I, I don't – this is a, a very established pitcher. This is a guy that you're not going to do that with. A lot of times there's – you know, that used to be the, the rumor in, in the NBA, oh, you're going to hold the guy out because you might see that team. You see the teams enough. You, you see the Rangers all the time. There's no way that you're – what are you going to – you're going to hide Fromber all season from the Rangers or limit the amount of times he sees the Rangers? I, that, that's just not that, – they can't be serious. Plus, just for the state of the pitching staff. Like, you want somebody to give you coverage and save the pen a little bit. You're playing a bunch of games in a row. So, that, that doesn't make any coming logical sense. Coming off a great sense. start, right? Yeah. He's coming off a great start with really good stuff. You would think that he wants to, you know, put back-to-back good starts together, put the everybody that had something to say about, you know, his control – put that to bed and go out and beat a, you know, compete against a really good baseball team. Zero nine six seven. why not go after Trevor Bauer? Because he's a clubhouse cancer and the Astros are scared that if they brought him in, he would ruin their culture. Yeah, plain and simple. <laughs> there's too much There's too much of a history and there. there's just too much baggage with a dude like that and too much risk to try and find some, some reward uh, out of bringing in him to this locker room uh, and that culture. There's no way. 9780 bothers me that the Astros did not really ever consider Montgomery. I can see that. 
Yeah, I mean, it's easy to say that today because, you know, you're, you're experiencing the Fromber news, so it's kind of hindsight 2020 revisionist history. Now, I remember when it happened, I was like, yeah, we should have gotten given Jordan Montgomery uh, that contract. I would say, though, that if we're going to do the revisionist history game, the one that I would play more is – invest in your middle relief like you have to account for attrition when it comes to a pitching staff going into the uh going into the season counting on you know three or four four a type pitchers and then all of a sudden you have a couple of injuries which is natural to any pitching staff in baseball for the history of the game especially now more than ever now you're you're magnifying their role right now a Seth Martinez has to take on a bigger role, even though he's not a starter, but you don't have a Fromber. Now you're starting, you know, in, for this game, some journeyman minor leaguer. You're, you're going to, you know, hope to maybe it's Spencer Arigetti in the future. But Arigetti's not going to give you the inning coverage that a Fromber Valdez can give you. Fromber Valdez pitches 200 innings a year. Spencer Arigetti is a rookie, is going to go 125, 130. So now you're putting more emphasis on a middle relief that isn't very good. And th- that's my biggest critique of Dana Brown this offseason, and maybe he was restricted because of money, is that you didn't invest in that middle relief, even with just like average major league bullpen arms. I'm not saying to sign all of the best relievers in baseball. Just go out and get big leaguers, not 4A arms, because it's inevitable that pitchers are going to get hurt. And whenever those pitchers get hurt, who you have in the bullpen, their role gets magnified even more. So going into the season with three or four minor league arms, Makes us makes a you know news like today where Farmer's going to be at a minimum of six weeks, a maximum of the season, because now these guys have elevated roles. And guess what you have to do to fill a spot? Bring up another minor league type. Yeah, whether the thing is, is and we were talking about this in the off season, but just get in some veteran arms with some experience. The fact is, I get it if you don't want to get into the smell the Snell uh, market because you're looking at you know a significant amount of money that when you're already over uh, the threshold, but then on top of that, you're also going to have to give up uh, a pick. But then you had Montgomery if you wanted to go to the next best thing, and you didn't have to give up any compensation. You could have gotten him. But, again, it was a significant amount of money, and you weren't into that because you already went over and, and you went and did the thing, you know, the hater move. But on top of that, then you could say, okay, for less money, could you have added a pitcher or two? For what Naris went for, for what late in the year, I mean, at the very end of it, and using it just for example, you see the guys that you let walk away – uh, get go for very minimal deals where you could have added an extra ten million dollars of salary and maybe added two veteran pitchers uh, to go whether it's a Maton type or or other guys that were Stanic type where you could add those two guys for less than ten million dollars. Those are veteran big league arms. And in the case of, uh, of one guy, you had a ninety five plus fastball. Another guy, you had a hell of a first seat, a first half of the year for you last year. They're experienced. They know what you guys do, how you do it in your bullpen. They could have helped you. This team is too good to sit there and start trying to figure out now what minor leaguers might be able to step in with the situation that they're 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 in. Yeah, now it's too late too. Yeah, like in that's the thing. Like you got to plan for injuries. Like injuries happen. Like you're fooling yourself if you think that you're going to get through a whole season. And we talked about this in the off season. You got to have plans for if. You know, this like not even a specific player. You have to have plans if a player goes down. Like Mauricio Dubon is a perfect example of having him on the roster. Okay, well, if one of your middle infielders goes down, well, you got a good big league player in Mauricio Dubon that's ready to take that, that spot. That's why we wanted an outfield bat, even if it was a fourth outfielder. Because if one of those guys goes down, here's a guy ready to take that spot. I don't feel like they did that with their with their bullpen. This goes back to like in, in crossing sports, but when Casario, when I went off on on how upset I was that if you knew Kenyon Green Kenyon Green wasn't an if it was a when he was going to get hurt, and you had to scramble right before the first game of the regular season trying to find a replacement, and you didn't have an insurance policy or two already on the roster, then that's on you. And and, and as a as an organization, starting with Dana Brown. You have to be prepared for the fact that as much as you have seven, eight starters, that at some point in the year you are hopeful are all going to be available and so that you can do some things. And, and as, as we talked about, maybe some of those guys end up being the solution to your bullpen. At what point, no matter what the possibilities of getting all those guys back, is the realistic approach of also thinking one of those, uh, one of those two guys we haven't mentioned yet could go down and now we've got to be prepared for that, too, because this isn't a team that's just in a mid-market trying to, to be a 500 or above ball club or a team that's scrapping for a playoff spot. This is a team competing for the World Series that has to be better prepared and have better options when you want to stay in the race. 713-780-ESPN, HRP listener line. Fromber down for, well, we're guessing a minimum of six weeks, a maximum of the season. It's going through your mind as an Astro fan. 713-780-3776. Also, in honor of the eclipse, 
athletes who got so big that they eclipsed their sport. They became bigger than the sport they play. Who did that? Who eclipsed their sport? 713-780-3776. Killer Bees, ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Guys, before we go to the break, a minute from my good friend Doc Linville. Doc Linville, best in the business at the Neograph procedure. Look, there's a lot of different reasons why you should look up, get in contact, and check out Doc Linville and his staff. They are the best at so much. They, they handle everything from plastic surgeries, spa treatments, Botox. They can do so much to help you on a daily basis. The thing that I'm most experienced with because I did it myself personally is the Neograph procedure. If you're losing your hair, you have pattern baldness, thinning bald spots. You don't think there's anything you can do about it, whether you got your forehead turning it into an eight head or you got a baboon's butt on the top of your melon and you don't think there's any way to cover it up. There actually is, and it can be with your own hair. Right now, all I need you to do is go to 975hair.com. It, it, there's nothing, no strings attached, no locking you in to go to the website, and you can check out what the Neograft is. It's taking hair where you're never going to lose it. Genetically, Doc explained it to me. You're never going to lose the hair on the sides in the back of your head. He takes some of it and puts it where you need it most. Maybe it's in front at the hairline. Maybe it's up on top and back or someplace else. But the fact is, it's not going to give you any bald spots on the sides and the back. It's only every third or fourth follicle. But when you take those follicles that he moves and puts them where you need them most and you see them start to grow, you realize they're going to be there with the long, for you for the long haul because he's taking them from a spot where they never go away. When they settle in and get stronger and longer, you're going to see true results that are going to make you smile because it's going to improve your appearance, your self-confidence, and you're going to love the way you look again. Check them out today. No commitment, no signing on the dotted line, no money out of pocket. Just you asking questions, getting answers from Doc and his staff. Go to 975hair.com. You're back with the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Space Cadet Bar and Scratch Kitchen in the Heights. Great spot to watch the Strohs. Great spot to watch your college basketball tonight. He's blank on Branham. In fact, they'll buy you a beer if the Astros win. you got to be here by the third inning. If the Astros win, they'll buy you a beer at Space Cadet uh, Drinks are great. They have multiple, well, it was about two dozen beers on draft, a bunch of uh, bottle beers. Their food's fantastic. Brian had the wings. I had the wings. I had the buffalo. I'm a, I'm a buffalo wing purist. They smoke it, then they fry it, which I think is the best combination because it allows that smoke flavor. But then you got to have a crunch on a wing, which this it, does. Yeah, they had excellent crunch for sure. Excellent crunch. Love crunch on a wing. Crunch on a wing's fantastic. Uh, 713-780-ESPN, HRMP listener line. A lot of people are wanting Bauer. Like, Bauer's not going to happen. Look, there's, there's, there's desperate 
and then there's that. I, I just think Trevor Bauer takes desperation to a whole new, whole new level that this organization isn't considering and isn't about to even contemplate it at this point in the season. It's too early in the season, and that dude has done so much that I don't think they – that this is, there's a reason why he's still sitting out there. He hasn't pitched great regardless, but there's a reason why even on April Fool's Day when some minor league play-by-play guy decided to put out there the Mets are signing Trevor Bauer and everybody went nuts – because there's not a team in baseball right now that I think is willing to t- touch Trevor Bauer. Yeah, I mean, the proof's in the pudding, right? He's yeah. not with the Major League Baseball team. Uh, I wouldn't touch him. Uh, I'm, I'm out on Bauer. All right, 713-780-ESPN. Who has eclipsed their sport in honor of the eclipse, which the clouds got in the way of all that today, although it did get noticeably darker even in Houston. It did. It got noticeably darker did even it, with the clouds. Maybe, maybe – here, there was actually a nice little spot that opened up in the clouds very briefly. It did. Where you, where I could see it, but it didn't really – it looked just like overcast. It never really yeah. seemed significantly – I know, obviously, in different parts of the country, right. it was much more noticeable and much more obvious, but here it just – felt cloudy except for hey look up there's a hole in the clouds and you can see the little sliver of the moon or the of the sun peeking past the moon yeah right right at about the time that all the national news was breaking in or and and or showing it there was a break in in all of the cloud cover to where you could see the sun yeah and then if you had the glasses standing by and you could you know get a good shot of it you definitely could have experienced it but some of the video i saw uh from around the country and even nbc was showing live Dallas, like, Dallas has the Dallas area. Has cars putting their shots. headlights on, yeah. and it got pretty dark. Yeah, even in my house, it got a little bit darker. Even though it was the overcast, around one forty, I think was peak time. Mm-hmm. That was supposed to be partial. The peak time. That's when I walked outside here. Yeah, partial eclipse here. So, who, which athletes have eclipsed their sport in the history of sports? Well, the first one to me is is Michael Jordan because Michael Jordan to this day is eclipsing it. When you look at worldwide status, who knows him? The brand Jordan logo. Uh, everything that they're doing. Uh, Michael Jordan is a worldwide icon uh, that also played basketball in the NBA. But I I think that's the first one you start with. I think there's several guys kind of in that same realm. But MJ is the first one you think about. Uh, I think the the greatest name here for eclipsing their sport, because Jordan is that. I'm not arguing that Jordan is that. But I think there's been greater than Jordan relative to their sport. Because basketball is already massive, right? You already had Hall well, of Famers that were that were huge in the sport. Coming off of Magic and Bird. Yeah. Tiger Woods. Like, yeah, Tiger, Tiger Woods, Tiger, eclipsed, Tiger, Tiger Woods yeah. eclipsed his sport a hundred times over. Uh, Jordan eclipsed his sport ten times over? I don't know. Like how, how, do you, how do you do the math on that? But Tiger Woods took a sport that was very niche, that was, you know, I, I like golf. I'm a fan of golf, but never as big as the big three. Uh, it was very country clubby, right? <laughs> Elitist white men, yep. let's be honest. And, and Tiger Woods eclipsed that a hundred times over. The brand was bigger than golf. Go look at the biggest TV ratings ever. Tiger's on all of them. You look at TV ratings now when Tiger's not playing, they're not very good. When Tiger's playing and he's not even making the cut, the ratings go through the roof, which I'm sure the Masters is very happy that Tiger Woods will be playing this week. It is Masters week after all. Tiger Woods, to me, eclipsed their sport more than anybody else, in, in my opinion. Yeah, my, my list was MJ Tiger uh, from a, just a worldwide perspective, Yao, because Yao was di- bigger than just basketball. He was an international icon. He, he ended up in Super Bowl commercials and, and you know, all over the world. Uh, you know, doing the things that he was doing. Bo Jackson and Deion Sanders because they mm. played two different uh, sports. But yeah. eclipsing their sport? They didn't really like, eclipse it, I wouldn't say they well, eclipsed but, their sport. But I, I think that when Bo came out, he was just going to be a, a baseball player. I mean, I'm sorry, a football player. No, that's right. Play- no, yo, yeah, Bo was a baseball, ba- baseball guy. player. Yeah. And then decided as a hobby he was going to play football. Dion came out, he was going to be just a football player. He suddenly played baseball. Then suddenly with Nike and everybody that got behind him, they blew the brands up for both those guys to where they became more icons. They were in movies. They were doing things, TV shows, things like that. Um, but my list, and then LeBron. I mean, LeBron, again, it's basketball. Yeah. But LeBron, LeBron his yeah. overall worldwide brand and, and Space Jam and all the different things that he got involved in. And then kind of like the branches of LeBron with Rich Paul and the agency and all the different things yeah. he's doing. He's doing the barbershop on TV. I can't I can't go LeBron. Like, because, I mean, if you're going to say that Jordan eclipsed the sport, like, didn't he set the bar? Like, at a diff- didn't he, like, kind of move the bar to a certain level? Like, if you have one athlete in the sport and they eclipsed it, they, they, they brought the bar up of that sport. So now the bar is much harder to clear. I would say LeBron lived up to the hype, no doubt. 
But he, I, I, I would because, give it to but, you. But, but he did what Michael did, and then he took it a step further with the production company, with the barbershop, yeah, and all the TV I mean, shows. Is that is that the sport? Like, I, it's nitpicky. Like, I see where you're coming from, and I don't disagree. I, I guess I'm more trying to qualify what exactly yeah, cause my, eclipsing my, the sport is. I'm kind of looking at the businesses, the revenues, the overall still popularity. Obviously, he's still playing basketball at a very high level. But he's also doing movies, TV shows, production companies. He's involved in so many different things. He has a shoe, just like Jordan. I, I, I mean, a, a brand under the the Nike thing that's that's making millions and millions. He has, you know, all these different ventures that are, are doing things for him. I, I also see your point to the fact that he is following in Jordan's footsteps in a lot of way, but then doing things Michael didn't want to do. Michael doesn't really like the public eye. He doesn't want to have a, you know, his own TV shows, and he wants to stay kind of more in anonymity as much as possible, whereas LeBron wants to be out there. I would say uh, Simone Biles. I think she eclipses the sport, especially locally, since she's a, you know, a Houston girl. But I think she brought women gymnastics up to a different level, too, probably because she was one of the greatest ever. Someone texted in, and it was one that I was going to bring to the table, Ali. Like, boxing yeah. was already yeah. huge before Ali, though. So, like – did Ali yeah, but he, it? but he was in politics. I mean, he, he got was, deep into I would worldwide say Ali issues. Qualifies. The, like, the two boxers that come to mind for me that I would say clips for sport were Ali and then Mike Tyson. They, and Julio Cesar Chavez in Mexico. <laughs> in Me- right, in but, Mexico. But, yeah. but Tyson didn't do it from a performance of what he did in well, boxing. Sure he did. It, but what, but he the, didn't win the world championships and do all the things. Like, world world I mean, a couple, but I'm talking about to be legendary, like one of the greatest boxers not, of all no, time. No, he's not that, a legendary boxer, no. But that's but yeah. not really the conversation, Agreed. though. Uh, to, me, the, to me, this conversation that kind of goes back to, like, the qualifications for this is more about when, when you ask someone who's not, a, uh, like, a diehard fan of a sport, they only know about that sport, that person. They don't know anything else about it. And uh, kind of some of the names I bring up, like, you could, I could tell my mom, Swimming, she goes. Oh, Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps yeah. e- eclipsed yep. the sport of swimming. She doesn't know anything else about swimming, but she's heard of Michael Phelps. Uh, obviously, this guy fell off a cliff because of, of doping. But Lance Armstrong was that guy for yeah. a long time. So I, I think is, that's uh, those are kind Wayne, of the names. Is Wayne Gretzky in that conversation? Yeah, Gretzky's been. Well, I would thrown say out. Gretzky. Yeah. Gretzky's been thrown out quite I mean, a bit. Phelps was. Uh, Caitlin Clark now. Possibly. Mm. She has to trade. For the college game, yes. Yeah, no, that's what but I'm talking But now she's got to be able game. to translate that to, to the WNBA. They just, they just threw 18 million people. I saw a stat. Oh, there's no doubt what she did this year yeah. for college basketball. Took it right, to but I think, I think you're looking at their production a little bit too much here. I think you're putting the value there. This is more about, like, clout. And this is more about their name value kind of being bigger than the sport. Like the Q rating. Versus their product. Like, Caitlin Clark is bigger than women's basketball. So, are basketball. you saying if she does it for a year – then she's she's done what to no, be on no, the list. No, just like is the player bigger than the sport? Caitlin Clark's bigger than women's basketball. Michael Phelps was sure. bigger than swimming. But my question being, like, I don't think LeBron was bigger than basketball. Quite frankly, um, I think that Tiger was obviously bigger than golf. Ooh, I think LeBron got to a point where he was bigger than basketball. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Like, if you're going to say that Jordan was bigger than basketball, then now you're saying that LeBron was bigger than basketball and Jordan. In his mind, he was because of the stats and everything. Uh, no, I, no, I don't think any realistic basketball fan. I, I wouldn't say that. I, I think there's a there's a an argument to be ma- a discussion to be had amongst people. Ooh. But I think that like you look at Caitlin Clark. I think Caitlin Clark had one of, had the great in my mind short of winning a championship. Some people think she's not the greatest because she didn't win a championship. She had the greatest in single season in college basketball history and all the stats that she put up and all the records that she broke. Yeah, if I, she I, goes to the WNBA, Brian, yeah, but you're looking at in a numbers year or two, much, though. Like, but I'm saying, but to, in terms of to eclipse it with just how big she's she would be and become in a year or two, if she's not playing at the same kind of level on the next level, people not that they're going to forget about it, but all, all that kind of luster wears off. But wouldn't that be Tiger now? Like Tiger, but we're but he talking did about it over like two decades. Yeah, but it's a player at their peak, big and bigger than their sport. Would anybody I mean, watch the women's college basketball tournament if it weren't for? But that's why I asked Clark the question. Like Angel Reese, no. If she does it for a year, does it still yeah, count? Yeah. Because yeah. I don't know the that longevity. Period. If if she falls off the cliff or doesn't play well in the WNBA, I, I don't know that she has that clout for more than a year. Yeah, but she still would have eclipsed the sport in that period of right. time. It doesn't mean she has to have done it. You know, for thirty years. I mean, I. I, I How long was the eclipse today? It was like four and a half minutes. Half right. minutes. So, like, it's it's not it's not this sustained period of time. It's for the brief moment of time where the player, the athlete, the person surpasses the actual sport itself. Like, they're more popular than the sport is popular. Tiger golf, Caitlin Clark women's basketball, uh, who Michael Phelps swimming. Michael I Phelps, think Simone Biles Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong absolutely. Oh, here, here, here's a test. 
You're tuning in to watch the player, not the actual sport. I'll, I'll name a sport. You tell me who's the who's like the most known athlete snowboarding. No clue. Oh, it's that the gr- carrot top guy. The, exactly, Sean White. Sean that, White. That's kind of the point. You, you know nothing about snowboarding. You've heard of Sean White. Yeah. That that's to me. A clue. So does that mean does that mean Lindsey Vaughn? Nah. Well, maybe it depends on. I mean, do you know yeah. another skier? I really don't. Yeah, I, I, don't. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I do. Uh, Schifrin, uh, Schifrin, Michaela Schifrin. I think some people just broke Lindsey Vaughn records. Lindsey Vaughn, though, because she dated Tiger, so it was a little bit different. But dated I mean, PK Subban too. Uh, they, I mean, they put out uh, the eighteen point seven million, I believe, is what South Carolina in Iowa got uh, yesterday for the final. They put out a stat, just all the. It's the. It, it's that number is bigger than any NBA game since the 2017 oh, NBA. Oh no, the final. numbers, the numbers <laughs> I mean, for the insane. for the UConn Iowa game and the LSU Iowa game were massive. Yeah, but that wasn't even like I think that was at 13 million. This was 18.7. The, the the LSU game was at 12, 12 and a half, I think. Yeah, so it, 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 that rating that Kaitlyn Clark got was better than any NBA game since 2017, any uh, Major League Baseball game since 2019, every uh, men's college game since 2019. I mean, that to me is eclipsing the sport. Like, Caitlin Clark in that game yesterday is the sole – not the sole reason, but 99% of the reason yeah. why people watched, and it drew a massive number. 9789, nine, eclipsing your sport would be if, if people don't know you played that sport. They just know you're famous and you have instant recognition. I think it's a good way of putting it. 713 yeah. So then wouldn't ESPN. LeBron be on the list? Did he – no, I don't because think so. Because they know him. Right, but you, you wouldn't know the sport. Like, are you going to tune into the NBA Finals, or are you no, going to no, tune into the only to watch LeBron? Remember what he was what, before he was LeBron in the NBA. When he was at high school, when he was – chosen one, sure. Everybody, Sports Illustrated covers, they were put – he was the first to have his high school games would on TV. You, would you watch basketball if LeBron was not in the NBA? I mean, you know I would, yes. Right, but I'm talking about like the average person. I think the average person would. I don't think LeBron James is moving but the needle they turning – Oh, let me finish. I don't think LeBron James is moving the needle enough – for someone who is a basketball fan to be like, okay, I'm not going to watch unless LeBron's playing. Whereas Caitlin Clark absolutely does that. Tiger Woods absolutely does that. Michael Phelps absolutely did that. Lance Armstrong absolutely did that. Uh, but 713-780-3776. Didn't the text three, message say if you knew I mean, them? their definition from, of it. But it's when you guys were agreeing with it, I'm just saying that's why I would throw LeBron in there and then start y- – because y- we're trying to think of all these other sports. I'm trying to think of their other people. Well, there's a lot on the text line we'll get to. 713-780-3776. Who eclipsed their sport? 713-780-3776. Killer Bees, ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. The folks at Pro Dunk, well, they eclipsed all other hoop companies. We know that. Pro Dunks makes the highest quality basketball goals you'll ever find. Tempered glass backboard, breakaway rim, stainless steel hardware, and it's height adjustable. Unlike anything you'll find in the big box stores, mention that height adjustable aspect of it five feet to ten feet you also with their new goal four you can raise and lower goals with a drill a lightning adjust feature raise it anywhere from five to ten feet in a matter of seconds fun easy to do it's idiot proof for guys like me too their accessories next level led light kits for night play you could have played during the eclipse today with these led light kits or at night you know kids are at school you're at work you can only play late well the led light kits will allow you to play whenever backstop nets pull pad lettering lots lots more and you can order everything including professional installation online that's right pros can will professionally install your goal as well at the perfect height perfectly straight you don't do a thing let the pros at pro dunk do all of the work for you give them a call now 281-351-9822 281-351-9822 and visit produnk.com that's produnk.com
You're listening to The Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Mobile Veritex Community Bank Studios, located at Space Cadet Bar in the Heights. Please blank. I'm Brandon. We are at Space Cadet. Get out here, watch the Strohs. If you're here by the third inning, they win. They'll buy you a beer. I can't beat that. College basketball national championship game tonight as well. Wings are fantastic. A bunch of beers on draft. You'll love this spot. Space Cadet in the Heights. He's blank on Branham. Who eclipsed their sport? Honor the eclipse today. Uh, Texter says, uh, conversation has to start with Babe Ruth. Blankers, do you care to talk about what it was like to watch him? Oh, come on. Dude, it's just, it's, it's just never-ending, and you still get the same chuckle out of it's it. It's funny. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I used to ask Palillo those questions because <laughs> Palillo is a Yankee See? fan. You then you should be able to take it. Pay, it. pay it forward. Yeah, it's, I didn't it's do karma. it as frequently, but, yeah. You know, I, if I, you're going to do it to Palillo, you got to be able to take it back. I, I take more than enough from you. Uh, I, I, think, I do think Babe Ruth fits it, though. Oh, Babe Ruth absolutely fits in this conversation because, like, he was bigger than baseball. He was hitting more mm-hmm. home runs than bigger, entire teams. He was bigger than the president, as he told us Yeah, once. Yeah, yeah. Babe Ruth, what do you think about making more money than the president? Well, I had a better year than the president. It's also at a time when we didn't have social media, we yeah. didn't have television. I mean, and it all didn't the matter. Things. He was yeah, still and, huge. And the word traveled. Yeah. yeah, he was he was bigger than life. He, he might have just transcended sport, not even baseball, yeah. but sport in general. Uh, how about Nolan Ryan? This texture says Nolan Ryan. Uh, I think I think we probably have a Texas bias there. Yeah. Yeah. The one that came to my mind when we start thinking about like the impact of the Olympics too, where non like big three, big four yeah. sports, Usain Bolt. Yeah, no yeah, doubt. Good, everybody had to. See, everybody no yeah. had to see whenever definitely. Usain Bolt ran. Definitely, that definitely qualifies. And probably, sure. f- probably before Usain Bolt was it Michael Johnson with yes, the gold cleats? With the gold he, I Flo used to Joe love Dallas watching Flo him yeah. for a little bit, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Carl Lewis. Carl, yeah. Carl Lewis. Too. Yep. Yeah. But uh, Usain Bolt probably the latest track athlete. Has there been a track athlete since Usain? Probably not. I can't think of one. No. I can't think of one. No. Phelps for sure for swimming. Uh, Lionel Messi says five one nine nine. People literally consider him a god. Ronaldo? He trans- I think Ronaldo is up in yeah, the conversation, too. too. Yeah. Like, Messi's probably bigger, right? Like, I don't watch the world's game as much as most, but I think Messi's slightly uh, bigger than Ronaldo. Going a little bit back, and I obviously didn't watch him play from when it happened, but I would say probably Pele falls Pele was that. big. Someone texted in Pele. Uh, Tebow in college says 6357. Yeah, no, nah, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't go there. He was a phenom- I think yeah, I think it's close because he was a phenomenon. I think that one's on the border, kind of like uh, LeBron is. Like uh, yeah. I, I think that's right there on the cusp, mm-hmm. where you can make a good case that he was, and then maybe the other half say, "Eh, not quite bigger than the sport," but it's in uh, the conversation. Look, look, and this goes back to the difference of star power versus where I sit on it versus stats. But I'd I'd put Johnny Manziel over over Tim Tebow Ooh. as far as just a bigger oh, no, 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 star no, 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 no. name. I don't bigger think so. Bigger star name. I don't think, I think that, that's not all positive. Reasons, I think that's obviously. because of where you live. Mm, I think so too. Yeah, I think so okay. too. All right. I, I think now, that one has some local bias. What about the I mean, negatives? He's hanging out as a college player. He's hanging out with LeBron in Ohio. I mean, I, th- that's to me is the star power as it gets. Yeah, but Tebow was praying for that guy. <laughs> like Tebow is probably healing him in a certain way. What about the negatives? What about like the 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 That's figure skating, it, like the Tanya yeah, Harding, it is part of it. the Harding whole thing? Where I would say oh. Harding and Kerrigan both yeah, eclipsed both the yeah. sport. Yeah, both of them. That's a good call. I would yeah, say they, call. I think Tyson's part of the negative too. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Seven one three seven eight zero ESPN. The, someone said the Rock and wrestling. I don't have a problem with that. It's, yeah, that's fair. He that's became fair. a little bit larger uh, than life. If you want to go Wouldn't the Hulkster? Hulk, yeah, I'm sure. say Hulk Hogan would fit into that as well. Floyd Mayweather eclipsed the sport of boxing. Mm. I knew Brian was not going to feel good no. about that one. No, I See, I think Ali is the greatest. And literally, as he said, the greatest of all time of the example of everything he got involved in from with the draft to MLK to uh, he, 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 he was not afraid of getting into every situation and, and and people knowing him because of it, and it wasn't just because he was the greatest boxer. Someone texted Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Dennis Rodman? Oh, yeah. Uh, well. That one's borderline. What about Brady? Yeah, I don't think so. No? I don't think he eclipsed the sport. No. Like, he was, he was. I mean, big star. You can make the case that Brady He's wasn't the even the biggest star. Time, sure, but that doesn't mean you eclipse the sport. No. I, I'm just thinking, like, from each sport, both mainstream and not, was there a <laughs> – is he the biggest football possibility? Yeah, the biggest football, star in football. Fo- I think yeah. football is harder just because there's so many players on the roster. I think it's harder to stand out, you know, leaps and bounds amongst you know everyone else. 
Nine seven eight nine George Foreman. Those grills are pretty legit. <laughs> uh, Connor McGregor, I think, is a good one. Oh, that's a, yeah. yeah. Ronda, Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey. That one got texted in a yeah, few times we too. Have named Ronda Rousey. I mean, it's easy to look at the, the the combat sports to see who transcended the sport, or I guess in this case, because it's individual. Well, you can also see the pay per view buys, yeah, and you can true. see the gate. Like, there's actually a measurement there because you can see the pay per view buys. You can see how many people are coming to watch those people fight. You can see the career earnings. In a way, those sports actually measure that for us. Is Fernando Valenzuela on that list? Because I he, wouldn't. I don't know. There. Yeah, Boy, don't when know. he when he when he came on the scene, and internationally, he had a ton of <laughs> eyeballs on him. The uh, Honey Glaze Branham says, "Pete, is it Weber or Weber, the bowler?" Pete Weber. Pete Weber. He yeah. says Pete Weber. That's a great Who call. Who do you think you are? I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's he, a great call. Yeah, because he brought the bravado from all oh, the yeah. old school guys. Yeah, he trash talked. Yeah. Yeah. Here is one for uh, the negative side of it. OJ Simpson oh, says, "Yeah, oh, yeah. In the Heights." Yeah, that's a good call. yeah. I mean, he yeah. is Otani going to end up being there? Someone texted Otani. I that's think a so. Good call. I think yeah. Otani's I think, there. I think Otani's there now. I yeah. think he's eclipsed. That's a good I mean, call. Globally, for sure. Yeah, yes, globally, for sure. For sure he's but if he ends it. up back to pitching again and is dominated both, I don't and think does that's necessary. Of time, I think he's already there. I mean, yeah. look at the contract he signed. But I'm saying that like it could be sustainable for even no matter what he's done already, it, he could blow up. The gambling thing even makes it more. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Pete Rose. I wouldn't consider Pete Rose. I know he's the hit king, yeah, but I don't no, think he eclipses I was, the popularity I didn't really, of the sport. I was too young to really live through like the media coverage of the scandal so it's hard for me to say but yeah. I, was, I would i would lean no i would lean no too tony hawk for skateboarding no oh doubt. yeah yeah tony hawk. like yeah. if you have one person in the sport that that's the only person you know right, right. you're you're automatically there like serena williams is one here yes. serena yep. williams is a good call yes. yep like yes. you know a lot so. more women's tennis players like you know venus and Celis and steffi graf but uh, serena at the top of the mountain with for sure federer and nadal See, there's been a lot of like tennis players that you could qualify here. Nadal, but they're kind Federer, of replaceable, right? Joker, interchangeable. Agassi, Sampras. Like, yeah. if you want to go back, McEnroe. Like, like they're the lot. next greatest, but there's people, always one. Yeah, in the there's wings. another one yeah, in the wings. So. That said, though, you're tuning in to watch that player. You're well, not tuning. Like that was the measure. Like, because yeah. I was not someone that like, grew up watching tennis. Same. But when Federer and Nadal were at their height, I would watch the majors when they were involved. Yeah. Wasn't Billie Jean King because she played the the Battle of the Sexes oh, too? Against, yeah, and, the and, dome uh, and made it bigger. Uh, she, and put I women's the guy's name. Uh, Bobby Riggs. Bobby Riggs. Yeah, yeah. See, that's a good. That's a that's a that's. A good see, good I call. think tennis is one of those sports where you're actually watching to watch the tennis player, not the sport. Because yeah. I'm not, I'm not watching second round Wimbledon with right. people I don't know. Johnny Mack. But I would, I would watch Agassi whenever I was young. I would watch yeah. Sampras when I was young. When I would watch the Joker, I would watch Federer. I would watch Nadal. But I'm not watching like quarterfinals of two guys I've never heard of. 100%. So I think, yeah. I think tennis players are easy to. Well, McEnroe, their you sport. wanted to see him go off. You yeah. wanted to see the temper tantrum more than you wanted to see great tennis. And Tyson was kind of in that same way yeah. too, because he, he, he's going to snap and bite your ear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you had to watch the show. <laughs> Of what Mike Tyson was, the show is bigger than the sport. Sean White, we mentioned that one. Uh, John Madden, Mm-mm. I wouldn't go John Madden. I don't think he is. Sugar Ray the Leonard, sport. maybe. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm I don't, not, I don't not, really remember. I would lean no. Oh, but I can't it's just remember. tough too because you have so many big names that when boxing was a big that thing. that was in its heyday. Yeah, Ric Flair. No, because he wasn't in, he wasn't in the biggest prom- like hit the prime of his career. He wasn't in the biggest promotion. Yeah, Del and Earnhardt. I'm a big Rick, Rick Flair I, I fan, thought about. But I was just gonna say anybody in NASCAR. Del Earnhardt, Del Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon, maybe. But I would go like, Gordon. It's, it, yeah, because well, Jeff Gordon was well known, but it seemed like everyone hated him inside the sport. Like the the fans of the sport didn't did like. Did they him. really? So did Tony. Because yeah, he was Tony, like the California uh, guy in the Stewart, southern sport. Tony Stewart. Yeah. Yeah. Jeter's an interesting one, an interesting one. Most famous of the modern Yankees, and people came to watch him for sure. I think it's a decent call that is. with Jeter, mm-hmm. the captain, the retirement. Like he was probably was, a little overrated, especially defensively. What about Reggie back in the day? Reggie Jackson. Eh, maybe. Because Reggie was, you know, must see TV with the three home runs in the World Series, and then all the arguing with Billy Martin and how it got, you know, them into commercials and other things. Too. Wasn't he the first big free agent too? Uh, well, Kurt Flood is supposed to be the first big one, but Reggie was massive. Him and well, Winfield too. Winfield got that massive deal from the Padres. Mm, yeah, I remember he was drafted. Went straight to the bigs. Zero eight four one Sosa and McGuire in ninety eight specifically. Yes. Absolutely, yep. yes, absolutely. Yep. Sosa well, McGuire, your boy Barry Bonds. I don't know. Like, was it a little bit too late? I don't know. Because of the fact that there was all the controversy plus all the just the ability and the way it was, he was chasing these records and there was all these questions. I, I think the actual, the, the whole steroid side of it just intensified everybody's interest in it. You might not have been a baseball fan. 
every night. Remember they were breaking in and showing Barry Bonds at bats on national TV? Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, I, he was kind of hated at the end, but maybe that leads to it. Like, we're not talking about likability. Um, yeah, maybe so. Yeah, yeah for women's yeah, racing. Danica, because but the thing, did. The it's thing, not women's racing yeah, that's now. The thing. It's men's racing, and she brought more attention. True, true, true. Well, Was there ever women's racing? I don't think. Like, uh, she was racing I, with the men. Was she? So, yeah. Okay, I could be mistaken. So, I don't. Still, she, I think she, I, think, I, I would say she transcended it a little bit. I don't bit. know. Like, that one's tough because she was racing with the men, and it was already a popular Sport amongst some, especially in the southeast where they live in trailers. That's like Annika Sorenstam. <laughs> Do you throw Annika Sorenstam in? Because yeah, I would. Not only did she, she was the icon of women's golf that people, you say women's golf, you'd say Annika Sorenstam. Then she tried to play some men's events, too. I would say Sorenstam for sure. Yeah. But, but she was, I mean, Sorenstam was not bigger than golf. No. She was bigger than women's golf. Right. That's which is saying. the difference she, here with golf. Danica yeah. Patrick. Dana, pa- Danica Patrick, did, there wasn't, in my, I don't think there was women's auto racing. Uh, 1408, Michael Vick. No. I don't know, man. Michael Vick was pretty big. Yeah, he was. He was pretty uh, big. And then if you want to go to the negative the negative route, with the dog became, thing just put it on a different level. That's true. If you're if you're do, taking the casual fan <laughs> test, like talking to your mom, she knew who Michael Vick was. Yeah. Joey Chestnut. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joey Chestnut. No one knew hot dog here. eating until him. Now, you could argue that oh, it's not a Co- sport. Kobayashi. Kobayashi. Yeah. yeah. He was like the first big star. King Griffey Jr., did he tr- did he eclipse nah. baseball? Mm-mm. Nah. No. I don't know. He had See, the he had the logo. Yeah. He had the video game that everybody remembers. It was a great video game. I think that I would put Griffey in my yes. Actually, I would, I would say no, but I, I I hear your point. But I would say no. But it's also because baseball did such a poor job marketing their own players that there you, couldn't have been a bigger one marketed than Griffey, though. But that was the companies he was associating with and marketing more than baseball itself. Okay, but that matters. Yeah, no, I'm saying to your point. I'm arguing for you in this that there were there might have been players in the past that did a lot of things like Ken Griffey Jr. But when you think about the fact that because of the video game, it took it to a different level with a different audience. Yeah. Nike with the logos, everything he got involved in kind of elevated his marketability. Maybe that's why that guy said Madden. Like he's going video game route. Yeah, that's a, that's a Jackie Robinson, no doubt about it. Yep. Sure. Lewis Hamilton. Eh. I mean, there was a Schumacher before, yeah. before a Hamilton, and now I, you have him Verstappen. Like his popularity was pretty high, though. I think, I think if you're going to that, you got to go old school and say like what Mario Andretti. Guys well, Andretti wasn't – was Andretti F1? I thought he was no, IndyCar. He, he was IndyCar, yeah. Yeah, F1, I think the biggest one was Schumacher. Schumacher, but and, Verstappen and, and – Now, and Lewis Hamilton was Hamilton, Verstappen. Yeah. For Verstappen. Verstappen's taking it to another level. Right. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good list there, I think. Did we miss anybody big? Richard Petty, someone said, maybe. 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 Jack and Arnie? Because before Tiger, before yeah, that's even a good though call. It, even Jack, though it Jack, was yeah. for the yeah, I would say so. Jack, yeah, I would say yeah, so. Jack and is the, the all time. But oh, I think, he's got a drink named after him. But the, Paul, that's a good but point. the battle well, between Arnold the two Jack, of them, yeah. people would watch Jack play Arnie in a tournament when they didn't like really weren't interested in golf. Yeah. Phil Mickelson, kidding, nah. kidding, I'm nah. kidding. It's a live joke. <laughs> all right, seven one three seven eight zero ESPN Killer Bees uh, broadcasting live from Space Cadet in the Heights. Get out here, watch your shows, watch your college basketball. All right, what's the car wreck of the day? Car wreck of the day, 713-780-3776. Killer Bees, ESPN 97.5, ESPN 92.5.
He's Blank on Branham, broadcasting live from Space Cadet in the Heights. Come watch the Astros here. You're here by the third. They'll buy you a beer if the Astros win. That'll be a little bit more difficult today with no Fromber Valdez on the mound. He's back in Houston. He'll get some imaging done on that elbow. And hopefully we get good news soon. Uh, hopefully. Knock on wood. A spot to try to downplay it by. Well, he didn't land on the I.L., Okay, get land on the I.L. tomorrow, See though. me tomorrow. Get See me tomorrow at five. Tomorrow. Yeah, the doctors hadn't even looked at him yet. That quote's our car wreck of the day nominee. It I'll nominate that quote. No, he didn't land on the I.L., so he's not that hurt. Okay, all right, guys, this happens all the time. Get the imaging back, and then you make your move. Uh, what's your car wreck of the day nominee? Well, I'm going to start right away with a guy that Brian knows that might have screwed up his draft possibilities. Oh, yeah. Devondre Sweat arrested for DWI. We were talking about, hey, let's hope he falls to the Texans. There's well, a chance. Well, maybe now he will. <laughs> yeah, maybe he will, and maybe they won't take him because no matter how much they maybe have been a little bit more open to the idea other than when Robert McNair owned the team about guys with any kind of history, I don't know that the, – the, I think there's going to be – some teams that are going to be scared off now teams that Devondre Sweat be, was arrested for DUI. Teams to be interested. He was taking a visit with Tennessee and I believe one other team today. So it seems I mean, like teams are still interested. Jalen Carter literally left his friends to die in a tree and yeah. was still a top ten but pick. But I'm saying so. there's certain teams, unlike yeah. the Texans, Only takes one. that yeah, might stay away. I'm not saying he's not going to get drafted. Yeah. Maybe I don't think it hurts his stock much. Like a DUI – I don't think it really hurts his stock much. But do you know he's, he, You know we've been talking about what position he plays, like zero tech, one tech. It's actually a .08 tech is oh. the defensive tackle position that his sweat plays. I, that's not bad. Oh, great the joke. Go ahead. <laughs> that was pretty uh, good. 7.1. Yeah, I give it a .08. Uh, Morgan. Oh, God. Okay, that gets a .08. <laughs> and Brian gives it a 7. That, that gets a .09. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, is it Morgan Whalen or Morgan Wallen? I think it's Whalen. Whalen. Oh, yeah, Whalen. I saw that. Whalen. Morgan yeah, Whalen arrested in Nashville for allegedly throwing a chair off the roof of a bar. Six. He's nominated for car regulation. But be honest, we all wish we could have done this at some point in our life. Wasn't it a six-story? Six stories well, up, he threw the chair. Well, that's part know. of the story. He threw it off the top of the, of the balcony or whatever, but also apparently hit a cop. Oh, or, did he really? Or, or hit somebody? A cop or a cop car or something like Yeah, something involving wow. with the cop. So not that there's ever a good result from throwing the chair off the balcony, but then you hit a cop or a cop car and, yeah. So he's got good accuracy. That's good to know about my country western singer. That's everything I love about a good cop story, though. That I bet he, I bet he had want to some. have a cold beer? I you bet want to he bet has, has a song about it someday? I bet he had sand in his boots. <laughs> Morgan Whalen. Is that one of his songs? Both of them are. All right, there I'm you on go. a roll. What are you nominating, Brian? Uh, Hunter Brown. Uh, we need to have mm. better starts. Uh, the man, just there's a lot of things we can nominate with the Astros, but Hunter Brown's really got to get get it together. Otherwise, he's going to end up in middle relief or back down. And as Joe suggested today, back down in AAA. Yeah, I don't know if that's possible with the state of their bullpen, but uh, he's not. Uh, his last start wasn't very good. His first start was fine. Does that mean Ryan Presley gets on that list too? Four and a third. You can put him on you there if you want. You him. I mean, the four run, you know, turned a one run game into a <laughs> an unwinnable game late yeah. on Saturday night. Bounce back yesterday. Yeah. Three up, three down inning. I was going to nominate UCLs today, and then the Fromber news broke. Mm. So I guess I got to nominate it even more. Put it in bold. Elbows, UCLs, Tommy John. Can we nominate the disappointment, maybe at least for the Houston audience of the solar eclipse? Not much really to look at here. Yes. We had, a texter, we had a texture say that. Uh, eclipse being blocked by overcast skies. Yeah. Josh from Seabrook. I had, to, I had to break it to Taylor. We're on the way to school. She goes, Dad, it's going to be so awesome. I can't wait for the eclipse. They're going to let us outside for it, and we're going to do this and do that. And I go, you might not see it. Yeah. She's like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but <laughs> you might. Ho hopefully, the classrooms have TVs because you probably got a better chance of seeing it there. Should I? Uh, should we be Kentucky or Coach Cow? Which of the two are we nominating here? It's got to be one or the other. Can't be both. I think. See, if I, I was thinking about it from Cal's perspective, I think he did Kentucky a favor. The only reason they said it in a lot of ways that they weren't going to fire him at Kentucky because they owed him thirty-three mil. Now that he left on his own, they don't owe him anything. They get a new coach, and he takes less money to go to Arkansas. Yeah, I saw that the incentives can get it close to about what he's going to make at Kentucky, and I think it's you're, you're right. It's one of those things where they're going to they're about to fire him, so you might as well get out before you get fired, uh, which is something that it's good. Uh, car rig of the day, Adolis Garcia. I'm not going to say what he said before Adolis Garcia. All right, what's winning? What's winning? I think Brian's onto something. I think Solar the fact eclipse? that yeah everybody had so okay. much hype around an eclipse they didn't see. All right. it's, either, it's either that or Fromber. Now they some people say no. that little break in the clouds did let them see at least. I did, I did a see it briefly it. for about thirty seconds. Congratulations, yeah. Solar Eclipse, <laughs> not for doing something for four and a half minutes we get every night, but for not letting us see you. You're our Solar car wreck of the day. Eclipse of the heart, presented by. 
CarWreck.com. All right, that does it for us. Thanks for the folks here at Space Cadet for their hospitality, their great food. He's Blank. I'm Brandon. Thanks to A-Rod and Brian McDonald, our on-site engineer. Talk to you tomorrow, Houston. Soccer Matters coming up next.